Your boy PSA Sitch here with another Sunday, Sunday, Sunday show, and a show that never in its entire history has ever started a single minute late from 4 p.m. Eastern. That's right, we've never ever started late. And here with me, my friend, who is always also never late, everyone's favorite, Harmonious Adam Prendon. What's up? How you doing, Sitch? <laughs> God, this video. Oh my goodness. I I I was DMing mm -hmm. you up a storm because this thing was triggering the shit out of me. This was super, super duper highly recommended video. Everyone was like, you have to cover this video. I'm like, all right, all right, listen. Yeah. We will do what the people ask of us. Okay. We are but your humble servants. Well, I know they were feeling the same exact thing. People were watching this and getting super fucking triggered. And they're yeah. like, well, I, it's not as much fun when I'm sitting yes. here yelling at my phone or yelling <laughs> at my screen all by myself. I kind of like it when Sitch and Adam yell at the screen with me, right? Mm -hmm, I kind of mm -hmm. like it when we all get to make uh, fun jokes together. <laughs> so... I do get, I do get the dynamic. Why it is much more fun to watch. I, e even when I was watching it myself, I'm like, I got a DM sitch. This is crazy <laughs> shit. This is insane. <laughs> I, I guess. Well, okay. Should we, should we talk about how we, we thought Deborah did in the conversation before? If you want. Or, I mean, we were okay. talking. So we, we talked a little bit about this to begin with. Mm -hmm. And one yeah. of the things I really want to talk about is. The, the strategy of whether or not this is a good idea. I Before we began, I compared it to the, the old atheists uh, versus the creationist debates, which I everyone every time I mention atheism, everyone's like, Adam's an atheist. Oh, my God, he hates religion. I, look, I'm a pro- I'm a pro religious guy. You you have your religion. I think religion does a lot for people. I think I'm I'm not about disparaging your faith. I actually mm -hmm. uh, distinguish between atheists who don't believe in God and anti theists who have a, their own religion. They believe the world would be a better place without religion. That is their ultimate goal. So uh, I know those debates. A lot of those debates were anti theists versus creationists, right? And it was really a debate about science versus religion. I mean, ultimately, mm -hmm. that's what they came down to. And I really feel like this has a, a like, I feel like we're kind of reliving that with the the uh, gender stuff. And that the, I, I feel that the gender stuff is really kind of like a religion, like facts be damned. I don't care about the science. This is what I believe. And I, I feel like Deborah So here is representing the the science side of the argument saying, you know, we don't know what we don't know and we should, you know, study it. And uh, Vosh is representing the religious side of this where it's like, no, we know, we understand this stuff, you know, and it's all basically just based on faith. Is mm -hmm. that, a, is that an accurate assessment? I know I'm going to get in big trouble for bringing up the atheist thing again, but uh, no, I, th I mean, we agree with John McWhorter and Glenn Lowry in terms of that wokeness is a new religion. Right. Yeah. And you know, this, this, the dogma, the doctrine of gender. Yes, exactly. Is part of that religion. <laughs> exactly. Yes, of course. That's one of the core, you know, the core pillars of wokeness are racism and gender. It seems like the two, the two pillars of wokeness. Yes. Yeah. So, and there is and I guess, a certain belief system that goes along with that, that, you're you're called a heretic if you don't yes. buy into blasphemy yeah exactly so and, and a lot i mean there are literal blasphemy laws on twitter you can't go on tw you know you have to say the thing what is the thing trans women are women <laughs> like if you that's the equivalent of saying i don't know what's the thing uh oh. jesus that's the equivalent of saying jesus died for our sins like if, Trans, yes, like, if yes. you don't say Jesus died for our sins, you're not a Christian, okay? What is it, uh, Sitch? What is the thing in Judaism that you have to say? Is there a thing? Um, <laughs> there's no thing. I don't think there. Wait, that's actually a great question. This I, this is. I don't think there's a thing. I gotta tell you, 
the our Hebrew brethren have it figured out here. Like, yes. They're like, nah, you don't have to say anything, okay? Just, you know, be a good person. Listen, Judaism is a terrible religion in terms of, someone's going to clip that, in terms of being persuasive. Uh -huh. and, well, they don't being proselytize, like, that's why. And proselyti yeah, in terms of like selling itself, Judaism is very poor. Listen, if there's, any no, there's no thing. I don't even know what the thing is. Any I'm a fan of any religion that doesn't proselytize. Yeah. Because well, there you go. Adam's a big Jew fan. You don't have to. You don't have to be persuasive if you don't proselytize. Because kids are just, you know, why is this way, Daddy? Shut up! Because I said so. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, you don't have. You don't have to proselytize the kids. You just mm -hmm. beat them into submission. You know, so so it's actually interesting. Like in in early Judaism. Mm -hmm. They there was a big emphasis on the fact that like, you know, the Messiah will come and Jews will get their homeland back and there mm -hmm. will be like this Jewish kingdom again. But I think like because Christianity all became about like the Messiah came, mm -hmm. it's sort of like Jews were like, well, we can't, you know, talk about the Messiah anymore because Christians stole that from us. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of lost like they kind of lost like their whole shtick. Oh, and so hilarious. I don't know, maybe Jews have just been kind of like vaguely wandering around for the last 2000 years looking for another thing to say well the, yeah. the gender people definitely have a handful of things that you can say one of them that's materializing as the the equivalent of jesus died for your sins is trans women or women like if you don't mm -hmm. say trans women or women then you're obviously a transphobe bigot piece of shit right that's part right. of their ideology so and vosh made a video Calling Deborah so a transphobe, uh, which is just, I mean, this video is, it's so bad faith. <laughs> like All Vosh does is beat up on her. And obviously she saw the video and, well, maybe we should just get into the video because she we'll talks about it, it in the yeah. very beginning here. I, I do think there's an issue where you have someone like uh, Dr. Deborah So, who I like. I haven't read her books, mm -hmm. but I, I like when I've seen her on Joe Rogan, I've seen her on other uh, streams. I've always liked everything that she says. She's an actual, uh, I think her she has a PhD in like sexual neuroscience or something. So mm -hmm. it's actually her field of, of study. But there is always a problem when you have someone who's like a real person mm -hmm. <laughs> who interacts with like an internet personality. Totally. Because you have like this clash of of worlds that are so different from each other. Totally. So, and maybe I you're right. Maybe that's why a lot of people want us to cover this because they felt like uh, Vosh using his, you know, sort of rhetoric and quote unquote debate tactics, talking to a normal individual sort of is able to steamroll the conversation. So, yeah, I have, I have lots to say about that. We should get into the video. I, I am rereading the Machiavellians and he talks about this, uh, this kind of situation where there is a certain elite and another elite and how there's like a technological change that displaces one elite for another. And I feel like that a lot of that is going on here, which is mm -hmm. just, it's kind of, it is a bizarre, it's like a clash of worlds thing. Uh, Vosh though, I think he has an associates of arts degree from community college, at, uh, in, sociology or feminism or something like that so i mean he does he is definitely qualified to to talk to someone who has a phd in neuroscience yes, yes <laughs> so, that's true it is it's very strange it's very strange to um this, this to is, see this is this is the same thing that happened with the with the the christian uh creationist atheist debates right i mean it's the same thing yes well, it's weird, too, because, like, you know, if I was talking to a neuroscientist and, I, like, say I disagreed with them about something related to neuroscience, I don't know. I would handle the conversation very differently mm -hmm. and more respectfully, obviously, because I'm not a piece of shit, mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously, because I'm interested in knowing what is true as opposed to winning a rhetorical battle. So, right. Yes. Uh, okay. But before we begin, let me just say vile Van Gogh for $20 says, quote, can't spoil the nonsensical woke trash comic book films. Mm -hmm. Talking about the Batman. I don't, I don't know if I'd call Batman woke, but but an original collaboration with one of the greatest filmmakers ever that resulted in an awe-inspiring transcendental novel by Arthur C. Clarke. That's fine. <laughs> so there you go. 
Lyle Van Gogh is uh, not so happy, I guess, that we read the end of 2001 <laughs> on Tuesday. I re I reread the end of it, and I'm going to reread. I'll probably reread the end of it. That conversation that we had was great. Mm -hmm. It was totally great. You yeah, you were definitely right about the end of the book, yeah. and yes. So, but we didn't clip that out. So. Hey, we're moving right. our we're moving our Tuesday streams over to Adam Friended's secret channel. So if you really want to find the nine hour stream where we where we fuck around for basically all day, we, yes, we read uh, super you, chats, talk about a bunch of random you stuff. You can which find it. amazing yes. art. Yes. yes. All right, let's get into the video. Let's What's get going on? Into, into the, the video. video. We start. Uh, no, not at all. I think I get the premise. Okay. <laughs> Why did you uh, fast forward? Because the first minute is just them like setting up. And oh, okay. Nothing actually happens. So. <laughs> um. All right. So I want to start by thanking you for coming on my podcast. Whenever I see someone who disagrees with me publicly, I usually will reach out to them and invite them on, but very few people ever take me up on that. So I'm very happy to get the chance to speak with you. Um, so for people listening, I put out a tweet saying, if someone is critical of my work, I invite them to come on my podcast to debate and discuss. So all we have to do is be critical of her work to get on the podcast? Because I, I can do that right now. <laughs> I can do that right now. <laughs> this is funny because Sitch and I are, this is what's fun about this show because yes. Sitch and I disagree as much as we disagree with the guests. There's a, well, well there is not as much. There is going to be a, a disagreement on here just over the, Oh, okay. I'm of, curious. This is where the disagreement. Well, we always right. disagree on this. This is the, the differentiation of sex and gender, which I think, I, think I have it's a completely a, new way of, of thinking about this. Oh, really? This, okay, good. That this conversation made me realize. Yeah, I think it's just a, a losing battle. And Deborah So, yep. you know, I love to criticize you if I can get on your podcast, but I think you, <laughs> I think I think you should let this one go. And Vosh tweeted, I would be absolutely delighted to come on and discuss your work. So here we are. I know you are a big fan of mine. You posted a video on your YouTube channel titled Transphobe debunks herself on the Joe Rogan experience in response to one of my appearances on Joe's podcast. He does have a Ooh. little bit. He does have a little bit of, oh, God, she watched that video. And I watched that video right before the show. And I was thinking mm -hmm. 300,000 views. And it is just, I mean, oh, bad faith is does is not strong enough for how bad that video yes. is. I would have liked for her to. Now, obviously, this isn't her forte, mm -hmm. and so this is part of the issue. But I would have liked her to uh, to have like here are the claims that you said about me in the video, and let's talk about them mm -hmm. and actually discuss them because you're wrong about blah 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 blah. Oh, she, so she attacks that video basically? No, she doesn't. I'm saying I would have liked for her to yeah, do okay, that, for yeah, her I to agree. attack that video. Yes, that um, would have been good. Yeah, Vosh th talks about like. Porn, like crazy shit about porn in that video, which is just, ugh. <laughs> yeah, there's, he says all sorts of crazy shit in that video. He completely misunderstands the point that she was making about porn. Yes. Which I don't think comes up at all in this conversation. Nope. Um, But I do like her jacket. She's got like the, um, <laughs> the Tyler Durden fuzzy jacket. So I, I'm a big fan of that. Very good. Yeah. It's got, she's got a real Kurt Cobain look going. There you go. Yeah. So my goal in having you on is to hopefully build some bridges. I do think the culture war is especially polarized right now. And I think, especially on the issue of gender, and I think sometimes a face-to-face -face conversation can really help to build some understanding. Um, now, now, that's a, as a strategy question, that's impossible, right? That you can't build bridges. This is, this is their, their faith. You can't talk people out of their faith. No, no. This is an imp there's no bridge to be built here. Any which, derivation is blasphemy. It's interesting. But, it's go ahead. Well, I'll just say Vosh does a lot of it's very annoying when you talk to mm -hmm. a lot of leftists because there's all this Martin Bailey stuff. Because Vosh will be like, oh, no one says X, no one says Y. And it's like, no, no, no. We've talked about and listened to people say all this crazy stuff. And Vosh, in other circumstances, in his own audiences, 
or in, when he's in his own audience, in his own bubble, you know, he'll say things far more incendiary. He'll say things far more hyperbolically. And then as soon as he talks to someone on the other side, especially someone who's like a respected normal adult, like a doctor, you know, suddenly he kind of like tries to walk back a lot of his rhetoric. He tries to add nuance and complexity to his statements where there wasn't before. And it's just this constant Martin Bailey shell game with these people. Yeah, I an interesting thing just comparing to the religious debates is there was, you know, uh, there was a certain ethic of, you know, civility <laughs> in those debates that I just is completely off the table in this round of debates. Like in that response video, uh, there is no civility going on whatsoever. There is no respectability. I, you, you can look at Vosh's channel. I think Vosh's channel channel is 100% devoted into uh, devoted to character assassination of certain people that he perceives are on the wrong side of these various debates. Yes. So, yes. and it's, it's bizarre to me too, because I, I mean, I wouldn't perceive Deborah so to be a radical right winger. I wouldn't perceive Joe Rogan no. to be a radical right winger. I wouldn't perceive, um, uh, what's the, what is the, the hippie guy that they're going after now, Russell Brand. I wouldn't, I wouldn't characterize Russell Brand as a radical right winger, but these are all characters on Vosh's channel that he has turned into these radical right wing characters mm -hmm. so that he can do character assassination on them, which it's just, it's so, they've run out of Ben Shapiro's. So they, they've actually started appropriating people who, you know, their politics are probably left leaning. They're probably all for universal health care. <laughs> and he's he's just basically trying to destroy them. How can you build bridges with people like that? Right. Well, this is I mean, this is such an Adam's law is to take you you point you take an extremist from one uh, side of the political spectrum and then you paint the entire anyone to your left or right as that political extremist. Yeah. And so this is a common tactic and it, it is this is why the religion comparison is so good, because it is this is a religious technique. It's like if you if you derivate from us at all, even slightly, you're a heretic. It's almost it's interesting. It's almost worse in a lot of people's minds. Like if you're more closely related to the religion, if you're on the left, but you don't subscribe to wokeism or gender ideology right. or Marxism, it's almost worse to be that in their minds than it is to be a uh, conservative. That's interesting. And what's it, the way they act. And I don't know if it's, I mean, maybe it's like, there's a sense of betrayal or maybe it's a sense of that. These people are gatekeepers and they're preventing, you know, the, like the centrists and the moderates from becoming, you know, far left activists. But I mean, it seems that way. Same thing in religion. It's almost like, you know, uh, back in the day, there'd be such, you know, bloody wars over, you know, Sunni Shiites, I mean, I guess it's all happening now, but, you know, just different sects of Christianity. It's almost like, oh, you know, they, you know, they would let the other religions somewhere else do their own thing. But if you're like sort of like us, but not quite, well, that really bothers me. That really bothers me. That's probably also because those people are a bigger threat because they're probably more persuasive to the people actually in your tribe. Right, 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 right. Since they share so many of the, the moral, same moral intuitions as the people in your tribe. So I thought we'd go through a list of topics that we potentially disagree on. And if you feel I've missed anything, I'll leave some time at the end so you can bring those up. Absolutely. And thank you very much for having me on. I uh, really appreciate it. I have a bit of a hay fever at the moment, unfortunately, because of the um, because of the spring. I'll try to keep my audio clear, you know, muting if I ever have to clear my throat. Just letting you know. Okay. No. That's such an optics game right there. <laughs> so good he's so what do you mean he's so good at optics why is. is that an, i mean it could this you know he's got a feel he opens up with an apology that's so optically disarming okay you don't think so okay. no i don't see that but... oh i'm very sorry about my <clears throat> horrible raspy throat <laughs> um, <laughs> I, if i have to if i have to cough or anything i'll definitely mute for you okay that's how okay. much that's how much I respect this conversation mm, that we're gonna mm, have okay. right now. There will be no interrupting. 
and by my cough. I'll make sure that when I cough or clear my throat or sneeze that I don't mute chat. I'll make you guys can get the full sitch is sick experience. You think that's sincere? I don't I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's I don't know. I I feel like Bosch sits around and is like optically, how can I make this even better? No worries. I have the same thing. I'm a little bit flushed right now. So if anyone watching is wondering why, that's why. <laughs> I feel your pain. So look at that. A point of empathy already drawing her in for the uh, there you go I'm you're right it was you. all a trick i'm telling you look he's brushing back his beard he's like ha 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 come a little closer he's, he's evil no see he's evilly twisting his mustache like a fucking hannah barbera villain <laughs> that was the red balloon right there you didn't catch it but that was the red balloon he just hands right. the red balloon over. yes she took it too she did first thing is gender a social construct uh, yes, absolutely. And what is your evidence for that? Well, if we acknowledge that sex and gender are distinct categories, which of course, you know, we invent. See, this is so bad. I hate to keep pausing, but this is so bad. Mm -hmm. So this is where you and I disagree. I, f I feel like it's just better to split gender into a social construct and and sex into the biological aspect of it i realize that the biology drives a lot of the social construct and that happens in a lot of different uh institutions and, and organizations but at the same time she's opening up on something that's very i feel weak for her side i feel like this is a you're this is not the hill to die on this is so, the one to let go when you said that we disagree on this. I don't know if, I don't know if we have in the past. What what we disagreed. I don't even think we disagreed with. I just said, mm -hmm. descriptively. <laughs> okay, your favorite distinction, mm -hmm. right? Descriptively versus versus prescriptively. Proscriptively, yes. Yes, that descriptively, people, when you talk to the average person, they do not separate sex and gender this way. I agree. Yes. Okay, and so I my point was. I don't know if if it's useful to try to advocate for it to be split this way because people don't split it that way, and I don't think they ever will. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, there, there's two APAs. There's the American Psychological Association and the American Psychiatric Association. And the Psychological Association tries to do this thing where they do separate. They say, oh, gender is anything that is learned or cultural, and sex is anything biological. But what they what they mean by that is that they're not saying that there aren't behavioral differences that are related to biology. They're just saying if there is some behavioral difference that can be ascribed to culture or that is shown to not have some biological basis, then just categorically we'll say it's gender. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what you know you're advocating for. However, the American Psychiatric Association, what they say in the way that they define it is the way I think the average person does, which is that they say sex is just your gonads, your gamma meets, your genitalia, and gender is basically everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's social, cultural, or biological, all of the behaviors, you know, being masculine, feminine, these are all associated with gender. And I think that's the way the average person perceives of gender. So I don't, so it's not that I disagree with you that it wouldn't be more useful to conceptualize it with this clear, this, like distinguishing line. I just don't think people do or will. Well, there is a whole bunch of people who are though, because they're all these gender. But they're all these people for <laughs> political reasons. Correct. But I do right. at the same time, if I'm being objective about it, I do feel like there is utility in separating the two. And you know, obviously, there it's more than just reproductive organs. The structures mm -hmm. of the eyes between males and females are are noticeably different, you know, tangibly different. The I, it would be interesting to actually do a study on transgender people. I mean, they're they're trying to figure out if they have different brain structures. I don't know why they right. just don't look at the eyes, because it seems like if there's you know some some difference in biological development that makes them more towards the the opposite pattern of the body that they're actually in i don't it might show up in the eyes why wouldn't it right they mm -hmm. can do an easy test it's a retinal thickness that is uh, much different in males and females 
So, but there are also those biological components, and the eyes is a good example because they in males, there's the eye has these two different types of cells. One detects color and texture, one detects movement. Evidently, males have a, a larger number of the cells that detect movement, which is right. probably pretty good in hunting and gathering and sports and shit, right? Movement is what you're well, more hunter, interested no, no, no. in. Hunt it's better for hunting. Oh, hunting, not yeah, not gathering. Gathering, yeah, women have it's better, probably better uh, color. to see color and texture, right? right? Right. Okay, so it seems like there's a some origin that you know some logical origin of this difference that we can measure. Sure. So sure. I those obviously are biological components that would lead to a a cultural component of you know men do these things because they're better at them, women do these things because they're better at them, right? Obviously, those are preferences, and and there could be you know. I, the reason why I don't like to trace a behavior back to strictly back to biology is because there are men that can have behaviors that are more feminine. There are women that can have behaviors that are more masculine. And it just seems, you know, like I said, if I'm being objective, it just seems like a, like a useful, there's a lot of utility in just separating sex and gender in this way, because then you get to. Uh, we it's easier for us to make our argument where we're saying, you know, biologically, this person is a, a male or, or female, but they have a gender that is more feminine, like their the their interests and behaviors are more feminine or masculine. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Or is that I mean, do you see the utility in that? Well, I, I, I understand the utility of your time out, but I think that we're conceptualizing gender completely incorrectly mm -hmm. um but i want to let the video play a little bit more before we get into that okay the words we can decide their meanings if we choose to with sex being a biological distinction you know uh highly bimodal of course with distributions ranging strongly towards male or female with some intersex people uh and gender as a collection of social rules and expectations associated with sex um i think that the social construction becomes clear when we attempt to discreetly categorize these distinctions, very much like race, which is broadly accepted to be a social construct, no one denies that there are biological elements to race. White people have, of course, lighter skin on average than uh, black people. It's been known to happen. Uh, but where we draw those lines, you know, well, do we separate North and South Africans? You know, is the Mediterranean a distinct racial category? That's a social thing. Likewise, for the longest time, we've decided there are two genders here in the west you know social categories distinguished so throughout this conversation he keeps comparing the social his version of the social construction of gender to race which i fucking hate which is yeah it's this is a terrible comparison for two reasons first is that obviously it feels like a lot of this rhetorically is to try to be like oh if you're saying that gender is not a social construct, then you're a racist. Essentially. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and they're, they're making the argument that the race realists are wrong. Therefore this argument's wrong. Right. Right. It's a very bad faith argument. Um, right. in my opinion. Uh, but the second thing in the, from his own perspective, this is a terrible argument to make because when someone says race is a social construct, mm -hmm. they generally mean something very different than someone who says gender is a social construct. I, exactly so some, right, yes. Right. So when someone says race is a social construct, what they're saying, with, or if they're intelligent, what they mean is that, yes, obviously, you know, skin color, is biological, obviously facial features and whatever phenotypical traits like, you know, hair, texture, and other things like this that we associate with race, those are all biologically determined. The social construct element comes in that we decide that people that share skin color uh, belong to some race. That's the social construction element that we didn't decide, for example, like, like if humans were all blind mole people or something, then there would be no social construction about the way you look because we'd all be blind. And maybe we would have, you know, different types of people would be, we have different classifications for people, you know, based on whether they have deep voices, whether they have high pitch voices, you know, their timber, the tonality, their voice, everything would be based around sound. That's the social construction element. We, you know, it's a social construction that we don't say all, br you know, brown eyed people belong to some specific race and all blue eyed people belong to a different specific race. Mm -hmm. So 
So yeah, the social construction element of race is that we take biologically determined traits and then make a decision to categorize uh, groups of people based on biological traits, okay? When it comes to gender, Avash and other people's arguments are that specific gendered behaviors and gendered preferences are not based in biology, are constructed entirely by a culture or by a society. So that's a completely different argument than the race argument, 100%. Because no one is saying that like black skin was socially constructed or created by a culture. Right. Does that make sense? Does the distinction of why these are terrible comparisons make sense? Yeah, and I, I can't stand the comparison. Yes. Yeah. And it, it does seem very cynical in my well, estimation. There's a some carryover too where I do think the the comparison that he's making, I do think there are nefarious actors on the on the race side that I don't feel there are nefarious actors on the gender side. I f- mm-hmm. I feel like the people who are who are interested in this gender stuff have the best of intentions and the the other argument that this gets lumped into is that you know because some of the people making these arguments in the racial category are in fact racist and you and you know that they want to say anyone and i don't think anyone studying this stuff is in fact a racist like i don't think charles murray is a racist i think he's been tarred and feathered as a racist but i don't i don't believe that's true the but there are actually uh, people who are racist that are using this stuff i don't feel when they they say the exact same thing about anybody t- making these arguments on the gender side they say that they're transphobic and i mm-hmm. just i don't feel like they're I don't feel like it's the same component. I don't feel like there's a lot of people who hate trans people and are making these arguments. I don't feel like anyone making these arguments really hates trans people. I feel like no. the people that I, there are definitely people that hate trans people, but I don't, I don't feel like they're making these arguments. I mean, they're just basically right. saying, you know, transitioning is impossible. It can't happen but they're not making these arguments about, we need to study what's actually going on here. The kind of thing right. that Deborah So is doing. And, you know, another issue with, with using this race uh, gender comparison is that, you know, the rules that Vosh and other leftists are subscribing to mm-hmm. are entirely based on political power. So, like, because if, if they're saying that race and gender are the same in that they're both social constructs, then why can't black people identify as white people and white people identify as Yeah, that, that never flies. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it never flies because their argument is basically, well, we're in favor of people being able to identify as whatever gender they want because we believe it helps our political process. We believe it helps us gain political power. But with when it comes to race, it would be the opposite. Yeah, we're losing because they want power. to right because they want to utilize political power based around you know race. This is the whole conception of CRT. We need to be race consciousness. We need to have black people unify together and you know get political power based on their race so mm-hmm. it's it's very there's no consistency whatsoever beyond just that we have to do things for the sake of power correct exclusively by sex but of course there are other cultures where that's simply not the case there have been cultures where there are third genders or you know, broader paradigms. India has a legally recognized their gender with more than a billion people in that country. This is, these arguments are so much sophistry. <laughs> like it just yes. drives me yes. insane. The levels of sophistry with all of these arguments and they just use them over and over and over again. I don't, do you think Bosch could actually articulate the difference between the, the, race and gender arguments that we just laid out i don't think he can <laughs> i mean he he understand no, I, he understands it uh-huh. you know if 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 i told this to him he would understand what i'm saying now he wouldn't admit to it in a conversation right because he would never admit to being wrong and he would have to double down and try to weasel his way out of it mm-hmm. um but 
going, you know, when people talk about these, you know, historic third gender, it's so stupid because I th- like, I remember looking into this almost every, if not every single one, but basically every single third gender is just an effeminate male. <laughs> Mm-hmm. it's like okay so you basically it's just like oh we have you know uh gay effeminate men we're gonna classify as a third gender and it's like well that doesn't seem to be a particularly useful social construction in my estimation to say that gay men are just this like third gender i don't know i don't know about you but i think that's uh creates more harm it's a than, little uh, homophobic to be honest with yeah, you. yes yeah it's a little bad <laughs> it, it's it's it, it's so dumb because it's like, I'm sure you've heard the the exception proves the rule. Yes. And what that means, because I don't think people really understand what that means. What that means is that if you have 100 cultures and 95 of them do something in this one specific way, like have ma- just male, female genders, and that's it. And then five of the 100 cultures have third genders. Okay. And then someone like Vosh will point to that and say, look, it has to be a social construction because there are these five out of these hundred cultures that have a third gender. It's like, no, 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 no. That's the exception that proves the rule. The fact that 95% of the fucking cultures all subscribe to the same gender norms or have the same gender binary proves that it's not just culture, proves that it's based in biology. Because if it was just culture, if it was just arbitrary, as they like to say, then you would have like a 50 50 split or you'd have you know 80 percent of cultures would have all sorts of genders yeah it would the fact be that much so more few, diverse right the fact that there is such little diversity in certain categories and the fact that so few cultures do have these extra genders prove that there has to be some sort of unique circumstance in the culture that creates you know that third gender or creates i guess the conception of the third gender i mean it's even crazier when you're talking about biological sex too because it goes through the entire animal kingdom as well so yes. it's more than just right. human beings and the the amount think of the amount what you're saying is a perfect argument because think about the amount of biological diversity there is in the animal kingdom like it's all over the place like the, the structures and and ways of living of animals is just all over the map there's not any uh, particular mm-hmm. pattern to it but as soon as you get into how the animals reproduce, there's a fucking pattern. And it repeats itself over and over and over again. So, you know, animals can be so diverse, you know, tiny, huge, you know, on land, in water, all these different, uh, all these different areas of life. But when it comes to sex and gender, then everything starts to look the same, it starts to mimic a, a very you know, pattern that we've seen a lot. So it's kind of crazy that they think just these few uh, various diversities uh, make their argument. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I'd say their perspective is worth something. Um, It's not to say it's not informed by biology, only that it's not solely determined by it. There is a social construction there. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to talk about. (laughs) I know. Barely... (laughs) Yeah, I know, I know. But this we is have what, like this a two-hour video sitch. I know. We're gonna. It's gonna this is like <laughs> a, only, it's gonna be a twenty-four-hour stream. I'm only playing. I'm only playing. Yeah. Um, this is when when I heard this a couple of times, and I realized that the way we conceptualize and talk about gender, I think, is completely wrong. Mm-hmm. Because I was trying to think, like, okay, so like a gendered behavior is like let's use an example: risk taking. Mm-hmm. Okay, men are thought to be more uh have a proclivity to risk taking a riskier behavior than women are on average obviously Mm -hmm. okay right Mm -hmm. yeah very much so and so that is rooted in biology because you see this across the animal kingdom yes almost every single uh male animal the male animal is going to engage in riskier behavior. And it makes complete sense evolutionarily because, you know, if the male has to fight off other males, they have to risk injury in death fighting for reproductive rights. That's riskier behavior. If the male has to go out and expend the energy to go find a female who then has to judge him, right? 
like oh you know the the male it's you know terrible. has to put on some sort of yeah mating dance or build the nest or you know the male has to like expend all this energy in order to attract a mate okay these are risky behaviors you're you're expending energy you're expending your life force to try to attract a mate these are riskier behaviors than generally what uh the female of the species engages in and so it makes complete sense evolutionarily that the males of most animal species are going to be predisposed to be involved in riskier behaviors. And obviously we see this with humans too. You know, it's, it's a reason that all the jackass guys are guys. And not girls. <laughs> yeah. What's going on there. Okay. You know, generally when you see, when you see teenagers doing stupid, dangerous shit in, uh, in YouTube videos and TikTok videos, uh -huh. it's almost, and if it involves physical harm, it's almost, almost always guys who are willing to do some dumb shit that could get, you know, break their necks, that could, you know, kill them doing some risky physical activity. We all see this and we all know this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where the problem is. Even so, that's biological. Being, you know, a proclivity towards riskier behaviors, biological, uh, associated with males. Okay. That doesn't mean that every person who's male necessarily is going to have a, predispos a predisposition towards riskier behaviors, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's it's not 100%. All people are not born the same. There are variations. There are differences. However, since on average, males are more likely to engage in riskier, especially riskier physical behavior than women, that creates so sort of a cultural attitude about what it means to be male you know you have a bunch of teenagers in a group and you know they all want to skateboard down you know a dangerous rocky path and maybe you know most of the people in the group have this proclivity towards riskier behavior but there's a couple people in the group that don't mm -hmm. however they now feel a social Soy cuck bitch right because the people in the group will make fun of them if they don't do it. They go, oh, you're soy, you're cuck, you know, whatever. They feel social pressure to also engage Xander in risky Hall. behavior. They, <laughs> you know, they feel social pressure to engage in the behavior. So even the people, even the, the boys that maybe don't have the biology, maybe will engage in the behavior because of the social cultural pressure. Okay. Oh, this is great. You, right. You've definitely done some thinking on this. So, but here's the problem. And here's why saying that gender is not, is like, you know, quote unquote social and not biological. Because when we talk about, you know, so like, especially when we talk about like gendered behaviors that are, that are part of culture. Okay. I couldn't really think of one that didn't have some root in biology. Mm -hmm. Because like with the risk taking example, sure, some kid might not some male might not have that biology and they might be doing it purely for social or cultural reasons however the reason that risk taking is embedded in our social consciousness as a male behavior in the first place is for biological reasons yes and uh, tri tribalistically is what's the tribalistic aspect of it is definitely what's creating these social constructs and also what we're trying i mean that's what we're trying to break down we're trying to stop that behavior. Right. Well, so, well, so, but it seems like it does, it seems like gendered behaviors mm -hmm. and maybe someone in the chat can think of one. I can't really think of a, of a gender behavior that isn't had, that doesn't have some sort of biological basis. Mm -hmm. Now clothing, first of all, clothing and makeup. I don't, that's like a preference. That's not really a behavior, right? Like, you know, blue being associated with boys and pink with girls, which, first of all, I'm not even I'm not certain that that's not some biological thing going on there, because girls do like since, as you talk about, girls have different color vision than boys. So it would make sense that girls are attracted to different colors than boys are on average. Right. But but when you talk about like behaviors, things, you know, people do, you know, if, if we if we remove fashion from the because I don't really I don't really consider that a behavior. If we remove fashion from the equation, I can't really think of a gendered behavior that someone does that's not rooted in biology. And it seems more like what's actually being discussed here that people want to deconstruct on the left or what they should be seeking to deconstruct 
is not gender behavior, but gender prescriptions is to say, okay, if a male doesn't want to engage in riskier, you know, risk-taking behavior, you shouldn't criticize them for it. Okay. We can acknowledge that men or women will have like, you know, an average more inclined, you know, a stronger inclination towards certain behaviors. Men are more inclined to things and not people, you know, women are more inclined to people, not things. But if someone falls outside that, that norm, you shouldn't criticize them for it. That seems to be what's really being discussed here. It's not that there are gender behaviors that are not rooted in biology, but just that there shouldn't be necessarily gender prescriptions. We were getting away from that in a big way, right. but now the trans, the gender ideology has come in with this idea that if you display any behavior outside of the gender norms, then you're trapped in the wrong body and that you will have a more fulfilling life if you transition. That's just like their central premise, mm -hmm. which I, I mean, I don't buy. I don't buy that premise. I, I know right. you don't buy that premise either. So the only thing that I've seen that people in the chat said besides fashion is certain etiquette is gendered. And that's true. And, and we could, we would say, and here's the problem with even that though certain etiquette that is gendered, like men are supposed to do certain things and women are supposed to do certain things. It still fits within sort of a biological idea mm -hmm. of how men and women are supposed to act. Like men are still supposed to be, you know, perceived as, is like stronger protective, you know, role. And women are still supposed to be perceived as like more, um, you know, family oriented, maybe more diminutive, which would be a negative association. More but more, you know, like. less aggressive, maybe less aggressive would be a better word than diminutive um, to use. But all these things, all these, like, like the social, the completely social construct of like a woman curtsying or something, right? And, and all these sort of, and all these sort of social constructions around like gender behaviors, they all still stem from, they also rooted from a biological idea about men and women's behavior. So and I, I, don't agree, think, I agree with you. Well, I was saying, I don't think when we're having these conversations about like biology versus gender or biology versus culture, no one, I mean, no one's arguing that like curtsying is a biological <laughs> process. Right. Right. It's always like, oh, what kind of jobs are, are men and women going to get into? You know, how do men and women generally act on average? These are the types of things that are being talked about. But you're so are you in favor of separating, ma making the distinction between sex and gender and making gender behavior and sex bodily physicality? No. I think, I don't know. I, I think that there might not really be a strong difference between sex and gender really at all. And I think the conversation should be not about whether behaviors are biological or social. The conversation should just really be, should certain quote unquote gendered behaviors be prescriptive? Should society be pushing men to be aggressive and women to be not aggressive? Or should society be allowing people to choose kind of how they, you know, how much of the quote gender stereotype or the gender norm that they uh, engage in? And if they don't engage in that, then that's fine too. How are we supposed to shame people out of toxic masculine and toxic feminine behavior? Well, you can still have that. Th that, that term would still be fine. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as we talked about, you know, there's a difference between the wolf and the sheepdog, right? Is sort of like the, like kind of the way in which that energies are focused. Like it's both aggression. It's just that there's, there's aggression that's protective and in, that is socially positive. And then there's aggression that is exploitative and socially negative. You know, it's like you want to turn your criminals into firefighters and policemen. Right? Right. Yes. So that's what, you know, that's what toxic masculinity is. And toxic femininity would be something like, you know, Amber Turd 
<laughs> would be something like, you know, positive femininity <laughs> is, you know, being, uh, you know, uh, caring and strong and nurturing and, and helping people in, in that kind of, in, you know, in a lot of emotional ways and toxic femininity would be to be manipulative and destructive and to tear people down on, you know, emotional levels. Reputation you know, destruction is Reputation usually destruction, right. The toxic right. femininity that nobody talks about. Sure. Gaslighting is a good example. Vosh displays a lot of toxic femininity. I don't know if you know this. He Va he <laughs> yes. Well, Vosh does engage in reputation destruction. His whole channel is devoted to reputation destruction. So, Well, you know, maybe Vosh really is non-binary because he engages in a lot of toxic femininity and a toxic masculinity. So, A lot of misogyny. <laughs> a lot of misogyny, yes. But very funny you in that i don't think gender is entirely biological but i would say biology plays a larger role than social con or the socially constructed aspect of it and i think those of us who argue in favor of biological explanation sometimes people will take that to mean that we don't think society plays any role at all and I, in my case i definitely say that's not true my perspective in saying that biology plays a role is it does go back to i I don't know. I can't think of a single person I've ever heard that says that there's no social aspect to anything related to gender at all either. Like I can't, I've never heard anyone make that argument. That it's, there's no social component. It's obvious. There yeah, is obvious there's a hundred percent no social component. But you completely articulated the social component very aptly. <laughs> the, the idea that it is people shaming you in childhood for not displaying those behaviors. I feel like we we are getting away from that. And maybe this we all are, of this we gender were. stuff is right. kind of a rebellion against that stuff where people are just get fed up with being shamed in these kinds of ways. But the whole idea well, that the the people that would get shamed for going outside of a gender binary are then immediately put into this program where they're transitioning is the ultimate like crazy bad situation all right but that's that's the that's the ultimate irony here is it's like you know it used to be oh you know don't shame people if they don't fit into a gender norm right and now it's oh if you don't fit into a gender norm you're literally not the gender you're this other thing you're a completely right. different category <laughs> Right. Yeah. And then like, it, it's funny because it, using the race example that Vosh has been using, imagine how this plays into race. If we started associating, which people do, but if you start saying that, like, and this is kind of, I guess what people, you know, a lot of leftists say, they say, oh, unless you have the right politics, unless right. you have the right behavior, you're not really black. Right. Okay. You're something else. Black you know, you're Uncle Tom. hate this. Right. You're, a, you know, an, an Oreo or something. Right. right. It's the same. It's 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 actually it's interesting. It's the same thing. Calling a black guy an Uncle Tom or an Oreo is kind of the same concept as saying, Oh, because I don't fit some stereotype of being a man or a woman, I am a third gender or something, you know, else entirely. <laughs> it's so evil. it is the same concept. It's throwing them out of the tribe, basically. Right. And it's just it's interesting to me how with the gender stuff it's viewed as empowering and with the race stuff it's obviously viewed very negative <laughs> see that's the social construct they, it's just it how people feel happens, about it and so it yeah. still happens and i i mean i watch a lot of black conservative commentaries that uh gothics does really good videos there's another guy i can't remember his name that does really good videos and they always complain about this because it's got to be so constricting it's like you're all everyone that shares the same race as you is is bullying you to be in a certain ideology, yeah, a certain political yeah. ideology. Ah, oh, that's so painful, right? But and yeah, and I would say just as I think that's inherently toxic and negative, it's inherently toxic and negative to do the same thing with gender. Yeah, it is. As well, opposed to just expect, as opposed to just accepting that there are going to be variations of behavior among men and women and that that's fine you know 
not everyone needs to fit in a strict gender stereotype and like very few people, you know, it's, it's a minority of people that do fit in a strict gender stereotype. This is so insidious though, because there was a time when the bullying, and I could see a lot of these trans people just experiencing this kind of bullying, the same thing, you know, you go to the skate park and you're not as, as apt to drop in as everybody else. So you get a little bullying and the next thing you know, you're transgender because, you know, your community is, has distanced themselves from you. So, and there's this community that's waiting with open arms. Oh yeah. The problem is you were just born in the wrong body. Maybe, the, yeah. maybe the problem is it's okay if you don't fit a perfect gender stereotype. Well, that's what I'm worried about is I think there are people, and this is, it's interesting because that's what kind of motivates people like J.K. Rowling is that yes. she said when she grew up, she didn't fit into this uh, classical female gender stereotype and she felt out of place. And she's worried that if she grew up in today's world, she would have thought that that meant that she was male. And I do think this is happening to a lot of people because especially to a lot of teens. I mean, if you guys remember what it was like to be you know, that age, you're starting to go through puberty. And it's like, there is an overwhelming desire for most people to just fit in to their group, to fit into the crowd. And yes. it seems to be very logical and very easy to understand that if someone feels like they don't fit into their group or their crowd uh, very neatly, then, oh, well, maybe I must be part of some different group or some different crowd. That's it. That's the thing. I'm not different. It's just that I haven't found the right crowd to fit into yet. And it's, it's just, it's a very attractive idea to teens. And I think it's a very dangerous idea uh, for lots of kids who are going to end up regretting, you know, transitioning. Well, this community also has the added advantage of those people who shamed you at the skate park. Now you have a tool to shame them back again. Right. Because right. they were shaming you for a disability that's beyond your control. And now all of a sudden you've got weapons at your disposal to turn turn the situation around on them this is so insidious that's a no I, I didn't think that's a great point i never thought about that but yeah like you know you could ha there could be situations where you know people who were made fun of for not being manly or girly mm -hmm. you know then now they get to attack those people and say oh well you're a bigot you know right yes so. yeah, you get to uh pull the bigotry card on them right Interesting. Can we just pull the bigotry card on them without doing the transitioning <laughs> thing? It seems like it seems like is the is the i does the ideology force you to transition to be able to use the bigotry card? I guess it does. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. what do you what do you call them if they're just shaming you and you're I mean, this is what we're advocating for. We're advocating getting rid of strict gender norms they're right they, they're the transgender side is advocating for getting rid of strict gender norms in just a, a way bizarre way because they're really not i mean they're they're arguing for enforcing them and getting rid of them mm -hmm. to the prenatal environment actually let me start by saying i do agree with you that sex and gender are different things. I don't think they're necessarily the same. I do think they're linked for most people, but they're not necessarily the same. So obviously if, with transgender people, their sex and their gender are not the same, but for the vast majority of us, over 99% of us, that is the case. So I wanna clarify that. But in terms of the biological- I would have liked for her to define how, what she means when she says gender. I don't think she does in this conversation. No, when we're on, we'll get her to- there you go. Aspect. Uh, in terms of what someone, what, what is considered masculine or feminine in society may be socially constructed or socially imposed, but whether someone gravitates to what's considered masculine or feminine is dictated by biology in terms of the prenatal environment. And it's See, she's, just, she's leaving out entirely the side of the equation that you were, you brought up. 
gravitating towards something is completely different than being pressured into something. And there is a lot of social pressure. You can't deny it. Right. But what she, what she's saying, which I think is completely correct. However, she's saying it in a very dry scientific way right. that I don't think most people would understand that you really right. have to hammer home, which is that yes, specific behaviors that are decreed by society to be masculine, like, you know, wearing, you know, specific types of clothing, um, you know, engaging specific, specific types of activities, like that could be socially constructed. However, people like the underlying thing behind the activity might not be like skateboarding is a perfect example. You know, I don't know if it would have been manly 3000 years ago for, you know, Roman soldiers to be skateboarding down hills, right? Oh my God. They might be like, Hell what the no. fuck are you, like, like, this is like, what are you doing? You're playing with a child's toy. Here, You're playing let with me show you how toy. to use a sword. Right, ex yeah, exactly. You're playing with a child's toy, exactly. But as I talked about, you know, obviously in today's world where picking up a sword and, you know, killing the, you know, the goths or whatever, you know, it's not exactly a socially acceptable thing to do. And so, you know, the the underlying risk take your behavior and the physical aspect of skateboarding ends up becoming like sublimating, you know, sort of the behavior. Or I guess maybe a better example would be something like, you know, football and a lot of team sports are obviously supplementing for, you know, warfare and a lot of other behavior. And maybe back in, you know, times of tribal warfare, these sorts of sports would not be considered so, ma you know, masculine. But nowadays, since we don't have the tribal warfare, they are. Right. In terms of testosterone exposure, right? I do definitely you, think there's a truth to that. Agree with that? Okay. Uh, certainly. Though what is masculine and feminine, of course, can vary massively culture to culture. You know, like in Imperial China, there was a practice of women binding their feet to make them all small. And, you know, I can understand from a biological perspective. See, but this is the problem that I wish she would have brought up in this conversation is that, like, yes, feet binding. Okay. That's obviously there's no biological thing wired with humans that says that oh you know we need to bind women's feet obviously however i would argue that the underlying thought process behind feet binding is rooted in some sort of biological gender norm in you know trying to keep women you know uh dimin diminutive or less aggressive or dainty or make women more reliant on men for example physically more reliant on men. These all seem to have some sort of physical underlying or some biological underlying idea behind them, even though I think, you know, feet biting is obviously disgusting and horrible. And like the way to actually, for Vosh to make this argument, if it was a real argument, I think it's a bullshit argument, but if it was a real argument would be, are there cultures that aren't exceptions? If Are there average cultures where the gender norms are completely reversed? Where are the cultures where the men are binding their feet or intentionally weakening their body to make it easier for, you know, women to take care of them or to make themselves, you know, uh, physically weaker so that they're, you know, crappier at being warriors or hunters or whatever. We don't see that happening anywhere. How a fetishization of petiteness in women could be a kind of a recurring theme throughout different cultures. But suffice to say, I don't think that's a recurring trend we see nowadays, say, for example, in, you know, modern LA, you know, the practice of feet binding, no. making people look more <laughs> feminine. I hope not. It was pretty unhealthy back then. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, and maybe it is, you know, God knows these days. But uh, so, you know, maybe there are the hormone washes that you undergo um, in vitreo, I, I think affect significantly what your preferences in life are going to. I wonder how Vosh feels about breast implants, because I mean, we have our own cultural aspects that are <laughs> equally strange right i mean mm -hmm. how is feet binding any different what weren't they totally sexually attracted to tiny feet and that's why they did the feet binding thing yeah but well i don't think that's a good comparison <laughs> between uh breast implants and feet binding yeah well well for two reasons i think there is a i mean obviously we would i think most people think that there is some biological 
uh, propensity towards boobs because you know everyone breastfeeds is like a baby right right but there have been cultures that have not been so into busty ladies so no i understand that but it does seem to have like you know uh big boobs big hips like these are things that are seen as like signs of fertility maybe tiny and feet or yeah but that's she that... can't run away <laughs> but that <laughs> may be you could be right but i'm saying that's that seems to be far more uh, restrictive to a certain culture as opposed to sort of you know boobs which seems to have a much broader realm of you know cultural uh, interest across uh, the time of his human history yeah i don't know it would be interesting to go see the feet binding people were they into boobs <laughs> who knows but and no also idea. another reason why i think it's a bad comparison is because like you know obviously if you get you know breast implants can harm women if they're you know if they have you know medical problems with it or whatever but like the feet binding is actually just it always harms the woman like if you're actually making their them weaker and you're fucking up their body the way that breast implants don't right what you don't know that back problems <laughs> all kinds of stuff okay, okay. yeah such as like don't tell me about that stuff I mean, it's volunteer, right? I mean, I don't know that the feet binding thing was volunteer. Uh, volu- no, because they, they have to. You have to do it when they're. Uh, you have to start doing it when they're a child, I think. Right. So it's obviously not voluntary. Nobody. I didn't sign anything when I got my circumcision. So. Well, you know, actually, did you sign anything? I didn't sign anything when I got my circumcision. No. Um, you know, the feet binding thing you could actually compare to a lot of the transgender uh, transitioning stuff. Because you'd say, well, if a, oh, they if do a child wear binders, they wear breast binders. No, but you could say, like, if a child can't consent to, you know, binding their feet, you know, why can they consent to oh, some of the transition, you yeah, know, that hormones is and stuff? That is interesting. We might have found something. Might have touched on it to be on later but a lot of that feeds into a sort of cultural preconception of what it means to be a woman or a man you know uh both in a social and in a biological sense and i think that people feed into that it turns into a kind of feedback loop where you know you go back a thousand years and people were doing wild stuff to um demonstrate their masculinity or their femininity you know like they wanted to it felt like it was like a a, a drive but nowadays we've no such desire and i think it's it's we we construct the categories that we're sort of driven to 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 walk within to an extent um and and that's in sense i think it recurs a little bit so do you when you say that do you mean maybe so i don't know if you caught that he used so many weasel words there because he actually just completely contradicted himself because he said, he admitted that a lot of these gender preferences and gender behaviors do have some biological basis, but then maybe the way in which they materialize, that could be the social construction, like the feet binding. And then he, he even said what I said, that it creates a feedback loop, okay, for people wanting to show how masculine or feminine they are. Really? Okay? So he understands the concept, but then he completely contradicts himself by going back to well, therefore, that means everything's a social construct or that these categories are social constructors. Like, that's not what it means. You just admitted that you understand that these things are rooted in biology. And just because the certain behaviors and the way they manifest, that could be the cultural construction. That doesn't mean that gender itself is a social construction or even that someone can just change their gender on a dime. Right. Yeah, I this is Vosh is a complete social constructionist. He thinks everything is a social construct. Every well, emotion so weird, that you have is implanted in you by some ruling elite. But that's what's so weird because we've heard videos where he makes that exact argument that everything is a social construct. You know, he makes sort of the Marxian, you know, false consciousness. The elites are implanting ideas in your head. And I'll go back because he just contradicts that entire idea right here wanted to it felt like a, it was like a, a, a drive but nowadays we've no such desire and i think it's it's we we construct the categories that we're sort of driven to to, to walk within to an extent 
um, and, and that's in a sense, I think it recurs a little bit. Right, I know right over. Feed into that. It turns into a kind of feedback, cultural preconception of what it means to be a woman or a man, you know, uh, both in a social and in a biological sense. And I think that people feed into that. It turns this is also just a bunch of people getting together and measuring their personal preferences and intuitions. And then creating an outcast of the person that doesn't have the same intuitions as everybody else. Right. Like that's the right. situation. How come we're all dropping in at the skate park and you're not is basically what's going on. Why are you right. different right. than us? It's into a kind of feedback loop where, you know, you go back a thousand years and people were doing wild stuff to um, demonstrate. And this is just complete assertion here on Vosh's part. I can't stand it. A thousand years ago, when I was in Athens, it's like fuck <laughs> you, dude. Well, fuck. it's this is an interesting debate technique that I didn't notice until watching it just here, which and I don't think his audience real, realize it, which is that he's essentially agreeing with everything uh, Deborah So is saying, but then his conclusion he'll he'll conclude it by still saying whatever he's saying, even though his conclusion doesn't fit what he just ex explained. Right. So it's like, from her perspective, it's like, well, how do you argue against that? Cause he's like, well, you just agreed with me, but then you just came to a completely different conclusion based on nothing. Right. Yeah. Optically. It's great though. Right. Got to admit the optics here are definitely on Vosh's side. Well, I think the problem is, and I've noticed this from a lot of the way that some people react to our conversations is that, there's like a percentage of the audience who you can explain something. You can take five minutes explaining something. Now, this isn't for anyone listening. Okay. Right. Everyone None that's you, listening obviously. live is a, a big brain genius who understands everything I'm saying. Okay. Right. But it's only for there's someone in the comments. We occasionally there's some dirty, dirty, you know, uh, uh, watch backer who, who doesn't understand. <laughs> but no, I've noticed that sometimes in, in these conversations with our, you know, in, in our streams and in a lot of other streams, someone could take five minutes to explain something and the audience will, will miss or not understand or not track like the, like the explanation because people are, you know, half listening, they're playing video games, you know, they're doing whatever they're doing while they're listening to the stream, but then they'll just hear the conclusion and they'll say, okay, that person agrees with me. And it kind of feels like Vosh is banking off that. He'll give an explanation where he explains how he basically agrees with everything Deborah So is saying, but then his conclusion will be will be different, and his audience won't realize that he's just completely contradicted his entire position on this right. stuff. Right, they're not following the argument. Right, and he's not explaining the argument. Obviously, they're masculine. The argument's the most fun part. Since I don't understand. <laughs> or their femininity you know like they wanted to it felt like a, it was like a, a, a drive but nowadays we've no such desire and i think it's it's we we construct the categories that we're sort of driven to to, to walk within to an extent um and, and that's in a sense i think it recurs a little bit <laughs> it's such that's the bullshit face right there did they buy it that's the did they buy it face don't you think that was just a load of bullshit I just spilled yes. out. Yes. It's so much more fun when you know a topic inside and out. I love when we debate people on the critical race theory stuff because you're just on it. You've got all your little quotes from all the sources. Oh, it's so good. It's so good when you know the topic way more than yes. you do. Yes. And they're just forced into bullshit mode. This well, Deborah So knows this topic inside and out. Vosh is not even really engaging on the topic. Right. And I'm glad you brought that up because I think the way to counter what Vosh is doing and would have been for Deborah to do, but she's not like a debater or anything. And I think she's just asking. She called this video debating Vosh on gender and ideology. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. She did. She, she did. typed that screen. in. Right. But she, I'm not saying that she herself, to my knowledge, she doesn't have some experience debating people. Um, and she, she's just kind of asked him for most of the conversation, these kind of broad questions. I think the way to counter what he's doing, if you realize that he's doing it, is that she would have to ask him very specific questions like, well, wait a minute. It sounds like you agree with me. You know, right. what is a, Point it out. So, right. So but then you have to figure out like, OK, where's the where's the difference or if there is a difference and be like, OK, well, do you think 
that the fact that men engage in riskier behavior is biological? Do you think the fact that men are more aggressive is biological? Do you think that there are more men in certain fields like, you know, programming or biological? Like you need to actually get into very specific avenues. You know, you have to make Vosh take a position on specific issues and not kind of hide in generality. That's exactly what I did when I debated him. I, right. I was like, this is the perfect opportunity <laughs> to ask questions like that. Right. But no, yeah, it would be much better if she she dug in on those things. You know, I think that Vosh would say that the even all of those things are complete social constructs. Just when I, I asked don't know. him that I, one I think question. he would try to like do this middle ground thing he's doing with her where he's trying to say, oh, some of it's biology, some of it's not, you know, who can I don't say think so. it's feedback. Maybe. Blah, he, blah, blah. He'd try to bullshit his way out of it, is what you're saying? Yeah, essentially. So do well, you, when you say that, do you mean? It It feels like, because I watched She's asking his, a question right now. Maybe we spoke right. too soon. Right, but I don't think she she does ask the question I'm talking about. But it feels like when he watched her on Joe Rogan and he did his video by himself, he took very strong positions. And then it feels like now that he's talking to her, he's sort of walking, like he's researched the topic more and he knows that he can't get away since she's literally like a, you know, oh, a that's... sex researcher. He can't get away with making sort of the hyperbolic statements he made you know, when he was just in his own, you know, talking to his chat, basically. He does so ask now her if she's a doctor, and she's like, yes, I am a doctor. <laughs> right, right. Which is pretty badass. I mean, maybe society pushes people to to veer off to wonder in one direction or the other. Yeah, I think so. What a masculine man is today, I mean, I don't know, think Vin Diesel, I think many kinds of masculine men, but just think Vin Diesel, right? You know, mm. Vin Diesel was an archetype, wasn't around in ancient Greece, but men. <laughs> Why is that funny? He said Vin Diesel as an archetype didn't exist in ancient Greece. That's a bafflingly stupid statement. First of all, Obviously, Vin Diesel specifically didn't exist as an archetype because of this thing called the linear progression of time. Okay. But broadly, the archetype of Vin Diesel, like the buff, you know, stereotypically masculine and male who does all the action stuff, was of course an archetype that existed in ancient Greece. It's an archetype that's existed in every culture forever. Right. What the fuck is he talking about? Well, you know who know Vin what Diesel means, was but... in ancient Greece? A guy named fucking Hercules. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the most masculine of masculine men who they went around punching hydras. They didn't get Vin Diesel to play Hercules. They got Brad Pitt. But you know, same thing, basically. No, no. Brad Pitt was Achilles. Oh, he was. You're right. Right. Achilles is another perfect example. Achilles, you know, very was the same archetype. You know, the undefeatable masculine, you know, warrior guy. Yeah. Like. That's such a bafflingly weird statement for him to say that that the archetype of Vin Diesel didn't exist. Of course it existed. Of course it existed. I Warfare. can't. I, I couldn't. I was trying to when I heard this, I was trying to think, was there an archetype today that's associated with a gender that didn't exist historically back then? And I couldn't think of one. I couldn't think of one. Yeah, all the Greek myths are based on different attributes wisdom beauty narcissism <laughs> there's all these different right human attributes that there was no, a like, god devoted to the, like the stereotypical like masculine male that's one of the like foundational archetypes of human history zeus and i was thinking like okay like today like it, like here's a, here's a something you say maybe didn't exist in ancient greeks someone like david bowie Okay. You have sort of like the effeminate um but male singer who lots of women, especially young women, are attracted to. Right? right. And we see this kind of a lot, especially a lot more in our society. And then I thought, wait a minute, that archetype did exist in ancient Greece. <laughs> and I thought, like, there's the the whole story about Orpheus, who is Orpheus is this uh famous, he was this famous uh lute player whose music was so amazing and so enchanting 
and all the women loved him. And he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, Hercules, he wasn't going around punching monsters. He was sort of like this effeminate, literally an effeminate musician, but still male that appealed to women seemed to exist even back then. <laughs> so I couldn't, there... I couldn't literally think of some of these archetypes that are new today that don't, that don't have some root, you know, in our history. Everything's brand new. We've just come up with these such. Okay. And testosterone was, you know, I think that today there are men with a strong biological predisposition towards achieving something. And when they want that something, they look at media and they say, oh, well, Vin Diesel's a guy I can look at. You know, that's an archetype worth pursuing. That option wasn't available back 2,500 years ago. So maybe there are different. They didn't have mentorships 2,500 years ago. So did you know that? You couldn't look at other people <laughs> achieving success. That was uh, not a thing. Did right. you get that? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Being able to look through a screen, maybe you couldn't do it, but there right. was this thing called reality. You could look at them. Mm -hmm. Avenues, mm -hmm. you know, they would look at the le the legends of Achilles. I don't, you know, I'm not a I'm not a a, a, a great scholar of the classics, but it, yeah, yeah, I, Achilles is the same archetype as Vin Diesel. What like what the fuck are you talking about? I don't understand. I think to an extent, you know, um, and maybe the masculinity, the underlying testosterone, the hormone washes, they drive both of those things. But um, obviously, we play a huge hand in determining where that road goes. He just said nothing. Did you, did you, did you catch that? We play a huge hand socially. Is he just, this is why this conversation is so weird. He, he just says, yes, the hormone washes, you know, create the aggressive behavior, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then... But then we, you know, society has a hand in where those go. And it's like, oh, okay. No, that's not, that's not what the gender activists are saying, Vosh. Okay. That's what Deborah So is saying. That's not what the gender activists are saying. Yeah, culture does shape the biological in intuitions. Yes. Of course. Right. He's saying uh, culture ru is running the show, though. He would say culture is, uh, is more than 50% of it. He would if he was talking to not a doctor who's a sex researcher. Right. Uh, Doge Whistle for $20. Thank you so much, Doge Whistle. Says, my pet just died. I'm sorry to hear that. And listening to you two lately has really helped me deal with the loss. He was a sweet and loving guy. F's in the chat for Splinter. Wow. There you go. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Splinter is a great name for a pet, too. So. Yeah, we lost our cat recently as well. And, man, I didn't, I didn't think it would affect me as much as it did. So... Mm -hmm. they animals are, they do they become your friends yeah and you're just yes. used to having them around so yeah sorry sorry for your loss so mm -hmm. get it hopefully you're getting another puppy soon so that helps uh sammy g says is there a cloud strife archetype from ancient times <laughs> actually i don't know it's good. is it i'm sure there's there probably is some emo boy uh, like it's maybe, maybe cloud is kind of a bad example. Cause cloud is sort of morphed away from what he used to be. Like, is there a squall? Is there sort of the, the emo boy? I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is, uh, that archetype in ancient. I can't think of what David I'm Bowie's head, the but. perfect example of that feminine, but still lady killer archetype. Yes. yes. That women tend to swoon for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, investigator one quim for twenty dollars says hey now guys i hope you guys had an amazing week don't know much about the video of dr deborah so but my prediction is vosh will say something crazy try to defend it and f and fall at it then pretend that he never said it at all and bonus prediction dr deborah so will be reasonable and polite so the second prediction is correct the first prediction i he just it seems like he said something crazy before the video and now he's just trying to sort of like walk back a lot of what he's saying but should we jump forward I think no. the slur thing comes right about here. Right. We can keep watching, but, um, right. I, I do think it's important that people have that ability to choose. Uh, I definitely, by, by arguing for, or talking about biological explanations for gender, I'm definitely not saying that men and women should be held to stereotypical roles. So, um, I know, I think you mentioned in your video about how I, you know, I have a PhD in neuroscience and that is a male typical discipline. And I, I'm definitely not saying I think women should be in the kitchen having babies and, you know, not being allowed to have a vocation at all. 
I just think it's important for us to be able to talk about the reasons why there are these sex differences. On average, again, that doesn't say anything about any individual person because uh, my my you know my goal with anything I do in my work as a journalist is to just try to provide people with information and let people decide what they want to do with it. But my, my concern is when I feel that information is being hidden from people because I think that can sometimes work against people in, in terms of their ability to make informed choices. So your of point course. about... In, in that video, though, he does do... He does accuse her of bad motives. And he says this about all conservatives. The only reason conservatives want to study this stuff is so that they can enforce gender stereotypes, traditional gender stereotypes. They want evidence right. to enforce uh, gender roles. I, that's not true of her. I don't know that that's true of any of the people studying it in 2022. Right. Well, he, he, he does this very dishonest thing where, and he, I think he does it in this video too. He compares her and people like her to people studying race realism, basically, right. to, to try to make race realist arguments. And you're right. I mean, I don't, first of all, I don't even know if she is conservative. I, I haven't heard her talk about politics beyond the gender stuff. So I don't even know what her politics are. And it's funny that you have people like her, people like, um, um, what, what's Brett Weinstein's wife's name? I'm blanking. Heather but, Hine. Um, yeah, she got yeah. super triggered over this stuff. They, I watched that same podcast you watched where they just tore up some sophist on Twitter talking yes. about this stuff, which I, I mean, you just have to call it out. Sophistry is not a good word because not many people know what sophistry is. It basically means bullshit artists. It means argument, right. you know, arguments that look and feel to be true, but are complete nonsense, bullshit, basically. Right. Well, the are the modern version of, of saying someone's a sophist is saying that they're using debate tactics, right? Or they're a debate bro or something. Um, no, but it's interesting that you have people like Deborah So and Heather Hine, who are women who are very into this research and understand the truth. And so they push back against the gender activist ideology crap, but they're all like, you know, pro women's rights and they're, and they themselves are not, you know, stereotypical. And they'll say this, we're not, you know, stereotypically, you know, feminine uh, women either. So like to ascribe some sort of negative uh, bad faith to them, like Vosh did in his uh, video about Deborah, we're like, oh, she just wants to, you know, make every woman, you know, sit in the kitchen barefoot, you know, cooking turkey all day. It's just, it's insane. Because these women literally are the opposite of all these things. And they're just, they're just saying what the research says, what the facts say. Right. Pardon? Oh, no, I was saying, of course. Uh, okay. Since since that video that I watched some time ago, I've, I've taken the time to read up on quite a bit more of your work to, to gain a broader understanding of your perspective. Um, what did Vosh just admit that he responds to videos without knowing what the fuck he's talking about? It sounded like that's what he said. Can you say that again, Vosh? I respond to videos without <laughs> any information on the topic or the person that I'm responding to. Is that very polite, yeah. Sitch? That doesn't seem very no, polite. No. Well, you can, and this is why that video he had was so bad was it wasn't just it wasn't just him responding to what she was saying. He was ascribing motives, you know, nefarious motives to her. Yes. Right? Calling her a liar and a transphobe. Yeah. Right. Attacking her for, for 300,000 people to watch. Yeah. Character assassination. That's called toxic femininity, Bosch. <laughs> Though, of course, you know, the Joe Rogan appearance is quite a publicity boost. So that was the first time I saw you. Right. Well, I appreciate that. Um, so your point about race, um, I'm curious to understand because I'm sure people in my audience, when they hear race is a, a social construct, they'll say what? And and so that's that was initially my um, my first reaction as well. But I'm curious to hear. So when you say I, I agree with you in terms of now, I I learned listening to this. You know, it's interesting because, you know, we you especially, but we were both sort of arguing with distributors over Twitter this week. Mm -hmm. Um you know, about the affirmative action thing. And I challenged him to show me where we, in our conversation, I said, I support affirmative action. And he gave me a time code and I listened to like 40 minutes of our conversation. And of course, nowhere in the conversation did I support affirmative action. I would have <laughs> asked you as soon as you, as soon as you said anything but, close to that, 
I would have stopped the debate and and asked you specifically. Right. Right. You were so far away from any any of that that I just you know let it run. And and not only did I not support affirmative action for it you know at all in the conversation, but I literally sent the conversation because because the conversation was about um wasn't about whether either of us supports affirmative action. Obviously, he didn't from what he was saying. But and I was just saying that affirmative action doesn't basically destroy liberalism and Western democracy, essentially, was my only argument. And I even said whether affirmative action is effective or not is not relevant to our conversation. Okay. Which obviously someone who supports affirmative action would never say that. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And and distributors understood why I was saying that. And the conversation continued from that point which is why I do think that he's acting in some bad, somewhat bad faith and trying to be like, well, I, you know, it's just stance of affirmative action was confusing. Um, but the reason I didn't bring this up is because listening back to the conversation, I realize that I was making, I'm making a lot of optical mistakes in these debate slash conversations. And that's if you let someone talk for like super long periods of time, and then you don't talk a lot, it makes it seem like they're correct or that you're deferring to them. And you have to be very explicit to the audience what's going on. For And, and this conversation is the perfect example of that because Vosh has spoken way more, even though we're only nine minutes in, Vosh has spoken way more than uh, Deborah So has spoken. And he basic, and maybe from her perspective, she's like, I asked Vosh a question about gender and he basically agrees with everything I just said. So I'm not going to address that, but I want to talk about the race stuff. Okay. But the problem is that for people listening, they might not realize that Vosh just agreed with that, with her position. So I think optically she and I, and you and anyone else that has this conversation before we move on, you can't assume that the audience understands what you understand and you need to call out and say specifically, Oh, so you agree with me. You're agreeing with me now. You have to very clearly say that. Right. And you need to also, you know, really talk more just because unfortunately, it's just unfortunate that, that talking more kind of makes people seem more correct or knowledgeable when, as we are learning with Vosh, you know, that's not necessarily the case. I don't, I don't know how to do that, though, because I don't want to be a bad host. And people right. will launch into these. 15 minute tirades that I just, I mean, the whole time I'm thinking this has to stop. I think we have to do some, we have to have some sort of time mechanism in these debates slash discussions because that's just, it's just a killer. It is a killer. They will, they'll come on and they'll talk for, for 95% of the conversation. I, I think, I think it's not like that we need like a specific time like a stopwatch. It's just, there's a sense of something when someone's going on for too long, especially in a debate. And you just have to be like the, you know, I'm being rude, but the show is worth it to be rude. And I think this is a bad, I think this is a bad stream. Cause you're just, you know, jibbing jabbering for too long. <laughs> you're on right? the ramble. Yeah. You're rambling too long. So I'm going to interject here and be like, okay, let, you know, get to your point or, you know, finish up here because you're just going on and on and repeating yourself there's got to be a way you just go in you just fucking say fuck it just go in is there a point to this can i say that is there a point to this you've been talking for eight minutes here are you gonna get to the is there were you did you mean something with all this right right all this jibber jabber this is going to go right back. Everyone's going to, everyone is clipping this out and sending it to Dave right now. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Well, just, it's just that listening to this conversation and listening back to our conversation with Dave made me realize a lot of these things. Cause I don't usually, I don't like listening to myself. Right. Cause I'm very self-conscious. You got to get over that though. Yeah. I know you do. I know you do. So but, much of it is listening back and seeing where you can improve. You right. just, you, I mean, I don't want to say this because you already got like a big head and shit, but like you, you're, you're much better at these debates than I am. So I just, I feel like I want to see more of these debates Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just because, I mean, it's kind of awesome. (laughs) It is. There is somebody I was listening. 
I think I I can't remember who I was listening to, but someone was talking about how there's no really good debaters on the left. And you are definitely coming from a more left wing perspective. It was that clip you sent me. That guy was talking to Vosh. Right. I don't know who, who yeah. His name was. yeah. You're right. And I just I'm thinking, man, you you could be so much better than Destiny. Like Destiny is still a bit in the bubble in a lot of. I areas. don't think I could be. Destiny is, is a, a very good debater. I don't think I would ever be anywhere near as good as Destiny at debating, because uh, we have very different perspectives about things. He's he he's far more willing to be Abrasive. down and dirty than right. I would ever than I would ever be. Which is just, I mean, that's an optical thing. But I do think you understand. Well, I don't think it's an optical the, thing. I think it's uh, sort of how we we have different moral perceptions of reality, essentially. Well, the I'm talking you. You generally understand the information better than anyone, right? Which that's just. Well, I try to not for every topic. But I for guess some topics. maybe I am. Maybe I'm totally off base here because Vosh doesn't understand any of these topics. He just has a surface level understanding of everything. Well, but. he 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 has an understanding of of the talking points that his side wants to push. Right. Yes. You know, so he, he has a good understanding of that. Um, he doesn't have an understanding of the information. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he, I don't even know if, I, I think he does have some understanding of the counter information. It's just that he, since he doesn't care about truth, you know, he, he later in this conversation says that as long as it doesn't violate the science, he's fine with it. But I don't think that's true. No, I think I he's totally fine. Yeah, he's cons- right. He's consequentialist, man. He doesn't care about any of that stuff. As long as it brings about, you know, under his estimation, positive consequences. That's really the, the guiding principle here. But you and I, you and I could sit down on a Saturday and go through the talking points and devise a devastating evidentiary based argument that just completely destroys all of those talking points. Yeah, but it wouldn't Pretty because then he, he would do exactly what he's doing in this conversation which is that he just changes his talking points to basically agree with you, but then come to a different conclusion based on nothing. And you're like, wait a minute, what the fuck's happening here? That is a tough, how do you fight that? That is. Well, you tough... just have to call it out. You just right. have to call it out. And then you have to dive into the specifics and say, well, right. wait a minute. But, you know, you're saying that something is culturally created. Like, well, what is, you know, give me something, give me an example of something that's culturally created. And then he'll probably launch into like color or fashion. And he said, okay, well, let's dismiss, you know, that. Let's talk about, you know, specific behaviors. The thing that bothers me about these debates, and I listen from time to time, is so there's so little substance in any of them. They're just, one side has their talking points and the other side has their talking points. And usually I don't agree with any of those talking points because I've read deeper on whatever subject is they're debating. So they're missing well, some huge component that I think, well, this changes the entire dialogue. In a lot of debates, it's hard to get to substance because substance, if you're getting to some like deep issue, the substance of some issue, not only do you have to figure out what it is, which most people don't understand the underlying substance to any uh, argument anyway, but even if you can get there, it's, it's, not, it's generally not going to be clear cut what the answer is. And the reason you hear talking points in these debates is because it's it's easier in a conversation to like rehearse your dialogue tree, to rehearse your talking points so that you have them all prepared to go so nothing throws you off balance, you know, in the conversation. Where if you're having a real conversation with someone, you might not, you know, both participants might not know where the conversation is going to go. And if you don't know where the conversation is going to go, then you could potentially leave yourself open to being wrong or to having your arguments challenged in some way you're not prepared to do. And that's why I think in a lot of these debates, people rely on safe talking points that they've rehearsed and thought about so much. Right. Yeah, I think dragging the conversation down a path no one was ready for, though, is a good technique because then you can just stick to it and you can continually say, well, I'm asking you questions here. The evasive thing is very good right, right. <laughs> that is a very good that is a very good charge so you, know, you just keep hammering those questions you say listen this contradicts what you're saying and i would like an answer mm-hmm. you know that's mm-hmm. not an answer but very interesting maybe we could go back to the topic we were talking about there's so there's so many and destiny this is where destiny is really good 
because he does he has these little quips that are very quick that just say it all right you know right. am i stuttering here i don't it seems like you don't <laughs> understand me right that's so good right that, right that is so good how we differentiate among the races to some extent that that, that classification is a little bit arbitrary but are there not some biological correlates say with medical predisposition differences that are that do that do link to biology of course uh i think a good example would be um uh, sickle cell anemia for uh mm -hmm. for west africans i believe there are definitely some dispositions uh, uh though a lot of them are more cultural than people might think for example the lactose intolerance difference between western europeans versus like um southeast asians i think can be attributed right. at least in large part to the availability of and cultural predisposition to lactose products it's so tiny by comparison though this is so insane how did she get roped into this? The di and not only that, I mean, Bosch is literally making a race essentialist argument here. He's basically saying that the races have this. The, the argument that racists want to make is that races have as much difference as there is between the sexes. There's a lot of difference between the sexes that just doesn't exist between the races. Right. I, I don't think he's intentionally making a race essentialist argument. I think by well, him comparing race and gender does that accidentally. Yes, forces um, him into that position. Right. It's weird because, again, he's like bringing up this lactose thing as if it's a counterpoint to something when it's not. It's, this is very strange. Like He keeps basically saying things that she would agree with, but framing them as if they're counters to her points. It's It's a very bizarre tactic but I, I i think it's effective which is unfortunate over the you know centuries and the gut bacteria we build up um uh, when biologists study what we call colloquially race they talk about clients you know hundreds of discrete uh genealogical spectrums that range geographically across the globe you know um and it, what we talk about when we say race you know in a broader sense really is just determined by skin color and maybe a couple of facial features that people's eyes tend to draw to because that's what we can see what we can identify but those are actually really bad markers for genetic differentiation so if you were really studying um in in depth how humans are constructed it's mostly geographic you know you take somebody from one part of the world move them to the other in a couple hundred years their children are going to be much more genetically similar to the people of that environment you know uh just as a product of a ton of factors you know related to culture and environment temperature and what have you um and it's just it's so infinitely complicated we see there you go vash is coming out as an ethnic realist he's, not he's, a realist. he's an ethnic this is all bullshit he's just bullshitting well i mean I, I don't think what he's saying is wrong i just i don't know how it's related to well that's what i mean at all right? that's what i mean it's completely yes. irrelevant your honor objection irrelevant <laughs> <laughs> it is it is comparing this to race is muddying the water and is trying to associate like a negative emotional um, weight to the conversation. Like, oh, if you think, you know, if you disagree with me, you're a race realist, basically. Would, I mean, I, I guess he wouldn't say that there's difference. The, do, does Vosh believe there's differences, substantial differences between men and women? I just, I think I if know. you asked him, you know, are there more differences between a man and a woman than a black man and a black man? You mean a black or, man? Or a white black man. man and a white man. Yeah, right. exactly. Are yeah. there, are there larger racial differences or gender differences? Or gender differences? Right. And for me, behaviorally, like, not, there's no differences. Yeah. The race, there is no race differences. There are, right. It's, uh culture it's all culture but here's the problem it, it i think it really depends on how you word the question because if if you started from blank from like beginning of the conversation and said you know you think that there is a, a big difference between men and women behaviorally he'd probably say no but after he said all he said in this conversation he has to say that there is because he's already conceded that there is all this biology behind the you know behavioral differences hmm 
see so little of it. And I feel in a way gender is kind of similar. You know, we have these social constructions, but there are many different types of men, right? You know, um, mm -hmm. I grew up in uh, right next to West Hollywood, which is a thriving gay community. <laughs> and um, <Hooray. laughs> uh, right. And, and when you're um, near total right winger there, you tell by I the know, way she said the way she said hooray about West Hollywood. <laughs> What a homophobe, right? When he said thriving gay community and that's, she said hooray, that's, that's how I knew she was a neo-reactionary. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the moment that I thought, oh yeah, this is a transphobic neo-reactionary that I have to there call out on the internet. <laughs> there you go. See what I mean by this complete mischaracterization of these people? Yeah, of course, of course gay communities you notice there's um i wouldn't call it a binary but there's definitely a strong divide between um some of the more masculine uh and some of the more feminine men uh and you know the whole dating rituals that go along with it you know i'm into men so you know it's, it, to, to a degree of you know participated in this um and it's not at all difficult to imagine. As, you know this whole Vaj saying that he's into men thing i've only noticed this after the jk rowling incident i feel like this is just a response to like getting called out uh, by the trans community he's like well you call me out i'm gay take that <laughs> like, he said okay. he even said to a certain extent he's participated which means mm -hmm. he's already prepared for the questions of well, no but to like, what extent have you participated before the gay this you know is going to be coming for him you right, know right. they are i don't know if they will but before this he would always say he was not bisexual like the other one a pansexual right. or something you know like whatever you know, and now suddenly that's changed into being gay, which is a very different connotation. So I don't know. It's just very strange to me. You know, he had, we, we know he had, we know he had a girlfriend. We know he's been a sex pest to girls specifically on Destiny's Discord. I don't remember him ever uh, being a sex pest to men. We know he was sexting with Cat Black. So I don't know. I don't know where this uh, suddenly he's just uh, saying that he's gay. I don't know. It's just, it feels very... Uh, strategic yes in my estimation this is my opinion it feels very strategic okay imagine a society in which that could have been categorized as a third gender you know you have masculine men or tops or what have you and you know they're categorized in one direction then you have the other you know more bottomy feminine men and people would have it would have been a gender trinary you know and people would have found ways to get angry about that um mm -hmm. but we you know we we construct a lot of this stuff i encourage people to be um i suppose open-minded the idea that things could have been different Got that? Gay men are third genders, according to Vosh. Yeah, that's what's so fucking crazy. It's like, why would, how is that, that like, what is the social utility? You know, he always makes this, there's a social utility to separating sex and gender. What is the social utility to saying that gay men are not men? <laughs> well, there used to be a social utility to it, but it was very regressive. Yeah, as, it was, it was to call. ostracize gay right. men. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. To the keep, place is so keep crazy. them in the closet, disparage yeah. them from interacting with the world. Right. And so your point about uh, third gender cultures like in India, the Hijra, um, in my book, The End of Gender, I talk about the Fafa Fine, which are a uh, third gender culture in Samoa. So in terms of I, I'm, I'm trying to follow how this leads to gender being socially constructed, just basically where we where we differentiate between what's a man versus someone who's in between male and female versus what's female is is that what you mean by it's it's socially like third genders lead to that conclusion to you well because you could um you could decide to draw these lines anywhere even if you were to presume that gender has to be something associated with roles um constructed by sex you know to an extent or like how people relate socially to their sex um if people relate to their sex in different ways a la you know bottoms and tops in the gay community you can make a strong argument that these are fundamentally different gender roles a strong one you know socially uh the line between gay bottoms and gay tops i think is actually a pretty strong and recurring one culturally in a lot of he's so over this sex conversation you can tell it's like, why are we having this conversation about tops and bottoms here? Why is this where the conversation is going? Mm -hmm. Places, you know, in the pre-colonial, I think, Philippines, um, there was a social role. I think it was accepted as a kind of third gender where um, more 
feminine, you know, men or, or born as males, whatever term you want to use, you know, we're sort of socially integrated into the role of women. That's actually, I think, a third gender in a good number of cultures where you have yeah. men who take on the role of. Look at that. She totally fucked up. Did you see that? What? She said, yeah. She signed off on everything he said. Oh, I see. I see. She signed off on the third gender thing right there. Mm hmm women and it's a very broad you know thing there but sort of generally speaking and we could do that and to do that to make that third um construction would not in any way um invalidate our broader understanding of gender we would just decide to cut the lines a little differently uh much as we have with race you know the biological clients the continuum has been present in human history you know for, forever it's it's our biological diversity uh, but um where we draw those lines very different in the roman days than today and that ultimately is just up to what we care I, my whole thing is i don't necessarily know when you're drawing lines for gender you're talking about behavior but like reading a book riding a bicycle i don't these aren't gendered behaviors right no yeah, there's so many behaviors that would not fall into a gendered category. You're talking about a very narrow set of behaviors. Well, but first of all, I mean, he's, he ends that with saying that these are, you know, the gendered behaviors are very different from Roman times, which I don't think that that's true. Maybe it's a little true for women in terms of that women have more freedom to do certain activities. But for men, I don't really think gender roles have changed really much at all um there could be more permissiveness basically to not fit those gender roles but that's different permissiveness to not fit a gender role is not the same as saying the gender roles were different or didn't exist but then secondly if you noticed she didn't he didn't answer her question because her question was how can you say this is a social construct and all he did was give her examples of third genders he didn't explain <laughs> What the fuck he's talking about right and I, I think part of the problem with this conversation is that when people say gender is a social construct it means different it, it it's kind of like this mont bailey thing where when like some gender activists or even vosh himself will say like gender is a social construct and sort of the you know what they mean is that categorizing men and women as men and women is arbitrary and, and things that we think of as masculine and feminine are arbitrary and not rooted in biology, and that we shouldn't be thinking of behaviors as associated with sex. That's, that's what they're going for here. Right. Um, but then they kind of do the Mont and Bailey thing where they retreat to the, the more defensible position when they have to, where they say, oh, well, you know, technically all categories are social constructs. Because humans make a decision to lump certain characteristics as a category, therefore, vis-a-vis -vis ergo ad procto ad hominem, that means that it's a social construct, which is an entirely different argument. Right. It takes the arbitrary aspect out of it. Right. Right. Which is the so, important aspect that we're that we're debating, that we're focused on, that these gender categories are not arbitrary they're rooted in biology right but even if they are but the problem with the whole the social construction mon bailey thing is you know we've talked about this before even if something's rooted in biology even if something is completely rooted in reality if they jump between the different definitions of social construct they can be technically true and you know the example i always use is like you know pluto it's a social construct what we define as of as of a planet even though the like the factors that make something a planet or not are obviously rooted in reality right and you know but we can but we make the decision to say okay well we're going to classify something a planet we're going to classify something a moon we're going to classify something as a star like that's the social con construct but then they jump back and forth between that and saying well if we make these categories therefore we should be able to deconstruct them and reorganize them in whatever way possible it's like well wait a minute no 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 because we were basing our social constructions. We were basing our categories on biological features. And you want to reorganize, reorganize, reorganize the social constructions and the categories around 
political philosophy and not biological features. And that's where we get into trouble. Right. And I'm not, I'm not familiar with how much Deborah so argues with people online <laughs> to, to not be, at all. Yeah. To be familiar with this sort of like rhetorical gaming that happens in these conversations. Right. Yeah. Obviously she's not ready for this. Well, it's just, I mean, I don't want to say like, Oh, she's not like, that's kind of like mean, I think. <laughs> I want to really? be a little nicer. Well, it's just, I, I if when we, she if asked we disagree, him, I mean, listen, no, Bosch like, completely lied about her, yes. savaged her reputation right. for his entire yes. audience. And yeah. he got invited, he got rewarded by getting invited on our podcast. Okay, there you go, Deborah. Deborah, you <laughs> fucked up. You're a you're a transphobe. So I mean, okay. <laughs> what are you what are you where where are you gonna get being nice? You're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I take it back. You're not gonna get anywhere. Back. Yeah. I take it all back. I gotta Why? be more toxically uh feminine. I I don't this is the thing about the strategy of it. I don't know. I mean, her goal is is basically to get in front of, to talk some sense into Vosh's audience. But I don't know that that's possible. <laughs> no. Well, it, Va it, Vosh, people go to Vosh because they want to believe this stuff. That's why they're mm -hmm. there. Right. I don't think talking sense to the to his audience is possible right but i do think it would be interesting if she was pointing out the fact that he seems to be contradicting all of his previous positions and contradicting the gender activist position which she she brings she talks about later but then he just says oh he lies and says no one actually thinks that no you know, these are straw men which is ridiculous nobody cares nobody in the vosh in the vosh community cares about contradictions Listen, <laughs> no, but I, that, that's not quite true because there's a reason that a lot of uh, LGBT bread tubers don't like Fosh. And a lot of it is just the way that he presents in his rhetoric. But some of it, the ones that are a little bit more aware, realize that he's making arguments that, that counter, that contradict a lot of the woke gender ideology when it suits him to make them these arguments. Okay. So, so they don't I like think him. Some care. They don't like him contradicting the the philosophy. Right. Care about what preferences we decide to uh, uh act on. Yeah, because I, I think also I think you could say that gender roles are socially constructed. I don't necessarily know that you could say gendered behavior is socially constructed. I do think it is well, what, I don't. What do you mean when you say gender role? Like, uh, just any of the gender. Like, housewife is a gendered role, right? I don't think. Again, I don't think that's socially constructed. Well, okay, okay. When you say socially constructed, you mean. What do you mean by that? I guess. There's a, <laughs> the the traditional gender roles were socially right. constructed, were they not? What when you say socially constructed, use a different word. Well, the the idea that there's you're you're only letting s certain genders certain biological sexes into certain institutions was a was a gender i mean there was a at one time you know men were doctors and women were nurses those are gender social constructed gender roles no but what okay what i'm getting at is like so like the idea of like that the woman is supposed to be the housewife okay right yes that is rooted in biology Right, but this okay. So, they, so that's why I'm asking when you say a bio, they're taking a biological attribute, right, and constructing a strict gender role, societal okay. role around okay. that biological attribute. Right. We've gotten rid of a lot of those. Like, I don't really. Is there any real socially constructed gender roles anymore? I mean, there's a lot of fucking guy nurses. No, that, no, <laughs> we we have got rid of them all. But yeah, okay, so, so I think the problem is when you say gender role, you mean prescriptive gender enforced role. Yes, yeah, which right, is but that's when you say, social. Yeah, that's right. a social construct. Like we're socially right, constructing right. an institution okay. here. It's called nursing, right. and we're putting a ladies only sign over the right. institution. That's a right. socially constructed gender role. What are they talking about when they say socially constructed gender role? 
Yeah, exactly. There, I don't. There aren't any. And right now. Vosh didn't explain to me what he's talking about, so I have no idea right. what he's talking about. Right. But I just want to say, like, when you should be very specific because if you just say gender role, that's a that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Okay. And so, if you mean specifically, uh, prescriptively, strictly enforced gender role, that's a very different thing. Well, I don't think that I, those have been kind of weeded out of society i don't think that those no are, i agree that they have non-existent so right. when, when when vosh says gender is a social construct i'm just what what is where's the social construct component well that's what that's what i i wish that she would be more specific in asking that because so far his only examples of the social construction of gender is vin diesel <laughs> well if we said <laughs> And that, I think that was it. That was the only example we gave. All, the one that the 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 gender ideologues always turn to is vacuuming. I don't know why. I mean, I like to vacuum. I, I'm assu I assume you vacuum. Oh my from god! Time what a cuck! Time. What a soy! What a woman! I well, I had no well, I had no idea vacuuming was <laughs> was like a gendered behavior. Can you believe Adam Soy over here likes to vacuum? Do you put on a little like apron? When you vacuum, oh, of like a little pink apron. Yeah, I get like a full hazmat suit on. I get my <laughs> respirator on. <laughs> I'm going in. I haven't vacuumed for two years. I'm going in. <laughs> I'm, tell me that's not. Is that biologically determined? The idea that, I mean, I have to see it before I get the vacuum out. <laughs> like, it, Is it really necessary to vacuum unless you see stuff on the floor? Well, it's funny because that actually is a very male thing. To be I like, know. Oh, I'm not gonna like clean up until I could see like the grime and filth right. accumulate. Then right. I'll then I'll clean up. When you suck but, those um, cobwebs in from across the room, ah, oh, it's so satisfying. <laughs> well, so like vacuum, like the act of vacuuming itself, like in a vacuum, ironically enough, would be gender neutral. But the act of like cleaning the homestead, right, would be associated with the female of the relationship and i would argue that that is more of a based on not for everyone but is based on some sort of biological evolved tendency hmm. okay when i mean you would agree with it i assume i i but i don't know if it's if it's sexually i don't know if there's like a biological component to that it seems like it's just a personal preference thing you don't think there's a biological component to a specific gender being having a tendency to to T groom and clean the tidiness? homestead, yeah, the tidiness of, of like the area in which you live. I think that's completely evolved. I to mean, be it might have been sexual. social pressure, but I, I, don't I, think I guess so. women. I guess women on average are tidier than men. Yeah, but why exactly? But why do you think that is? I make. I mean, if we're if we're going, you know, to the hunter gatherer caveman lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It it makes complete sense, you know. If if the women were taking care of the children and monitoring the homestead, then it would make sense that they'd have evolved tendencies to keep the homestead, you know, clean and tidy, and to groom the children to make sure that they are you know healthy and fit. Where if the men are out, you know, hunting the mammoth, that's not, you know, they're not going to necessarily be evolved to have as strong as those tendencies as, for as me, women. For me, those stereotypes are just non-existent because I've known so many guys that are very tidy and I've known so many women that are just just pigs. I, I know, I've known the same thing as well. Right. Um, but it does seem, for in my estimation, it seems different. And maybe, I don't know if, if this is your experience and chat experiences, when I see guys that are very tidy, it's more about being organized rather than cleanly. They're, they're, they're just more focused on keeping things organized, where women seem to be more focused, that, that Duke focus on this, about keeping things clean. Right. Oh, like It's more like the disgust is triggering them rather than the disorder. Interesting. Interesting. All right, let's get back to this. Okay. We should just jump ahead right here to... This is where it all blows. Oh, no, let's no, go. no. Let's push I, I guess ahead. I see it as, as the most simple ex or the most straightforward way to look at it is just to simply say there are men and there are women. And you know, if there, there can be deviation within that, but at the end of the day, you're still a man or a woman. And if you feel that you identify more so as the opposite, then you are transgender and then 
transition if that's what you choose in, as an adult. So um, I guess my issue is when people, I'm not saying you do this, but my when I sense that people are trying to reconceptualize things just for the sake of it. Um, but with regard to third gender cultures, um, as you're saying with regard to gay men in in say say with the hijar or say with the fafafine they would be considered gay men if we looked at them from say a north american perspective so that's why when people talk about gender being a spectrum i think well you know i I don't think we have to go through and reconceptualize everything in our society um just to facilitate acceptance i think we can say you know there are people who are different there are gay people um they're transgender people they're intersex people but for the vast majority of us, 99% of us plus, we are men or women and we identify as our birth sex. So I see that as the most simple, straightforward way to do it. Yes. Agreed. 100%. We don't need extra genders for, for gay people or effeminate men or masculine women. We don't need extra genders. Okay. It's fine. We can right. breed acceptance through, through other ways. What we have, as you pointed out, we've done successfully in, in in our American society and in a lot of the Western world. Right. Down with traditional gender roles. Well, done. I mean, if you want it, I see it. If you want, if you're into traditional gender roles, you should be able to adopt them. Sure. But the the idea that they're being forced on anyone at this point is ridiculous. Right. It, yeah, exactly. It's down with forcing gender roles on the people. And, and the idea that those gender roles are being forced is a fantasy. It was currently right now in Western society. I think people tend to adopt the gender roles that they feel are going to work out, make them the most successful in work and relationships as possible. I think that's what people do. Yeah, maybe. Sure, but limit the range of human expression based purely on simplicity. Just because we have a preference towards our gender binary system doesn't mean it's inherently any more valid. I'm fine with social deconstructionism in a variety of ways, uh, so long as it's serving you know, the, the idea that it benefits humans, that it makes us happy. And as far as I can tell, both today in the modern world and uh, across a variety of cultures, it wasn't sufficient to simply say, oh, well, this person's a feminine man or what have you, you know, um, as we construct these categories. as but This is such a, this is so bullshit. This is pure sophistry. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll let him finish. I'll let him finish. As we delineate where we decide to draw these lines. Um, the only real concern to, at least to me is what makes people happy. You know, we're not really talking about hurting people here. Um, when we reconceptualize these ideas, people often talk about this, you know, the destruction of the gender binary. Well, you take non-binary people and I ask, what harm is being done? Um, certainly nothing that can be measured in a graph. It's this ephemeral, well, what of our traditions? And I don't really care about those. Um, I just care about freedom, really. I'm a libertarian socialist. The idea of people being able to identify how they want to choose their life's path and the terms they use to describe those as far as i'm concerned as long as nothing's unscientific nothing contradicts factual reality and nothing hurts other people then it should be fair game and of course i don't think anyone's contradicting the underlying um the biological nature of things you know sex the uh, gametes you know difference between this hormone and that hormone i think um as long as those basic tenets of reality remain um, consistent than the identity part. I mean, go hog wild. I don't really care where people go with it. So first of all, obviously there are people that are contradicting mm -hmm. the biology and the science. Right. And Vosh himself They're has done both these sex things. sex is a social yeah. construct, right. which is right. utter nonsense. Yeah. Vosh pretends like no one has ever said this, but that's not true. It's, yeah, it's so funny when like uh, Lindsay Ellis criticized J.K. Rowling. And she's like, J.K. Rowling was like, I can't believe there's all these gender activists saying sex isn't real. And then Lindsay Ellis said, no one is saying that that's a straw man. And Lindsay Ellis links to a Riley Dennis video that's literally sex is a social construct. <laughs> okay. It's so it's so baffling. I, like, what's going on in this conversation? But it's, it's really, it's so, like, the reason that this all feels like sophistry and bad faith to me is because you know, Vosh is taking the gender activist position, which is which is the affirmative position, which is saying we want to completely change. We want to completely change and completely reorganize the way society thinks about sex and gender. 
but I don't have to make a positive argument. You have to make the argument about the harm is caused. Okay. It's like, wait a minute. You're the one that wants to change everything. You need to make some argument about why it's beneficial to change everything. Okay. You're the one that want, if you want to change the status quo, you have to make the argument. You can't just sit back and say, no, it doesn't, you know, you make the argument against this. You argue the negatives. Like, that's not how any of this works. My argument is I just don't like the status quo, Sitch. I think all of it should be changed. <laughs> that's basically <laughs> well, That the is argument. their argument. That is their, I mean, so much of the gender activist ideology that when James Lindsay goes into, like the, the operating principle is just, we need to, anything that's normative is bad. We need to deconstruct all normative uh, thought and all normative traditions. Right. And it's stupid to say, like, you obviously, you shouldn't be chained to tradition. But if you want to change tradition, it's important to understand why it exists and what it's doing before you start monkeying with everything. Right. How it's functionally serving society. Did you watch? Right. Right after this, they they talk a little bit about it in here. Deborah So had James Lindsay on her podcast. And I went and watched the groomer school episodes immediately after this. That's some mm-hmm. fucking crazy shit. Yeah, it is crazy shit. Right. Very, very dark, crazy stuff. They're ba- just super quick. They're making James Lindsay is making the argument that political activists want to push all this weird sex stuff into school because it de individuates the kids earlier from their parents and makes them more susceptible to their political ideology. That's like, that's full on fucking cult shit. Compare, compare that to the, the conservatives back in the eighties being scared to death over the satanic panic in schools. Sitch. He ran out. I said real quick, I did. I honestly said real quick. Right, and I I agree with you in that I think people should be free to express themselves however they like and be happy and live their life and not be bothered by other people or not be judged. My concern is when people are making... Listen, when you say real quick, I don't trust that. (laughs) Okay. I know, I told you it was real quick. Well, I don't want to get too divergent on the topic. I don't want to get too sub topic. Listen, the whole stream is just divergent on topic. But no, but you're you're entirely right. That's a good summary, isn't it? I mean Right. You're entirely right. And that is a that is a negative component. You know, when we talk when he says, like, what is the harm in this? That is part of the harm in this. Is that that is the intention for a lot of this sort of neo Marxian ideology is to just chip away at anything normative and just try to destroy all society because you have to look at that. All this neo-Marxian ideology are basically, they're bombs. They're people creating blueprints to destroy uh, Western liberal democracy any way possible. And so they said, oh, okay, well, if we want a revolution, if we want a Marxist revolution, then we need to destroy everything that is normal to bring about this revolution. The origin is straight back to activists who are basically right. saying, we've lost politically. Listen, liberal democracies are making people happy, and that's a problem. (laughs) It's so it's so bizarre. Right, right. It's like we were wrong about about everything, and they're just bitter and jealous that they were so wrong about it that they're trying to tear down society in the wake of it. Right. They're basically yeah. Marx is basically like we're going to have the class revolution, and it's going to overturn everything. And then they said, whoops. All these capitalist democracies aren't actually revolting. It's them becoming Marxist. It's really only countries that were going from, you know, monarchies or authoritarian governments that are revolting into Marxism, essentially. Right. And then so yes, yeah, so they're like, okay, we need to switch things up to have the revolution. And so they start switching things up to race and gender and all this other garbage. It's like people fall into this Marxist cult. And they right. think Marx made all of these predictions, but his predictions aren't coming true. We need to work harder. How can we do this? Oh, I right. have an idea. Let's force all this weird sex stuff into school. Right. It's so and, evil. And it, it's so evil. In, in terms of the harm, you know, getting back to this, you know, his question about you know, what's the harm of these other genders? The harm is, is one, you are confusing children and teenagers. You're making their lives far more confusing and you're making it far more likely 
that they're going to take hormone blockers, take cross sex hormones, or even have surgery that they're going to regret later in life by yes. muddying up and complicating an already complicated uh, issue. So that, that is a uh, significant harm. And number two, and we've talked about this a lot. The big problem with Marxism is that they don't understand the psychology of how to get people to get along. No. <laughs> and the way you get along with people is you broaden them, you broaden the in-group to include them. You say, oh, this person's not uh, black or white or Chinese or, or Asian, I guess, specifically. You say, oh, this person's American or, you know, uh, Canadian or whatever country you're from. You have to broaden your in-group to include the people uh, so that you have some sort of uniting culture and idea that you can yeah. all kind of rally behind. Okay? The human project. Right. Saying that we're going to take people and we're going to reinforce gender stereotypes by saying if you don't exhibit a specific gender stereotype, that means you're not a man or not a woman. You're something else. You're one of 5,000 different genders. That's the exact opposite of breeding a community of people that can get along with each other. That's just, that's You're just making everyone more divisive and making everyone more segregated and making everyone more likely to fucking hate each other. Yeah, it's sad. And so what is what is the benefit? What benefit do we fucking accrue from doing this bullshit where we say, oh, there's a million different genders? There's no benefit here whatsoever. And it's being snuck under the guise of gender dysphoria when it has nothing to do with any of that stuff whatsoever. Yeah. There is the the mission that they're on is very clear. They perceive that there's a small number of people who have who were born in the wrong body and need to transition and we have to find them before puberty hits because if they transition after puberty they they're less likely to pass. That's the logic behind what they're doing. But they're just they're not conscious of the damage that they're doing in trying to achieve that they're just completely ideologically possessed it's it's it, this is the batman scene right here <laughs> they're like they're trying to get the joker and th they don't realize <laughs> they don't realize that hundreds of thousands of people are dying on that freeway <laughs> oh you mean the you mean the penguin yeah yeah the penguin it, how is said, it how is it i mean it is it is basically the same thing it's like they're monomaniacally fixated on this one goal it's like timmy's out there okay right. we have to save timmy timmy is the the gender dysphoric you know adult mm -hmm. or not you know whatever child whatever right and they so, don't so they don't seem to realize that they're turning they're getting 25 false positives just to save right. that guy so the analogy, the analogy is Batman. Robert mm. Pattinson's Batman is the gender activist. <laughs> and the penguin who's driving away from him is the kid with gender dysphoria. Right. And the, the, the gender activists are like, like a bat out of hell. They're chasing after that kid with gender dysphoria to make sure they get to him. And along the way, like the 30 cars that all pile up on the freeway and explode and all those people that die. That's, that's all the false positive. That's all like the rest of society along the way to get to the one guy. Yeah. Okay. They have that no, makes sense. they I have like no it. sense like of proportion here. They have right. absolutely no sense of proportion. Right. And this is the conversation that people want to have. And, and what will, th this is, this is, I'm positive. This is Deborah So's position. This is all. This is all of the people who are writing these books of irreversible damage. I can't remember the name of the author offhand, but Schreier, Abigail Schreier. Yeah, this is her entire argument. She's basically saying, "Listen, we're causing more harm than good here," and I. She accepts that there is that gender dysphoric kid out there that is, you know, exists. She's not one of these people that just says that's not a thing that. That doesn't right. exist. That's not a possibility. Well, that's, that's so, what's, what's so crazy about all this is that, you know, Deborah So, Abigail Schreier, you know, J.K. Rowling, all, you know, all like the famous people in the mainstream that push back against, you know, a lot of the gender activist stuff, even Jordan Peterson, you know, none of these people deny that gender dysphoria exists. They're all just saying that you're, that it's being pushed too far. Yeah. And yet that alone gets you labeled as a transphobe. Right.
Very sad. Uh, Tristan Verhecki, thank you so much, Tristan Verhecki, for two months. Discipline equals freedom. That's right, two months, baby. Give me that free will. That's right, Tristan. You get two units. Actually, no, you get two months. You get mm. two months worth of free will. That's wow. sixty. Two. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll do a 31 day because everyone, you know, you get a little extra. That's 62 free units of free will for you to use. Wow. That's great. That. That's crazy. Uh, Zara Richards also, Zara Richards gets 62 free units of free will for being two months of a free will seeker. Thank you so much, Sarah. Says, does Voosh not support hashtag trap rights? The bigot. Yeah, I don't think he does. I don't think he does. What a bigot. Terrible. Uh, Real name all day for $20 says, hey, love the show and been listening to every week for months. Well, thank you. Real name all day. Uh, Was my 21st birthday last night and won big at the casino. So here's my purchase for some free will. Thanks, guys. And a team brain. Man, it's been so long since I've been to a casino. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, happy 21st birthday. And uh, glad you won. That's awesome. Yeah. Here's your 20 free units to uh to to maybe use your money to... <laughs> when you go into casino to make sure you only win. That's how you can use the free will. How about that? How it's about fun that? even even if you lose. As long as you that's don't lose, true. don't lose more than you can afford to lose. That's when you run into trouble. That's but true. yeah. I'm jealous. I'm congratulations. I'm glad you did well. Uh Sammy G for twenty dollars. Thank you so much, Sammy. Says my family's female dress, my family's female, uh, my family's females dress super feminine, but their personality slash work drive is hella masculine. Lawyers, CEOs, athletes, army. I sometimes think that if I didn't see an example that both can be balanced, I'd probably question my gender. Exactly. That's exa- yeah. this is that's exactly why this non-binary third gender stuff drives me crazy. Because part of I thought of what our society accomplished was to say, yes, women can be you know, lawyers, CEOs, athletes in the army, they can be driven to work and yet they can still be feminine. (laughs) They can still be comfortable in being women. They don't have to give, you don't have to give up your femininity to have a job. And that's what's, that's why this whole, this whole thing seems so ass backwards to me. It Mm -hmm. seems like such a regression from what we've accomplished as our society. Can you imagine If you wanted to become a doctor, they were like, okay, well, you've got to start wearing pants. (laughs) You've got to basically become butch. If you want to be a doctor, I'm sorry, these are the rules, okay? That's basically what they're advocating for. Talk with a lower voice. Right. That's what's so crazy. They're they're basically advocating for on some level saying, oh, if you're a woman and you're a doctor, you're not a woman anymore. If you're a man and you're a nurse, you're not a man anymore. You have to be some alternative gender. It's like, ridiculous. How how is this how is this good for society? How can they call themselves gender abolitionists with all this philosophy? Well, that, see, but that's what's so weird about all this is it's like, I guess the argument is that they want to make gender so fucking complicated and have so many genders that we all just give up on it because it sucks so much. Like, is that the? Is, are they like gender accelerationists? Is that what's happening? Here? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, just be 1,005 for $20. Thank you so much. It says two hours. <laughs> it's two hours for 14 minutes. At this rate, we're in for another 13 hours of Adam and Stitch goodness. There you go. Uh, unrelated, you should check out The Noth Man. Great movie, which doesn't shy away from the brutality and gender roles of 900 AD 1010. The Noth Man. Okay, I'll check it out. 900 AD. I am not familiar with it. The, oh, The North Man. I'm assuming you just misspelled North Man. Uh, Stug for $20 says, this is the issue I have with the large portion of James Lindsay's critics. Everyone calls him a conspiracy theorist, but he's literally just repeating to the world what people have fucking said they wanted to do. And that's that's very true when it comes to uh, a lot of the when it comes to his his uh, research into especially Marxist academia. He's completely right. And it is and it is written very conspiratorially because they do want to change the world. They do want to. have this revolution and very oftentimes in like one paper they'll they'll say it very clearly in another paper they'll hide it so but this is where the useful idiot category comes into play because there are people who are just caught up in the mission to save that one gender dysphoric child 
and just completely oblivious to the amount of pain and suffering that they're causing in their wake. Right. So those people are tied up in that mission over, they don't necessarily know that there are ideologues that had dreamed this up a million years ago to establish the Marxist utopia. That's true. They're being that's tricked. True. Right. Right. Well, that's the problem that that's why I like using my, these are blueprints for bombs analogies because they're blueprints for bombs, but people don't realize they're blueprints for bombs. So they're basically constructing all these devices that are used to destroy our, you know, Western liberal democracy, but they don't realize what they're constructing, but they still want to build it and push the button and see what happens. This is an interesting thing about Vosh because I think Vosh actually fits into both categories. He's actually in favor of the goals of the Marxist as in destroying society. So I yes. think he would consciously use this as a poison pill. And he's also a useful idiot in that I don't think he's aware. I think he's fixated on the goal of saving the gender dysphoric child and doesn't re even realize that this stuff is a poison pill, which that's an, Maybe. A, an Maybe. amazing I irony. I, I, I would believe that Vosh is aware of a lot of the, the dark undertones here? I don't think he is. I don't think he pays attention to... I think he has a superficial understanding of all of the James Lindsay stuff. We should dig in deeper on this to see if... I'm sure he's I'm done sure. responses to James Lindsay, but I don't think he has... I think he has a superficial st understanding of any of this. He he might... Like, we, we covered him... You know, he reviewed James Lindsay's Prager U CRT video. Right, and it was a... And it was, and it was weird mess. because... Yeah, it was a total mess, and it was weird because basically uh, what James Lindsay says about CRT, Vosh should all be in favor of, right? essentially. Yeah. And yet, even though he is in favor of it, he still denies that that's what CRT is. And so, yeah, he might have a shallow understanding of some of the literature of understanding what it is, but even if he did understand it, I think he still would be in favor of most of it because he does want a Marxist revolution of some kind. Right. These decisions and they are potentially leading, especially young people, to make decisions about modifying their body that may be permanent or may be potentially harmful to them or that they may regret. So with regard to, say, non-binary, um, and I will use the pronouns someone wants me to use, um, the same with, with, say, people who are transgender. When I say transgender, I'm, I'm referring to people who identify as the opposite sex. And I know that some people might say non-binary is the same as transgender, but I, I do make that difference. But um, my, with regard to non-binary, what, what is the evidence for this idea that there are, there's a third gender? Is it, are you referring to third gender cultures or is there, uh, is there additional evidence that you're thinking of? Well, the evidence for it is simply that there's no greater argument for the system that we have than any culture which has a third gender or had one in the you know pre-colonial days, which of course was much more common in the pre-colonial days um, before our values became homogenized a bit. Um, so again, this is total bullshit. I don't ha even though he's the one that wants to completely restructure all of society. He's saying I don't have to make an argument. You have to make the argument to def to defend against my. Uh, deconstructing of everything, which is a crazy position. The whole. There's no better argument than there should be a third gender called non-binary. That's what he basically <laughs> said. Right, which is wrong, but also just not only is it wrong for, well, for reasons we already said, but well, he ha that's the position that has to make the argument. But he didn't make an argument. He he said no. There's how can you say there's no better argument? You've what you there's no better assertion. Because you're just right. making an assertion here. You're not making an argument. Right. No, but that's what I'm saying. He keeps, even though he's the one that wants to change everything, he keeps saying, no, 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 you have to make the argument. I don't have to say anything. Right. And this isn't really a, a scientific or evidentiary thing, really. It's social construction. It's theory, really, gender theory, which people mock, of course. You know, people roll their eyes at it. but um, Which they should because it's garbage. Um, there's some really fascinating and complicated stuff behind the uh, behind the wheel there. And I'd like to use allegories to race because the discourse around racial abolition and the social construction of race hasn't been as politicized as that with regards to gender. You know, if you go back 100 years, um, 
you know, the Irish were considered the um, the N words of of Europe. I believe was a was mm -hmm. a common, you know, derogatory. He keep this is so bad. Bad faith. Instead I of, know. Yes. Instead of answering a single question, instead of laying forward a single argument for anything, all he does is he keeps pivoting to race, race, race. So that's like, oh, if you argue against this, you're a race realist. Like, this is such a bad faith tactic. It is. That's why you got to break that down before you can even move on. You got to ask the question about, listen, there's, there's biological diversity in men and women and between men and women. Right. I don't think you can make the same case with race. Right. But if you, yeah. Vosh, would like to make that race essentialist case, please do. <laughs> Here's the floor. What's your argument? Right. And I think what you said earlier would be a good question is to ask, do you think that there's a larger behavioral difference between men and women biologically than there is between a white man and a black man biologically? Right. Because <laughs> it's like... I would say there's like, no difference. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. But against men and women, there there obviously is so huge. We'll stop making this Measur comparison. measurable differences. Yes, right. Yes. But as soon as you get out the cal the skull calipers between the races, <laughs> you're in a bad fucking place, dude. Tory term. Now, of course, they didn't think that Irish people were biologically identical to Northern African people. Um, but there was uh, an understanding that they were somehow lesser within the category of white, the same with Italians, though, to, I believe, a lesser extent. And really, the arguments back then, the Italian... See, this is all just bullshit. This is just, let me bullshit for eight minutes, not answering any mm -hmm. of the questions. This is right. evasive 101 right here. Well, she keeps asking him to explain his position, and he never does. He just gives examples. He doesn't actually explain. His he doesn't position. have a position. I'm telling you. Well, no, he has a position. His position is he wants, you know, a million genders and, and he wants to deconstruct gender and all this bullshit. And she's like, well, like why? And then he says, oh, I'm not going to sell I'm not going to tell you why, but let me give you examples of it happening. It's like, well, okay, that's not what I've asked you, but. Well, Andy's saying that if you're against it, you're a racist. Right. Right. They attempted to post hoc justify it scientifically, but the arguments back then were fundamentally. He, he uses that all the time now. It's so infuriating. Post hoc justification. <laughs> he uses that all Does the he, I didn't Who know leaked the post? Which one of you leaked the post hoc <laughs> justification? This is based off the social intuitionist model. I think if I had a conversation with Vosh and I said, hey, Vosh, what is your take on the social intuitionist model of? moral psychology i don't think he could lay it out to me i don't think he could at all no but he keeps using the term post hoc rationalization well, to be fair was that was that term created specifically for social intuitionist model i thought that idea was around before then well what what else would you be what is the what are you trying to rationalize if you're not rationalizing your gut intuition no no i understand but I'm saying like sometimes concepts exist before they're like laid out exactly. But it's just, it's an intuition that you have that this is the correct mm -hmm. aspect. Okay. And you're post hoc rationalizing it. I guess, I guess. I mean, what, what would the... you, what would you be post hoc rationalizing? No, like, yeah, but like your, your, your emotional reactions and all that stuff. Well, he's saying that th this is why I would like to ask him. I'm like, Vosh, you've used a very interesting term there. You said that this is post hoc. <laughs> justification or rationalization whatever you want to call it post hoc from what what is the what what's what is it after post hoc means after something right what is it after what happened right what is the thing so, that it's after you're just mad that he's gonna use that him and uh what was that girl well no that it's com this ASAP? is completely divorced of any context here what what is he saying when he says post hoc rationalization I don't know. Let's go back a second. I believe a lesser extent. And really, the arguments back then, they, they attempted to post hoc justify it scientifically, but the arguments back then were fundamental. He's saying that, like, his argument is that, you know, people were racist. Which is an intuition, a moral intuition. Well, yeah, they had a racist intuition. And then so they tried to, after the fact, justify the racism via science. He's basically saying that this is what's going on with, with, gender differences 
which completely contradicts what he said earlier, where he admits that there are biological gender differences. <laughs> Right. That's and why he's he's talking out both sides of his mouth in this conversation. Not only that, the first the moral psychology, the intuition could be correct. You need the fucking evidence to back it right. up. Just because you have right. an intuition doesn't mean that you're incorrect. You're in, you could have a an intuition, and you could post hoc rationalize that inter, intuition. That intuition could be fundamentally correct, and the evidence that you seek to validate the intu intuition could also be correct. Right. Right. Like it's just it's such a, it's this a knock it's this completely superfluous thing that they tack on everywhere now. Oh, you're post hoc rationalizing. Oh, you're just post hoc justify. I just I want to ask one of them. So what post hoc means after the fact? What is See, the, what is the fact? <laughs> Adam Adam is just he, Adam is very upset when he hears bread tubers and leftists. You know, well, there's improperly used Jonathan Haidt. There is, there uh, is a studies and well, research it's, it's and, not, and terminology. It's not and just, intuition. it's not just Jonathan Haidt. And it, and right. Destiny's talked about this, and I completely agree with Destiny. There's this thing that happens where people understand, they they don't understand the context of whatever it is they're using in an argument. They just have seen other people use this argument, and they they f intuitively feel that it works. So they use it themselves, but they don't understand the context. And if you drill in on them, if you catch them in this, you can make them look like a huge dumbass. Because <laughs> what, what, what is, th right. I mean, even you, you're just playing devil's advocate here and you're thinking, I don't know, what is the post? I mean, what, what could it be besides <laughs> uh, some sort of moral intuition? It's nothing. There is nothing. Mm -hmm. It, it basic no, Bosch but what, but, is using no, no. the social intuitionist model intuitively here. He doesn't understand. He's never heard of it before, but he's using it. I, I wasn't necessarily playing uh, devil's advocate because my understanding is that like the post hoc fallacy has existed, you know, for a long time before it became associated with post hoc um, rationalization and the post hoc fallacy are not the same thing. I guess you're right. Yeah, post, post yeah, you're right. You're fallacy right. Po yeah, you're right. means you're right. that because this happened, right, right, right. this follows from it, even though they could be correlative and not causal. Right, 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 right. Post hoc rationalization is saying that you're rationalizing something after something happened. Well, what happened? Tell me what happened. Are you a Vosh fan and you watched a Vosh video and you just believe Vosh? So therefore, you have an intuition that this is correct because Vosh told you it's correct. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing Vosh actually gives you the argument and the intuition at the same time. You're you're good to go. You're fully. You're like out the door. I'm ready to go argue on Twitter. Hmm. I'm still. I'm still Look wondering this. if this ad hoc rationalization has existed before. Social intuition. Uh, I never heard modern. anyone two years ago. Well, actually, you know, six months. I never heard anyone say this. I remember saying this in a video. I mean, I remember mm -hmm. and and people not really not understanding me. Now, someone I heard the when you were on EFAP, the who was the girl that you were responding Denim. to? She yes. said it. Right, who, right, right, right. What is the origin of this? We want to know. Help us out. No, I, I know, but what I mean is like, I mean, I, I don't. Like I know in, when I was in fucking psychology classes, this was well talked about sort of the ad hoc rationalization stuff. So that's, right. that's why I'm just, I'm a little skeptical that this was created entirely by social intuitionists. Well, if you're rationalizing theory. your preferences, the, the only difference, the only difference in the moral psychology model is that Jonathan Haidt has come in and said that those unconscious preferences are biologically rooted and that yes the the intuition is more powerful than the arguments that's the only that's the only variation that he made on the the post hoc justification argument but that is <laughs> i would say applicable in this situation with Vosh and because he's saying he's saying you have you have a moral intuition and Vosh would say you know if Deborah wasn't on the call Vosh would say 
She just hates trans people. That's what it is. She has an icky feeling about trans people and then is looking for an excuse why none of this can exist. That's what he would... That's the argument that he he okay. thinks is well, we can't, we can't accurate. Along, but... ...a social one. You know, what is or is not whiteness? And if you include Irish people, do you include, say, Mediterraneans, Greek people? What about Turkish people? You know, how far south... All, it's so it's so bad faith to drag this poor woman into a conversation about race. This is so insidious. Right, that's the point. She's a, literally a sex researcher, okay? <laughs> Along the Mediterranean, how far clockwise can you go before that becomes a problem? There's no real answer. Um, you you can tell she's completely triggered at this point. I mean, can I tell that? I feel like that's. I think you're triggered. I don't know if she's. Triggered. I feel like that's the angry face there. I don't know. And to me, being that I'm both a racial and gender abolitionist, my understanding is that given that there are no real answers, there's no real right or wrong. There's only human happiness. We should cast aside categories which do harm. And that's. That's such bullshit. He just said everything is arbitrary. That's such bullshit. I can't stand well, that argument. What, what he's saying, he's saying that since all I care about is human happiness, everything should be, all society should be fixated on achieving the goal of human happiness. The problem with that and why that's stupid is that different people have different ideas about human happiness. Yeah, contradictory ideas of human happiness, yes. Right. And lots of people would be happier if everyone lived according to strict binary gender roles. Right. And lots of people would be happier if they didn't. And right. so you need to find something for everyone to be able to get along and function properly. And he can't, I, I think we're, I think what Vosh would say in response to this is that he doesn't think that there are people that have a, a predisposition to wanting people to fit into nice gender roles naturally. I, he probably would say that's the patriarchy. That's all just learned social construction. Yeah. You know, that's the, the pure social construction, right? He doesn't think people are just born with these intuitions, right? They're not gravitating towards that binary, <laughs> which they are. They totally are, right? And it's just again, I don't. You know, when, when you're creating a system that's going to lead to a lot of kids being very confused about themselves, I don't see how that's going to lead to happiness <laughs> but any any goal that you want to achieve you can't say the strategy is going to be arbitrary because you can always think of more strategies that don't have any plausible possibility of success there's millions of them so right. that means it can't be arbitrary by definition right there well, are plenty yeah. of ways. Look, the Holocaust was a terrible time. Okay. That's not a good right. way to go about it. That's a sure. fucking failure. Right. Well, and also, you know, he says he's a race and gender abolitionist when it's like, well, you can't, how are you a gender abolitionist if you want to establish more genders? That's the opposite of being a gender abolitionist. And how are you a race abolitionist when you support CRT, which is vehemently against race abolition? Yeah, that's why I'm saying it's so it's, it's totally useful idiot territory. He doesn't right. know any of those things. Right. He has maybe, a superficial maybe. understanding of all of this stuff at best. He doesn't even know what post hoc rationalization comes from. And adopt those which minimize it. And this stringent fixation on, well, how do, can you prove this, that, or the other with gender? Well, we can't really prove anything with it. We know there are social roles and categories associated with sex, but those roles and categories change. The lines around them change and have changed historically. I don't know if any factual argument could be made in any direction. Well, in terms of why there are only two genders, as you mentioned, if sex is determined... Wait, let me, let me go back. By so, I don't prove anything with it. You're like, we he didn't answer any of that stuff. Categories associated with it. And the stringent fixation on, well, how do, can you prove this, that, or the other with gender? Well, we can't really prove anything with it. We know there are social roles and categories associated with sex, but those roles and categories change. The lines around them change and have changed historically. I don't know if any factual argument could be made in any direction. So, okay, that's, what he said is bullshit. retarded. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He just said, 
I don't know if we can prove he's inherently contradictory. He said, he first said, I don't know if we could prove that there are biological, biological sex differences, right? Yeah. Which he already said that he thought there were, but now he's saying he doesn't think that they can, that he can prove them. Well, they can. Spoiler but, alert. But, right. I know they can, but he thinks they can. But then he says he thinks they can prove somehow that these are social, that these are purely socially constructed. Which makes no sense. If you can't prove it's biological, then how could you possibly prove it's purely socially constructed? Doesn't make any sense. You can't have both of those existing simultaneously or not. And then, so then he's just at the end of it, he throws up his hands and says, well, I guess we can just do whatever we want. Yeah. Like, this is a complete, this is complete sophistry. This is complete nonsense. It is. Yeah. Sophistry. This, you just have to yeah, call this it is, out. This is like Vosh has a bunch of darts that all have like different words on them. And he just throws them all up in the air and hopes some of them land on the target. Yeah. Jeez, this is, this well, is a problem because like when we, when I first heard, I didn't realize how bad this conversation or how bad he was in this conversation until I've listened to it the second time, like super closely. How like just up. completely illogical what he's saying. It heats up. It really does heat up. She he starts using slurs. She calls him out for it. It's a little slow getting going, but in terms of why there are only two genders, as you mentioned, if sex is determined by gametes and gender identity is determined by biological sex for over ninety nine percent of us, then where is the third gamete that would suggest there is? Got to get the lipstick on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. As someone who suffers from chap lips, Adam. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sympathetic. Where's my okay. chapstick? Yeah, I gotta get, get the chapstick. Okay. <laughs> now I need chapstick. Uh, but she, but she's asking the wrong. In between. She's asking the wrong questions. What's the right question? To call out the contradictions in his statements. Yeah, you're right. The, the problem is, it, you have to like. I don't like. If I was having this conversation with him live, and I was in Deborah's position, I don't know if I'd catch all this stuff. Because it is so like, but such a bizarre way of communication that you have to be like super hyper, like have like 10 cups of coffee, like, like listening to be like, wait a minute, what the fuck is he talking about? This is insane. Like you're just contradicting yourself every second. Right. And you're in a conversation. Our conversations are highly cooperative. We're yes. very much listening to what the other one is saying and trying to build off of that. These conversations are not cooperative. They're contentious. No. They just right. want to gaslight. Well, I don't think Deborah So is doing any gaslighting. No, but I do no. think Vosh is focused on how this is going to look optically. And he has to make an argument for a stuff that's just a bunch of bullshit. So he's just bullshitting. Men and yep. women. Because it's only now. determined for 99% of us, for, well, first of all, you know, even if it was just the 99%, the existence of 1% constitutes millions of people. Right. That's the penguin on the freeway right there. Gotta get that kid. Right. Right. But also, I mean, and then whenever they make this argument, they contradict themselves. Cause then it's like, well, what about the people that have trans regret? And they're like, well, that's a very small amount of people. Yeah, exactly. Okay. How big is it? 1%? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It's just like, okay. <laughs> Um, but you know, even within that, we constructed the categories. To I I heard the trans reporting is up over like a thousand percent, which makes you think. Because there's this thing that's going on. I, have you seen the meme where they talk about left-handedness? How left-handedness was at one time repressed, mm -hmm. but now that left-handedness is not repressed, we have a there's a certain percentage of people who are left-handed that it's kind of plateaued out. Right. So there used to be 99% of people were right-handed because they would just beat the left handies senseless. Yeah, right, right. Which is not necessary. That's not probably not a good route to go. But <laughs> when you when you open up the option to whoever wants to be left-handed, they can be left-handed, then you get a certain percentage of the population. It might be 5%, might be 10 10 it says 10 to 12%. 10 supposedly. to 12%. Okay, so 10 to 12% is where we settled out in left-handedness. Now the, right. the gender, I, I, I don't know why the left-handedness thing happens. It's kind of an, an interesting thing because I don't, there's, it's funny that there used to be a moral component to it. Like we wanted society to be so, so uh, regimented that everyone had to even be right-handed. 
Yeah, right. there had to be conformity. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so conformist. That's the word that I yes. was looking for. So, right. but now, so the trans activists will say that they think there's going to be like 50% of people are going to be trans. We're just, we're really trying to figure out that number. That is it, what percentage it is. And obviously the trans activists say it's like 45%, right? And then, and the rest of us are a little skeptical that it's that high. Like it may be, well, I don't know. What, do you have a, do you have a, a intuitive gut check on what you think it's going to level out at? Um, for people with gender dysphoria? Yeah. Or, or they're trans? Um, I don't think it's going to be high. I, I do think probably whatever the number was before 2014 <laughs> is probably the number that I think it will maybe, you th so, you think maybe it's slightly out, harder. You think it's like, going to settle out to about where it was? Yeah, I think I think I mean maybe it'll be slightly higher than what it was, um, but I I you know nowhere near you know I don't know what that number was I think it was like one percent or point something percent some very very small number, um, I think maybe it would go a little bit a tiny tiny bit higher a fraction of a percent higher, but I I think it would settle out there and then that would be it. And right now we're seeing this massive explosion that is obviously way overblown. Well, if you think um, whatever you think it's going to settle out, then you can tell, then you can guesstimate the false positives. So right. if, if the, if the norm was 1% of the population, I don't know if it's 1%, obviously they're arguing over it now. And then all of a sudden you've got five times that amount. So you're up to 5% of the population. That's potentially 4% right. that's false positives. And as Vosh says, I mean, just because it's a small percentage doesn't mean it's a whole hell of a lot of people. That's a lot of detransitioners. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why I keep saying there's going to be this massive, um, a massive pushback. But I've heard and... it's up thousands of percent. Yeah. Well... You have to understand too. They're probably including non people that identify right. as non-binary okay. who don't do anything. Right. Like a That's friend fine. of mine. That's fine. Yeah. Well, I think it's stupid. I don't think it's fine. But it's. I mean, you're they're not going to have oh, surgery sorry. options. You know, that I regret. But um, like a friend of mine said that his kid, who I think is in like middle school, said that, like, you know, twenty to fifty. That according to his kid, like. 30 to 40 percent of the the kids at the school identify as like uh, some kind of weird non-binary extra gender bullshit 40 percent yeah 30 40 percent some massive number of kids wow. in his class so wow so no yeah so so it's kind of gets confusing because i'm sure all those numbers are getting roped in together and i would imagine that the like 99 percent of those 30 40 percent of kids even though they identify as non-binary they're not getting you know, they're not taking puberty blockers or whatever, but that's still going to be a massive increase. And I mean, this might be what is required, though. It's unfortunate, but this might be the volcano sacrifice. You know, trans kids might be the volcano sacrifice required to to fix our institutions, to realize that this Marxian uh, disease has creeped into all this shit and to wow. our culture. That's so that, sad. It is sad, but that might be what has to happen. That we're gonna have to have thousands of kids be sacrificed to the volcano to to fix this problem. We're fighting against that, though. Hopefully, we can. I don't work think. Yeah, out. but I don't think it's going to be. I think it is going to be a sacrifice. I think that's all that's going to happen. There's a bunch of miscommunication in here about the science of studying this too, where Vosh completely slams. Back into the race category. Oh, race science we're talking about. And it's like, oh, God, please make it mm -hmm. stop. Make it stop. Perfectly matched sex. So, of course, there's going to be a near one-to-one -one correlation with sex. But if we were to have, say, for example, uh, the masculine and the feminine men being bisected into two categories of men, two genders within what we now consider to be one, well, then all of a sudden it gets more complicated. But you're deferring to simplicity. In a but why the fuck? Which, why should we do that? Yeah, that's totally regressive. That is totally regressive. Right. And also, 
it's a total bull. This has no, like saying that you want to split up, you know, men between feminine men and masculine men or, you know, neutral men or whatever the fuck bullshit. This has nothing to do with the transgender conversation at all. It's a total diversion, total uh, straw man, totally gets us all off track. This is not what anyone's fucking talking about. Can you imagine? That's how, like, like you're at what? school and you're going out. And now instead of separating the boys and the girls before they start playing kickball or whatever, it's like gay boys over here. <laughs> yeah. Straight boys over here. Well, it's so funny because how like how embarrassing. I know, but exactly that's the thing. It's like like, you know, twenty years ago, this would be seen as entirely bigoted, right? Yeah. Like, oh, all the all the Chad boys who are athletic. You know, you get on the left side of the field, all the sissy boys. Who are I know. You know, get on the right side of the field. And now because like, like we have this weird, you know, oppression hierarchy, it's like viewed as a positive, you know, to, 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 to label yourself as part of some oppressed group. This It's just, it's insane. It's totally insane. It's so sad too. Oh, <laughs> God, man. I feel like we're just taking huge steps backwards. We are taking huge steps backwards. But the progress, they're doing it and standing under a sign that says progress. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's hilarious. I know. Oh, it's hilarious. A system which is aestheticized for simplicity, um, which, I, I mean, it, it's sort of a recurring pattern. You know, we've, we've, we've built something to correlate perfectly to sex. So, of course, it's going to correlate near perfectly to sex. The historical conception of gender and sex is that there is no distinction for the most part, um, at least in the West, that, you know, it's just your roles are because of your sex. And the idea that the roles might be some kind of separate construction is something that, at least for the past few hundred years in Western antiquity, we haven't really engaged with that much. Well, what do you mean by your... It, it's, it's so bullshit, too, because to my understanding, the the person like who really was the first person to talk about that there being this sex and gender difference was John Money in the 50s, who, you know, we, I'm sure most people in chat know, did his horrible experience, experiments where basically he thought that not only was there a difference between sex and gender, he thought that you could, through conditioning, trans, you know, transform anyone from male to female, essentially. Right. He thought you could, tr yeah. He thought you could teach or train any boy to be a girl and any girl to be a boy. You just raise him as a girl instead right. of a boy, and that's right. That's that, right? And his experiments, because he and he did these experiments on this this kid that had a, like a botched circumcision, right? And so David, they tried David to David Reimer, I believe his name. Yeah, was. David Reimer, and and so they tried to raise him as a girl, and this ended up with him and his brother committing suicide, right? By how fucked up. Total this, you know, catastrophe. Yeah, trying to train someone as a, as a girl. And yet, this fucking piece of shit was not only lauded as, you know, being correct in his research for decades, but it's like, this is the guy that came up with the theory that you're operating under? Not only, not only is he a fucking monster and his experiments proved to be wrong, but you don't even believe them. None of these gender activists believe them because he... He wasn't just saying that gender was malleable. He was saying it was completely malleable, so, which if that was true, would say, oh, we shouldn't be giving any kids cross-sex hormones or puberty blockers. We should just force them, you know, through conversion therapy to be, to be cisgender, essentially. That's what John Money's experiments, if they were even true, would lead you to believe. Right. And so they, they pick and choose. That's why it's so bullshit. They pick and choose his, like, parts of his theory, and they deny the rest of his theory just to try to push forward their their bullshit ideology yeah they don't want to believe it's a religion i'm telling you it's a cult it's not a religion it is a cult it is a cult the roles would be different from your sex if the vast majority of men behave in one way and the vast majority of women behave in another way and this is driven by biological underpinnings how is that socially constructed there's some, there's are a you, piece i'm missing here are you under are you of the opinion that um what are you doing I uh, said, so let me go back. She asked a good question. Not much. Well, what do you mean by your roles would be different from your sex if the vast majority of men behave in one way and the vast majority of women behave in another way, and this is driven by biological underpinnings? How is that socially constructed? There's, some, there's a you, piece I'm missing here. Are you under? Are you of the opinion that um, 
color is socially constructed. Do you mean vis like visual color or you mean visual color, the optical perception? Yes. Socially constructed. As far as I know, it's, it's a biological process. No, I, I agree. It's, a, you know, the wavelengths that we see. Of course, you have people with vision abnormalities, which see different colors. Right. But, you know, we, 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 under, we have an understanding of what a properly working eyeball can see. And we have a good understanding of what wavelengths correspond Sophistry. to you know, subjective experiences of color. Yes. Um, but, of course, if you take a look at the history of color and language across the world, different cultures have different conceptions of what is or isn't green or blue. There is no hard line, of course, between what a green or a blue is. It's totally arbitrary. Um, it's literally a spectrum. Uh, so the line is drawn um, differently depending on the linguistic preconceptions of the culture that you're looking at. For the most part, we've sort of nailed out the ideas here. But if you take a look historically, like uh, which ideas of color develop first, where are these lines drawn, you get really interesting and very diverse ideas. And of course, he's this bullshitting. is I mean, this... He's doing the thing. He's not answering. Well, he's also wrong. And I'm trying to remember because I looked into this. We, we covered some, some other stream. I don't remember why, but he's actually wrong. It's, and it's actually very fascinating. If you look at different cultures, they almost always name and categorize the same colors first. Like really? Cause yeah. Green has got to be in there. Cause that's all over the place. Well, no, actually the, th I think it was the first three colors that everyone, that every culture kind of names is black, white, and red. Oh, blood. That totally. Yeah. Makes blood, sense. black, white, and red. And then I'm, I don't remember the exact, um, the dangerous colors referring... coming out of him. <laughs> yeah. Hurry. <laughs> what he's referring to is that there's this interesting thing where like some cultures historically didn't have the same color boundaries necessarily that we do. And some didn't even seem now, of course, a lot of this is like, this could all be bullshit. Cause a lot of this is like people, they try to find old writings where certain colors are, are named or colors are described in certain ways that don't make sense. And so it could all be miscommunication. It's possible that all old societies did have all the exact same colors that we do. But assuming that that's not the case, they do find that it seems like cultures, I think the order was like black, white, red. I think green might have been next or something. And then green it was and like, blue seem like, I mean, you see those so much in nature. Well, but there was some overlap that like, like blue, maybe not. Mm -hmm. like some like it seemed like a lot of cultures maybe some of them sort of mixed green and blue to some extent i think brown i don't remember the exact one, but there's some there's some order but but why he's completely wrong is that the fact that that cultures seem to kind of have the specific order of color importance that they name shows that it is something biological or it is something some sort of evolved important tendency within humans so it's literally the opposite of what he's saying. I don't even know why he's bringing up color at all. This has nothing to do with the conversation. He's bringing it up because he doesn't want to answer the fucking question. It's so annoying. Why is well, Bosch he, so evasive? He keeps wanting to... He, he keeps making... This is the problem. They're both making the same arguments again and again and again and again. And it's because she doesn't... She's trying to get at something different than he's getting at. And but she keeps asking the same question because either she doesn't understand exactly what he's saying or because he she's just not reframing the question, which is that he is doing the Martin Bailey for social construction, where he says, look, colors obviously exist. It's a physical property. It's a wavelength of light. It is something that's based off a of physical property. However, we humans decide where the boundary between green and blue and red and orange and yellow are. And that's the social construct is to determine where those boundaries are. Categorizing and so he, them. Yes. Right. Is to categorize them. And so he's equating that to gender, but that's a bullshit because that's not what he means. And that's not what anyone means when they say gender is a social construct, because as he himself said, there are elements of gender that he thinks are not based and not rooted on some biological process. So the keep going and deferring back to biological processes for the categorization is bullshit. And it's a way of sort of diverting from having to answer the question. Right. It's all diversionary tactics. Yes. This is factual. This is biological. 
um, the color wavelength is something that we can measure out and parse mathematically. So it's not like we're exclusively dealing with subjective human experience. And yet the categories we draw, how many colors are there in the wheel? Are there five, eight, 10? We say they're functionally infinite, but we only have so many words. And most people separate it into a discrete range of colors associated with the rainbow. At least that's the historical archetype that people draw towards most easily but he makes that face too like this is deep and meaningful really rubs me the wrong way <laughs> this is so this is so not deep and not meaningful that doesn't include all the colors it doesn't include purple for example um i guess the point that i'm getting at here is that there's not a contradiction between a biological underpinning and a complete arbitrariety of the overlying concept you know it's like uh the biology is the foundation but the house you build atop it is um very much of your own design see he used that same word arbitrary which completely you can't say it's arbitrary there's there are certain things going on in society that need to happen for society to continue right. the species well th there's i forget what it's called someone has told me before and i've I've forgotten and I forget every time there's this fallacy that's like because the edges of two categories overlap that therefore the categories don't exist or are arbitrary and this is totally bullshit yes and even his example is totally bullshit because he says oh it's arbitrary and it's like well there might be some arbitrary like if you were to take literally every fraction of you know you have your your art program open and you have your color wheel and like, if you have every pixel of color that goes from red to orange, okay, there could be some arbitrary component where you decide as an individual when it becomes red, more red, and when it becomes more orange, like that exact sliver of the line could be arbitrary. However, it's not arbitrary to say that red and yellow are different colors. It's not arbitrary to say red and blue are different colors. It's not arbitrary to say red and green are different colors. That's not an arbitrary thing whatsoever. And so he makes this bullshit argument that just because the edges of the category might have some exact arbitrary dis dividing line means that the entire category is arbitrary. And that's BS. Right. Yeah, the name, even the name of the category can be arbitrary. But there right. are certain elements of the system that cannot be arbitrary they they serve a function it just rubs me the wrong way when he's saying this is all arbitrary it's not right like one of the one of the examples i like to think of is you know you could do the stupid gender breakdown thing that they always like to do where you say well define a man you can do that with like a door okay you say, what, what's the difference between a door and a window and you could kind of run down that whole line of logic and you can get to some very slim on the margins between doors and windows where the line is blurred and there's going to be some arbitrary distinction, but that doesn't mean that there's no difference between a door and a window as a category on a whole. And we all intuitively know, we all intuitively know and understand what this is and what these categories are. Yeah. Well, also just door doors and windows serve functions. So you can't, there's a limited number of ways that you can accomplish the goal of entering and leaving a building, right? You can't, right. it's not arbitrary. But see that, that I'm glad you honed in on that because that is the true thing that actually bothers them here. Okay. Is that you said doors and windows implying a function and for a lot of our categories, not all, but a lot of our categories, that's what the categories are based off of. They're based off of, not a f not their function, but their intended normative function. Right. And what I mean by that is like, if you rip a door off its its hinges and you throw it on the ground, it ceases the function of being a door, right? Correct. It, it, yes. But it's still a door because you're basing it on the category of like you have a nor you have in your mind there's like a bell curve of doors. <laughs> right. And you're like, okay, I know normatively what a door is supposed to do. Right. And what kind of general category it fits. And that's how that's how all of categories and all of words that we create function. There's but it's a, a, it's a non functional category. door. I have I have several. They are out right. behind my garage. They're not hooked up to anything. Right, but it, they don't but go it's, anywhere. It's still a door. 
Right. It's still indoor. And so that's why they make this bullshit argument with, with gender. They say, oh, you know, if a, if a woman loses the ability to, to create children, is she not a woman anymore? If a man loses the ability, you know, to procreate, is he not a man anymore? And it's like, no, there's still men and women. Just, just if you take a door off its hinges, it's still a door. This is not how we categorize things at all as humans. Right. I'm I'm saying that there are certain things when you're when you're out designing things in the world like institutions those usually you want to you want some functionality to that institution like the justice system you want it to deliver justice to people correct correct you can't set that up arbitrarily and have it work, okay? Of course not. Like, right. it, let's say we want our justice system to be set up where we throw dice to decide if someone is <laughs> innocent or guilty, okay? This, this right. is my arbitrary justice system. Now, do you think that that justice system is actually going to achieve justice? I feel that it probably won't. I'm skeptical that that justice system is going to function. <laughs> <laughs> as we as we would desire so this is this is why i'm triggered when vosh says oh it's just our like it's a social justice system is a social construct well yes it is a social construct vosh you are exactly correct we've constructed it to deliver justice which means it can't be arbitrary do you do you understand the difference i understand exactly. yeah <laughs> like, of course it's a giant difference so, well, but that's they, the they come in here and they're yeah. like, oh, this is all this sex and gender. It's just arbitrary. Well, no, when they, it's functional. <laughs> yeah. When they say arbitrary, what they mean is it's not universally objective. It's not like, like nature itself does not prescribe that this has to be this oh, way. Oh God, I'm going to have to look it up. What the fuck does arbitrary mean? <laughs> but I know. I understand. No, they use the word arbitrary incorrectly. Arbitrary. Because it arbitrary generally means random. Yes. Yes. Right. But, th but that's what they, but they use the term incorrectly. They just mean, oh, it's not, you know, God did not prescribe that something has to be this way. So therefore it's arbitrary. It's like, well, that's not ba really what arbitrary Based means. on or subject to individual discretion or preference or sometimes impulse or caprice. So well, you know, my, say, my individual preference for a justice system is that we put people into bags and throw them in the river and see if they <laughs> live or die, okay? That's my personal preference for a justice right. system. That's, for that's what they would say. They would say it's just it's just some group's preferences, so it's arbitrary. Right. Okay. okay. Which is a stupid argument, but that's what their argument. Is. Right. You but you can't achieve you can't achieve a functional system. Any time you set out a function that you want that system to achieve, it ceases to be arbitrary. Mm -hmm. Because there are certain constraints that are going to be provided by the environment. Right. Fine. I can see that to some extent, but with vision, it's still, I mean, perception is still to some extent, it's not as subjective to me as how you feel about your gender. So say with gender fluidity for people, my understanding of people who shift between male and female or are both or neither, and this can change throughout the day, that is purely subjective in terms of their self-report of that, right? It's not marked in anything objective, and that's where I have an issue with it because to me, it just always comes back to what is evidence-based, what's in the data. And when people start straying from that, it makes me wonder, well, why and what, what is the purpose of that? And it's fine if it's fine if people just want to say how, that's how they feel. But when they start to say that this is what science shows, when it doesn't, that's my concern. Well, I don't think people speak to science there. People who talk about gender expression are talking about... You just did! You just said, like, a minute ago that science can't prove that this stuff is rooted in biology. Yeah, he did say that. What the fuck? He goes on later too and just say all the scientific institutions are on his side. Yes, we. it's like there's such a trope where Vosh says, oh, oh, the science says that gender is a social construct. I don't understand how you could say this. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. Subjective experience because the social roles are what they're talking about. You know, if people were fussing about with the biology of sex, that's your one thing. But, you know, I mean, you can ask people, uh, take a five people with like Riley Dennis and other people were dying, but yeah, sure. 
different shades of blue on their shirts. And you ask, you put them in a room, how many color shirts are being worn <sighs> today? It's so you boring, get an answer I know. Five this is like for super boring. Subtle color shades, one, it's two. It's not boring, it's just people dishonest. Say all the same shirt color, fundamentally. Um, it can even change depending on the time of day. You know, some people say their eyes are blue. And no, it's just, it's Voss just talking to talk without saying anything. This is well, the thing that bugs me. It, it's like, it's floundering. Totally. Okay? It's, let me just throw out a bunch of, Nonsense. I can't really make a cogent argument, so let me just throw out so much word goop that hopefully people listening will think I said something smart. Right. Well, and a lot of people will. They'll just be like, I agree with them. That was, why, dummy, why doesn't she understand the color difference thing? Right. <laughs> well, the example unrelated. he brings up, the example he's about to bring up is so bafflingly stupid. Oh, that good. It's like, <laughs> I'm ready for some stupidity. I don't like this. Subtle color colors. Thing. Shades one, two, or what people say that it's all the same shirt color fundamentally. Um, it can even change depending on the time of day. You know, some people say their eyes are blue when they wake up and green when they fall asleep. A lot of that's a trick of the light, but that's a perceptive thing. And of course, gender being <laughs> has nothing to do with anything. So, so <laughs> he says, oh, some people say that in the morning their eyes are blue and at night their eyes are green or something. I was like, okay. And as he, as he said correctly, that their eyes aren't really changing color. It's just that when different shape colors of light or dark or the lack of light, you know, hit your eyes, they look to be a different color, you know, depending on the, on the light situation that you're in. It's like, okay, that has nothing to fucking do with anything. It doesn't even have to do with his, pre his previous example was like, oh, there could be five people in a room with five blue shirts and they're different shades of blue and everyone sees them as different shades of blue. That has nothing to do with the eye color changing fucking example where their eyes aren't changing color. It's just the light, the environment that they're in, the light is making their eyes appear differently. There's nothing to do with anything. Right. He's just saying bullshit, Adam. What is uh yeah, that's the whole that's what's so infuriating about this. It's all nonsense. You could get an app right now that turns me into a woman. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's the same uh, thing as like the light changing, right? I mean, it's right. just it's just a perception change. Gender is not a perception change. Right. But if gender was a perception change, Vosh. But imagine then, if it was. <laughs> right. But this is why, and this is why it's so stupid that he's fucking keeps going back to this bullshit. Okay. If gender was just a perception change, then all that would mean is that people with gender dysphoria would just have to change their perception and they'd be fine. Oh, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Okay. You they wouldn't solved. have to take hormones. You they fixed have it to all. Surgery. Yeah. They just all oh, just change your, just change their perceptions. Okay. That's all you need to do. Just Come over here perception. to this light. Oh, right. yeah, this light. Yeah. Don't you feel more like a boy now? Right. Just put a just put a, a filter over your mirror. That's like the the Well, that's what I was thinking. And there you go. You'll be happy. Yeah. It's so stupid. This is so stupid. It's not perceptual. Deborah, Stop it. Deborah's so, so checked out of this. She's so <laughs> frustrated by this conversation. I, I think she doesn't understand what the fuck he's talking like, about. Why did I ever agree to this? I what know. was I thinking? Uh, yes, Vosh is using the Chewbacca defense. <laughs> yes. What's it? What is that? Is it from South Park? Oh, I did. I the, still uh, watch the Johnny Cochran says, uh, he's defending OJ Simpson and he says, uh, this is like from like first season South Park. And he's like, this is a Wookiee, Chewbacca. Now, Chewbacca lives on Endor with a bunch of little bear creatures. Does that make any sense? <laughs> no, that doesn't make any sense. And if that doesn't make any sense, then my client must be innocent. <laughs> Because that doesn't make sense either. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's exactly what he's doing. Yes. Yeah, it's just to just bring up complete non sequitur and then try to equate the absurdity of the non sequitur to whatever's being argued. The only thing that would make this funnier is if Vosh started playing Elden Ring in the middle of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the ultimate culture clash. You know. Oh uh, my God, you're right. That would be so funny. <laughs> look at that the, would be so funny look at the how can you say that deborah so is not completely just bewildered by this whole conversation look at that look <laughs> that is the look of of just fundamentally being demoralized mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's true
Uh, Lucifer the Doberman, thank you so much for two months. Free will seeker says, I don't need more free will. Can I get my plushies? They're, they're being godded. They're being godded. The plushies are being godded. Yes. Sam, I think Sammy G is working on that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Sammy's working hard. The, uh, I believe it's I not believe, too long though. She said, I think yeah, she's going to get them long. at the end of April. Mm -hmm. There was some problem with the uh, post COVID uh, supply chain stuff. So it kind of fucked everything up. But... Correct. Uh, Rico Zorro for two months. Thank you so much. Says free will doesn't come cheap, but it sure does pay. There you go. There you go. There's your 62 free units of free will just for you. Brian Alman for $50. Thank you so much, Brian. Says I recently learned a channel of videos of garbage trucks has a hundred million more views than Vosh's channel. Literal garbage is better content than Vosh. That's hilarious. I've heard good things about that it's garbage. Funny. That no, garbage okay. truck channel, though. That's true. I that's funny. I don't know if if the logic is good because that would apply to us as well. So. Oh, I know. <laughs> but it's funny. Vosh I appreciate is easily the twice as big. Probably three times as big. Probably. Sammy says the Adam one just shipped out. Oh, okay, great. There we go. Look at that. Shipped out to, to her, I assume, not to everyone. Nice. So that's good. So there that's will good. be some, I'm sure, some naked pictures floating around pretty quickly here. Sammy, Sammy why can't you control China taking forever? Okay. Yeah, I noticed. You, you get, get on that, Sammy. They did, a, they did a a super messed up thing where they they gave her a bid on the project and then raise the bid after we yes. had already done the which is yes. obviously yes. really shitty yeah really shitty i was listening to a live stream ethan van skyver did some toys they did the same thing to him holy shit mm -hmm. if you guys are making stuff or ordering stuff in china just beware they're gonna change the prices on you they're going to quote you one thing, and as soon as you agree, they're going to be like, oh, we forgot. This is going to be double. <laughs> well, at least um, she says, I can say no later than the end of May is when I can ship them out to backers. Okay, awesome. Um, at least they weren't made in, like, Russia, because then you never get them. <laughs> oh, yeah. That could be Ukraine bad. Or something. <laughs> so. Ouch. Uh, Sui's Generous for $20 says, Gender dysphoria is no longer relevant. It's all based on the feels now. Good times. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that's the problem. It's all based on affirmative affirmative care and affirmative care models. Yes. That is a contention of ours, too. Right. Because oh, we're not going to get into that. Thing. No, that's fine. Uh, I want to find Andrew it. Clark yeah. for $20 says, I think that the definition of gender should have a reproduction element. Unless I'm wrong, gender primarily refers to mate attraction. Secondary is group inter integration. Mate attraction will always have utility. What say you? I think you're completely right, Andrew. Those are the two primary purposes of gender, mate attraction and group integration. I think that's completely correct. And I would argue, I mean, I don't know. Mate, is, could you even differentiate group? And I guess you could differentiate group integration from mate attraction. But that does seem to be some primary things there for gender. Yeah. Uh, one Abaddon, thank you so much for joining the free will seeker. Thanks. Thank you. Uh oh. <laughs> Sammy says, I can ship the plushies out faster than Sitch can finish the video for his main channel. <laughs> yeah, what's going on with that? Okay. We is... will, I guess we will see, Sammy. We will game on. May game 1st. Game on. Okay. May 1st. Are you going to drop that video on April 31st at? 11:59 is that what's going to happen? I have till the end of May. I don't know what you're talking about. You have till May 1st. Mm, you we guys changed, we changed the bet. It, we changed it up, yeah. yeah. Well, if you want to change the bet, then that's your fault, I Okay. Guess. It's up to you guys, but Nice. I can't wait. Okay. How much am I I'm supposed to get $500. Really? Oh my yes. goodness. Listen, I warned her. I said I said don't change the bet. I told her. I warned her. I said don't change the bet. But, I'm going to I'm going to really this is great. I can't wait. <laughs> Somehow I don't think I'm going to get paid either way, but anyway. Uh, Death by Sloth, thanks so much for joining 
or for being a two-month member of the Free Will Seeker, says, Vosh is a testament to certitude being a bigger factor of success than correctness. He will get you to the promised land. All it takes is a few dollars. That is true. That is true. He's all about... Um, it, that's why I, I like to call aggressive stupidity. You just as long as you're very certain with what you say, people will just buy it. I guess it's true. I need to <laughs> do CT's, that. CT says sorry for believing in you. <laughs> 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 I told you not to increase the deadline. I told <sighs> you while we were having this conversation on stream. I said keep it to the end of May, which was the original bet, and you were like, no, 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 no. So okay. Listen, that's on you. That's on you. Okay. CT, you want to go double or nothing for the end of May? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Double or nothing to the end of May. I like it. I like now May 1st. They'll say double or nothing to the end of May. Then I like if, it. Then if if you then if you dropped a video, she wouldn't owe me anything, but if you didn't if you didn't drop a video, she'd owe me a thousand bucks. Oh, that's painful. Oh, that's painful. <gasps> we'll just take it out of your editing, out of your editing money. How about yeah, that? see, I feel like this is, I feel like I'm incentivized in the wrong direction here. <laughs> oh, this is bad. This is very bad. <laughs> right? Well, no, I guess though, it'd be, it'd have to be that I, you know, it comes out of my side entirely instead of your side. Oh really? Well, it would, otherwise I would be. Otherwise, it's like like I'm taking a dive. Oh yeah, you're right. Because it wouldn't make any sense otherwise. Yeah, so. you're right. You'd have to pay me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you would pay me for her editing. <laughs> oh God, this is bad. It's Someone's. Bad. I could see someone making an exposed video off of this. <laughs> Such an Adam, don't pay their editors. <laughs> there you go. CT says, "I ain't no coward, double or nothing." So she. There it no, is. I can't do that. There it is. That's, she said no. it. Double or nothing. I mean, I'm. I don't know. Is that good or bad? That kind of gives I, you an opportunity. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll I, see. It sounds like Sitch isn't anywhere close to being. We'll see. We shall see. It sounds like he's, a, there's no way he's going to drop a video by May first. <laughs> Destruction of social it could expectation all be is itself. How come I dropped? I dropped a video before you. What video did you on drop? our channel? Hassan's a dumb fuck. Oh, listen, you had help. Adam dropped a video. You had help. Okay. That was enlightened centrist brilliant work. Okay. You just did some a bullshit. Some, I worked some girls dancing. on that video. You just made some girls dancing. Okay. I made laser. I, I made lasers come out okay. of the Adam and Sitch logo. Yeah, exactly. Enlightened centrist did the music. Okay. To an extent. A perceptive thing. Asshole. I guess at the end of the day, I think that um, the, the the fixation with scientific categorization with something as arbitrary as the fixation with scientific categories. <laughs> what the? I know. Look, imagine. Imagine. Let's just talking... go back to the caves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, imagine you're having a debate with a creationist about whether evolution. Oh, is I, real know. Or not. I know. I know. I don't understand the fixation with science. <laughs> the fixation with the scientific categories. Dinosaurs are the same as birds. <laughs> Your fixation. Just because they have the same number of toes. Your fixation with these numbers. Why are you doing this? Gender will be seen in the long run as obsolete as what we've done with race. Nowadays, by all the... <laughs> This is, oh, I can't stand this argument. I can't stand this argument. This is the whole you were wrong about race, which, I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb here, but Deborah So doesn't exactly strike me as a race realist, okay? She, it doesn't seem like she's out there doing studies on race and IQ. Well, and also what he's saying doesn't apply. The wrong about race wasn't, there, there wasn't, they weren't scientifically wrong to say that, you know, there are people with black skin and white skin, there are people with Asian features, you know, blah, 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 blah. They were wrong to prescribe behavioral characteristics 
on to map behavioral right. characteristics onto those onto those biological skin colors or whatever. Right. Okay. Yes. That's what they were wrong about. They weren't wrong that like you can make these categories. Yes. Yeah. So this doesn't get the comparing gender and race has nothing to do. It's such a bad comparison. And it's just I think it's bad faith. It is bad faith. It is bad faith. Let's just speak of clients, the actual underlying genealogical threads, not the overlying categories. Um, and uh, I think that uh, for the most part, biologists are doing the same now with sex, where they're recognizing sex itself, even as a, as a bimodal biological construct determined by a variety of um, underlying threads. Wrong! <laughs> That is bullshit. Biologists are not sitting here saying there are multiple threads for. S no, they're saying what gametes do you produce, bitch? To produce sperm or eggs. Period. End of conversation. Done. It's so weird too about? because we're not in a blue fading to green situation here. No, I mean it's night and day. <laughs> yes, and then also like again. He just talks out both sides of his mouth. He just said, like, I don't understand why people are so obsessed with scientific categories and biological categories. And then two seconds later, he's like, biologists agree with me. Right. Or he says, oh, I don't think the science can determine this. And then two seconds later, he's like, but the science agrees with me. It's like, what the fuck? He just says whatever. There's yeah. no consistency. This is what sophistry is. Just arguing for the sake of arguing, for building your internet profile. And the gender stuff, we should just leave to the purview of social identity. I have as much interest, I think, in the scientific legitimacy of a person being a woman in a gender sense as them being a gamer, you know, or a, or a pothead. You know, you could measure. You can what? tell. You can tell, Vosh, these arguments are really persuasive for his audience. But he's sitting in front of a PhD researcher now. And he's realizing, okay, these arguments are not great. <laughs> he's not really the the level of confidence that he's throwing these arguments out are just. I mean, it's lackluster to say the least. Right, right. Well, but th oh, this is so dumb, Adam. Oh my God. Right. The male and female is like being a gamer or a goth kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Wait, where are the laws? that prescribe equal treatment for gamers and goth kids. Okay. Well, he, he well, himself even says later on that we can judge people by their political affiliation. We can slander them basically based on political affiliation. Right, which is, that? Obviously, which is totally fucked up. Right. But it's, we, like, the, the, the ca saying that you're a gamer or you're a goth kid or you're a jock or whatever, this doesn't, like society doesn't have to change its rules and organizing principles in order to accommodate that. Accommodate the yeah. fact that you're a fucking gamer or you're a goth kid or you're a right. jock or you're a nerd or what the fuck ever. Right. Okay. When you're talking about what makes someone a man or a woman, we do have sex and gender segregated spaces. We do have sex and gender segregated sports. You know, we do have sex and gender and gender laws that re that equate to and talk about very specific sexes and genders of people and how the law has to interact with them okay you can't fucking compare that to being a gamer that is moronic it is there's no gamer protection act of 1917 okay he's used this argument again and again and again and he thinks it's just just so, so amazing he thinks this is the argument to end all arguments he's like gender and just you know being gender and gaming are just the same. Ident yeah. Any identity is just the same. But Sure, like, you know, gender, the, the basis of reproduction, which is the basis of all fucking life on this planet, that's just an arbitrary category, like being a gamer. <laughs> well, you... <laughs> that's existed in all of human history for thousands and thousands of years. <laughs> right, yeah. The technical... Oh I mean, you're taking away... This is more like saying a person doesn't have to play video games to call themselves a gamer. They can yes. hate video yeah. games and right, call right. themselves a gamer. No, this is like saying that 
if all you do is play mobile games and ma- and color matching games on your phone, then you're really you're just a gamer as anyone else. That's so sad. Who plays Elden Ring or whatever? That's very disappointing, isn't it? You're not a true gamer if you just play color matching. I play Angry games, Birds. Okay? I'm a gamer. Shut up. <laughs> Listen, I am the bejeweled champion, okay? <laughs> exactly. I play bejeweled all day uh, when my kids are at school, yes. Adam. So I am Listen. obviously, you know, a pro gamer. Listen, if you're not shooting at people in full 3D, you're not a fucking gamer. Get out of here, punk. If you haven't run over someone with a car, uh-huh. you aren't a gamer. Get out That's of right. here. Gamers' lives matter. That's right perhaps some genealogical association, but um, I think it's an identity first and foremost and should be treated as such. Look at this. <laughs> he's so, he's, he's like, am I winning? What's going on here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this mm-hmm. might've been an optically a bad choice. He, I went to look at his channel and he didn't upload this. Did he stream it at the same time? I don't know. I have no clue. I and this did. video has next to no views on. Well, her channel's channel is not very big. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I think it's. I think we just have very different ways. Which is unfortunate because I like that, wanting so. to understand. Everyone should subscribe to Deborah So's channel. World. Link is in the description. And so your point about um, Deborah, why don't you come on our channel? <laughs> I'm sure she we would. would we would love to so. talk to you. Yeah. I don't we'll, know. We'll reach I actually don't know what we talk about. So I mean, we'll talk about how she can debate idiots better. This is the thing because it's so obvious that. <laughs> Vosh has established this clout seeking pattern that he only wants to talk to Deborah so because he doesn't he doesn't want to build bridges. He wants to clout farm off of Deborah so. He knows right. that Deborah so is hated in the transgender community because all everything she's talking about goes against their ideology. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and this is just he wants to do the exact same thing that he came on our channel and did to Sargon. But he can't because that would just look terrible. That right. Opti- optically would be a disaster. He kind of does a little bit at the end, though. Right. I don't know. You just made a point there oh, about about sex being bimodal. So the thing with sex and gender, I don't consider them to be spectra or to be um, continua because most people fall predominantly as one or the other, right? If it were a spectrum or a continuum people would fall at any point along the way with equal probability. But what you see is most people are male or female. And then you have a small segment of people who say they are in between or say with intersex people. But intersex we can talk about as well. Um, but I, in that case, I don't think we should be reconceptualizing society for the sake of a small minority. I think we can, we can advocate for them and equal rights for them without having to reconceptualize everything. Well, something doesn't have to be um, uh, equal distribution for it to be a spectrum. Uh, it's really just a spectrum of different characteristics. There are sexual characteristics, of course, which vary to- If one person, Adam, if one person falls outside of these choices, these categories, it means there's a spectrum. Well, th- this is a thing that Heather Hine and Brett Weinstein were, were talking about mm-hmm. it just it's i mean it's just it, this the categorization is sperm maker or egg maker ovum maker right right i mean that's that's pretty much it all these other secondary sex characteristics are superfluous to that right. category yes that's the defining line right there yes but they want to say oh well there's all these other places where they don't quite fit into that category well, those irrelevant. Yeah, they aren't really part of the category. Right. You can be as feminine as you want, and we're still going to call you a sperm maker. Right. I'll bear back. To the extent that you'll have, um, you know, males and females overtake each other. Height, for example, being one of those characteristics where the majority. Of- and then he brings it to height, which is completely irrelevant. Irrelevant. We do not take a person, and as soon as you pass six foot, all of a sudden you're male. That's not. That's completely irrelevant to the category 
Imagine that. You're female your entire life until you hit six foot. And then you're a male. That's not how it works, Vosh. Men are taller than the majority of women. There are, of course, overlap um, quite a bit of it with regards to that. You have more concrete categories like uh, chromosomes, um, you know, gametes and what have you. Um, but even then, you have variances sometimes. The intersex category includes a variety of uh, conditions, which might. Deborah So looks so over this conversation. This conversation is. This is why I think this was. I, I just I feel like this is a miscalculation because this conversation didn't need to take place. This is this is not necessarily a good thing to happen because it does there is a there is a, a this lends a sense of seriousness and credibility to Bosch that I really think he does not deserve in this in this arena, in this conversation. And I really think, you know, separating, separating the serious people from the, from the ideologues, I think is probably a better strategy than just having these kinds of conversations. You're wrong. Whatever you said is wrong. I mean, I think you agree with me. Uh, Sitch agrees agree. with everything that I just said. Just so mm -mm. You know. mm -mm. Do you think this was a this conversation was a miscalculation? I think. I mean, I thought you I said don't, you because did. we get to cover it. Well, yeah. <laughs> we're we're trying to dig in on what are the, some of the stuff. I mean, we're basically just in damage control mode, to be honest with you. I mean, this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Deborah's I don't so, like that. Deborah's so at all. fucked up, so bad in having this conversation. <laughs> That we need to come in here and uh -huh. we need to drop some. Listen, she didn't make uh -huh. one fucking joke the whole time. There you go. There you go. You should have made more jokes, Deb. How? How is that? Like, doesn't she know the power of hu the power of humor, the power of comedy? No, she should have called him a bigot. That would have been funny. She should have called him a transphobe. Oh, she should have said, "I saw what you said to J.K. Rowling, and mm. you're a sexist pig." Yeah, that would have been good. I like all you your, all of your suggestions. Yeah. She should have said, listen, am I stuttering? You seem confused. I <laughs> asked you a question about how you get three genders. What is the what is the technical analysis that's going on here? I don't want to hear right. about somebody that lives somewhere sometime that you may have heard of one time. I want to get your like, your logic behind why you think yes. this is a good way to structure society. Why you think all of society who is just fine with the way things are structured now, why they must bend to your ridiculous preferences. That seems kind right. of authoritarian to me. Are you an authoritarian? <laughs> That's what she and, should have said. And then when he responds with some dumb, another mm -hmm. example or non sequitur, right. she, should, she should pound the desk and say, I wish you'd stop mansplaining to me. <laughs> no, that's a bad suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good suggestion. I don't think that would work. They stop mansplaining to me. This I'm a sex researcher. I know what I'm talking about. What the fuck do you? You don't know shit. I mean, I I would like read a couple, some books. Educate yourself. I would like if she threw out a couple of shut ups. Shut up. There you go. <laughs> shut up. I asked you a question. Shut up already. A normal you, representation in those fields. Did I what? Did, you did, see, I, um, did I read the super chats? No, nah, I didn't. No, no, no. Did you see the converse? I, I listened to part of it. The conversation between uh, Medicare and Nick Fuentes. Of course. <laughs> Come on. We'll t we can talk about that if Such you want. Such a clusterfuck. Okay. Maybe we'll talk about it on Tuesday. Did you see my tweet on it? No, I didn't. The thing, the thing that I thought was so just, I mean, it was adorable. It was so yeah. sweet. <laughs> the whole time. Nick is talking about fuck the rules. Rules don't matter. Fuck that. <laughs> fuck rules. There are no rules, right? Mm -hmm. The end of the debate comes around. And then he carefully articulates the who goes first at the end of the debate rule. <laughs> it's very, it's very, listen, fuck the rules, right? Fuck rules. Uh, 
mm-hmm. but we have to get this right, okay? Like, we don't want the wrong person going first at the end of the right. debate. It really, it, you know, the per, the person who opens up at the beginning of the debate <laughs> sets the rule. Yeah. Well, and it's funny, too, because then he was also, you're right, he was all like, you know, fuck the rules, I'm a rebel, blah, blah, blah. But then he's like, Jim, I can't believe you said what you said about uh, Ralph's family. That was crossing the line. <laughs> I did. I mean, I, I actually thought it was, it was like, what? I mean, it was all, I thought it was pretty good fun to be honest with you. And I thought they were both kind of good natured about it too, in the end. I mean, for all that, fuck the rules. He was like, not going to make, he wasn't going to break the debate rule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fun stuff. Um, but, a, you know, a binary has two options, um, not two with a range in between. And I don't really think that this is of much interest to people outside of, you know, um, biological experts. I don't think any social reengineering is being done around the idea that sex is complicated. Of course it is. You know, we're biological machines. We're unimaginably complicated. We couldn't build one of us um, in a lab if we wanted to. You know, we need the the help of our own genes. One day, God willing. Um, Why does she do that? So bad because she just chimes in long enough to agree with him it's, it's so right. i mean it's this is incredibly just mm, bad, bad optics, optics bad yeah. optics yeah true, true. he's just did, did you just show up long enough to let a mansplain everything it's like mm. uh, it's very bad so given all Bosch is going to go back on his channel and he's going to spin this as a PhD endorsement of everything that he said like he's basically going to walk away and say i vicariously have a PhD by confronting this woman <laughs> with a PhD and having her agree with everything that I said. This this was basically my PhD thesis here. That's mm-hmm. how he's going to mm-hmm. spin this. You know it's true. Maybe. We'll see. I'm curious. If You said oh, he hadn't can... uploaded this on his channel yet, which is kind of fascinating. But Complexity. The idea that sex would be this very complicated and, and, and you know, extremely spectral, not spectral, like on a spectrum, um, concept it isn't that you know alien to me, but I don't think that gets talked about that much. You know, even with the trans stuff, it's really just a gender thing. You know, trans women. This is like okay, not that many people talk about this, even though it's completely talked about and it's like <laughs> the focus of the next election cycle. And you know, books, dozens <sighs> of books are being written about it. They're talking about it on the news every single day. It's Laws like, are being passed to you know, yeah, dictate yeah. how this is talked about in schools, but yeah. no one's talking about this. Ha- millions of people are on TikTok talking about, they don't care what the law is. They're going to teach it anyway. It's right. like, okay, I don't like, there's a whole campaign around don't say gay, which comes in to this talk. It's, but no one's talking about this. I think he's trying to very narrowly say no one's talking about deconstructing biological sex which i would say explicitly that's true but implicitly that's not true because i think i think that is implicit in all this gender deconstruction bullshit is to deconstruct sex on that level and i have heard many a trans activist talk about wanting to deconstruct sex entirely too Bill Nye did that cringy special where he talked about sex being a spectrum and stuff. Yes. What a way to flush your credibility down the toilet on climate change, the thing you've been working on your entire life. (laughs) Listen, if if everyone... Veritasium, how sad was that? If everyone, if, if your whole focus, and Bill Nye has been focused on climate change for like 20 years, okay? If the... The argument against you is that climate change is not real. Okay, it's all made up. It's all fictitious. It coming out and saying biological sex isn't real isn't a good rebuttal to that. I mean, that's it's not going to. Well, he, say, any he, he didn't say that. He said like gender. He he gave the whole gender is a spectrum. Yeah, gender unicorn spectrum. You know, blah, 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 stuff. Yeah, you flush. That's flushing right. your credibility down the toilet. Right. On, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Don't go around arguing that they're biologically the same as cis women. If they did, then they wouldn't want to transition, of course. You know, there's an acknowledgement. What is trans women are women if it's not mm-hmm. arguing that biologically they're the same? What is exactly. all this stuff about talking about male periods or feminine penises? 
Exactly. I'm yeah. glad you pointed it out because I thought he's completely contradicting the whole trans women or women uh, rhetoric. Yeah. Of an underlying uh, you know, biological distinction. But I see, so again, I don't think that the most vocal trans activists necessarily speak for everyday transgender people or everyday, the average trans woman. But I have seen some activists saying that they are biologically female or they are biologically male because they identify as that sex. And I think that has implications for society more broadly, because especially in the way that this is being taught to kids, I think for some people, they don't realize that sex is real. It's not, I mean, some people will say that sex is socially constructed. And I, th again, I think if people want to have a, a conversation, a conversation about these ideas and tease them apart as we're doing here, that's great. But when it's actually being taught and spoken about, like it's true, there are going to be negative implications of that because it's not true. <laughs> Here's the thing. Oh, stick. Here's the thing that I didn't realize until she said, it. she says something that's brilliant. Uh -huh. later in this conversation that I, I was kicking myself for never bringing up, which I, I won't spoil. But what she said just made me think of something that's also, I'm kicking myself for never have brought it up. Okay. Vosh's argument about why gender is a social construct and why race is a social construct could also equally be applied to sex. Right. One hundred percent, because all he'd have to say is, I'm not saying that chromosomes aren't real. I'm not saying that certain people producing certain gametes aren't real. All I'm saying is that it's a social construction for society to lump all the sperm producing people in one category and all the egg producing people into another category. Right. That means sex is a social construct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you could use his same dumb logic for sex. And yet here he is pretending and denying like that. You can say no one's saying sex is a social construct. Of course, sex is a social construct. Yeah. But under his own logic, it is. Dumb. Logical consistency, Sitch. Why must you insist on it? It's so bigoted of you. Oh, I know. Being consistent Never. is part of the evil white hegemony or whatever. Never insist on ideological consistency. <laughs> so listen soy. Believe. I listen. Just listen and believe to the personal experiences. Okay. Why does objectivity matter? My, my personal experience is more important than your objectivity. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Let's get back to the soy filled <laughs> debate. I can't believe she labeled this is, I feel like a little bit clickbaity. She put mm. debating Vosh and she put debating, which is a good tactic, putting debating right. in all caps, but. Right, right. Is this really oh, listen, debating? Our, our, our title is a little clickbaity too. So we you know, always go, but it's different. We're in the culture. <laughs> oh, this I is see. the I, thing. This is the thing. I see. Like, she's, are you saying she's appropriating our clickbait culture? Is that what you're saying? A little bit. Yeah. I'm <laughs> going gonna, gonna to let it pass because I don't, I feel like I'm not, uh -huh. I don't buy any of the argument, the cultural appropriation arguments. Mm. I think they're soy, soy beta cuck arguments. I don't like, like, we should be appropriating culture. <laughs> like good culture, <laughs> good culture should be shared freely and widely. So I don't believe in gatekeeping culture. I don't like that idea. I can't. Sit should be able to say the N word. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't want like I don't want to go too far here. I can't speak to every uh, trans activist out there, but having been. Uh, radical lefty for some time the only time i can ever remember a person sincerely arguing that there's no real such thing as a sex difference no difference between men and women trans cis women whatever was some reddit thread where they were getting lies <laughs> i mean yeah riley lies. dennis made riley a video, dennis made a video mm -hmm. on this yeah right many people made a video and as i said vosh's own logic sex is a social construct so Just uh one fuck reddit you. thread the only yeah this is oh, a see. weird argument too. It's like nobody's making this argument. It's just it's a it's a completely 
uh, immaterial argument. This is not really a thing that's happening. So arguing against it is pointless. She's arguing mm -hmm. against it because people are literally making the argument, Bosch. If no one was making the argument, we would all be very happy. Okay. Right. That would that would be a win. Please tell people to stop making this argument. Don't say the don't word it like people are not making this argument. Say come out with a strong position and say I think this argument is fucking stupid. And I wish people would quit making this argument. And if you are making this argument, you're a fucking moron. That should be your position, not the position, oh, I, I only saw it on a Reddit thread one time, right? That should, <laughs> that's not the way you make this argument. Bosch is about strength, right? Mm. Why is he making this milly mouth argument? Why, Sid? Because he's talking to Deborah So. Yeah, but he, it would be stronger if he said, listen, I think this argument is stupid and people should stop making it. I disagree with this argument. That would be good. Hmm. All of a sudden, all the Bosch fans would stop making that argument. And they'd all unsubscribe to his Patreon at the same time. <laughs> that would be the problem, right? That's why. You just answered your own question. Being dogpiled by the comments. I don't know if it's something held seriously, a position held by many. I, I can't argue anecdotes with you, of course, but the idea that the trans community or even the trans activists are of that position, I think, is highly overstated, or a conflation often held and enforced by conservatives, you know, because trans women will go, well, trans women are women, and conservatives will go, huh, well, how can you be a woman if you have no womb? Which is itself a conflation of the gender sex divide right there. Trans women aren't saying they have a womb. Um, they don't to my knowledge, I mean, you know, maybe somehow some of them do. Um, but uh, to I've my, I've seen some, but I won't hold you to that. Yeah, right. You know, to the vast majority don't. I imagine the conservatives play that game where by performatively denying the distinction between gender and sex, they can pretend that trans people are just woefully unaware, delusional. This is so thick. <sighs> yeah, the levels of bad faith are off the charts. I don't. I don't know why this seems to be a specifically leftist debate tactic i couldn't think of a of this happening on the right maybe someone in the chat can where leftists will create a term or a phrase i guess i guess some people on the, on the far right can do it like with the, it's just a joke so maybe that's the equivalent but on the on the left on the far left they'll create a term or a phrase that's very extreme and then they'll try to gaslight people into saying it doesn't mean what it obviously means so the perfect example of this is defund the police Right. So they come up with this defund the police and everyone goes, well, that's fucking crazy. Why should we defund the police? And they try to gaslight you and say, no, 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 no. Defund the police doesn't actually mean defund the police. It actually means that we just want to reallocate resources from the police <laughs> into like, you know, helping, uh, you know, social workers and psychologists and, and training. And but it's like, OK, that's bullshit because it's defund the police. And the fact that that term flatly says what it says shows that this phraseology was created by radical extremists. And instead of telling the radical extremists to fuck off, you're basically placate them, placating them and carrying water for them by trying to gaslight everyone into thinking it means something different. And it's the same thing with trans women or women. Because like, okay, well, what does that mean on its face to the Republicans that, you know, or the conservatives that he wants to straw man? If you say a trans woman is a woman, what you're saying is, is that there's no categorical distinction between a trans woman and a cis woman. That's what that phrase means. And yet we're playing this gaslighting game where it's like, well, no, actually it means something completely different than what it actually stated purpose means. Right, yeah, carrying water is the perfect term because that's exactly what it is. They, He knows what's going on. He knows yes. that this is, I mean, I would make the argument 50% of the reason why they like that term is because they know it triggers a certain subset yes. of conservatives. Yeah, that's like that's the whole point, point yeah. of it is to trigger the conservatives. Right. So to say, oh, you know, they're needlessly triggered because obviously, you know, we're just, we don't actually believe that trans women are categorically indistinguishable from cis women, even though that's what we said. <laughs> sure. And there was, I mean, and part of how we know that this is bullshit is this came up I think last year when we were in the, the, the whole cycle of, is it transphobic to say that you won't date a trans woman mm -hmm. categorically? And there was this argument that there is no distinction between a trans woman 
and a cis woman. And if you're making a distinction when it comes to dating preferences, that means you're a transphobe because you're denying their reality as being the same as a cis woman, essentially. That was the argument put forward. Right. So it's like, it's just, it's so, I hate how all these conversations are just so, they're all word games. It's all gaslighting. Dishonest. It's all dishonest. It's like just dishonest. Say what you fucking believe and then we can argue about it. Okay. Why do we have to hide everything through 10? It's like, you know, the fringe race realists hiding everything behind 10 layers of irony. And then we have like the leftist Marxists have to hide everything hide behind all the gender yeah, stuff. Yeah. 10 layers of like word games and gaslighting. It's just. They do it. They <sighs> have to do it. This it's. Politics right. is ultimately a game of dishonesty. It really is. Well, it's they have to do it because their beliefs are so outside of the Overton window of acceptability that if they just said what they believe, everyone would instantly be turned off. Yeah. So they, they have to play all these games. Yeah. Vosh is, Vosh is, what Vosh is thinking is, I'm in front of, I'm in front of Deborah So's audience. Some of them probably, it's like some Joe Rogan people will probably be watching this and I need to seem reasonable so I can get on Joe Rogan next. Mm -hmm. Can you, I might, I might be suicidal if Osh gets on Joe Rogan. I'm just warning you ahead of time, Sitch. It would I might be... lose all faith in humanity. I hope I, uh, yeah, it's funny. I, I hope not. I hope, I really hope not. I oh, hope not. Oh, man. Oh, man. That it immediately not. goes from being funny to being completely I dark. I know. I know. I don't, that can't, that can't happen, right? I mean, that's it. A, could happen. And <laughs> it, it could happen. Um, but this is why, really, this is why I think this Deborah So talk is such a massive fuck up. I really do. Right. Because this opens up the door to that. It really you're does. probably right. You're probably right. Well, on one hand, it kind of does, but on the other hand, it doesn't because it's like it's weird because you have like your Deborah Sows and you have your your authors mm -hmm. and your people who are like experts on Joe Rogan. And they're seen as like more legitimate than Vosh or us, even though you know we have bigger internet presences and bigger internet audiences. Right. Yeah. And so but the question is, like, you're saying that just by talking to Deborah So, does that legitimize Vosh? And I'm not sure it does. I'm not sure it does. But I understand your concern because I share it. I think it does to some extent. This is a thing. Maybe. We, I mean, we should be better at this. But I just, I don't. I mean, our shows. <laughs> I, I don't know. Let's move on. <laughs> I just, I, I'm like, I don't. What? <laughs> A, I and if, I don't know that we could have an interesting conversation with Deborah So because we agree with her on everything. I think we could. I think we could. Um, it would be about this conversation in the way that that gender is talked about right. publicly. Would be what our conversation because we all because we I assume we agree almost you know ninety nine percent on like the facts of sex and gender. So. I feel like we're one meme away from winning this thing just outright. I feel like there's just there's one one idea that can be summed up in just a simple meme. It's mm. got to rhyme though. It's definitely it, rhyming see. is important. I see. Yeah. I do feel like we're close though. We haven't Vosh, we don't have a good nickname for Vosh. I was that quackademic agent is just so satisfying and fun to say i see right. people saying it all the time that's the key the people say voosh but that's not as funny we, we do need a funny nickname quackademic agent though says it all i mean that it immediately it that takes that takes your reputation just right. and just pisses all over it basically i mean right but like, the, the name lends itself yeah so nicely to the yeah. to it so sleepy joe was never that good Lion Ted was like, okay, there's, I mean, there's no moral valence to taking a nap. No, I disagree. Sleepy Joe was a good nickname because it, 
you're saying, oh, he's an, he's an old man. Right. He's not fit to, to he's not healthy and fit Falling to serve Falling asleep office. on the job. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's a good nickname. Hmm. Delusional, you know, that they, you know, they somehow seem to believe they're biologically the same as, uh, you know, the cis counterpart. But um, that's, I, I just don't think that's the case. How about terrorist Vosh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just spitballing here. I think that for the most part, especially these days, trans people are increasingly <laughs> comfortable. Alexi Time says Irish fatty. See, that's, I mean, that's going to make... Name, his name used to be Irish Laddie, so... That's going to make him more Irish popular, fatty. though. That's going to make him more popular. <laughs> Irish fatty. People call him Vosh Limbaugh, which I think, I mean, that's a step in mm. the right direction. Vosh Limbaugh is a good one. It That's a good one. I've never heard sense. that one before. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? No. That makes total Bosch sense. Limbaugh's a good one. That actually works on a lot of levels because he, he's, you know, they look, he looks kind of like bombastic. Yeah. Fat. Always angry. drugged out. He has that internet. Uh, he's that anger. The kitty catcher of Kiev. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, Death by Sloth, thank you so much for two months joining, uh, being a free will seeker. Uh, White, thank you so much for two months of being a free will seeker. White says, I'm back just in time for this wonderful stream after visiting Disney World. Hopefully it won't be the last. RIP Disney's tax haven. There wow. I'm sure we're going to talk wow. about that on Tuesday. But... Disney World. I know. Yep. Uh, hey, Aiden. Aiden for $10. Thank you, Aiden says, so Vosh Limbaugh, I added that, is very concerned with the spectrum of gender present in less than 1% of the population, but not with the small percent of, say, trans women who think they can menstruate and are bio women. Curious. Hmm. Smiley face. Exactly. Yeah, there's no, there's no consistency. There's no consistency whatsoever. But. With... Uh, the, the the biological reality of things, the fact that they're not the same as a cis man or a cis woman in terms of, you know, where they'll be even after a, a, a medical transition. Um, and I think that's a wonderful thing, of course, you know, I don't think that a woman just has to have a, a, a womb or what have you, you know, whatever range of biological accoutrement people decide they're happy with, I think is a wonderful thing. I think that's great if that's the case, but I wonder then why is it we don't see more of those voices more prominently? I think we do. Honestly, the only place I see other voices are when they're being signal boosted in conservative discourse. I know that the position that gender is something which is a product of identity, but sex is a uh, you know, largely binary and, you know, discrete separate category is held, for instance, by basically every medical association in the West. Um, that um in terms Wait of the broader now the science matters sitch yeah large are it, when they're being signal boosted in conservative discourse i know that the position that gender is something which is a product of identity of its sex is uh you know, largely binary and you know discrete separate category is held for instance by basically every medical association in the west <laughs> is it Yes, of course. Of so, course. So he, she was saying, why can't the more reasonable voices be propped up in the community? And Vosh is saying, oh, they are being propped up in the conservative community. No, no, no. He said the conservatives are, are cherry picking the extremists and propping them up. And that overall, the trans community is uh, the voices that are being propped up are the moderates, okay. which is funny because jump cut to the clip of Vosh saying that the trans community on the internet is full of crazy psychopaths that are all toxic and terrible. Right. Yeah. He's acknowledged that the crazies are running the show. Right. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. Take, take him saying that and then jump cut to him saying the exact opposite in a different situation. So it's, 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 all, it's all the bullshit, but I know that the, the, the med, I don't know what when he, he always makes these grand claims, the medical community, I, you know, they all say that gender is based on your identity. It's like, no, 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 mm -hmm. no, 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 no. no. The, both APAs have completely different definitions of gender from each other. Completely different definitions of gender from each other. There's really? no magical consent. Yes. 
There's no magical consensus on, on any of this stuff. There's two APAs and they have different definitions of gender? I've said this like a million times. American Psychiatric and American... American psych Psychological. Yeah, they have really? completely different <laughs> definitions of gender. Hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. Right. So the psychologists and the psychiatrists don't even agree on gender. Yeah. Those science the is totally on your side, Bosch. Boosh. The, the, psych the psychiatrists say the, the, the general consensus, which is that sex is just your, your genitals and your gametes, and gender is everything else. And they explicitly say, it's funny, the, the psychiatrists explicitly say that they say, unlike social constructionist, <laughs> really? gender is uh, you know, related to biology. Wow. And then the, the psychologists, they're just making a, a categorical distinction where they want to determine, they want to say that anything that is a cultural distinction, not even an identity, what is a cultural distinction is gender, but they... But they, but they do acknowledge that there are biological sex differences. They just call them sex differences. And, I mean, uh, behavioral differences. They just call them sex differences instead of gender differences. Really? So, okay. Yeah. I mean, so no one agrees ways. with Vosh, really. But no. There's a lot of ways to cut this social yeah. construction yep. up. Yep, yep. But not arbitrary ways. Well, no, don't go none that of, far. None of the, none of the actual non-social constructionists, so like all the real doctors, none of them buy the social constructionist nonsense whatsoever. They don't even use the frame. Right. I don't even think they use the term social construct either, which is unfortunate. The term social, like the term assigned gender at birth has been snuck into our oh, I hate that. Yeah. linguistic consciousness and it never should have been. Right. And I think Brett Weinstein and Heather High bring this or Heather Hayes bring this up. Um, where they say, No, 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 gender is not assigned, it's observed. Yeah, and I And that's say the that. way it should yeah, right. And that's the way it should be conceptualized. And unfortunately, they've snuck in they've snuck in assigned at birth. They've also snuck in this concept of social construct, which is really kind of a a fringe con a fringe concept in the first place anyway. It's just the entire concept of social constructions. So Yeah. Then gender is now being reassigned in elementary school. Right. Which right. is awful. Um, that um, in terms of the broader activism, I, I mean, I can't speak to every, you know, college professor on TikTok, but um, <laughs> it, that is definitely the recurring theme here. Um, it, people who disagree, not to speak this of you or whatever, but broadly, I mean, I would wonder where they're getting their information from because uh, the only place I see otherwise really is, um, is, is, is these conservative spaces where they're incentivized to elevate the voices they think are worst representatives of their, you know, opposition. This is, this is so ironic because where they're getting their information from is you, Vosh. <laughs> like, Right. So many of these people are getting information from you, and you're doing the exact same thing you're accusing conservatives of doing, elevating the most toxic voices. Well, well just, actually trying to turn moderate voices into toxic voices is more accurate, but go ahead. I just think it's funny that you just, you just jump to, um, again, just jump cut to Vosh talking about how much he hates trans activists online <laughs> after saying all this stuff. <laughs> He's like, oh, this is his straw man's by conservatives. Jump cut to Vaj saying, oh, trans activists are fucking crazy. Blah, 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 blah. These loud voices are so toxic. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. Okay, Vaj. Okay, Vaj Limbaugh. He's not worried about getting fact-checked on any of this. No. Can you say that last point again in terms of what you feel medical associations generally put out as their messaging? Obviously not every single one, but just Ooh. as a broad theme. But for the most part, it seems like the sort of the recognition of the validity of trans people. I know the APA, the American Medical Association of um, American Academy of Pediatrics. I don't know if you noticed this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Vosh said, you know, he made his aggressive, stupid claim that all the medical associations, they all agree that this gender sex distinction exists to the same way that he thinks they exist. And she's like, oh, really? Who specifically are you talking about? And then he completely changed. He said, oh, well, you know, they all affirm transgender exists. It's like, wait a minute. That's not what you said. You said that the differences between gender and sex were all recognized. And now you've changed the subject matter to, oh, no, they all affirm that transgender people exist. Well, she's not trying to get him, though. She said broadly. I think she's trying to get him to be specific about something. And so since then why he knows she say he can't, broadly? Because he... 
because he knows or he knows before I answer that, he knows that she he can't specifically answer that question. Right. He so that's why he difference. changed. Yeah. Well, that's why he changed the subject to being, oh, well, they all affirm that transgender people exist, which is true. But that's not what was asked. That's not what he said. Does Vosh know that there's a, two APAs? Probably not. I mean, I just learned it from you, but I'll remember it right. because I got a good memory. Because it's funny. And it is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. The but, psychiatrists uh, no, I, I, and the I, I, psychologists I, I, are like, listen, we're medical doctors, okay? You psych, psychologists, you can go over there. So, the fact, many, so many of these people <laughs> are territorial like that. Well, it, it is the fact that there's two APAs because they're both too fucking pissy to change their names is pretty hilarious. <laughs> like, I'm trying to, I don't remember which, I think the psychiatrist one came first, but I'm not 100% sure. Right. And it's just basically, but they were both, I think, very similar to time when they were found. So it's very clear. Like, it seems like there's like a pissing contest between, like, no, 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 where the APA? No, no, where the APA? It's like, okay. Go on, guys. Just change the phone. Someone change their name. Okay. Well, if, it is a good strategy to, if one institution is already reputable, to just piggyback off of their reputability when you start your right. new institution. Right. I it's guess. It's like if, you're, if your name is Harvard, <laughs> like, my name's Harvard. What? I'm sure there's a big list out there somewhere, but... Um, that broadly they, they affirm the validity of trans people, the idea that gender is something that can be identified with and changed. Um, but I, I don't believe any of these organizations, um, the American, yeah, yeah, I don't think any of them verify the idea that like there's, that sex can just be instantly changed or flipped over, that there's no discrete differences between men and women. How can you be a gender abolitionist and talk about gender being changed? That's completely confusing to me. Shouldn't we just abolish um, the concept of gender? If gender is the behavioral norms of certain sex categories and you want to abolish those those you know, constraining gender, traditional gender norms, just get rid of the concept of gender. I think I have heard, I made a joke about this, but I'm pretty sure actually I have, I do have some vague memory of Vosh saying that he is a gender accelerationist. And that he does want, he, the reason he supports all the million genders is because he thinks it will ultimately destroy the concept of gender. Really? Fascinating. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's the answer. Or cisgender or transgender. Um, uh, certainly transitioning changes some sex categories, you know. I mean, you can only, you can only inhale so much estrogen before some sexual categorizations uh, your body adheres to begin to change. But um, yeah, I just, I just don't think that's very common messaging. He keeps trying these jokes out on her, and she's just not biting. She's <laughs> completely stone faced the whole time. He does. He's throw. He is trying to throw some. That was definitely an attempt, don't you think? Maybe. Maybe. You can only inhale so much estrogen before. She's like, "This is not funny." I was canceled. So, how would you define what is a woman? Um. I would say that woman is sort of a social archetype that people choose to adopt, um, like a kind of like an identifier. That... <laughs> How is that not cultural appropriation? Oh my god! Well, say that. Just to... Say that about any racial category. He, he spent the last thirty minutes saying, "No, listen, listen, Doctor Deborah. So I agree with you. There is." you know, biology inherent in gender. He spent the last 30 minutes trying to say this, okay? And then when she says, well, what's a woman? He says, oh, it's a social identity people choose to adopt. <laughs> the fuck? Like, it just, the contradictions are off the chart, okay? Yeah, usually. Could you, could you ever say black is a social identity that people adopt? No. Black is an identity that's thrust on you by society and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. This, is, this is just so... That they want to be known by. Yeah. This is what's fascinating, though, because this is... I mean, this is a religious cult here. This is where the cult comes out. It's like she just looked him in the eye and said, 
you know, if, what are some of the what are some of the things I we <laughs> I feel bad. I feel like I'm beating up on Christianity just because I know Christianity. Mm -hmm. But there's got to be some other crazy shit out there that they ask people to believe that is just just beat up on like Scientology or I don't know Mormons what the Scientology or... stuff is though. They you, Satan's they, are they real? They, and all of a sudden he's like, oh no, I have to say Thetans are real. Well, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be like him saying that you're confronting him saying Scientology is stupid. You believe that Thetans are like the ghost souls of aliens latch onto your body and they give you negative emotions. And then he spent the last 30 minutes saying, no, 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 no. Thetans are just like a metaphor for, right. you know, negative emotions and learning to let go and all that stuff where you hold the e-meters and, you know, you walk through your repressed memories. That's just psychotherapy. Okay. There's no magic there. And then after 30 minutes of saying that, he says, well, Thetans are magic aliens that were <laughs> lost into a volcano by Xenu. And you're like, wait, you just said it was a metaphor. Stop. Yeah. She did ask I mean, him right out. You, you can't say that gender is rooted or has based in bio. Like he, it's so disingenuous. It makes his whole argument, this whole bullshit social construction, Martin Bailey were... Oh no, I'm just saying that, you know, we're choosing like race. We're just choosing the boundaries of something rooted in biology. You can't say all of that and then contradict your entire fucking argument for a half an hour and say, well, women choose to be gender, gender, something you choose. Well, how does this match up in the feminist context too? I mean, I've heard Vosh the, make videos talking about how women are oppressed by society. If you Adam, just choose, did you choose to be white? No, I didn't. Did you choose to be a man? No, it was thrust upon me by... I see. By an evil I world. See. I see. Okay. Fair enough. I didn't choose. I was assigned at birth. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Adam, did you choose to be a boomer? Stupid fucking doctor. <laughs> Cuck doctor. <laughs> he I, made you... A, the doctor made you a boomer? Is that did I saying? choose to be a boomer? No, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't choose any of this shit. Listen, I was supposed to be 200 feet tall yeah. and in the body of Optimus Prime, okay? <laughs> this is fucked up. This is totally <laughs> fucked up. I'm not used to being this short, okay? Uh -huh. I'm 200 feet <laughs> tall, motherfucker. <laughs> And Listen. if we don't identify you as a 200 foot tall Optimus Prime, we are offending you and denying your. I karate kick bridges. Okay. <laughs> Fucking Golden Gate. <laughs> I'm coming for you. I demand that when I walk by, everyone starts acting like, like they're shaking because the ground is tremoring because I'm so tall. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> Feel sorry for me. I have body dysmorphia. There you go. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of conflation here because people get assigned this, that, the other at birth, which means that you sort of grow up with a set of roles and definitions before you're old enough to have any opinion on the subject, really. See, that's why they want to get them young right there. Yeah, but this is, yeah, exactly. You're, that's exactly why they want to get them when they're young and indoctrinate them. But he just contradicts everything he's saying. He's talking about both sides of his mouth. Oh, it's not bio no, biological. It's just the patriarchy thrusting this evil, you know, gender roles onto you and gender norms onto you. All of this is just very small NPC scripts that run whenever you ask it a question. Well, you're, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe he just has a series of dialogue trees and it scripts. It does. And he hasn't, he hasn't, uh, you know, checked the scripts against each other to see if there's any contradictory bugs. If, if you check, <laughs> so. if you check the scripts against each other, the whole thing <laughs> just shuts down. <laughs> <laughs> the Vosh system, Vosh.exe crash. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> it's impossible. He just starts screaming at the chat, <laughs> getting red faced. Um, but it, at least when we're talking about, you know, gender as an identity, you know, what people care about when they're older, that's what I think of. It's it, like being a woman, you know, what does it mean to be a woman? Um, it, it's it's how you think of yourself and how you want the world to think of you. It's, it's a sad. This is so fucking insane that he's sitting here. He's sitting across from a biological woman and he's going to fucking mansplain to her what it is to be a woman. Yeah. 
Yep. Yep. Okay. This is fascinating. Hmm. I mean, I've heard an argument made by social justice advocates about how society really judges you and you can't do anything about that. Mm -hmm. It seems like those arguments would go in nicely here. That's which board that's, slung around your neck. Uh, that's the quitter uh, with, attitude. You can that? always do something. That's the quitter attitude. You can always do something about it. You can change. You can change how people perceive you, of course. No, I agree, but they're contradicting their argument that you can't really do anything about that. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Well, we've, they're not. We've done a lot to do something about that. Sure. They're not just saying that, like, you can't change the way society thinks about you. They're saying, like, society brainwashes you essentially to think in certain ways about yourself, is what he's saying. Right. Yeah a set of identifiers to be considered by i think people do this with a lot of things not just gender you know but i think gender is sort of with gamers and goths so when self-identification are there any areas in which you think biology should play more of a role than self-identification this is where like, this well, is where you're talking with your doctor about fuck. uh your this is where it starts this is where to get fuck. good now this is where it starts to get good because if you read the I can't remember the name of the author. Here, I'll look it up. The book, Trans. Helen, I can't, I think it's Helen mm, something. Meyer? Meyer? She makes, she really breaks this down in the last half of the book about mm -hmm. the political debate is really over biological categories versus self-identification. And the trans yes. activists are really trying to get society to accept self-identification over biological of reality let's say right right and deborah so obviously knows that that distinction is important she hones in on it directly she asks him a direct question about it i am unconvinced that vosh even understands that that is the nexus of the entire political debate i because i don't think he's actually read any of the pertinent literature on this well even if he understands it, he wouldn't say he wouldn't admit to it, and that that is the the nexus of the. Debate. I think he would simply just to show off that he knows something. Because mm. I think he's that's, a complete I think, narcissist. Of no, because I he think would. that that being the key issue being debated here is part of the gaslighting. That's part of what's being kept intentionally hidden. Well, she does say that the the activists she she makes a compelling case in the book that the activists are really not looking to achieve some sort of democratic support so that they can pass legislation. They want to pass legislation in the dead of night because there's, they know that there's no way to achieve popular support for the right. kinds of things they're advocating right. for. Well, though I, I do wish uh, Dr. So would point out Dr. that Vosh is just contradicting himself left and right. And what he's saying is completely nonsensical because he's just contradicting himself left and right. He's just saying, like, it feels like he's just, like, it feels like the whole first 30 minutes of this conversation was just to try, because he knows he can't argue, uh, you know, against the points when he's talking to her. So he basically just concedes everything and then he just switches gears, like midstream, and hopes nobody notices, I guess. Helen Joyce is the author of trans okay the book is trans propensity for given conditions you know i obviously i think trans people should be upfront with their doctors about the fact that they're trans um outside of that i just in in terms of people's decision making i i don't think biology plays that much of a role in so far as it supersedes people's um your right to choose for themselves you know obviously biology plays a huge role in a ton of stuff that we do day to day but uh, you know if, if you make the choice to act against the sort of stereotypical categorization down that role then i think that's fine i don't really think it hurts anyone to do that but <laughs> it doesn't hurt anyone <laughs> it's it's not there it, it change when you want to change all of society to basically match your preferences that can have negative effects on things hell yeah you have to construct a better argument than well you know i don't think it hurts anyone I was like well yeah it does yeah it does hurt people she brings it, it up yeah yeah 
It's going to hurt all the false positives. It's going to hurt all the women in sports that are going to get demolished right. by trans women. But there's not that many, Sitch. <laughs> yeah, there's not that many. Yeah, not that many. There's not that many. It's like, okay, we'll see. We'll see when the numbers are exploding. We'll see. We'll see. The, so the not the not that many argument is completely specious because it's setting up bad incentives because if you're going to pursue a professional athletic career you have to put so much time and energy into that that you are going to that's going to uh, interfere with your calculus on whether or not you even pursue it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the the tangible harm that this is going to do to women's sports. So right. The the interest in women's sports is going to dry up. Well, yeah, from from the the athlete's perspective. Right. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, and especially with sports, which is so, you know, professional sports is so heavily selected towards the top you know one percent of the distribution curve right that yeah any advantages like being a trans woman is going to just rocket you know all you know the tiny you know amount of trans women to the top of these of these distribution curves correct so. but it's also going to discourage all of the biological women who Right. stand a reasonable chance of standing on that number one podium from even participating. Mm -hmm. That's true. But listen, you know, fuck, it's so weird because it's like, oh, this doesn't hurt anyone. You know, it doesn't matter. It's just such a small amount of the population. It's like, well, then how come 50% of the population has to basically be screwed over to placate and even like, you know, this like less than 1% of the population? When it because, comes to the sporting thing. Because. Because that's our that's the preference of Vosh. <laughs> Sitch. His arbitrary preference, you mean? This is his arbitrary preference for there you. There you go. There yeah. you go. There you yeah. go. Listen, I thought his I thought his I thought he said his underlying goal here was to create the most happiness for the most people. So I that seems a little contradictory. This seems here. like the opposite. This seems like yes. trying to create the most unhappiness for the biggest yes. number of people. Hmm, like we want to indoctrinate your children at school. We want. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Oh, I'd be so terrified right now if I was dropping my kid off at public school. I would be terrified. I would not be having good, sound night sleeps. <laughs> oh, what about? Where should we start? Maybe sports. Do you think with sports there should be any importance placed on biology or biological differences? Uh, sure. Well, there already has been, of course. Uh, you know, we, we we separate men and women. Women in the Olympics have that testosterone cap. They're not allowed to exceed, um, which is a interesting can of worms right there. The transports thing is complicated. Um, there's varying <laughs> evidence here. Obviously, if you take estrogen for long enough, it it's destroys your muscles. I mean, God, if you've ever seen a trans woman or like arm wrestle with one, you, you destroy them, you can tear them apart. They're taking bone. Listen, he's making the argument that trans women are easy to beat. That's his argument. There you go. That taking all of these cross-sex hormones makes him so beatable. What the fuck? This is bizarro world here. <laughs> this is bizarro. Well, he's trying world to say, here. yeah, he was trying to say that you know, there's that if you're on cross sex hormones long enough, you lose any advantage you do for being male at some point in your life, which is not even remotely true. And the science is completely against this idea, but it doesn't matter. The, the selective science choosing here. Yeah, cherry picking, obviously. Right. It seems almost like he's post hoc rationalizing after he's already <laughs> made up his decision. He has a right. certain, Im, uh, he has a certain intuition, a certain preference right. for a certain outcome, and there's only cherry picking evidence that fits that outlook. Weakening juice. It's incredible. Um, so you know, take a few years of that. Nobody's going to be performing as well. Um, there are some 
products of um, higher androgen sensitivity prior. He, he knows he's bullshit. He totally does. Of course he does. And the, well, the blank, did you hear the angry way he... stare from so is so good. <laughs> did you hear the way he phrased that? He said, if you're, he said, if you're on estrogen, you know, no one's going to do as well. Or no one's going to do as they were doing, which is like, right. okay, but that's not the argument. The argument is, will they do better than cis women? Right. So yeah, he knows that this is bullshit. That's why he's he's phrasing things very carefully. But and, and spoiler alert, cis women are on estrogen. Okay, their body produces it naturally. <laughs> I, like, what the fuck? Right. What, what the fuck? Well, that I mean, it's weird because yeah, this completely contradicts his entire. He's like, oh, being on estrogen is just you know, it just weakens you entirely. It's like, okay, yeah. well. Don't you think that someone who's gone through male puberty, especially who is now doing something that women have been doing their entire fucking lives, obviously there's going to be a difference. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what are we talking about? This is insanity. Prior to transition, which carry over a post transition, I think bone density is a big one. Wingspan and height um, are averages that don't um, cleanly, you know, uh, recede back to the average for females, stuff like that. It's, it's a complicated question in terms of the, what harm is done, right? Right now, the available existing harm of trans women participating in women's sports is effectively nil. There are, we've heard a couple of headlines over the past five or six years, but it's usually like some college athlete does slightly better than expected. Sometimes the trans athlete doesn't even do that well, but people get angry anyway. Um, a couple of- Do you think, do you think Vosh would engage in any kind of vocation where he huh? knew he could not, there was no chance of him being number one? No. I totally agree. No. <laughs> so this completely just- that would right. that would demoralize him. Sure. If he knew there was absolutely no way that he could win against any outside force that was against him, he would fucking he would cry. Why? Right. Why and again, I want to like, be number one? It's so it's also disingenuous too. This whole like, well, we need to talk about the harm that's happening right now. It's like, wait a minute, we're we're, we're talking about. First of all, there have been many trans women that have destroyed the records already of cis women and many yeah you know, how do you think athletic. those record holders feel right right so we already so this already has happened but then secondly the question is how is this going to be in the future because the numbers are only increasing okay so to uh -huh. just talk about you know the quote-unquote harm now it's just, it's just as stupid to say like oh well trans regrets really low right now it's like okay we, i understand that but i'm not talking about what's going on right now there's two, <laughs> i'm talking about what's going on in the future there's two forces in play here too more trans women are going to enter the sports arena yeah. and and less women at the top of the athletic distribution are going to be motivated to enter <laughs> like it's right. fucking cat catastrophic yeah, it's just it's uh, not not a good situation. I just I can't I keep thinking of the woman who's like, what was it, the hundred meter free swimming record? I just picture her like logging into her account, and she's got like hundred. <laughs> she checks meter... it every day. Every day, she's like, I still got my record. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like she's probably got it listed in her bio, like you know, world record holder for. 100 meter freestyle swimming right mm -hmm. i mean you, it's definitely on her cv logging into her cv oh let me update my cv delete 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 right well see that, I that would hold be the world record do you hold the world record for anything such contentious what if like she has it in her twitter bio <laughs> that's like world record holder for 100 meter women's uh, freestyle swimming and then after she loses the record, she replaces it just says, you know, world record holder for cis woman. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Be, oh, that would cause quite the, uh, the uproar. First cis woman to achieve this time. <laughs> on. The... Oh, she just, that would be an interesting update. Cause this has yeah, happened yeah. already. World records have been, have been, 
destroyed. That would actually be the perfect move because a lot of trans activists would get enraged and you'd be like, what are you, why are you mad? Like, I'm, this is your terminology. I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. What's the problem? I'm not a cis woman now. Now yeah, I'm not allowed said, to use right. your term. Yeah. Wait, this is, what's the problem? Oh, this is so infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, how do they brush this away? Like, oh, this, you know, the harm here is. Adam. The harm here matter. is not really. Okay. This isn't a big deal. Just imagine Batman in that car chase. <laughs> As cars are like, I'm sure this is fine. This is yeah. not, oh, like looking in the rearview mirror. I'm sure that's okay. Bat <laughs> As Batman's flying through the fireball from oh, all the right, trucks exactly. exploding on the freeway, he looks in his mirror view mirror. He's like, eh. I'm they sure. probably parachuted into safety. I'm sure they're okay. I'm sure they're okay. That, you, you, that fire doesn't the, seem very hot. As as the Batmobile lands, uh -huh. you hear everyone in the background, like an 80 yard into the the background, it's like, we're fine. <laughs> oh my. Can you imagine? I just want them to include this, just like a line of ambulances all <laughs> headed towards that accident. <laughs> No, they Adam. They parachuted out before their cars exploded. Okay. I want to see. I want to see a scene like an extra scene in the Batman, where they're at the hospital and they've got like nine beds filled with, you know, fourth degree burn patients. <laughs> yeah, you remember? There's like in the movie, he keeps looking at that little kid whose father dies in the beginning of the movie. Oh yeah, that kid's there. <laughs> yeah, I want. Yeah, we're all the kids that are like all burnt to shit like in the hospital from that car chase and all the kids that aren't burned to shit, but they're like standing over their parents that are burnt to shit. Since you chase. ruined that movie for everyone. I hope you're happy. <laughs> Good. I, that's my goal here is to ruin things for everybody. This is the perfect metaphor for Bosch though. Bosch thinks he's doing, Bosch, Bosch thinks he's Batman here. He thinks Listen. he's saving the world and really he's just, you know, killing a bunch of parents. Yeah, right. It's, it's orphaning it is a, a bunch metaphor. of children. It is. It is the perfect metaphor. It is the 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 new. You know, we say, "Hey, SpongeBob, we saved the city," and the city is like engulfed in flames, essentially. Yeah. But listen, it was a good scene. Okay, it was a nice scene. It was very dramatic. My heart was pumping. My adrenaline was going when he's walking out, and the music's blaring. It was a good scene. It just just really fucking stupid when you think about it. I was in the movie theater, so I was completely caught yes. up in the Yes. I mean, I I was ready to yell. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I was like Sitch, you're such a it's so <laughs> <laughs> such a little bitch. I now can't... you no, I'm so e now you know why my avatar is the way it is. It's, it's very evil, okay? I'm, I'm going to I know. ruin everything for everyone. <laughs> okay. You didn't ruin it for me though. I still have me I still have the memories. Good. I was I'm glad there. you it still was like great. It. I'm glad you still like. It. That was when I had co that was the COVID movie, remember? That oh that's right. Adam, I forgot about that. Adam infected everyone with COVID to see the Batman because he's you know a selfish prick. No, I already had I was over COVID when I went. Oh sure, 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 sure. sure. I was. Yeah. Times yeah. things have uh -huh. look at this. Sitch is a soy COVID promoter. What were they oh. saying? What were they saying in the debate? You're pro speaking COVID. Of, speaking of COVID, mm -hmm. this might this might bother you. What? So, um, last week, uh, I I picked up my father from the airport, and I brought him home, and then I had Passover dinner the next day, with my family. Wow! And it turned out that my dad, they think, in the airport coming back to Florida, got COVID. Your dad has okay. COVID now, really? Well, here's why you're going to be mad. So first of all, my dad's COVID was incredibly mild. Like he, it was, oh. it was just, it was like a moderate. I'm already cold. angry. Jesus. It was like, a, it was like a moderate cold. Um, you know, he, he had a couple of days where he was coughing, you know, a lot, but that was basically about really it. But here's wow. why you're going to get really mad. Neither myself <laughs> nor my mom. Got it. <laughs> Either got COVID or, or knew that you had COVID. Or we did get it and we had completely no symptoms. Man, these this COVID that's going <laughs> this COVID that's going around now is super I mean, it's just weak sauce COVID. 
I was just thinking, like, Adam had COVID for like a month. I did, yeah. And it was so funny because I was lucky, like, I guess. I get because I was a fight like neither my mom nor I had any symptoms. I'm like, and I got, I got like the little nasal swab, and they said I didn't even have it. But I don't, I don't even know how it's possible. I don't. Right. I mean, I spent hours and hours and hours like, like right next to my dad. You're we like eating together. There's like no. I'm like, there's no. This is supposed to be so contagious. There's no fucking way I didn't get it. I'm like, I just think I have no symptoms. COVID's weak sauce now. <laughs> well, there They're you all, go. Th- it's so funny because sometimes you see lefties trying to t- talk about COVID again and everyone's just over it. Everyone's pretty over it, yeah. It's yeah. like, oh, don't remind. Well, everyone wants to forget the last two years ever happened. And I'm in favor of that. I think we should move on and try so, to... Someone said, no, it's the Florida blood. There you go, all the alligator blood. Uh, oh, is that it? Well, good. Go. Good for you, healthy people. Whoa. Are. I did do two things as soon as I heard my dad had COVID. You took one of them was I took D. I took well I I take vitamin D regularly anyway, so that probably helps, which I don't think my dad does. Um, but I took echinacea, which you don't think does anything. No, I echinacea is good. I okay, t- I started taking I, echinacea. Yeah, I started taking something else, which I don't know if I should talk about on stream because I'm oh, not sure it's safe. So. Oh really? <laughs> yes. So. Was I don't it, know if I should say it. But. You took the horse medication or something? I didn't know. It's nothing that anyone's oh. talked about um, in terms of medication. Math? I, I, I won't say. I won't say. I'll just let everyone guess. I'll, I'll, I'll just annoy everyone. Everyone will have to just try to figure it out on themselves. Ecstasy? I won't, uh, nope. Nothing, did, nothing illegal. Molly? I did nothing illegal. Okay. Nothing illegal. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Then it's back. an over-the-counter supplement. Wow. That's all I'll say. Okay. You got it from Alex Jones? No. I didn't get it from Alex Jones. If, you know, <laughs> no one they, will they, guess what it is. They've done better than expected. Vosh is really dialing it, and I can see why he didn't post this on his channel. He looks completely weak sauce and ev- mm-hmm. he evasive, majorly evasive vibe going on here. <laughs> She's just f- straight dialed in. Answer, motherfucker. <laughs> that face. She's got a face on right now that says, answer, motherfucker. Aiden says beer because I drank beer when I got it. Did, did that actually help, Aiden? Aiden. Did drinking beer help? <laughs> but um, it's a very minor problem. It's something that I would really rather have depoliticized and focused on. By- oh, my, what the fuck? Oh, this is where I lost my mind here. Mm-hmm. Hold on, we gotta back it up a little. <laughs> a couple of times, things have you know they, they've they've done better than expected, but um, it's a very minor problem. It's something that I would really rather have depoliticized and focused on by um, sports scientists, you know, sports um, <laughs> uh, medicinal oh practitioners, because I think I they're know. best qualified to make decisions on the subject. People talk about it like it's some kind of human rights issue, but it was like Utah passed that law. I think it was Utah, but there's like. Um, one trans athlete in all of Utah or something like that. So they passed a whole statewide bill, um, uh, you know, to, to, to curtail a problem, which essentially doesn't exist. Did people just get hysterical over this stuff? I think. I agree. Stacking damage is correct. Tomboy apps is what I did. That, that cured my company. Oh, that'll cure anything. Good for you. I just, I said, Oh no, I might get COVID. I just spent the whole day looking at tomboy apps. So the D Vosh just made a play for depoliticizing the issue because he knows it's a loser. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so, so unethical, so unfair. This is the this is the issue. Conservatives have grabbed on with both hands and they're not gonna let go of this issue. This issue, <laughs> this issue is gonna be, I mean, they're just gonna. This issue is not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think the left is going to let go of the issue either. No, they, no. They, they're the ones that brought the issue up. Right. They're the ones that started everything. This is like, the, this is like complaining about the culture war mm-hmm. when they started it. <laughs> yeah. Science can't uh, make a cogent argument. And I think we should just let the scientists work on this. <laughs> right. 
Alexi Time for $20. Thank you, Alexi. Says, as much as I dislike him, I agree with Mr. Girl that gender should be treated like a religious belief <laughs> because since no one can verify if someone is legitimately trans and it's possible to not know if you are trans yourself. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. We disagree on that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't agree with that. I mean, I, I think I think we can say, I don't think there's any harm to uh, people with gender dysphoria getting trans uh, treatment, whatever that may be. I think you can do all that stuff and still have the idea that gender is is biological or is mostly biological. I don't think that impacts those things at all. Does your, do those things. does your position change as we become more technologically advanced and people can transition with with better results? So I've, I've said this, which is if, if we have the magic future where you can walk into the character creation booth and you can come out looking however you want, any gender you want, then none of this matters at all. Right. At all. But we're not in that world, and I don't think we're going to be in that world for a very, 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 very long time. So that's kind of a moot point. So your argument is that it's the it's the cost of it is so high that you need to have something like gender dysphoria to justify the cost. Yes. Right. Yeah. Ex that you're, you're com you've completely latched onto it. Yes. My thinking is harm reduction, and my thinking is that the cost is very high and the outcome is uncertain. Right. And if we lived in a world where that wasn't the case, then I wouldn't care because none right. of this would matter. Because it'd be low cost, obviously. Right. Yeah. Because it, you know, if you don't like it, you change back, and there's no cost. Nothing matters. But this is the same thing that the gender activists do. They want to lower the cost. They want to say, oh, you know, you get yes. your breasts removed, you just get breast implants. Not a big right. deal. Right. Which is crazy. Bonkers. A crazy thing to say. Completely yeah. bonkers. Totally fucking crazy thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what triggers me. I think a lot about a lot of the stuff. Right, because they minimize the actual cost. And I mean, you can find stuff online where people are talking, like detransitioners are completely right. demoralized. Which I could see. Yeah, of course, you would be. Uh, Bill Bonius, Bag of Donuts. for Thank you so much for being a free will seeker for two months. This is crazy. He says, I just got hit by a drunk driver twice while listening to the stream. <laughs> Uh, he left the scene, but I got that license plate photo. Fuck that guy. I'm wow. okay, but my car isn't love to you all. Well, first of all, we're glad that you're okay, uh, Bilbonius. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, that's, glad you're fine. That is terrible that you, your car's all fucked up, but I'm I'm glad you got the license plate, though. That's really shitty. Jeez. Yeah, that's like a huge deal if he ran. Yeah, it's a giant deal. Hit and run is just, oh, that's like a mm -hmm. felony. Uh, yeah, I want to be surprised. Yeah, I think you're right. It is. Uh, Mr. Ubercross for $20. Thanks so much. Says, hey guys, I defended your honor in the chat for Distributus's video on the debate. I even got him to finally state a position in a condescending manner. <laughs> <laughs> I like the debates. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you. Yeah, I want to thank Mr. Ubercross. And there was actually a bunch of people who were in the chat and were in the comment section of distributes his video and even on twitter i love all the people all the people arguing distributes on twitter thank you so much it makes me makes me smile yes because <laughs> i i realized that arguing with him was a complete and utter fucking waste of time and so it does make me happy to see people uh just dragging him into these conversations and watching it's funny a couple of people were actually like wow sitch i tried to get a straight answer from him and i couldn't either and i understand exactly why <laughs> You were frustrated in that conversation. <laughs> and so I appreciate everyone who was uh, defending us or just talking to us uh, in that manner. So thank you so much. We got, I, I screenshotted a couple bangers too that we'll probably read yeah. on Tuesday just because they're yeah. so epic. Some of you guys left some really epic comments. <laughs> right, right. So Very, specifically yeah. on his video. So yes, thank you. And I, I just tried to get his sources out of him. And there was like, after about six tweets back and forth of him changing the subject, I blocked him. I was like, fuck this. <laughs> fuck this. 
this is a yeah, complete yeah. waste of time. And the thing that no. the thing that made me do it was like he wasn't answering the question, super simple question, right? You know, where what sources are you citing here? You know, I always cite the dictator's handbook. I always tell you guys where I'm getting my thinking right, right. from, right? So if you want to go read up and and figure out, okay, well, maybe I got it wrong. You can. I just wanted to be able to do that. He was like back and forth, wasn't giving me any answers. And then he asked about potentially having another longer discussion about this. And I was like, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, do, do you want to have another conversation where I don't answer any of your questions? Yes. Why? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> it's right. That's why it's funny because I tapped out like three days ago, I think, where I basically realized this was like he was this was just a, a dumb, this is just a waste of time. It's just a game. And I saw, it's like it's a just game a game. He's yeah, it's just like a game. And, and and I and I saw you still arguing, and I was shaking my head, like, man, I'm you're just wasting your time here. <laughs> I saw you doing the same thing though. I for a long time didn't didn't butt in. Yeah, but then well, arguing. I tapped out and then you tapped in. I'm like, no, right. no, 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 don't tap it. This is but when Sitch taps out, there's a reason. <laughs> Sitch will, Sitch will autistically argue something almost to the ends of the earth. And if I'm like, this is a waste of time. Well, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. You know, then I'm, you know. I'm pretty sure that he's getting a lot of this from the book, The Machiavellians, which I read The Machiavellians once, but I was drawing mm -hmm. at the same time and I was, I was like half paying attention. Right. So I'm doing a reread on the Machiavellians. And if, if that's the case, he's totally got that book completely wrong. Because that book, I mean, it mirrors selectorate theory. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So Interesting. anyway. Uh, Sion uh, Arik Kale for $20. Thank you so much. Says, want a head trip on COVID? My mother had it five times. Oh, my God. Wow. And my father who lives with her has never tested positive. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> He's got something crazy. going on at the cellular level that just- Maybe, yeah. I don't know. I tested negative despite having all the symptoms for two months. Welcome to science. Yeah, that's that's very bizarre. When I, I got it, some, I tested um, negative, but then tested positive. I thought you positive. got it twice. Yeah, right. No, I only had it at once. I mean, I'm think you got tested yeah. twice. I mean, I yeah. tested twice. First time when I was super sick, I tested negative, and I thought, okay, this is just a regular cold. A couple days later, when I actually felt better, I tested mm. positive. Yeah, mm. I think. Um, well, I have to get some blood tests for unrelated to COVID, and I think I might ask my doctor to just slap on because I'm assuming that the blood, like when they do the nose swab, and then they do there's a blood test for something I, i'm assuming it tests different things so maybe because hmm. i would be kind of annoyed like i'd prefer if i had covid and no symptoms versus like i just magically didn't fucking get it somehow so you're amazing there that you there well i think i'm i'm probably more concerned about this issue than you as i've been quite vocal about it um and i am a woman so you know I'm trying to think of the best place to start. Well, okay, with your point about arm wrestling and muscle mass, I don't doubt that there's an effect of taking estrogen, but there has been research to show that even after a year, two years of being on estrogen, that it doesn't change muscle mass or muscle strength. So uh, this is probably not the case for every single trans woman, but I think that's a really important consideration to make especially if they are going to be competing against women who are born women and to your point about how this is a very rare phenomenon i i see it growing i mean yeah i do think that there is um a lot of attention placed on when we do see this happening when there are cases you know the media media really gets on it but i also worry about the future of women's sports because it elite, even in some sports, elite female athletes do not stand a chance against a non-elite male athlete. And there are these differences that are not overridden by taking estrogen or suppressing testosterone in terms of, it goes beyond muscle, it's in terms of foundation, like bone length, in terms of the angles at which bones uh, connect in the body women have a higher uh, propensity for injury as a result of having wider hips um, in terms of lung size and heart size 
So I, you know, I'm all in favor. I think if it's not in elite sports, I don't have as much of an issue if trans women want to compete in the women's category, because I do think I, I can imagine that that sense of belonging and, and acceptance is important, but at the elite level, when it can be life changing for someone to win the competition, especially for these girls who've been training forever for these scholarships, I, I don't think it's fair. And I also don't think it's fair that they can't speak up without being called hateful. Do you, uh, another question actually I have for you is I'd like to speak them. No one cares about all those girls. Fuck those girls. Fuck them. No one cares. Wrong. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. I care. Yes. Okay. Care about Go everyone. Ahead. Um, every study I've seen indicated that, um, medical transition weakens the musculature significantly. So I would have to, and I've seen a, a good bit of research on that, so I'd, ha I'd have to see your source there. Um, I guess the issue that I- Cha Challenging her sources right there. Look at that, he just completely undercut her. He basically said, yeah, you're reading a bad study. No, but what he said doesn't, it doesn't, he's Oh, I know it's completely irrelevant. No one's saying it doesn't weaken people's muscles. The question is, does it weaken males' muscles to the point that they're on the same level, which obviously it does not. Correct. Because then we wouldn't have these situations where trans women are just abolishing certain records. Not abolishing, uh, destroying Okay, certain records. Right. I have with this ultimately is that this is an example of a politicization of a problem gone like uh, mad you know like so far we have maybe a handful like an actual five or less count of cases where there's been some kind of upset as a product of trans women and women's sports over the course of this being a cultural Th this is bullshit no what you're having is that it's putting the insane <laughs> gender ideology uh, goofiness into practice. And you're seeing, like, if you take that ideology that there's no difference between trans women and cis women, and you put that into practice, this is what you see. And so that's why everyone's f fixating on it, because this is just a very visible way to show that the ideology itself is is crazy. That's why people are fixating on it. Okay. It's, just, it's indicative of the entire philosophy being wrong. Well, I also don't like the fact that he's not attacking her actual argument. She said that it was unfair. So are you arguing that we allow a certain amount of unfairness just because it's a low number of people? I mean, yes. make that argument with uh, police brutality. You know, obviously <laughs> it's unfair, but since it's only a few people that are right. being beat right. up by the cops... That's a good point. That's a good point. It's, it's for the greater good, right? Yeah, what the fuck, dude? Right. There you go. That's a great point. So these people that are, they're just supposed to sacrifice themselves on the altar to your your preferences? That's a horrible argument. That's an immoral, unethical, terrible, evil argument. But yes. that's basically the argument that he's making. It is. Call him out, yeah. Deborah. Tell him that. Smack him in the face. Go kata, kata. Say, listen, I said it was unfair. I want you to tell me how it's fair to demoralize right. a small number of people. Does that change the fairness of it for those people? Are you saying that no. it's fair as long as uh, just a few people are in this situation? It sounds like you're okay with that. It's not fair. No. Yeah. Also, I'll be right back. Issue over the past six years. Um, when we're when we're operating with this number i mean this is this is like national outrage over like rare diseases that don't have a name yet this is such a marginal issue now that's not to say mind you that it's not worth consideration or discussion notice he put it in the category of a rare disease something that we have zero control over okay you can't say someone is at fault in the situation of a rare disease that's hurting a small number of people this is completely different than that because the change that has been implemented in the the socially constructed system that we all opt into is is far different than just some disease 
that nobody has any control over. This is this is people's preferences hurting other people's preferences. In the disease example, nobody's preferences are taking priority over someone else's preferences. But we are talking about an issue which has merited a national response. And to be fair, and you know, to, to clear aside, and again, not saying this about you, but 98% of this discourse really has nothing to do with women's sports because most of it's fronted by conservatives. See, this is where the bad faith really starts kicking into gear. He, Vosh is making the argument that, and it's funny that Deborah So called him out and said, you can't even speak out on this issue without being called a transphobe. And Vosh, 10 seconds later, is going to say anyone speaking out on this issue is doing it because they're a transphobe, because they don't they don't actually care about women's sports. They're doing it because they don't like trans people. This is fucking evil. This is totally evil. You, <laughs> saying that someone can't speak out about issues of fairness that they feel deep down inside them. We all have this, this way of, of understanding whether or not someone is getting a, a fair deal or a raw deal. Not being able to speak out when you see somebody getting a raw deal because somebody else is going to interpret that as bigotry. This is detestable. I, Fairness doesn't exist. That. I cannot stand the way that they've structured this argument. I mean, politically, it's expedient. This The sub... Do you, do you remember the sub subtitle for Dictator's Handbook? Um, it's so perfect. Yeah, I remember. The Dictator's Handbook. Uh, don't <laughs> tell me. <laughs> I'm thinking... Uh, why, why, bad, why bad behavior is often good Look, politics. The di <laughs> dictators... Let me think. I'm checking the old mind checking memory the old Why brain. bad behavior is almost always good politics. There, this, I remember it. This is so, this is what's insidious about this because this is like the ultimate bad behavior. They, the, the trans activists have structured this debate. So if you're speaking for your own personal self interest, you're a bigot. <laughs> right. Right. It's, a, it's insidious, but it's definitely good politics because everyone who speaks out about this is categorized as a bigot, and it will keep people voting for them even though they're evil. Conservatives don't care about women's sports. They have never cared about women's sports. It has been a long-running joke that they don't care about women's sports. It is it, like it, they have admitted they don't care. Like it's just been a chauvinistic, you know, condescending derision for decades and decades. It's about this is so this is so dumb. Like this came up in a conversation Destiny had about trans uh, women in, in sports too, where like all these East Coast. I hate I hate to use it. All these East Coast liberal leftist commie, you Don't know. Don't say elite. liberal. You I know progressive, I know. progressive uh, assholes. Like they don't know what the fuck goes on in any of these the rest of the country. Progressive and elites. Destiny, yeah. And Destiny's talking about. He's like, I live like you know. I grew up in you know a red state, and I went to Catholic school, and people like conservatives really were pretty big in having their daughters, you know, be in sports and be in, you know, team, uh, you know, participate in team sports and participate in these sorts of activities. And the idea that no one cares about uh, women in sports is such a weird, misogynistic, bizarre leftist talking point that has been invented. It's like, just because female sports is not as financially popular as male sports doesn't mean no one cares about it. Especially yep. when it comes to like school, like school sports, especially. A lot of people play sports because it it teaches a thing that we call good sportsmanship, which I mean, yes. a lot of a lot of yeah. people should have. It's a good thing to have. I don't know. Does it? I don't know that this. I've seen some of the track races, some of the videos on YouTube of the track races where the trans athletes just completely annihilate the women <laughs> some of the looks on the faces after those races 
mm, doesn't look like they're very happy about the situation. <laughs> doesn't look like those those young women are being taught about fairness. It feels right. like they're being taught about subjugation. It really does. It really, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Ah, very crazy situation. And Devosh's denial of the situation is really very funny. Cool. Um, and this is an issue with it, which is very medically oriented, uh, something that should be left to the science, I feel. But the discourse happening right now has nothing to do with the science. It's this weaponization of a marginal issue in order to direct an attack against a broader community. And you see this play out all the time, you know, um, in terms of like see, this framing is so detestable. He's he's framing the entire issue in the same context as the CRT stuff. All this is is a made-up issue so that conservatives can get their hate on for transgender right. people. That's all they well, want to do. It's all Lauren Witzkies on the, in right. the Republican Party that just want to hate on trans people. And it's funny when he's like, oh, this, this has nothing to do with the science. It's like, oh, well, when you are afraid to look at the science, you say this has nothing to do with the science. <laughs> but when the shoe is on the other foot... You know, like with all the COVID stuff, they want to beat, you know, the oh, other side of the, the head science. with the science. Yeah. yeah. So. Listen to the science. Follow the science. Right. Don't be dumb. Yep. Get your sixth vaccination. <laughs> it's it's so hypocritical. Like problems affecting American people. This is so unfathomably far down any list of person could arrive at. I don't mean to say this to diminish the concerns that... To he, he, she asked a very specific question about fairness. Right. All of this is bullshit. All yeah. of this is complete bullshit. He the said, I'm not going to answer your question. Yeah, the number of people... He's filibustering. The number yeah. of people who are affected by this unfairness is immaterial because when unfairness enters the world, we all know that we could be the target of that unfairness. The, right. the simple fact of its existence is what demoralizes people. And you saying, oh, you know, it's not that big a deal. It's not hurting that many people. That's f evil. That's so bad. That's so bad. And you would never, you would never make that argument. Like if a conservative came up and said, listen, this trans stuff, it just affects a very small number of people. We shouldn't really worry about it. You'd fucking lose your mind. Yep. You would lose your mind. Listen, you're literally trying to find that one uh, gender dysphoric kid. So you and you're prepared to ruin the entire Western civilization to find that one kid. Okay, this whole it only affects a small number of people. Argument is not something you can make. You can't make it in good faith. Well, especially when he's making the argument about why his argument is that all society should change for the sake of this tiny minority of people. <laughs> Yes. And now that there's a different minority of people, he's like, well, it doesn't matter. Yes. Yes. It's so, it's such bullshit. It's bold face sophistry. Right. Well, female athletes might have, you know, um, only to say that the national response, I mean, making this one of the top billing, you know, issues for the Republican Party, I think it, it demonstrates well, and, and they're not, okay. This is also, this is just a fucking lie. Okay. Uh, Trans women in sports is not a top tier national issue at all. It's being discussed. He's conflating this with just the teaching of transgender ideology in schools altogether is an issue that people are more concerned about than, you know, the sports issue. But yeah. I think people in their heart know that this, this is just is a level of insanity that society is just not ready to. Yeah. This to is just accept. Yeah. Credible bias with regards to, what issues should be focused on. I mean, there are more cases of Republican legislators being fired for sexual misconduct in the past couple of years than there have been of these trans female. Don't make me bring out the whataboutism counter. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> gonna what do the it. fuck? He just did a whataboutism, didn't he? What about the Republican Congress people that have done, I, I mean, all the ones in the news now, aren't they Democrats? Didn't Cuomo go down over the, uh, trying to fuck everyone in his office? There was a couple on both sides, I think, recently. Yeah. 
I can't think of their names off the top of my head, but and this not only that, that's patently unfair. What do you what do you are you making the argument that because these other people did something unfair that your side is allowed an unfairness? Of you course it's, unf- it's a, this is a literal whataboutism. Of course yeah. it's unfair. Yeah. Well, he hasn't even addressed the the fairness argument. Male athlete upsets combined over the entirety of the time it's been discussed. Where we focus our attention is itself a political decision, one which warrants justification, I think, especially when it's this disproportionate. Well, I would argue this is a... You know the... Uh, mm-hmm. I don't remember what movie's from. There's that gif of like Leslie Nielsen in front of like the house that's exploding. And he's like, nothing to see here, folks. Everyone go away. Nothing to see here. <laughs> I know. This is... <laughs> That's his argument. It's like, oh, nothing to see here. You're focusing your attention on the wrong political issues. Nothing to see here. Yeah. It's like, this is this is exactly like the bullshit. Why is the right in this country so fixated on the culture war? It's like, bitch, the left has been pushing this culture war bullshit with the force of a thousand sons via CRT versus, you know, uh, race consciousness. And now versus gender ideology. And then yeah. as soon as there's some pushback, like, I don't think we should be teaching gender ideology to five-year-olds. It's like, oh, why are you so fixated on the culture war? It's like, what the fuck? If you're not fixated on it, then get it out of schools and then we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Straight up retaliation. And they don't get it. What, no. what? Why do you keep hitting yourself? Why do you keep hitting it- yourself? <laughs> It's literally the meme of the girl shoveling shit over the wall at someone. And then as soon as they start shoveling shit back, they're like, oh, ah, why are you attacking me? The optically, I've, I'm curious if Vosh will upload this video because optically this is a complete disaster for him. I'm not sure. I, I don't think it is a disaster for him. But Well, he's... The whole fact that she's a woman and he, she, <laughs> he's I think, explaining sports. I think he will upload it. And I think his audience will eat it up because they'll say, oh, look at Vosh. She's talking so much. She's making all his points come across. Deborah's not really making a lot of her points come across. She's just right. sort of like probing, you know, and questioning. He's not really, he's just sophistering his way out of everything. So, well, I think we should make a video reading all the comments calling Deborah so a Nazi and a transphobe. <laughs> I think that would be good content. <laughs> There you go. And a conservative or Republican issue because there are definitely Democrats who are concerned as well. And this is, mm. I interviewed Kara Dance. I interviewed Kara Dansky about this from my podcast and people can go listen to that. And she said, this is going to be the issue that brings the parties together because this is not this is not something, it's not a left or right issue, nor do I think it should be. Um, your point about how there are only five cases, there have definitely been more than five. I mean, I could count them right now. It, of upsets? Because normally it's just a trans woman being in sports that people get upset over. But in terms of the overperformance, I think generally they, they they perform well within the lines of expected cis female performance. Well, they it's, win. it's definitely they win though. Thing. They win by quite a margin, do they not? Uh, the number of times that trans women have won by quite a margin in sort of college athletics or above is. No, for the most part, usually this upset happens before they've won anything. Usually it's just them participating at all. I remember there was that, um, that I think they were. What a dishonest pivot. Well, it's also not even true. Usually she, well, no ta- one even knows. They're ta- the upset is them winning, not competing. She right. was very specific about that. Taking someone's record is the upset. But what he's saying isn't even true. I mean, it's, I can only think of one example where it had to do with competing. And it was when, it was like the inverse situation. It was when a trans woman, no, it's when a cis, when it's when a cis woman who was taking male hormones had to compete against uh, cis girls in a high school or something, which was the opposite situation. Right. That's the only time I remember, like before anything even happened, people were like, ugh. And then obviously, you know, she won because she's literally taking steroids, testosterone. But, yeah. Right. But no, like people don't know about this shit or care about this shit or hear about it until the person, you know, breaks records, record, starts winning, you know, by a lot. And then everyone's like, whoa, what's going on here? Right. 
There's at least five cases of records being demolished. Or uh, track and field. Um, and and, right, and they did a, right, they did a whole documentary. And the trans woman, wasn't she, she came in like sixth or something. The woman who was mad came in eighth or, or ninth. And it was the top eight who were qualifying. And she was mad over that, something like that. It, it, How dare these women get mad? See, that's why I'm, t optically, this is horrible. How dare but these women get did you, mad did about you hear, women's sports? Go back, like, hey, let me go back 10 seconds. And, and he realizes what he's about to say is stupid. And he tries to cover it up. All right. Just them participating at all. I remember there was that, um, that I think they were a track and field. Um, and and, right, and they did a Right, they did a whole documentary. And the trans woman, wasn't she, she came in like sixth or something. The woman who was mad came in eighth or, or ninth. And it was the top eight who were qualifying. And she was mad over that, something like that. It's <laughs> uh, like, again. Okay, yeah. let's think about this real, let's think about this real hard. She lost right. her spot, her qualification spot. Yeah, there you go. You just skipped to the editing. Yeah, of course. That's why she's mad. She's like, oh, why is he kidding? This is a trans woman who got in six. She didn't even get first place. Because she knocked the person out of the spot, Flash. That's why she's mad. She lost her fucking scholarship. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tan tangible financial reward was <sighs> taken from her and given to someone else. Yes. Oh my God. It's so silly. If I can't believe. Why would you even care about this? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Take a look at any other issue. If if this is what unites the parties, then America deserves to burn. We have infrastructural issues. You know, um, we we this whole I look. This is oh, this is where I lost my mind. This whole idea that we have bigger fish to fry when your entire channel is devoted to culture war issues. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Vosh is not making videos about universal health care here. He's not making videos in that vein. He's making videos that dunk on conservatives in culture war, in culture war issues. Right, right. We can't feed or clothe our people. Our healthcare system is broken. If our party is united, if our parties are united, and also this is a totally fallacious, dumb fuck argument that he's making because it's not. It's not that, oh, women, you know, trans women in sports is such a big issue that the parties are united against it. That's not what she means. That's not what anyone means when they says it unites the parties. What they mean is that the opinions on it, the public opinion on it is one way. Okay. It doesn't mean it's the most important issue. It means everyone believes, everyone agrees it's one way. Because when you talk about these broader issues, like we need to clothe everyone, we need to feed everyone, we need healthcare for everyone. It's like, okay, everyone is on board with making these things better. But they all disagree on how to fuck to do that. Great point. Volish, Gosh Limbaugh. Point. Okay. So this this comparison you're making is dumb. United, not over any real issue that affects like the American people, but issues so marginal that you can count on one hand the number of trans athletes per state. I think that's really indicative of how much of a divide there is between like the cynical political messaging that's used in Washington and what Americans actually need to get by day to day. So if, and again, the arguments, with what about is this too? We're up they to make like the nine. Same, what about yeah, isms? Not nine. What about they, they make the same argument about CRT and the don't say gay bill. And I always say, I'm like, if it's such a non issue, if there's so much more important issues to talk about, then why don't you just give the Republicans the, the win on that one? And yeah. then move on to those important issues of so course. that the Republicans can't talk about them. Right. It's it's so dumb because, and I've said this like a million times, the Republican Party would be in trouble if it wasn't for the culture war shit. Because they'd have to try to balance the neocons, the neoliberals, and the populist Republicans who all want different things. They can't win on economic issues, that's for sure. Yeah. They can't. Why? Yeah. Why do you think it is that there was so little movement on economic issues for four years under Trump? Well, they did get a huge stimulus pass and all that stuff. No, but in terms of in terms of Republican policy, with the exception of the tax cuts, mm -hmm. there was no movement at all on on broad economic issues whatsoever. They didn't get a. I thought Trump got the wall built. What are you talking about? <laughs>
The big beautiful wall. There you go. The big beautiful the, wall. The wall that the wall that didn't get built. Yes, exactly, exactly. And it's the same thing right now under Biden. What is the Republican plan to uh, fight against inflation? What is the Democratic plan to fight against inflation? There is. Yeah, no. right. Exactly. What is anyone's plan to fight against inflation? We're fucked. I don't fucking know. No one's no one's talking, but no one has a plan. And it's because we're all bogged down and he, it's, we're all bogged down in the culture war shit. And the problem is it's the left that's been fermenting this culture war shit for the past five to six years. And so they basically created this environment. And now Vosh is complaining about it. It's like they created the swamp to mire everyone down in it so they wouldn't focus on important issues. And now that everyone's mired in the swamp, they whine and say, oh, why are you miring us down in this fucking swamp of the culture war? It's like you made this fucking swamp. You dug this hole. You filled it in with this fucking putrid filth water. And yeah. now that we're all swimming in it, you're compl- you're complaining that we're not f- that we're fixated on this fucking swamp. Yeah, I'd rather talk about universal health care, to be honest with you, but nobody cares. Yeah, it would be you know what? It'd be fantastic. It'd be fantastic if wokeness went away and fucking bread to disappeared in the fucking either. And no one took Marxism and neo-Marxism and cultural Marxism, all this garbage seriously ever again. That would be fantastic. I then, would we could love fi- that. then we could actually talk about real things that would, are important. I would but guess totally what? Dig that. This shit is important because this shit is going to destroy everything. So, no, it is important. Until it goes away, it's important. Okay. It's going to go away. Yeah, I think it will. But until until it does, it's important. Bread it tube's dying and it's going to be beautiful. It has to be fought against. All right, now shut up. It's just, you I got just, one I, hour I left on this video. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I can just think of any other, like, you know, do the people who claim to care about, um, you know, college women sports do they care about like college athletes being exploited not being paid for their work while the um colleges make millions of dollars off of the uh, what you know, about broadcast what about is them again what about no, of course not. it's just it's the trans athlete thing and you know we get this well, one big story every six months can i can i can we go to that uh connecticut track so one of the trans girls actually did win first place in the 102 meter dashes in the initial wait, one of the um, mm-hmm. uh, are we thinking of the same one? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say her name just because I don't want people to to bully this person. I generally just I don't want people to go after the individual athlete. To me, this what a transphobe. She won't even say the name, so people won't bully her. God, what a bad faith homophobe transphobe. Jeez, this is more about the larger trend of what we see happening, right? Well, in terms of, tr- oh, wait, there were two. Okay, we might be talking about different ones. Um, the, um, oh, there's I mean, so many of them that they're talking about scale, different ones. require more data points. <laughs> Again, like in the grand, the harm I we're would, talking about here is like maybe a couple winning, of cis women have placed. That, this they is, are winning. I, I'm sorry. The idea that you can justify national. This is very interesting. This is, I like, this is the first part in our 45 minute conversation. Okay, and I'm gonna go back a little bit where Deborah starts pushing back on something. And you know, she has a very mild temperament and tone of voice. And just her pushing back on anything and Vosh immediately becomes agitated. <laughs> if you want, look at in total demeanor and tone of voice changes just by her pushing back and, address, and pointing out the fact that he's not addressing the question. Yeah, she should have done this from from the get-go. Her yes. opening question should have been, Vosh, define woman for me. <laughs> Seriously. I'm telling you, we no, should the, have just moved to the 45-minute mark because the rest the of this opening, debate is insane. The opening question should have been, um, you know, how are you defining, you know, how are you saying that, that gender is a social construct? And then he gives his bullshit answer. And then you say, wait a minute, how are you defining woman? And then he gives his completely contradictory answer. And then you say, what the fuck? You just completely contradicted your first answer. Yeah, exactly. But I just, I just want everyone to, to notice how like the tone, his tone of voice just changes completely. Just because she's like pushing back even slightly. She's so, um, he's so bent out of the, shape. Uh, yes, yes. But then he goes completely bad faith because of it. Watch. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Um, 
I mean, a trend on a national scale would just require more data points. Again, like in the but grand, the harm I we're would, talking about here is like maybe a couple winning, of cis women have placed. That, this they is, are winning. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> the idea that you can justify national outrage based on a handful of cisgender women in college placing lower than they might have otherwise is insane to me. Every other problem imaginable is more worth national consideration. If this was just being discussed in academia or like sports science or whatever, I think that's fair game. It's I just, I, it's so insane oh. because make the same argument with police brutality. Just do it. Do it, Vosh. Do it. Make the well, same argument. The thing that you're so outraged over just a couple of people getting beat up. It's so yeah, ridiculous. But, but he, he just, and he, what he's saying is insane because he just said, well, if this is a conversation happening in sports academia, then fine. They can have it. Okay. It's like, okay, well, my response to that is, well, guess what, Vosh? We're a couple of dipshits on the internet. Well, I guess Deborah so is, and she's a fucking, you know, a, a sex researcher. So it is kind of entirely relevant to her fucking field of study, Vosh. So actually, no, it does make sense for her to talk about this with you. Deborah so is not the Republican Party. She's not the Democratic Party. She's not indicative of any larger movement. She is just an individual talking about something relevant to her fucking field. So right. answer the fucking question and stop dodging it. Yeah, and not only that, this all took place because she went on the Joe Rogan podcast to talk about relevant research in her own field. This is yes. actually leave it to academia. And yes. some dipshit on the internet decided they were going to fucking target her with transphobia and call her yes. out to 300,000 people in their own audience. <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah. That's a great what the point. fuck? Who did? Who made this a culture war issue? Who's the one attacking academia for making this? They get into it more too. Here, let's go. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting subject, and there is, you know, reason for concern there. But this, like, like people act like this is some kind of defining issue. Like, like the the phrase there, "This will unite the parties." Why? If infrastructure couldn't, I mean, our bridges are crumbling. If healthcare couldn't, tens of thousands die. If the fentanyl But I would argue, epidemic. I don't, I don't want to cut you off, but I would argue that this is just Come the off. beginning of some larger, this is a huge problem because it's going to be the end of women's sports. And I also see what, look at what's happening in prisons. Look at what's happening what's in happening terms in of where people, where people are being housed in say hospitals and they're being, women are now vulnerable to sexual assault as a result Wait, of this because people are self-identifying. as Where's the evidence to, of that happening? Uh, of the hospital in the UK, there was a case of a woman who was on a women's ward and she reported a rape and they said, oh, that didn't happen because there are only women on this ward. And then they went back and they actually found through security footage that there was actually trans women staying on the ward during that time. And so this woman had indeed been allegedly raped. And so I'm not saying that trans case, women are to... predators. Well, but this is, this is something. <laughs> Where's your evidence for that? Well, actually it happened here. Well, it's just a single case. Yeah, it's got it's got to be at least twenty rapes before Vosh even gets out of bed. Listen, yeah, until we have a ten-year double-blind study on rape on this specific topic in this specific area, I don't believe you. And this isn't you know this is an important topic whatsoever. Okay, tell that to the woman that was raped, Vosh. Yeah. Something that it, we're also, seeing is much more is going to be much more common. Well, with respect, absolutely not. Not of trans with, women, but of me, of men abusing the ability to identify as women. This to is get this is fear mongering, and this is one of the issues that I take with you. You talk about science. I ask you, where's the evidence? You give me an anecdote. What a fucking piece of shit. Okay, he, this motherfucker. This scumbag, this Vosh Limbaugh, has been doing nothing but contradicting himself, gaslighting, changing the subject, using a bunch of sophistry and debate tactics. And he asks her for an example or for quote unquote evidence. She gives him an example and he's like, This is why I have a problem with you. Okay, you're not, a, you're a bad doctor. You're a bad scientist. You just gave me an example. You didn't give me evidence. Well, right. Of course, 
There's not going to be a 20 year fucking double blind study on this subject, Vosh, because it's just happening. It's new. It's something that's happening right fucking now. Obviously, there's not going to be any long term studies on it, you moron. Yeah. What the fuck? Keep keep this in mind, too. It's It becomes very interesting a little later on when she asks him for evidence <laughs> and he gives his <laughs> evidence. Yes, yes. Very telling. Where's the evidence of this? What, well, it what was the happen. anecdote, though? This, that is, one this instance was reported the, in the news. This was reported in, rape, in the news. Rapes happen everywhere. One instance is not an evidence uh, of a pattern. And by the way, England, up until recently, had a very prejudiced law where rape could only happen uh, through penetration. Um, nothing else was counted rape, you know. So if you're a man, you know, you, you rape a woman, that can be counted. Going but crazy on the what about is over rain here. Jesus Christ. What about is <laughs> I, I got the counter out just because I it's it's off the charts now. What's that have to do with it? This has nothing to do with anything. Rape cis with... women. And also, I am pretty sure I don't because I remember I looked into this a while. I don't remember exactly, but it's like the whole like oh you, you know women couldn't rape it was like yeah it was like called like sexual assault in the third degree or, or something like there was some category you know <laughs> women could still be you know found guilty of sexual assault okay Let's... in england and it wasn't counted as rape because none of the available equipment was present um the idea right, well, i that... believe i i don't want to interrupt you but i i see we're coming it, so close on time and there's them. so many things for us to talk about so i can i just say that i think the, say with prisons especially this is happening it's what it happened in england it's happening in scotland it's happening in california i'll tell you this much we don't have evidence that letting trans women into cis women's prisons will increase sexual assault to my knowledge there's no evidence of that upticking in an actual like here's a percentage then here's a change percentage sense we do know that trans women who go to men's prison are like nine times as likely to be raped so purely from a harm reduction perspective, and this goes the same with the bathrooms and the hospitals and what have you, putting trans women in the same spaces as men is demonstrably dangerous, whereas putting them in the same spaces as women is circumstantially dangerous so far, only looking at given accounts or once. Okay, so pay attention here because he, he just laid out the argument that men are more dangerous than women. We all heard it, right? Clearly, that's the right. argument yes. that he's yes. making. Yes. The men's space is much more dangerous than the women's space. Right. Okay. Specific bit or another. But does that not matter that women's safety is being placed at risk as a result of that? By putting trans and, women and, in men's prisons? I and agree why completely. Is it, and why is it? But there's socially, it's so unacceptable for women to speak up about this. If they say anything in favor of their own safety, they're deemed transphobic. But there, there's no, literally no evidence at present of it compromising their safety. And there is evidence of it severely compromising the safety of the trans woman who also but deserve to not be How can you say there's raped. no evidence when there are women saying that this is happening to them? We see this happening in prison. I'm sorry, are we you see a this doctor? Happening Wait, are you in, a doctor? Of, That's I'm not, not a how medical you thought. doctor. A, I'm not a, a medical PhD. doctor, but I can I can do statistics. No, 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 no. That's not statistics. Evidence of news cases. I can find news cases of anything happening there was, anywhere. Okay, there was a in study order in the, to make in an the argument, UK of unisex. I'm familiar. Oh, yeah, sorry, please. Of unisex uh, changing rooms and how this did actually increase. I have it in the end of gender. I can't think of the top of my head the statistic, but it did actually increase the sexual assaults. But that's not trans women. She totally fucked up there too. She should have said, "I am a doctor." Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Why? Why? You're not dealing with a good faith actor here, no. Deborah. No. Don't say I'm not a medical doctor. Say I am a doctor. Right. Are you a doctor? Thank you for asking. I am a doctor, actually. Well, <laughs> later in this conversation, we find out that Vosh is either fucking lying or doesn't understand anything about how research is funded or done. No, because of course not. He, he doesn't understand or pretends like he doesn't understand that if someone at a college says, hey, I want to study, um, you know, <laughs> whether either trans women or men pretending to be trans women is increasing sexual assault in women's spaces. Yeah, you're and not going to get any get funding is, for that. Yes. <laughs> that person's in trouble with their research. 
let alone would they even they wouldn't even be able to secure funds for that research unless they posit from the beginning that they're going to try to debunk the claim. This is just a weird thing because it's just every argument he has is just a is a dipshit argument, a total yeah. dipshit well, argument. That's not weird. That's standard for him. It's we're in this weird situation though, where this person is gaining, you know, social relevance with people in a way that they're going to be making decisions based on this. right. On dipshit arguments. And the, the decisions that you're making here, I mean, we're not talking about creationism, okay? We're not talking about the kind of decisions you make when you think the world is 6,000 years old. Yes. Which I don't think, I, it's, I'm it's i hesitant to, is there a decision that you can make when you think the world is only 6,000 years old that's going to tangibly affect your life? I'm not sure there is. Like, maybe you're not <laughs> going to go into geology, right? But this is, um, like, you're going to make big decisions here. Well, I, I don't agree with that at all. I, I think that's bad. Because if life you believe decisions? That, well, if you believe that the world's only 6,000 years old, you're discrediting evolution and everything that comes with that. So you think that's bad? I think that's a big fucking deal. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm saying and at the individual you should too. level. Um, I, I don't know. I don't want to make those comparisons. Okay, I, we're, we're in favor. We're, we're team truth. We're okay? team truth. So, exactly. Yeah, we're, yes. Let's stick with what is yeah. true. Okay. I don't like. Did the, I do a whataboutism? I think maybe I did. So. Well, it's not a whataboutism, but I think it's like Vosh does this thing, which I think is very disingenuous or the wrong way of thinking about things where he says, oh, I don't have to address whether something is true or not. I only have to address whether it causes harm in society. It's like, okay, but you've just reframed the entire talking point, the entire conversation. And when how things are, whether things are dangerous or harmful to society is somewhat up to the eye of the beholder. Right. And so that's why I try to focus, that's why, you know, we try to focus on what is actually true. You know, evolution is true. Now, you shouldn't make moral prescriptions based off of it, but you have to use that information to determine, you know, how to look at the world and how reality works, essentially. Right. That's men and women. You do it. You no, press men and women. the button. But the self-identification aspect opens the door. No, I'm not saying it's trans women who are doing this. I'm saying, but it's opening up the door to the possibility. And I'm all, I've, I've told you there with you, I think we do need to have the evidence, right? There should be proper studies done, but how will those studies be done in this climate? Do you, do you think that it would be even possible? Easily. Do you know how outraged people will be that you would even consider that gender self-identification may potentially lead to these outcomes? It's not controversial to study these things in the sociological fields. There's often been a claim. Such a, such a dipshit. Not only that, is it, didn't Deborah So get canceled for studying these things? Oh my god! Pretty sure she got canceled over some research she did that rubbed feminists the wrong way. Is Vosh lying, or is he just a dumb fuck? Dumb fuck. I'm okay. going with dumb fuck. Yeah, you can go with dumb fuck because that is an insane thing. I know people, and I'm there. Probably some people in chat who are in the field of sociology. And they talk about how it's just overrun with woke shit. And yeah. if you're some kid, or if you're a, a new person, or even if you're not a new person, remember, there was, I'm trying to remember, there was the, the black Harvard sociologist that got canceled because he was coming, you know, he said that black people were not shot disproportionately by police on average. And he was he was basically, even, even though he had tenure, he was removed from Harvard for two to three years under some bullshit circumstances. That was obviously politically motivated. And only someone who's completely not familiar with academia could make such a bafflingly stupid dumb fuck statement to say, oh, you can go in these fields and study whatever you want. It's like these, these fields are highly, highly steeped in, in politics. They're politicized, and yeah. Yeah, in politicization of the topics. And they're all highly steeped in the politics of whatever the college or the institute is that's studying them entirely. And so, no, you can't just study whatever the fuck you want, okay? If you, I guess if you're like, a, you know, if you're independently wealthy, then you can do whatever the fuck you want. But most researchers aren't independent, well, independently wealthy. They have to get grants. They have to get, you know, money from institutions and colleges and whomever to do these studies. 
Well, you know why the college doesn't want to fund the study? Is because they know that there are dipshits on the internet. It doesn't matter how well you do the research. Yes. If they don't like the outcome of the research, they're going to go to their 400,000 subscriber channel and they're going to say all sorts of lying, incendiary shit about you. And 300,000 people are going to watch that video and they're going to start calling the college and making their lives a living hell. And mm -hmm. therefore, they just don't want to go down that road. They're like, can't we just study something not so controversial? Like, Vosh is literally the problem here. So I yes. just, I don't see how he sees that he is the problem and understands that. I mean, if Vosh is oblivious to the fact that he is the problem, he's living in the dream world where all of this is ever, all of his actions don't affect anyone negatively in any way, shape or form. That's the dream right. world that Vosh lives in. Right. He even he, this is the thing about this video. He lays out that dream world pretty articulately. Right. I mean, David Shore was canceled because he said, hey, rioting helps Republicans win elections. Yes. <laughs> that was all it took. That was all it took. And yet, no, you could, you could, you can study whatever you want in the sociology field. I don't know what you're talking. It's like, this is, this is, is he just this delusional? I mean, you're right. Maybe he got his, maybe he got his sociology degree from some, Humble. you know, from some, uh, you know, weekend school. <laughs> Humble, where he had, I told like, you, Humble is the party university. Right. He, he's no, and it's, I'm assuming, he, I think he, it's just a normal undergrad degree. Okay. So I don't know how he thinks he's some fucking knowledgeable on this subject. I have an undergraduate degree in psychology. I, I didn't, you know, talk about doctoral theses and, and psychological research papers and the politics of the institutions with my fucking teachers and my undergraduate study of psychology. Like, this is such a bafflingly stupid fucking take. It's a baffling, stupid take of just how things work. Came from, not to draw a comparison, race realists, people of the position that different races are of different inherent. And then he does the race thing, which is so yes, fucking dishonest. Yes, He's, yes, he wants yes. to say, basically, he wants to say that studying sex is equivalent of studying race and IQ, which is completely fucking numbskull. Levels of intelligence. Mm -hmm. That the reason... The scientists won't publish the study. We don't. We're not having a public health crisis with like false positives over race and IQ. Okay, like there's a reason. There's a right. tangible reason for actual legitimate scientists to get you know get in there and start doing some real studies on what's going on. People's lives are being affected by this. Nobody's fucking life is being affected by the race and IQ nonsense. It's fucking garbage of course they do publish the studies you know but this is the narrative they won't publish the studies is because there's some sort of internal pressure against you know like they can't do it it's it's the pr is too bad they won't be allowed to in reality sociologists do whatever the hell they want um it would be actually quite trivial to see whether or not instances of documented sexual assault increase significantly after the change of a policy you could do it without even really tackling the trans I mean, you wouldn't even have to introduce any discrete categories, only reports. But as of the moment, we're, we're in a situation now where trans women, we know they're far more likely to be abused if they're placed in men's spaces. We don't know that there's an increase in harm predicated on them being put. He just, he just disproved his entire fucking point. Why is it that we quote unquote know that trans women in male spaces is dangerous? Yeah, we haven't we studied it. don't know that trans women or allowing people to claim they're trans women increases dangers in women's spaces. Why do we not know that, Bosh? Hmm? 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 Yeah. Where's, this, where's your double blind study? Why don't we know that? Could it be because one of these things is acceptable to study and one of these things is not acceptable to study? Right. It's a little post hoc rationalization going on there. And in there's a big, there's a big problem too, which is that like, who, you know, who wants to get into a field where they're basically like when people get into these fields of research, okay, they want to, you know, get tenure. They want to further their degree and their, you know, status. And they see the fucking writing on the wall. These people are fucking stupid. They know that if they go down certain avenues of research, 
these get you blacklisted as being one of the bad ones, okay? And they know what's going on here. This is so ridiculous. This is such a preposterous argument. Women's faces, environment to me, the idea that, you know, we should just ignore the evidence, ignore the science and go like, oh, well, you know, keep, you know, keep trans women in men's spaces. It's just lunacy to me. I mean, why? So, so he's basically saying <laughs> there is no research, yet we should follow the science. What a fucking dick. What about offenders who identify as male up until the point where they are arrested? Once they go into custody, they identify as female. So these are, say, sex, sexual offenders who have raped women mm -hmm. who identify as female. They're going to be housed in a women's prison. And then we do see that some of these male-born rapists who are housed in women's prisons because they identify as female, then go back to identifying as male once they are released into the community. And I, I for, for people listening, I mean, my audience knows this, but for people who may not be aware, I used to work with violent offenders and sexual offenders. So I do have experience working with forensic populations. And this is where my concern is coming from because I know that these people are very antisocial and they would- I just like, she's like, oh no, I literally did work on this exact topic and you're just some fucking dipshit on the internet. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like, not only that, uh, Vosh is like, Vosh has never been around really psychopathic people. It's just. Well, that's not true. What do you mean? Well, He's I, around one every day, Adam. The kind of people who are, who are, I mean, Adam, I. He's, I, he's I around a psychopath every I don't, day. I think okay. you could make the argument that Bosch definitely has dark triad traits. I don't know that he's the type <laughs> of person that would physically harm people. But you, I'm sure you've been around people that are just like, they're danger to society. Uh, I, not regularly, yep. but I have, I've interacted with people like that and I've been like, oh, I need to not interact with yes. this person ever again. Like, yes. This is yes. a dangerous person. <laughs> Deborah So, you're not, you're the core, the court appointed psychologist is dealing with those types of people <laughs> quite often. Right. Quite often. The people that normally nobody in society deals with because they, everyone knows we should not, I should not interact with this person ever again. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Vosh has never had to interact with that type of person for a job or anything. So he just lives in this Pollyanna world where those people don't exist. Right. Those people exist. Yeah. This is very, this well, he, is, I think, gonna, where it gets funny. He's going to give a total BS answer and dodge the question. Well, and totally contradict himself from earlier, right. if I remember right. correctly. Do whatever they have to do to get access to more victims. So does that does that lead to a pause in your mind in terms of? I, I agree with you, and I am concerned about trans women being housed in men's prisons and being at a greater risk of being violated. But I, at the same time, don't think it should be okay. Well, then we'll just anyone who wants to go into the women's prisons or into women's spaces should be allowed to without question. I think it's an interesting hypothetical. Um, but one which at moment doesn't bear much statistical relevance is, is it's sort of like the, you know, what about someone faking going into the restrooms or what have you, though, obviously this is a bit more significant because instead you'd be housed in a prison for some time. The question is to what extent would a person be willing to do such a thing? You know, people have pretty strong attachments to their gender identity. And, you know, as a man, I can't imagine I'd be very comfortable in a women's prison. I mean, you know, if, if you could cartoonify That's the whole thing, posh though, for you. it is. <laughs> he wouldn't be comfortable in a women's prison. <laughs> let let him go for a little bit more because he he hasn't, he hasn't made his contradiction yet. Wait a minute! He just said, as a man, if he had to choose, right, between going to a right. prison of other men or a prison of women, he doesn't think he'd be more comfortable in the women's prison. Oh, I know. It's it's ridiculous on the face of it. It is. When he's already said mm -hmm. that men are way stronger on average than women. Right. Yeah, no, Vosh is going to get right. physically assaulted <laughs> and or gang raped in his first week in prison. Yes. You're not, yeah, you're not going to get... Probably not going to get gang raped in the, the women's prison. I well, could there's be wrong. Not, there's not. Okay. 
technically there's not a lot of a lot of not a lot of violent offenders in the, in the so women's prison. But even if even if you even if you put him in the most you know violently offending you know female prisoners, you can still get shanked. But right, everyone's going to choose to be with the more non. When you're in prison, and you have a security a safety concern for your own well being, who's not going to choose to be part of the population that has the less safety concern that is going that is safer? Who's going to not choose that? Or that they can, you know, rely more on their natural strength. De- De- or if they just want to fuck someone, they could be in a situation where maybe they could hook up with someone on top of that, too. Debra so, Consensually. Debra So's demeanor like, says it all. She's basically <laughs> just saying, you can't be this full of shit. This is so ridiculous. She, her response is basically, <laughs> you can't be this full of shit. Yes. Bump so as a man. A I can't imagine I'd be very comfortable in a women's prison. I mean, you know, if, if you could cartoonify it's the whole more thing. Posh, though, for you. It is, but it's also, it's not as the prisons for either sex are particularly accommodating. This is a hypothetical concern, which I think warrants real discussion. I do think there's a legitimate possibility of predation based on these preconceptions. But I, I, I have to go where the evidence follows, or where the ed- evidence leads me, I suppose. I have to follow. Um, and at the moment, the greatest concern that we have actual evidentiary claims for is with regards to the safety of trans women. Um, and if it does turn out, there ends up being some significant issue of these like um, fake, you know, like rapes going up because of people fake identifying or whatever, then I think we should, it would warrant examination. I imagine the easiest solution would just be to impose the same standards that uh, people do for medical transition, which is that you have to live as your gender for a given length of time before they'll allow for, um, you know, stuff like bottom surgery. Meaning that if- True scum, true scum, true scum. How's that true scum? Because he he argued earlier, and this was so dumb, that, you know, gender is just how someone, you know, the identity that somebody chooses. Okay. Oh, you're right. He's going against uh, gender identity right here. He's saying right. that you actually have to biologically transition. And so why and, and this is and this is what Deborah's alluding to. This is what everyone's alluding to, even if it's not happening in mass yet, but it will inevitably happen because people always take advantage of the system. It just takes a while. Vi- okay. Violent, violent psychopathic criminals are gonna right. take advantage of the system. Shocking. Sick. Shocking. Okay. I don't. If I can't. I'm, I can't believe this. If I'm a career criminal, and the only reason this isn't happening yet is because people that are career criminals are not intelligent enough or knowledgeable enough that this is going on to to do this anyway. I disagree. I feel like they're always a step ahead. If they can do it, they'll do it. No, no, no. They're a step ahead of like the law, but this conversation is still hasn't trickled down yet to like the mainstream audience. Okay, because. If all it takes is self-affirmation of gender, if that's all it takes, which is what the gender activists want, okay? It doesn't have to be sex offenders. Every criminal around can just simply say, I identify on my government license as a woman. Because if you, if you say, I identify as a woman, and it doesn't change anything about your daily life whatsoever, except if you get arrested, you go to female prison, why would you not choose that option? Of course you would. Yes. Of course. Exactly. Of course you would. So it's almost like we need stricter guidelines. And simply saying you have to live your life as a woman for nine months, what does that mean? Well, I'm living You're the my one. life as a woman right now because I changed my driver's license six months ago. Exactly. What do you mean you, you live your what what do you mean live as a woman? I don't even know what that means. You just said living as a woman is some identity choice that people make. Or we had the fucking People and he basically gave the same answer in this and in in, in the other video we watched as um, the two people on the Doctor Phil show when they said, "Well, what does it mean to be a woman?" and he and they said, "Well, you have to be a woman." To you. I can't explain that. Only women knows you know what it means to be a woman. It's like okay, well, I guess what I identify as a fucking woman now. I'm not going to change a single fucking thing about my appearance or my life. And if you have any problem with that, you're a fucking transphobe. Yeah. Like you have to answer these questions because these will come up. And this is the problem. People with hypotheticals are testing the validity and the logic and the consistency of these theories. And they're all 
bullshit. I just None have, of them but were. I have to go with the evidence that's already available, Sitch. <laughs> okay. I have to, I, you know, obviously, I think your study okay. is statistically unviable for a lot I of see. different reasons. <laughs> I see. Okay. No, sure, sure. This is all bullshit. I know it's total sure. bullshit. You're a rapist, and you've been living as a woman for several years before being arrested. That seems like a fairly compelling bit of evidence right there that you might actually be a woman unless you were anticipating being arrested and being sent to jail, you know, years. You know, if you're a rapist, you're probably anticipating being sent to jail at some point <laughs> in your life. I'm just, I don't, how is Bosch not, how does Bosch not understand this? No, but why would everyone, there's almost no reason. I can't even think of one. I can't think of a single reason. I know I'm going to do it just in case right now. <laughs> Just in case, right? I'm brought up on some fucking trumped up January six charges or something. I'm like, yeah, like, honey, it, I'm living as a woman now. Yeah, all you have to say is I'm a woman on on your, you know, right. my government ID. Okay, and it doesn't have, like, and it doesn't change anything about you. There's no reason not to because you'll go to the the women's prison. You won't have to sign up for the draft. <laughs> yeah. You, oh, that's a uh, good one too. Shit. You you can take out. Where do know, I sign? You can take out loans or get government protections that affect women specifically. Oh, that's <laughs> like, true. I'm an oppressed no, class now. Yes. There's no negative penalty that is incurred by doing this. You only benefit from it. Look, I can tell people I'm gay married. Holy shit. There you go. You're yeah. You're oppressed all of a sudden. I'm gay. I, I can be gay married. I'm a woman married to a woman. <laughs> I think we should. I think we should come out as women, Adam. I, I think I'm gonna have to put on the Sitch Chan avatar, and uh, you're gonna put on the. You have to do nothing by yourself. I can't believe it, but, the uh, impeccable A team memory. I, I'm mm -hmm. I'm hoping for it, but I I swear, he brings up the abolition of, of segregated sex prisons when he fucking. <laughs> <laughs> no he does i hope he doesn't i think he does but maybe i miss maybe i'm misremembering from another video or something because if you're making that argument it completely contradicts the argument right. that women or trans women are unsafe in male prisons it's later after your your court date finally comes up um or as if you just say like right on the spot actually i'm a woman maybe they would disregard that i'd be interested to see how it plays out and your point about how sociological research could be done on this, I would say, okay, maybe in some disciplines in which there's an expectation as to what they will find with their findings, because I know this was another point that you brought up in the video you did. I, I do not think in this climate, there may be exceptions, but it is extremely difficult for objective researchers and scientists to even pursue questions that go against activism. It's next to impossible. I don't, I don't think that- What is that based on? Well, I have a decent number of academic friends and- uh... <laughs> That's not a study. That's a don't have it in <laughs> He loses his shit, calls her example of fucking anecdote. And then she asks, what's your evidence? And he says, well, I have a lot of friends in academia. <laughs> what the fuck? Listen, listen. This guy has I no saw, scruples. No scruples. I saw, I saw a lot of Trump signs. I'm pretty sure he's going to make a 50 state land. <laughs> Why you got to throw Tim Pool victory. under the bus? <laughs> Why you got to do that? Why? I'm just saying it's the same Why? feeling, same energy, okay? Same Why? energy. I Why? got a lot of academic friends, and they these unnamed friends tell me that uh, you, first of all, the idea, this is so fucking bullshit. What is the chance what is a percentage chance that vosh has academic friends who are anti-woke that, that want to study anti-woke no, zero okay. zero <laughs> is it can we go lower than zero there's negative chance negative, negative 100 percent chance okay. yes yes i'm sure i don't know if he has friends but i'm sure that there are academic people in academia who follow vosh okay and they're all woke fucking of course they woke, are wokey wokeies because that's why they follow us in the first place they're not going to have any fucking insight on any of this problems because they're adhering to the institutional bias yeah that's just so kooky i'm only a bachelor's myself which is hardly an academic so i can't speak from personal experience but wait a second vosh now 
You've been calling yourself an academic based on that bachelor's degree for fucking two years now. Now he's saying he's not an academic? I, Oftentimes I, there's this weird conflation where it's like the researchers are behold. I wish she would ask him to say, okay, as someone who does work in these fields, who does go, has, has literally herself gone through this process. Right. Of, trying to get grants and do studies and all these things, you know, I want you to explain to me the process of, of oh, setting I up a study. Oh, I would love that. I would love that. <laughs> and why you think it's not, why there's no biases whatsoever. So you, yeah. you tell me, you tell me that, and then I'll explain to you what actually happens. I'll academic ex academia explain to you. Okay. How these research uh, studies are set up. I mean, I've read a bunch of articles about this stuff already because I'm interested in it. Vosh has read none of the stuff we've read on this. Right. I mean, we we read Quillette, but he thinks of Quillette as right wing Nazi propaganda. He thinks uh, Quillette only exists so that race realists have a place to publish. That's mm. that's Vosh's thinking on the topic, mm. which is completely inaccurate and fucking Vosh doesn't right. know anything. Holden to the activists, but then somehow the activists are in agreement with almost every major medical institution in the United States. So it's actually the researchers who are the activists in which- Uh, except they're not. <laughs> yeah. In case you think they wouldn't be beholden to anyone because they're acting ideologically in line well, with the group well, you'd expect to be pressured. I don't want to cut you off. Is it possible that these organizations have also been influenced by the activists? Influenced, sure. But to the extent that it's compromised the validity of their research, no, I think that's conspiratorial. It's a long stand. I mean, we literally have in Canada, there was that law we covered that we went over that basically made it illegal to, it, it considered, it could easily consider and be interpreted that anything other than affirming someone's gender identity when they come into your office as a psychi psychologist or a psychiatrist would be considered illegal conversion therapy. Okay. This is happening in Canada, but no, this is a conspiracy theory, Adam. It's Vosh, all a conspiracy. Vosh doesn't know anything about this topic. And that's why I say it's, it's difficult for me to say that he's lying when he doesn't even really know the details of the situation. Like he well, may no. be inadvertently lying. He, he, that's no, no, happening. No, no. He's lying in that he's giving a certainty that to does, something that yeah. he has no certainty to whatsoever. Yeah, I and totally this agree. Is, Are you there? What happened? Where'd this you is go? the way he covers almost everything. Oh, this I is know. The, this is the Vosh Limbaugh aggressive stupidity, okay? He just he says everything with 100% certainty. I'm going to I'm going to run out for one second. I just I know Jordan Peterson makes an appearance and I want to be here for that. Okay. So. Okay. I'll be right back. A conspiracy among homophobes that the only reason the APA removed homosexuality from the DSM was because of activist pressure. And that in reality, they all knew being gay is a mental illness. And they only took it off because of political pressure, you know, uh, in, the, in the absence of- Wait, what, 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 what? Citation needed, please, please citation needed. That, oh, all the psychologists, they knew that being gay wasn't a mental illness, but they were keeping it under wraps because they're evil or something. What the fuck is he talking about? It's of evidence. Um, I can't say so. I think that the research on trans people, the sort of prevailing attitude is consistent across disciplines for a reason. Um, and it's because most of this stuff is, is borderline common sense. You know, I don't think the activists hold much sway in what can or can't be researched. So as I correctly recalled the year in which the APA removed the diagnosis of homosexuality for as a mental illness was 1973. Okay. He's comparing that to something that's happening now, 50 years later. Attitudes, cultural attitudes about these things hasn't changed in 50 years. Okay. This is so dishonest. So dishonest. This is so dishonest. Dishonest. I need to plug my my thing, I think, isn't plugged in all the way. What my thing? internet thing. 
Oh, really? That's why I'm like cutting out occasionally because it's on the wireless. So I need to go. Ouch! I need to go fajiggle with it. So I'll be That's back. That's okay. Time. You're not gonna miss any. Does Jordan Peterson didn't come up? No, he just conflated. He did the whole gay used to be part of you know mental illness too. Did he say things. anything about dissolving men and women's prisons? Not yet. Okay, I'm I'm looking. Go go dingle your thing. <laughs> I, <laughs> what would you say to someone who's lost their job as a result of activists harassing them and putting pressure on their institution to fire the uh, person? Uh, well, I know um, Libs of TikTok is doing plenty of that work right now. So if it was a victim of their thing, I would. What about Islam again? Oh, shit. If our, if Libs of TikTok is getting teachers is getting elementary school teachers fired. That has nothing to do with research grants in colleges, okay? Nothing, nada, zero zip zilch. And you get another whataboutism on the counter, Vosh. Let's see if we can make it to a dozen. Let's say I'm sorry for the, the harassment you've gotten. Well, okay, it but let's let's not make it a, an even across the board thing right what, what would you it's serious if someone loses their job because they're pursuing research that they are genuine it's not hateful they're just genuinely interested in wanting to know what the truth is and they lose their job because they ask the question is that fair as a socialist there are plenty of people in my ideological tradition who have legitimately lost their jobs due to the questions they felt worth asking in my experience and again, I understand the sounds. And I agree with you across the board politically. I don't think it matters if someone's on the left or right. That shouldn't be happening. I think it matters what they're being fired for. Then lives the TikTok people. That's getting people fired. He, he, he's basically saying, get used to it. Like I, people, he's saying my tribe gets fired all the time for being socialist. So if you get fired, I'm not going to lose any sleep about it. That's basically what he said. I just for being gay or trans or whatever, oftentimes. But the with people get fired for being gay or trans. That's see, I'm telling you. Bosch lives in a fucking dream world. But okay. Well, I know. But with regards to the um, the the activism thing, ninety nine percent of the time when I see somebody in academia who is fired for the boldness of the Wait research, they we gotta go back. What was that snarky? Very I strong. Know. <laughs> nah, oh, he does do that. Nah, I know. <laughs> We're not going back. You didn't miss anything. We got an hour left. I think your dongle fell, fell out because I can't hear anything now. Oh, oh it's because I was trying to listen while you were talking. Oh. Because <laughs> I did take back people. already. That's getting people fired just for being gay or trans or whatever, oftentimes. But the. I disagree, with, but okay. Well, I know. But with regard. <laughs> I know you disagree. I you know. know. Vosh, can you give me a study? <laughs> can you. Uh... Mm, I want to study on uh, gay and trans people being fired from academia. You know, or, you know, you know what, better yet, why don't you give me a study on uh, communists being canceled from Can academia? Please, just give me a study on that one. Uh, I don't want any, I don't want any anecdotes. I don't want any examples as you play forth. I want to study. Give me a study on that, please. Would you, could you kindly please give me a study on that one, sir? Colleges are so thirsty to get a trans <laughs> professor. You think they're going to fire that person? Hell no. <sighs> Hell no. Actually, I know several uh, gay and trans individuals who were fired from their jobs right. 50 sure. years ago. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Know, like, exactly. Okay. 50 years ago. <laughs> Fuck you. What, could you fucking imagine if a school fired someone for being gay or trans in this environment? <laughs> they get crazy. They're trying to hire someone. I know trans or gay this is such a bullshit regards to the um the the activism thing 99 percent of the time when i see somebody in academia who is fired for the boldness of the research they were academic with very strong pre pre uh formed political conceptions that were influencing their work and they realized they could make more money being a social figure or a public advocate for their political positions than remaining within academia recently did this a entirely unremarkable man in terms of his academic contributions he got famous for lying about bill c-16 and it's, it's she beeps out jordan peterson's name but then leaves in bill c-16 which tells you exactly who he's talking about yeah 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 i don't know why she beeped out 
Jordan Peterson, he's like a public figure now. Well, because um, he's targeting Jordan Peterson and she's she's friends with Jordan Peterson, obviously. No, I understand, but I'm saying like everyone knows who he's talking about. Jordan Peterson's a public figure. Um if she would have been, really if she would have you know, beeped out uh, Bill C sixteen, she would have got away with it. I'm just I'm saying she kind of half assed it on the beeping thing. Well, but it's I'm but it's good that we know he's talking about Jordan Pearson. I know. She shouldn't have beefed it out at all. Yeah. Because Jordan Pearson was like a he- like one of the most heavily cited psychologists, I thought, <laughs> before, you know, before he stopped practicing. And one of the he most like, popular teachers. Right. He was one of the most popular teachers, one of the most heavily cited uh, psychologists. And then fucking uh, lard ass over here. Is all like, man, he was a completely unremarkable man for lying about a bill, which turned out he didn't lie about it at all and was completely correct about the bill. True. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever. His predictions came true on the bill. Yes, they did. Made his way as a self help guru. And now, of course, he makes far more money doing. He, he made his way as a self help guru. It's not like that was part of his field of study for like most of his fucking career. <laughs> I I just I despise this argument because one per one cancellation yes. Yes. was botched. Yes. And they pulled that person up as if all these cancellations are botched. Many right. of them are not botched. And right. there is this thing called attempted murder. Like just because you you, you you fail at your goal to murder somebody doesn't mean that you aren't charged with attempted murder. Right. Yeah. Just because yeah. you failed in your cancellation attempt, which you know you want the guy, you want Jordan Peterson to be living under a bridge somewhere. That's your fucking goal. Okay. And because yeah. it backfired uh, tremendously on you, you don't get to w- go run around and say, okay, we were just kidding. We weren't trying to kill you. Right. Such fucking no, that, bullshit. That's exactly it. They have this total bullshit survivors biased nonsensical argument. You know, it's like, oh, well, Jordan Peterson and Brett Weinstein, and I don't know, like a couple other people that they like. And, to cite. and Brett, we- you can't say Brett Weinstein is fucking rich by any stretch of the no, imagination. No, no, right? But he's probably yeah, but he survived his cancelization, basically. Right. Like, oh, these people either survived their cancelization or became more popular after being canceled. Therefore, because this handful of people, like the cancellation, didn't stick, it's not a real problem. It's like, fuck you. Don't. That's, it, you, that's such a scum argument. I'm so glad that you brought up Brett Weinstein and Heather Hyde because I honestly could not tell you if you if you asked them in privately, if you asked them in private, you know, would you would you rather be working in academia in academia now doing some kind of research back in your old gig? You know, may, mm-hmm. you know, you don't you don't have to ask him. You don't have to say, you know, what if. You know, what if this never happened or the effects of this weren't exactly the same? Let's just say academia changed their mind and said, welcome back. We're sorry. Or they don't even have to say they're sorry. They're like, we just we feel like we're going to take you back. I don't know that they wouldn't go back to academia. I don't know that there's actually tangible damage being done like they They wouldn't rather be working in some academic setting. Well, I think if you asked uh, them or asked Jordan Peterson and said, okay, you have two buttons. One button keeps everything the way it is, including your newfound popularity or money or whatever. The other way will make it so that wokeness never happens. But you'll con- you'll just be a teacher. You know, you'll just continue your tra- your life trajectory before you became famous for getting canceled, okay? I'm pretty sure Jordan Peterson, Brett Weinstein, his wife, basically everyone that's in academia that's been canceled, even if they became somewhat popular afterwards. I'm pretty would sure all of them would button. press the button to remove wokeness. I don't they know care. about Jordan Peterson. I think he would. Don't. I think he would. That's I really a do tough think one. he would. Jordan Peterson's like a megastar, though. I don't think it matters, though. I, you know, especially with all the problems that he's had uh, with depression and anxiety, I don't think it matters. I think he really cares more about the big picture at the end of the day. And I think all these people do. And I think they would sacrifice you know, some personal fame to have a society that's fucking sane again. Or at least sane on these issues. Maybe. Wow. But maybe I'm just a little bit more optimistic about these people than you. 
<laughs> Why Jordan Peterson has so so many resources at his disposal now that he's taking advantage of. I mean, I it's difficult for me to say because Jordan Peterson's hanging out with like Elon Musk and shit. I don't know that Brett Weinstein is hanging out with Elon Musk. So wow. I mean, it's a much bigger ask for Jordan Peterson than it is mm-hmm. for Brett and Heather. I guess we'll never know. Well, I would like I. Maybe we can ask a Patreon question. But he would just yeah, say, yeah. of course I would press the button. Yeah, of but course. But would you really? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Rat, than he ever could, acting as a professor. But when he was on his way out, he published a big article about how academia has left him behind and he wasn't allowed to do X or Y and blah, blah, blah. And to be honest, I don't really buy it. It's an origin myth, a creation story. Why are you out here spreading the gospel? Well, it's because oh so so well when jordan pearson wrote about how he wasn't you know able to study things he wanted to that was all a lot he knew from that moment that if he lied about this he would become popular okay he had the 10 the what, 10 dimensional he, hold, underwater no, chess he, machiavellian approach to this he published that he published that letter though recently and it was long after he was a huge megastar so i mean that's that's not the letter he's talking about no he, he that's the letter he is talking he's talking about the letter where he resigned from his, his, he resigned his tenure at what was the university he was teaching at? Doesn't matter. He resigned his tenure and basically said that the institution was woke and that he was no longer going to be teaching there. You can look. He it had up. no because he had a statement. He had a statement very early on. Yeah, but he's happened. talking about two different things. Okay, well, I don't know what he's talking about then, but he's talking about the recent statement. Jordan I see. Peterson. Look it up. I, I understand that. I understand. You Do you remember the statement? Yeah, but I also remember he made a statement like really yeah. early when all this happened. Yeah, back about when, how, No, I remember. Yeah. And w- right. there's clips of him going on that television show. And I mean, he's fucking shaking. He's like totally. Yeah, right. I'm right. going to lose my job. My life is going to be, I'm going to be like Jordan Peterson thought he was going to be living under the bridge. He he did one yes. of the reasons why Jordan Peterson is so big is because I mean he did take the ultimate gamble. He did. And we all mm-hmm. deep down I think respected the man who you know put everything on the line for his values. That's the right. kind of human being we want to see, is it not? Right. And that's yeah, and that you're right and that's a part of why he became so popular was because he was voicing something that so many people felt. Right. And risked everything to do it. And now Vosh right. is sitting here saying, nah, he didn't risk anything. Come right. on. He, yeah. this was he, all he knew somehow intrinsically from the offset that this was going to blow up and be big for him. <laughs> yeah. He had a crystal. John Peterson had a crystal ball. You know, he could see. He could, he could tell what was going on. Such bullshit. Because academia couldn't handle the truth. Well, what was the truth? And then you look and, well... Um, I think that sociologists and biologists have mostly free reign to determine well, what you, they're no, interested in looking at. Well, you can at. continue what you were saying here. I was hoping that this conversation was going to be cordial, but go. you can go ahead with the point you were making in my case. What were you going to say? Oh, wait, I, am I speaking about... I'm not speaking about you. I'm speaking... <laughs> he doesn't... See, this is why I'm just telling you, Bosch is a fucking dipshit. Bosch yes. doesn't even know that she was canceled over some research. Mm-hmm. Which obviously well, she thinks he's I talking... Don't know, d- about he, her he, case as well he no but see I, I don't he knows that she's a doctor he knows that she's a sexual researcher and he definitely he'd have to be a complete moron not to say what he just said and not have it be implied that this you know this applies to her as well so i don't think i do think this was intentional i don't think he i don't think he mr beaned his way into this by accident what do you you think he doesn't know that the conversation he's having with her is so similar to her situation that she could easily imply that he's talking about her? Yes. I I don't think for a second he doesn't realize that what he's saying could apply to her. You think it's deliberate? Yes. Okay. I think you're giving this guy way too much credit. How could you not? He's he's literally talking about, oh, there's all these academics that are leaving the field of academia to say that they're canceled and to be, you know, anti-SJW, intellectual dark web types. He even talked about this in his video about her. Right. He, he called her an intellectual dark web type. And, oh, you know, they're all doing it to make a bunch of money. He knows that he's talking okay. about her. Come on. 
Okay. What are we What are we doing here? What okay. are we doing here, okay. guys? Come on. He did say that in the video. He did. Yes. But he didn't. I mean, he could have been easily in the video. He could have been speculating about figures like Jordan Peterson or Brett Weinstein and not knowing that she's doing the same, not knowing that the same events have happened to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, oh, well, I'm not familiar. You, after, after you finished talking about thought you were making a point about me. So if not, that's Oh, fine. no, my apologies. I didn't mean to imply that. No, I'm not familiar okay. with the work that you did. I know. I know. See, he doesn't know any of the work. She's mm, done. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it what you did. I'm not familiar with the actual research you've done. In my experience, it's very difficult to ascertain the sincerity of uh, um, of, of, of people's claims to that effect. Oh, so I can never ascertain the sincerity of people that I accuse of bad faith and call liars all the time. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. It's not about a ascertaining their sincerity. You don't, <laughs> there's no good faith fact with regards to censorship or the effects of political activism what have you now does it happen the question to this the, or if the answer is undeniably yes it does you know but i don't know if it happens along a line or through a pattern substantial enough to 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 verify the conspiratorial belief that the output of these institutions must be weighted heavily and distorted by the effects of activism if that makes any sense you, you can't make that statement if you've looked at any of the evidence on this topic, Vosh right. is completely in the dark here. Yeah. Well, see, again, you're, I'm not assuming any positive good faith here. I don't think this is in the dark. I think this is intentional. It's entirely intentional. Do you think he reads anything on this topic? He, 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 knows, he thinks it's good. Huffington Post. He thinks it's good that these people are canceled. And okay. he's lying through his fucking teeth. Okay, you could be happening. right. You could be right. You could be right. He thinks it's payback for Libs of TikTok account. Right. Yeah, but the whole, you know, the, the Libs of TikTok thing is so funny too because it's it's such a dishonest comparison. Libs of TikTok doesn't go and find people and then publish their personal information. Libs of TikTok is a compilation of people who self put out their own videos on TikTok. And then someone says, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and sends it to them. Yeah, it's something it's that, that their, okay. their yes. whole intention is to go right. viral. It's Yes, it's something somebody themselves films themselves saying or doing and then puts it on the internet for people to look at. And then someone looks at it and says, that's dumb. Right, yeah. Okay, it's not the same thing. Right. They share it around and all of us collectively laugh at how stupid and right. ridiculous. They're just mad is. that we're yeah. laughing at them as opposed to cheering, essentially. Right. Yeah, and the uh, the they're actually going after getting people fired, which is a completely different. Yes, thing. but yes. I do think Libs of TikTok has got some people fired because they're acting. I mean, the stuff they're posting is illegal. They're doing yeah. shit in classes that you can't do. Right. Yeah. If you're right. gonna but go, the, if you're gonna shoplift, don't record yourself shoplifting and upload <laughs> it to the internet. Okay. That's not shockingly. That's, I know shockingly. That's, but in Vosh's mind, oh, you know, they should have been able to do that. It's an infringement that they actually got caught. Mm -hmm. I mean, I disagree with you. I'm thinking of, of some of the points that you made in your video in terms of, I think there's this perception that for those of us who do go against the orthodoxy and we talk about this and people will say, well, look at the opportunities you're getting. How can you say you've been canceled or silenced? because you're still getting these opportunities, you know, for in, in my case, you know, getting to talk on the, the largest podcast in the world. But what goes on behind the scenes, people don't always see that. And I think people don't necessarily see how much harder some of us have to work in order to get those opportunities. Whereas and also, it's so disgusting, too, because they're doing everything they can to fucking cancel Joe Rogan. It's like, there's one guy. There's one guy, Joe Rogan, okay? That's like the big podcaster that can buck, you know, the mainstream woke narrative. Right. And if you show up on his podcast, oh, well, then I guess you're not really canceled because you showed up on Joe Rogan's podcast. Right. Well, they if Joe Rogan's podcast was gone, then they would all effectively be canceled. That's for sure. I, I guess mean, they'd they have would, their they, own they, they, YouTube yeah. channels, but. Right. Then, you know, you wouldn't hear about it. And Vosh wouldn't care. But well, those people are they're bad people. They're transformed. They're bigots. They deserve to be canceled. He was on 
Jordan Peterson went on his podcast for like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> he, Joe Rogan basically had to throw him out of the building. Like they did yes. a, I don't, did you watch that? They were like turning yes. the lights off and shit. Jordan is still I talking. Did, I remember. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> he was excited. It was Listen, so he's good. excited. Okay. Yeah. He had Jamie come out and turn the clothes sign around. <laughs> <laughs> he hired the Oscar orchestra to start playing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hilarious. He had Will Smith come and sit next to Jordan <laughs> Peterson and start eyeballing him. <laughs> make him nervous. To smack you. Yeah. Exactly. Jaden told me to. Co- Jaden told me to come in. Said you were talking a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> As if you were saying the right thing you wouldn't be losing opportunities or you would be getting more invitations to do things or people would not be afraid to be associated with you. And so I would just ask, I would ask you and I would ask your audience to maybe consider that, that what you see may be the highlight reel of someone's career, right? But it's not necessarily what's going on behind the scenes. And also, um, also many, like there are many things that have happened in my case that I don't talk about publicly just because I'm a private person. And I'm, a, I'm also someone who doesn't want to, be seen as complaining because I do feel very lucky to be in the position that I'm in. Go ahead. It's, it's not my intention to be dismissive with regards to that. I know people who've been. But you are. You fuck. Totally dismissive. You fuck oh my god. And legitimately fired for what I would consider unjustified grievances from academia. You know, it's only that narrative and the thing that I'm very cautious about is the idea that the product of academic institutions. You know, when he says that he has friends that are fired from academia, let me, let me, let me reach deep inside my gut here. Okay. Since I'm not, I don't have a study that I can produce and Vosh isn't producing any study. I'm going to guess what he said, what he means by that is that he had, he knew some fucking teacher <laughs> who was teaching some CRT or some gender ideology bull crap that, the state had said you can't teach that, and they got caught up on libs of TikTok, and they got fired from. Oh, I'm job. sure of it. Yeah, they probably messaged him. Oh my God, I lost my <laughs> right. job, Vosh. Can I come on yes. and talk to you? I was I, totally canceled yes. by libs of TikTok. Yes, this I. Would be great I could almost bet that's what he's referring to. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people send him stories. That are all made up trying to get Vosh's attention. <laughs> right. Or someone literally violating the law. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of the research on the subject is invalid because they silence internal dissent. And this is very non falsifiable from a broad perspective because, of course, we don't actually know the specific reason most people get fired, right? I mean, a lot of it really is up to sort of you had to be there. It's not always easy to ascertain, especially as a non expert. So when that narrative is constructed, it gives leeway to a lot of really bad subsequent ideas. In terms of where the research is at right now on the trans issue with regards to trans athletics or the sex differences or what have you, I would, I from, from whom I've spoken to, I do believe that the research is legitimately unclouded by political bias. Because <laughs> in addition to me having spoken with those people and having done a lot of research on race realism, because I argue with neo-Nazis pretty often, you know, that researchers can go about in the modern day publishing like well here are the average iqs of different racial groups and not get canceled for it you know can they though i don't know about that as someone who doesn't buy into the racial realism stuff at all i'm pretty sure that that's the third rail for anyone to touch whatsoever well the only one talking about is is charles murray who's already been canceled for like right. 50 years over the whole and day. that's why he's the only one talking about right it. sam harris just had Ch- Charles Murray on his podcast, and he, who calls himself bulletproof, did not like the fallout from the situation. Right, so. right. This is so ridiculous. This is such a ridiculous argument. It's so detached from reality. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. It's just, it's delusional. It's completely delusional. Yeah, this is delusional. I think more leeway is given than people think, you know, if anything, the social media space is the one which curtails the greatest degree of fervent cancellation, because a lot of the stuff that goes by in academia just ignores public notice. Well, I would say from. Yeah, until some fuckhead on Twitter finds it, who finds it and blows it up. And as you've even admitted yourself, Fosh, 
that trans activists on Twitter are the worst people ever. Right. <laughs> and then they blow it up. They make a big deal about it. And these uh, institutions and these universities that are all filled with like cowardly, spineless uh, scumbags will just capitulate and tell the person to stop it or fire them or both. Yeah. My experience and the colleagues that I still talk to who are in academia, they they tell me they cannot they cannot pursue this line of research unless it's very, very clear in advance what they're going to find and that it's going to be something that's positive towards trans activism. Or what what line? It hasn't height has talked about this, not in terms of trans stuff, but he's talked about Yeah, this, his, uh, his classes are boring as fuck now. He talks about it all the time because I mean, he did some really, he studied moral psychology. Of course, he's done some spicy research. Right. And he can't even show that research in the classroom now without being accused of homophobia. Right. Uh, Glenn Lowry and John McWhorter have talked about this, how, you know, they get, you know, everything, you know, they get, you know, mean, nasty whisperings and looks and how, you know, everything right. has to be couched in this very specific way. Otherwise, you know, well, they're and, considered like the bad ones. And they have somewhat protection just in the fact that they're both black but right and they still yeah they still right. yeah <laughs> no just... i can't imagine being in academia right and like what if, if a study was to be done so you you alluded earlier about say childhood transition i know that's another area we disagree at, about mm -hmm. any any study that could potentially that even looks at the question of what are the outcomes and is it possible that childhood transition may not be beneficial for these kids, right? Because I'm sure you, I've, I've talked about this all the time, oh, how man. all the research we currently have shows that most kids outgrow their feelings of gender dysphoria. So it makes sense to wait until they reach puberty if they want to make such a decision about transition. I fully support transitioning in adults. If that's someone's choice. This is so caught up too in the finances of this whole thing too, because it's like the smoking thing. Do you think these institutions that are getting rich off of these kids transitioning want a report to come out that shows, oh, all of this expensive surgeries and stuff are actually bad for you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they want that? Of course not, no. Yeah, no, they're going to be no. paying researchers to come up with the exact... And they would be... Vosh would be able to see this in the context of the smoking thing. That, yes, you know, yes. seedy corporations are... Evil paying, capitalism. ...are paying for research to that's going to produce a product that's going to line their own pro pockets. He would understand that in that context. But because it's about this trans issue, it becomes completely invisible to him. Right. Which it's, that's so, that's, I mean, you're not a lot of help for society if that's well, your bias. And, and, he, and he, he basically, when they argue about this, he proves her entire point because he says, oh, well, the study you're citing is a bad study because it was self-reported by parents who were anti-trans in the first place. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then which my response to that is, well, wait a minute, if that's the case and this research is so easily done, why the fuck has no one else done this research with a better s subject sample? Because they, it's <laughs> the, the financing is not available to them. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Why is no, if, if it's so easy to do this, how come no one else has done it? How come, how come such a basic question, like, I don't know, you know, what is the desistance rate uh, for kids that don't undergo anything? Why is it so hard to find this information in my, you know, for modern studies? You know, we, we have this information from like 10 years ago, but how come in modern times where attitudes have completely changed about uh, transitioning, we can't find any like very basic questions answered. Right. If it's so easy to do these studies. I don't know. Do, do they what? Have to wait well, till puberty? Well, the purpose of a pediatric psychiatrist with regards to gender issues would be to determine which cases of gender non-congruity are ones worthy of um, hormone blockers, right? I mean, I I've seen the study that you're referring to, and it it's not as though the sample of gender dysphoric children they were looking at 
were every kid who had been given puberty blockers. It was every kid who tripped a number of labels for gender non-congruence or discomfort, which is something that's pretty common when you're young. You know, kids are whatever, they're figuring out. That's the pro. This is so stupid. That's the problem. That's not an argument against what she's saying or what any of us are saying. It's like, yeah, the problem is you have all these people that trip these markers and flags and then they give them the puberty blockers immediately, okay? So just saying, well, this doesn't cover everyone that took pu puberty blockers is not a counter argument at all. Their identity. Did you look at the study? But, I mean, because I was confused. Yeah, I, by I've the seen the study, the study. I've seen the study a while ago. I didn't look at it recently, but there was some study that I tweeted about because it talked about the reason people desisted, and they didn't actually do any surgeries or anything. They just socially trans transitioned i guess and then mm -hmm. the reason for desistance social pressure was so low i think it was like 10 10 percent or something and i think it was change in political beliefs i think it was like 20 percent <laughs> i right. was looking for the study but i can't find it they talk about the study a bit but i i'm pretty sure Vosh categorizes it as 90% desistance because it's a social pressure, which is just a lie. Oh, that study. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. I, I look, That study, yeah. I don't, I, that's a weird study, too. Well, I'm um, sure it, it doesn't it look It doesn't like measure it's... what he thinks it measures. Yeah. Well, I found it. I found the tweet. Oh, my God. I, I can't believe it. Right. It's not as though you just go over to the clinic as a 12 year old and they just pop you a bottle of, of hormones, right? You know, you go through rigorous uh, pediatric psychiatric analysis and then maybe you get on hormone blockers. And then of the people who get on hormone blockers, the overwhelming majority decide to go on and take actual hormones to transition later on, which is in large part, I think, because the pediatric psychiatrists do a pretty good job. You know, if you're in there getting appointments for like a year and you're, and you're talking to an expert and you're like that grounded, even as a kid on your identity, just not matching your birth sex. That to me seems like, a, you know, it's indicative of nothing else, at least maybe of the validity of puberty blockers. But that's, that's the entire problem is that the gender activists are trying to, they're trying to, uh, you, you framed this a lot better some hours ago, so I've already forgotten. They're trying to make it so much easier. They're trying to lower the threshold that just be like affirmative care. It's, you know, doctors shouldn't be questioning. Doctors shouldn't be challenging, you know, kids' gender identities. You know, the kid comes in, they say they have gender dysphoria. They say that, you know, they're the wrong gender or whatever. And the doctor should just affirm this stuff. This is the direction that the activists want to push uh, the medicine completely. Right. And Vosh can't pretend like he doesn't know that that's what's happening, even though he's pretending like he doesn't know right now. And I'm skeptical that he does know just because I'm I lean towards Vosh has an IQ of 80. I, <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but I just feel like everything he says is just this is the thing a dipshit would say. Mm. Like it makes and he just seems to be I think he has just I he think he might be a robot. I'm not sure he passes the <laughs> Turing test with me. Like He seems to have just basic npc talking points that mm -hmm. i don't relate to so i did i found the study i have the tweet but this i did the a screen cap of the chart because this chart demist was uh mystified me reasons for detransitioning uh 70 has realized that my gender dysphoria was related to other issues that's concerning 70 percent right right 43 percent change in political views and only 10 percent is discrimination so ob obviously they're asking them this is a questionnaire thing so these don't add up to 100 percent because they can they can check multiple reasons for detransitioning on the thing so but of the survey 43 percent of the people checked oh yeah change in political views is one of the reasons why only 10 percent of people checked Discrimination. What is, what is this chart from? I can get the source for this. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. Because I think well, I saw something that was different than this chart. I think he references this. That's why I was like, "What factors leading to detransition?" Did you find it? I'll send it. Well, to Well, I you. found a study. I don't know if this is the study that that chart comes from. Because this oh. is a study that I saw. 
this from like last June. Um, I'll send it to you here. Play the video. Okay, we're fucking, if we're, geez, we gotta stop talking. I would here. argue that <laughs> clinicians cannot do an objective assessment in this climate, especially when they in Canada say they potentially face up to five years in prison if they do not affirm. That really ties a clinician's hands. Thank you. We did a whole thing on this, I believe. Yes. Covered it Thank on the you, Tuesday Deborah. stream. I because we read the bill. We read the law. Right. Yeah. That's a big old true. We covered the law. Types of yes. That's what we Sitch and Adam, we fucking we dig in. We're in we're investigators, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Internet investigators. They can ask well, and if they're gonna be considered You mean trying they to can't do conversion deny therapy. some well okay so but the term conversion therapy there's a difference between conversion therapy for sexual orientation and gender identity right How although so? i know that they're they're lumped in together so conversion therapy for sexual orientation i don't support because you cannot change someone's sexual orientation so someone who's gay or bisexual cannot be made to be straight but when it comes to gender someone who's super straight can't be made <laughs> listen riley i see your <laughs> videos gender can change especially in young children who are developing so if all of the research shows all Wait, how so how 12 i think 11 or 12 studies show that children with gender dysphoria as they get older and reach puberty they're more likely to outgrow those feelings then but why gender dysphoria isn't the same as identifying puberty. as the other gender so no, it, so he's he's treading into <sighs> He's treading treading into the dangerous Sitch and Adam disagreement realm here. Well, no, it's you don't actually disagree. You just don't understand. It's fun. Okay. I hate you. I know. I know. When people make this claim that gender dysphoria is not the same as wanting to transition, that's technically true. Okay. Okay. But it's not really true <laughs> in terms of. If, it, if, if gender dysphoria didn't exist, okay, if the concept of gender dysphoria was removed, but people still want to transition, no doctor would put or medical field would it. allow you to transition. Right, right. It does, so, so, so trying to make this distinction to win an argument is stupid and wrong. Gender dysphoria is technically the gatekeeper on transitioning right now. Yes, because so, otherwise you're just some asshole who wants to, to you know, dress up, essentially, right. if you don't have gender dysphoria. So, and people are turning to the internet because they're saying, I need to at least mimic the gender dysphoria if I want to be able to get HRT and transition. Exactly. Right. Okay. Right. Gotcha. But I'm saying people should be able to just transition if they want to. Well, that's where we disagree. But... Right. Totally. Could, gender dysphoria isn't the same as identifying as the other gender, though. It can, but what we're talking about when we say gender dysphoria, I believe the study was just looking for like incongruence, you know, like a feeling of discomfort. Dysphoria being a more pointed medical term, but that, that's all it is, though. That's all dysphoria is—is is a feeling of discomfort. Yeah, we've yeah. All looked it up, read it, argued about it on stream. With what they were can, talking about, do you know which, which study. study this was? Who are the I, actually? I maybe don't say the authors, but which. I did. I did read it. Um, I don't remember the name of the author, so if I had to look it up, <laughs> he I did, did read I it. I did. I did read it. I swear. I swear. <laughs> he did read it. I swear to Buddha. I did. I read it. On Google and I think the methodology. The I think the study that you linked me and study he's referring to are different. Okay. How dare? Because I read a, the study I read was was a different study. How? Dare which is more in line you? with like the woke shit. Oh, was a, this is this. This website that I got this study off of is actually really good. Did you? I think I sent you a link to the website. It's a bunch yeah, you of, did. You sent it to me. There's a bunch of studies on there that I thought, oh, no woke person has ever read any of these studies because they're completely. <laughs> I these researchers are ba are going outside of the outside of the academic apparatus to do research on this stuff. Because they actually care, right? Right. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess Vosh would be happy about this. Well, here's an interesting thing. So, the study that you linked me, it's called "Detransition Related Needs and Support: A Cross-Sectional Online Survey," and it's 
It says the aim of the study is to analyze specific needs of detransitioners from online detrans communities to discover what extent they're being met. And so they do a study, they do a survey of 237 male and female detransitioners and talk about, you know, that's a lot what, of detransitioners there. Yeah. That's, there's your, there's your tiny percent, 200, 237 people. Um, and, but here's the interesting thing. If you click on this person, cause you, cause then Vosh would say, Oh, see, this is being studied. Right. But if you click on the person who did this study, this is the only study they've done so far. <laughs> okay. So they're obviously new to the field. So I mean, I'm glad that this is being done, but you know, you see, you, you can see what's going on here. It, it takes it takes uh, new blood, unfortunately, to uh, to risk to risk these sorts of uh, studies and conversations. The, the there's a, they link to the, a 60 minutes piece on this, and I guess six. I watched the 60 minutes piece, and 60 minutes got in a lot of hot water for this. Yes. Yes, they did. Did you notice also out of the 237 survey participants, 92% were, they say birth registered females. That's the first time I've read that term. Yeah. There's mostly, mostly women, which is what's interesting. About they don't this. say cis women yeah. though. They say birth no. registered females. Yeah. That is weird. I don't know why. Is it's... that the new lingo? It is crazy that, but here, here's part of the thing too. Before all this woke stuff happened, the, I'm trying to remember. It was something like 75 to 80 percent of people with gender dysphoria were male, right? And now it's like the opposite, which should be very, which should be very telling to something. And that's why, that's why the whole social contagion thing seems to be very accurate. It's like, why did the numbers complete? Like, why are there so many specifically women that are coming, young women that are coming out as having gender dysphoria when they didn't before? What's going on with that? You and I have both read Leonard Sachs' book, Why Gender Matters. And we're both yes. very familiar with this biological sex differences. Benjamin Boyce, who has a great channel you should check out, does these interviews with detransitioners. Mm -hmm. And he did this one interview. And just, this thing just stood out to me. I, I don't. They were talking about their experience inside the trans community, and they said inside the male to female trans private rooms and stuff, all they would do is talk about sex, 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 sex. And inside the female to male, all they would talk about is feelings. And I was thinking. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very interesting when you consider, you know, on average, guys talk about sex a lot more, I think, than women. And women talk about feelings a lot more, which it's just, it's so interesting that even though those, the dynamic is we're all women. We're still, you know, sex starved women versus mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very feelings oriented men. The, the study that you linked me is very interesting in that. Well, it's disturbing to some extent because. Oh, they don't get any that, help. Yeah. They totally are abandoned. Yeah. They're totally, they're totally abandoned. It says 46% of the women in, in the survey had undergone gender affirming surgeries. Yeah, that's a, that's okay. a real tough pill to swallow right yeah, there. Yeah, and they and yet now they are detransitioned. And here's the thing too, this is why I don't necessarily agree with the age thing because according to this study it says the average age for the person, let's see, the average age I lost it. it said the average age for the person Oh, okay. The average age of the person going undergoing medical transition in the survey was 20 years old. Wow. Wow. Well, oh, actually, here's actually this is very interesting. It says the average age for the for women was 20 years old, and the average age for men was 26. Though so, obviously there's way less men in this, in this right. survey. Right. Ninety-two percent is biological females. Yes. It's 237 participants. So right. I just guesstimating that's about a hundred people that actually went through some sort of surgical procedure. 
It's for, yeah. Well, it says there's 217 females. So 46% of 217. So yeah, it's like, you know, hundred, you know, undergone, underwent some kind of uh, actual surgery and then regretted it. And this is just from this one study. Now, of course, you'd want to say, okay, well, wait a minute. This is a study that's specifically studying people that are detransitioning. Like, so what you'd want was like, okay, you have 237 detransitioners, but like out of what? Like how many people don't detransition? Because that's like the next question you want to ask, which this study wasn't studying in the first place. So, Right. They were only looking at trans detransitioners. Right. But that, but that is, that should be very concerning. Especially when like the thing that you highlighted, 70% of the people said that their gender dysphoria was related to other issues. 50% said transition didn't help. 45% said they found alternatives to dealing with dysphoria. 40, as you said, 43% had changes in political views. <laughs> Right. That one just stands completely stands yeah. out. That's like, oh no. Jeez. Okay. Okay. 30% unhappy with physical changes. Yeah. They didn't think that that looked, you know, whatever their changes looked uh, good enough. Yeah. This is, this is some very crazy stuff. I feel super bad for people who get the book that I always want people to read is that influence book because you really, I, people are going into this without a lot of understanding of human psychology. And I just feel like, I mean, you could have gender dysphoria. That could be a thing, but you want, mm -hmm. you, you want to be able to, to tell you don't want to be just shuffled off into some medical assembly line, especially, and this is good advice for any kind of medical procedure you're going to get. Unless you're, you know, you've been shot and you're dying. Like you got to really look into this stuff. A lot of people in the medical profession will push you to get stuff that I don't necessarily think is a good idea. So you should always get a second opinion, get a third opinion. <laughs> Like know what you're getting into. And I have right. so many friends who've done all kinds of procedures that they just, they regret. They totally regret. They should yeah. have done it. Ga ga I've had friends that have done gastric bypass that are like, this is not what they sold me. This is not <laughs> the miracle dream, well, lose weight cure. Uh, I mean, that's what's such a joke about this whole situation too, is that, this doesn't have anything like look at all the medical procedures that have nothing to do with politics. Okay. Gastric bypass, you know, wh you know whatever there's a million surgeries. And I'm sure everyone's had this experience. You talk to doctors, especially doctors that provide the surgeries and they're all like, Oh yeah. Like not always, but very often they're very in favor of giving you these. Oh, surgeries. of course. Of okay. course. Yeah. And obviously there's a financial incentive, you know, behind it for themselves. And so so you have this situation that already occurs, and that's why you always have to get, especially before you do any surgery, you should always get a second opinion. There's that, even a third opinion. Another book is that book, The Price We Pay, where he goes in. Oh, that book is so demoralizing. There's a, they go around to different church groups to do some test on people to find out if they you know, need in quotes, this procedure that Medicare covers. And it's a totally right. nonsense right. procedure that they make hundreds but, yeah, of but, thousands of yeah, dollars for right. each person. But, but even, even things were like more like someone goes to the doctor and they have a problem. Um, right. You know, very often, you know, doctors, Those things, especially doctors, yes, that I agree. The doctors that provide the treatment tend to be far more gung ho <laughs> <laughs> to, to give you the treatment and then you go to some other doctor who doesn't have the financial incentive and they're like oh i wouldn't recommend that at all yeah <laughs> like, so, they're like this so, is 30 percent chance of even you noticing any kind of improvement right <laughs> and so that's without any politics so now we have the same thing but you have all this politics and gender identity politics rammed on top of it and you're telling me that you're going to get like you know straight results or straight answers from doctors about this stuff I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical. 
can you imagine? I just, it's so hard living in Los Angeles to even have a conversation with someone that you don't know about Trump. Can you imagine being in a doctor's office and talking about trans issues with a potential patient? Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And as she even said herself, which Vosh didn't address, he just said conversion therapy, LOL, and then address it. That's the law in Canada right now. You have to give affirmative care. Right. All these doctors are worried to death that they're going to get yeah. sued. Why do we always talk for so long? What I, I was know. looking at, though, it wasn't post-treatment. Like, these weren't children selected for um, puberty blockers, right? This was like a sort of pre-sampled list of, 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 of children with, with feelings of gender incongruence. Um, and they I did think transition? They did? Or was there, because the problem is with these studies, they also don't have a control group, right? So you won't, you don't know if there are any benefits. If, if, the, if the group of children who transition, they show benefits, you don't know if that's actually due to transition because there isn't a control group of kids with gender dysphoria no, I think they, who they don't didn't transition, transition. And that's, that's what the problem is. They well, didn't I, transition. I th Can't hear you, sis. This is so brilliant, and I'm kicking myself that I didn't ever think about this on my own. Okay. I guess I'm just a dumb fuck. That's okay. okay. We, we forgive you. Thank you. How are any of these fucking studies valid? Because there's no control group. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes. For the validity of transitioning for children. If there's no fucking control group in any of these studies. Right. Yeah. The group I wish no of one people... brought this up before. But don't you understand, Sitch? That would be... That would be detrimental to their health because if you didn't offer them you know a hysterectomy or a double mastectomy F. that F. would actually be bad for them we we just went it through would be something immoral on... it would be immoral to have a control group where you did absolutely nothing we just <laughs> went through something on a global scale Do you right. know what that was the pandemic what was that Oh, it was the pandemic. Yeah. Okay. So when we had a fucking virus, okay, this isn't some feeling that a psychiatrist needs to figure out. Okay. This isn't something so vague and nebulous as gender, something that's anywhere near as confusing as gender identity. We had a fucking virus, a you can put this under a microscope and look at it fucking virus. And even... With that, with the certainty that there was a virus running around infecting people and killing way more people than have ever committed suicide or died. From you don't dysphoria. know that okay. since you, you. Oh, no, I do. Know you've that. you've drank the CNN Kool-Aid. Okay. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> way more people globally have died from COVID than anyone. Than anyone who's ever killed themselves for, for gender dysphoria. Just okay? over and yet, and yet even with all of that, they still didn't just start fucking injecting people with vaccines saying, well, we can't test this against a control group because we can't not give people the treatment. They still gave control groups. They still gave some people placebos and they gave some people the fucking treatments to figure out what fucking worked. So how come magically when it comes to this issue, that all goes out the window. We can't have control groups anymore. All these kids are suicidal. You don't understand, Sitch. Okay. <laughs> If you have a control group and your entire control group commits suicide, that's going to look very bad that you didn't give them double, <laughs> double mastectomy. <laughs> if we can give, if we can create in the middle of a global fucking pandemic, right? If we can have a control group for the vaccine for the virus that's killing people, we can have a control group for transing children no you can't okay. you can't do it you gotta get in there quick okay? okay if you don't give them the hrt and the and the testosterone you just you're, you're gonna run all these kids are gonna be jumping off of bridges i'm telling you this is the hill i will die on this is where i'm gonna put my foot down here this will this will be the spiciest i will take this even though this is the most obvious commonsensical take i will take this fucking you can't do it this take it's and actually, unethical listen, sitch christopher rufo what you're arguing right everyone now is completely on the right, unethical everyone on you the right have to give them 
you have to cut it off. You have to cut. Their- Everyone on the right needs to pick up this argument. This is you said we're one meme away from destroying these arguments. This is the meme, Adam. It is. Okay. It is. This is the meme. We can have control groups for fucking COVID vaccines, but we can't have control groups for transition treatment. Are you out of your too fucking dangerous. mind? Too dangerous, Sitch. That's too the meme. Dangerous. That's the silver bullet. Christopher Ruvo and Co need to get on this shit. Okay. This is it. Christopher Rufo is doing critical race theory. We don't. He's doing the gender it. stuff too. Is Somebody really? needs to get on this. Some big right winger needs to get on this. Okay. Tucker Carlson, listen. <laughs> Tucker. <laughs> Tucker, I kind of hate your guts, but listen. He has no credibility on this. Listen, It'll never work. It doesn't. No, it doesn't matter. You don't need credibility. Okay. He just needs the meme to. Sp- the, the argument has his credibility. Do you think. Okay. You, could Tucker you find Carlson enough kids? needs w- to make this argument because that will spread it to everyone on the right. Okay? Can you like find wildfire enough kids? Will burn oh, it's through. true. Can you find enough kids that have gender dysphoria to have a control group? I'm not sure. <laughs> you can't. Can. I'm sure. You can do it. You can do it. I mean, it's such a tiny percentage of the population. All right. <sighs> uh, no, no control group. No control oh, these group. are the desistants. You're talking about desistants. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The, the desistants kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the issue I think that I have with this is that, like, you know, that's the point. You say, like, in this environment, a pediatric psychiatrist can't evaluate this. But that comes across as conspiratorial to me because this is, again, that, like, that nefarious political and academic bias prevents all these legitimate institutions and professionals from doing, See, he has doing their no, work. It's like, he has no idea yeah. about incentives, Sitch. He has zero understanding of how things work. Well, also, isn't she? She's she is Canadian, isn't she? I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah, she's Canadian. She literally, it's not a conspiracy. It's a little fucking law in her country. Right. <laughs> what the fuck is he talking about? It's just the law in her country. It's not a conspiracy. Why? Well, I, I have heard, I have heard, I have heard psychologists say that the law wouldn't prevent them from talking about this kind of stuff. So I don't see what how on, on what it could one, so easily be interpreted. I can't in, remember in his name. He, I, he's been on my channel a couple times. He said he the, he would be fine dealing with this issue with that law. I don't know. So maybe I, it's only he an, would. It's only an anecdote, but maybe he would. Right? But isn't this this is the art? They remember this is the argument they make. I wouldn't of against course, the, but I'm like right. I'm prone. I'm anti risk. Th- they're whining about oh. These CRT bills are going to prevent people from learning about slavery because they're too broad, they're too vague. And yet you have this gender thing that isn't really broad or vague. It's very specific in a negative way and obviously has some chilling effect built into it. And no, that's we're going to be silent on that one because yeah. it's p- towards the political direction that you know they want. Yeah, no, it's a power game. No, I don't buy it. I don't buy it, Adam. We're never going to finish this video. Yes, we are. But before we do, Johnny B for $20. Thank you so much, Johnny B. Says, honest question. Why should we care about women in sports? Seems to me that most women sports have to be subsidized because no one really wants to watch, especially women. Well, (laughs) (laughs) it's it's unfortunate because you're kind of making Vash's argument uh, unintentionally. And the thing is, people do care about uh, female sports people that are in the female sports people that have daughters care about female sports so i mean we're not just talking about on the professional level too we're talking about also in this going on in colleges and in high schools and, and these these areas and i don't think it's i don't think you should just say oh no one cares about women's sports so basically let it be destroyed which is essentially the argument that the gender activists are making so i, I don't support that at all right it's unfair that's the thing that bugs yeah. me I don't give a right. fuck about women's sports, to be honest with you. But I do. Well, I don't have a daughter, so I have I have no I have no personal stake in in women's sports. So I don't think it's right for me to make a judgment. Call well, I do. I care immensely about people getting the shaft. Yeah. I don't like people getting shafted. Okay. I feel that really bugs me. Right. I believe in justice. Okay. Well, yeah. Real and is what justice. It is what Deborah said too, which is that the, the argument about women in sports or trans women in sports is indicative of the larger argument 
in the, that's being made here, that there is no categorical distinction between cis and trans women. Right. And I think that's really what people are reacting to. Johnny B for another $10. Thank you so much. Also said, oh, I typed woman because Google would not let me submit a super chat if I did not substitute the word. The censorship is real. Exact same comment, just one difference. See, that's so crazy to me. You have, why to, say, couldn't he... you have to say whammon? Yeah, why can't it's like this is so weird. Why could you not type woman? Like there's nothing in the sport, there's nothing in that chat that is uh Did you say woman's sports? Yeah, I don't understand. You can't say women's sports in the chat. Well, it's weird. They said woman at the end, but they couldn't say, I guess, women's sports together. So that means that Google has labeled putting women's sports together is like a problem. They don't they must really not like women's sports. Well, I, I think I think there's two things that's going on here. I think certain it's, it's weird. People blame us for this. Nothing to do with this. I think certain users, if they chat or leave comments or super chats on other channels, I think YouTube flags them as like problem accounts. Oh, really? That's my guess. Because if you remember, certain people could super chat certain words and right. other people couldn't super chat the same word. So there obviously are individual users whose accounts are flagged by some kind of algorithm on YouTube. So it might be uh, Johnny B that YouTube has flagged you as a problem account or something. All right, I'm gonna um, experiment here. I typed women are gay. <laughs> it went through. But <laughs> oh, so I think right I think there. that's one. I think that's number one. And also number two could be it could be us in that our channel could be flagged as like a as like a problem channel. What? I right, know that's impossible. So maybe that's what's also going on too. Maybe there's something where like if a problem channel and a problem user meet in a dark alleyway and they want to <laughs> they want to swap, you know, saliva. Talk about know, Google, conspiratorial. Yeah, Google comes in and says, "No, no, 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 no. You get the center stick." So. This is super conspiratorial. How is it? How if someone we tried this a couple of weeks ago? I forget what the word was, but someone literally super chatted. It was like communist or something. They, they could, I don't remember exactly what it was, but they could super chat like a word and someone else couldn't super chat the same word. That's not, mm -hmm. how is that a conspiracy? We tested it. There's obviously something going on there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Everything I'm, everything I can think to type is going through. So, yeah, but there's a difference between typing and chat and super chatting too. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. I don't even think I can super chat. I don't even have a super chat logo. Oh, my God. Uh, Alexi time for $20. Thank you so much. It says by Vosh's pre previous argument, if 1% of women want to play sports, then all of society is obligated to oblige them. Yeah, exactly. Why is it that we all have to bend over backwards for the 1% of, of trans women that want to play in women's sports? Because but, Vosh likes that aesthetic. Right. But if there's some percentage of that, that's smaller, that D that wants to detransition, you know, no, that doesn't matter because it's too small. Those people need to get a life okay right right though they're yesterday's news we got a a revolution we're building here there you go there you go uh strauss varen for 20 wolsey wolsey wolseys says i don't know how you two do it this figurative piece of garbage shifts the goalposts and does that wookie argument so much it inspires violence <laughs> well listen we don't there's no violence here no. Okay. Nothing but metaphorical verbal violence and calling someone a dumb fuck. But, but yes. Well, and hypothesizing about how smart and or nefarious a person is. There you go. There you go. Yeah. That's right. But don't worry. Don't worry. That's why we're here. I don't. It's just it's here. Hamlin. Hamlin's razor all the way for me. I just don't mm. know how you can. I just really think this is driven by stupidity. Okay. <laughs> Why not both? Uh, Crack Rock Steady, our favorite Ninja Turtle supervillain. Two months, Adam. Two months. That's 62 units of free will of disciple equals freedom. Thank you so much, Crack not Rock disciple. Steady. disciple. Discipline. Oh, you're right. I always see it incorrectly. Discipline. That's a, you should change. You can, I don't like you that have category. No discipline. I don't like that category. We should change it. Sitch has no discipline. I don't like it. I don't like it. Sitch has like no discipline in his life. You're right, you I don't. Tell. I have no discipline. Okay. This comes up on the Tuesday stream all the time. I'm like, Sitch, right. can't yes. we just stay on the topic long enough 
to get through it so CT doesn't have to do a bunch of cutting and editing. This guy's talking about that when he interrupts all of our me reading to talk about this. Okay, well, this he's, is, this the, is the high the, the oh, hypocrisy, you, the stopped. irony here. Hold okay. on. Oh, you were in the read. Oh. Yeah, I fucked up. Rock Rock Thank Steady you. says, "Why does the fringe case matter?" Lefties love to downplay what happens now while dismissing what can happen later. The level of dishonesty is baffling. That's true. That's true. It is true. Yeah. It's cherry picking. 100% cherry picking. A uh, guy for $20 says, wait a second. I've been publishing all my race realist articles on the Daily Stormer, and I could have been sending them to Quillette this whole time. <laughs> That's hilarious. I don't know that Quillette is going to take your race realist argument, to be honest with you. I'm saying that that's the way Vosh conceptualizes it, but I, I right. don't. I mean, if you're a Charles along Murray type, okay. yeah, you might be able to get in over there. Uh, cameraman502 for $20. Thank you so much, Cameraman. Says, I'm prejudiced as an NRX-leaning lib conservative, but I can't respect so when Vosh throws uh, conservative straw man out unanswered. It's clear he has never read Yuval Levin or National Review, etc. It's common on lefty stream and it's tired. Of course, of course he hasn't read any of this stuff. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's what's funny too is because, you know, he's talking to all these people that I'm pretty sure are fairly liberal and yet he just casts them all as conservative Republican transphobes, basically. So It is sad. Uh, Soul Odyssey for 50 Canadian. Thank you so much, Soul Odyssey. Says, I'm a psychologist. Awesome. I'm a psychologist, and unfortunately, most of my colleagues have bought in to the total gender affirmation treatment and will cancel those who aren't. Really? I'm slightly shielded because I'm super gay, very brown, wow. and kind of Jewish. So wow. they assume I'm woke. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's so... I got no, I have no woke protection in Los Angeles. People look at me and they assume that I'm a Ben Shapiro watcher. Right. Soul Odyssey over here has got like the l massive layers. You got super gay, brown, and maybe Jewish, whatever. That Do means. you care? I mean, it, can you carry a yarmulke around and pull that out and maybe? <laughs> there you go. There you go. You know, that would see that would be fast. You don't, you don't see very many like dark skinned Hasidic Jews. Okay. They'll just totally bust people's brains you put the whole outfit on you know <laughs> that would be good. but okay but here, here's the thing so odyssey that's just a conspiracy theory okay right. so your lived experiences as a gay brown individual is just a conspiracy theory okay that's not true none of that's happening none of that's happening look people will do the research okay people will do the research and so odyssey so odyssey also for another 10 canadian says thank you so much Thank you both so much. Team Truth for keeping me sane in all this insanity. Please don't ever stop. We will never stop. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah. We can't ever stop. We don't even know how to stop. Well, it's a lot of fun too. So that's true. That's true. <laughs> but not when we have a like a fun, 30 minutes left of video. Oh my god, stop whining. Akilin <laughs> are you on a sami? For fifty dollars, thank you so much, Akilin. Says my review for the Better Discourse event. That's right. Yesterday was the Better Discord event. I know. I looked for it online, but I didn't see any. They I haven't guess... uploaded it yet. Yeah. 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 I think they have a couple of days or weeks something. Uh, it's a fun time. Destiny defended capitalism against James Lindsay, who was on the Marxist side. What? Is that true? What? Oh my God! Really? Interesting. Um, and Jangles wants to put trans women in women's prisons until there's research that says there's no problem with that. <laughs> well, that really? That. Oh, that's a hot take well, right there. Yeah. There you go. Well, that's that. I mean, that's that's Vosh's take. That's that is the take. But I don't. I'm curious what the, I saw that um, Destiny was debating James Lindsay on topics that honestly I don't think James Lindsay has any business ground debating. to be debating or really? business, I guess, to be debating. What well, sounds like, like it could oh, be interesting. No. I was like, no, James, st James, stick to woke academia. Don't. I don't mean, talk James about Lindsay stuff. still has a shred of credibility left, right? <laughs> he's he's trying to ruin it. So I, I know. I, listen, oh. I want James Lindsay to be the fucking chosen one. And he's trying his damnedest. 
please. Fuck that up. Okay. Well, it sounds like he might have spent that shred of credibility. So yeah, it says according to this, um, he was on a debate panel. He was on two debate panels against Destiny. The topic, the first topic was, can the three-letter agencies be trusted? <laughs> D, the DEI agencies? I, I don't know. Does that mean like the CIA, the FBI? Like that's what I think of when I think of three-letter agencies. Oh, yeah, those two. I don't, I don't know why James Lindsay's on that panel. And then the second panel is the Great Reset, Global Tyranny or Conspiracy Theory. And I'm just like, no, James, no. When you're, when, <laughs> when you're covering a topic, that touches on something people are going to instinctively call a conspiracy theory yes. you probably shouldn't wade into every single conspiracy theory on the planet right i mean just to say right. i i understand some people accuse this of being a conspiracy but it actually isn't and then all of a sudden start doing debate panels on whether or not they fake the moon landing. Right. Right. It's just, it's not a, that's not a good strategy. We talk about strategy right. a lot on this show. And right. I, I mean, it is an, in, who am I to criticize James Lindsay? James Lindsay's a huge celebrity now, right? Well, that's true. Well, depend, well, so some of the chat brings up a good point. They say, well, destiny doesn't have any, um, you know, he, he doesn't have any credibility or validity in his debates. He's just like, you know, he's like Vosh and he's like us. He's just some Google, you know, Googler or whatever. That means he that, doesn't have any credibility to lose. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. That's the point. James Lindsay, I, this is what I want. This is what I wish in an ideal world. Okay. We need academics. We do. On our side. We need academics on our side who can push back against all this bullshit because you know this is the problem you have the vosh they all say oh the academics are all on our side and then it's like no no we need to have our cadre of academics saying no here are the academics that say you're full of shit and the problem is james Lindsay was like the perfect person to be that guy he was the perfect person to be that guy to say no no no, no. i'm an academic let me explain to you why crt is fucking dog shit but he can't be that guy anymore. No, he can't be that guy anymore because as soon as someone uses him as an example, they Google his Twitter and they say, Oh shit. Right. This, they say this isn't the guy. Right. This guy doesn't have credibility. So that's the problem. That's the problem. But well, whatever it is, what it is. I still like James Lindsay. Uh, the guy or just guy for $20 says, Vosh's assertion that social pressure isn't playing a role in research is absurd. Uh, for fuck's sakes, Barbara, Mc, Barbara McClintock was harassed out of her career for discovering transphosones, genes that can move in corn. She later won the Nobel Prize. Yeah, but that's, what, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, too. I'm sure you could go back and you could compile a list of people who were shunned and pushed out of their fields of academia or ostracized for things that had nothing to do with politics whatsoever, just for simply going against whatever the accepted grain is right? of uh, the philosophy of whatever the field is. It's completely devoid of politics. Add politics and cancel culture, and you're just, you've made it like a thousand times harder for anyone to go against. But this is why what Vosh is saying is crazy. Anyone that's been in any academic field knows that there is generally like a consensus view in that field and if you push back against it you're going to raise some eyebrows a lot of galileo vibes going on these days right uh andrew clark for 20 dollars. thank you andrew says the riddler took photos from his secret lair and gave them the batman via the thumb drive if batman had reverse engineered that location the rest of the riddler's plan would have been ruined and thus 80 percent of the movie wouldn't have happened that's true that's true. That's on you, Sitch. How's that on me? Because you were saying he didn't do any detective work and shit. Yeah, that that he didn't. He didn't even reverse engineer the photo. Right, but you, the movie has to happen. Yeah, but that's just that's just shitty writing. Mm, I think he did you agree do with some that. detective work. He didn't. Bat, no, bat, the only dete Batman in the Batman did shitty detective. He did he, very shoddy detective. He work. figured out that the thumb, the cutoff thumb, was the. 
the fingerprint on the thumb drive. Yeah, Batman's detective work uh, was basically he was able to do children's riddles. And he and figured he out knew, the thumb drive. Thing. And he knew puns. And that's, that was about it. That's horrible. He didn't that's, even know he didn't even know the URL the, the URL pun. The fucking penguin figured that out. Oh yeah. He said a lot. He said uh Alta, I forget what it was, a lot of rata. He's like he's like it's L rat, not La Rat. Or La Rat, not L Rat. Right. Or whatever it was inverse, but um he Batman was a very shitty detective. So I watched the movie again. So again? A second yes. time? You've had a second yes. viewing? I started writing a script for it. That's why. How is this? Oh, so you're gonna um, do an actual? I might even do a Batman video. You're gonna do a Batman video? Maybe this is a problem why I never get videos done because I like do like three at a time. This is bullshit. None of them get finished. Okay. Our Batman review did no business. Don't do a Batman. <laughs> you picked... I'm not gonna do it on you this channel. You missed the boat. You missed the boat on the. I don't care. I'm gonna do what drives me. Okay. Mm -hmm. What drives you? Really? Yeah. Do you remember after uh, Alfred gets blown up? Yes. Spoiler warning. Alfred gets a <laughs> You're supposed to say that before. <laughs> Whoops. Before. Don't worry, kids. He's fine. Okay. Remember when? Remember uh, when unlike all the people in those cars, he's fine after he gets blown up. Remember okay. when the? Remember when the army of CIA agents pour into Alfred's room and mow him down with a hundred yes. machine guns? Yes. You remember that part? Yes. That never so, happened, huh? Psych. So so Batman gets very upset. That Alfred blowed up, even though he's totally fine. Right. Um, and he he knocks over the. I don't know if you He like pushes the heavy table away, and he puts all the files on the floor, and he draws like all the like the information. Like he makes his like his web, his conspiracy right. web, to try to figure out the information. Okay. It's very the crow. It has a very, very crow vibe. yes, very the crow, very cinematic. Mm -hmm. He's got all the 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 labels of all the crimes and thing on the floor. Right. That doesn't amount to anything. He doesn't look at the chart he's drawn and figure out some deep fact about fucking Riddler. He just does it. And then Selena Kyle calls him up and says, oh, I'm going to go do a thing. You should come with me. Sitch, and then they Sitch. never go back to the chart. Sitch, Sitch, you, you obviously don't ha know how movies are made, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the movie has to look cool. Okay. And it looks okay. so it looks so cool. He's spreading yeah, out all his stuff. He's getting ready to have himself a big think. He's going <laughs> to stare at it, you know, do a little of the hand uh -huh. on the chin thing. Yes, yes. But, you know, it doesn't the, mean it doesn't amount to anything. Well, though. they probably shot all, all that pointless. stuff, but the movie turned out to be four hours long. So they had to cut it out. Yeah, yeah but look, that's. Look at this stuff. Look, look like you're really thinking hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's the look. I'm about oh to figure God. it out. It's like a it's like a minute, two minute long like like a montage sequence of him drawing this stupid chart on the floor and then it's just for nothing. Some it's producer. Pointless. Some producer wanted some that point. in there. It was like that you can't cut my scene. Yeah, but so this Don't is cut so my make scene it so out. that he he looks at the Batman looks at the chart and he figures something out. And then he becomes a, a proactive protagonist. Okay. Instead of just reacting, he becomes a proactive protagonist and actually detects something for fuck's sake. I can't believe you're going to do this. <laughs> I can't believe. You should throw in at the very end a couple of tenant quips, too. <laughs> just to really, just to stick the knife in. Lucifer said, even Mahler liked that scene. Well, you can like the scene. It's a good looking scene. It's just. It's just entirely fucking pointless. It doesn't mean there's no point into the scene Where, happening. We I went on EFAP and no yes. there was no talking about Batman. I was super disappointed. Well, I hadn't seen it yet. So Yeah, because you that's a part of the story here. Because you would okay. see the fucking movie. Okay. Well, I'll put out my Batman video and then we can have Mahler on and he can tell tell me about whether he just Well did, did he okay. I where's the Mahler breakdown of Batman? I need to see I, I don't know. They had a stream on it, I think, at some point. But... All right, I gotta I gotta see. Anyway, we're out. done talking about Batman. Okay. Yeah, move on. We have four hours left of this debate know, video. And we're just getting to the good part. <laughs> like 
it's non-falsifiable. There's the only real way to debunk that claim would be to read people's minds. And the only way to address it would be to change the political environment to one you consider more favorable. No, the way to do it without reading minds, idiot, would be to have a control group. Right. That would be seriously, seriously unethical. Okay. But I'm in favor of Canada's law. I don't think that it's the place of. Oh, he's talking about the law. <laughs> he's in, well, he's in, listen, he's in favor of the law that basically makes it illegal to not do anything but gender affirm. So right. there you go. Of course he's in he's favor, in favor of, yeah. of it. Sure. Right. Affirmation. Listen. Vosh just wants more studies. I mean, he's a, he's in favor of the law that makes it so it's impossible for to do studies. pediatricians and psychologists to be able to say you don't have gender dysphoria, but he trusts them to accurately tell people that they have gender dysphoria. <laughs> right. Well, they're affirming because they don't have any studies to tell them not to affirm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is a nice circular logic that uh, we're operating. Which is good, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. I mean, sure. we, these doctors need to get rich somehow. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Psychiatrist. If a person, let's say a boy, goes up to them and says, like, hey, I think I might be a girl, for the doctor to go, like, no, actually, I think you're not. I think you're a boy. I think that um, That's not research what the research that has proven that to be a, a very ineffective way of uh, dealing with any underlying issues. Like, that would ever happen. And I'm telling you, Sitchi's a dipshit. How can you Strong. not say... How can you not say he's an utter dipshit? He just I would categorized never, the situation Adam, as. Don't what? strawman me. I would never say Vosh is in a dipshit. Okay. No, no. A therapist is not going to just categorically dismiss the fact that you've made some assertion that you have gender dysphoria. They probably ask follow-up questions, but he's categorizing it as the doctor would just say, nah, I don't think that's true. Timmy. Mm -hmm. Get out of my I'm, office. I'm glad you're bringing back dipshit. I think dipshit is the perfect. He's the ultimate dipshit. He's, he is the ultimate dipshit. But when you when you talk about him being this, you know, criminal mastermind lying his way through this, I just it offends my sense. You can be you can be intentionally malicious and a dipshit. Okay. I a lot of dipshits are intentionally malicious, yes. but not in any sort of intelligent way. That's, Listen, that's the criteria for I think, being. No, see, the best way I disagree, I think Vosh is intelligent in that he is good at... Manipulating. Di uh, manipulating uh, rhetoric mm -hmm. and dipshitty rhetoric. So that's where I disagree. Okay. So the best thing that you can do is affirm and try to get underneath it at like uh, any other concerns that might be present. Yes, the best thing to do when the kid walks in without any information is just affirm, affirm, affirm. That way, when you actually find out something else is going on, you can tell them, oh yeah, earlier I was lying to you, right? I mean, that's that's not a good way to interact as a therapist, okay? You have to build up some kind of rapport with the patient. And you try to understand the degree to which it's a sincere belief as opposed to a sort of errant or flippant or otherwise unjustified self-perception but do you not think that children can have sincere beliefs and still be wrong because my my concern is if a child is blocking if it's with puberty that they grow to be comfortable with their bodies why would you block that process um well first of all i don't know how common it is for get puberty fantastic question she's killing it now thank you that was a killer question to make people more comfortable with their bodies but, but that's in what terms the of literature shows in these kids well the literature showed their feelings change but not that puberty and the pubescent changes which took place were the things that alleviated their dysphoria it, i think there for, was a, a lot study of... there was a there was a study that actually showed this and the kids said oh with puberty i grew comfortable in my body and i realized i actually liked it well, I may not have seen that. The earlier study with the the desistance, um, I don't think specifically identified pubescent changes as the cause of those change in feelings because it took place over a length of time. But with regards to that, um, it is possible for a child to be wrong, but like child self-diagnosis on mental issues is something that we have pre-existing care standards for. When a child has like depressive or um, psychosis, you know, like, like there are, there are like uh, psychological things up with the mm -hmm. kid, you know, um, self-report. I mean, oftentimes it's the only thing that you can really do, but if you're getting these kids like appointments for years and a professional, but it's, oh, it's not, this is, it's not just for years. There's all, there's all sorts of guidelines. And there's even been people that have been able to get prescriptions 
I'm trying to remember. I think if, if Destiny was talking about this, I don't remember who was talking about this, but they were saying they were able to get prescriptions for HRT after a single day of, yeah, uh, after a single visit with a with a psychologist or a psychiatrist. And you see, now that would be the interesting study uh, for some. See, there you go. Why don't we have? Okay, here it is. Here it is. Why don't we have? Project Veritas actually be a force for good, Adam. Okay. Have them send a bunch of people to, uh, you know, fake gender dysphoria to these gender clinics and see how many of them can get prescriptions on, a, you know, a single visit. Why haven't they done that? I mean, I don't they know. must be afraid of the gender activists too, which is telling. <laughs> well, because they're, they're, they're do more, they're not really concerned so much with the culture war shit so far. Really? So, well, I don't think so. They've been doing mostly just uh, more like traditional political content. Right. So, but that's, you know, get them on board with that. They would be the perfect people to do that. That would get a lot of attention. That would get a lot of attention. But is it, I mean, I feel like a lot of people just have said, you know, I got HRT on the first visit. A lot of people are coming out and saying that. I know a lot of people have said that. Sure. So they might just be... Like who? Who cares? Everyone knows that happens. Yeah, but you need to have. There's a difference between like right. a lot of people on Reddit saying they've done this and, and seeing having it. video. Right. Seeing that's it broadcast. Happen. Yes, that's broadcast on Fox News, where they say like, "Is this happening to your child?" Right. And you know they play like, you know, some doctor or not maybe not even a doctor. You know, in Project Veritas style, they would go to some gender clinic and then. They would find some person who would basically coach some someone what they'll tell the doctor to get the treatment started right. and all this stuff. So, so we get someone to go in with a five year old. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that extreme, you know. Just just have you know some some people that are like, you know, look like they're you know an eighteen sixteen to eighteen you know eighteen sixteen to twenty year range. Do when do children start it. speaking? It would be funny to go in with a baby. Look, I have this baby. You might be pushing it. You might I'm be sorry, pushing I'm, it. I'm, like, with a baby. I'm getting delusional here. How obviously. soon? How soon can I put my my one year old on puberty block? <laughs> I know that's the thing. Is able to you know bring together like a strong argument. Like yeah, I think this is actually like you know, and then you get on the puberty blockers and they're reversible, and you have some more time. To feel however you want about yourself and right now the evidence that we have is the majority of people overwhelming majority who get on puberty blockers transition and the overwhelming majority of people who transition are happy about it and don't regret it so it seems like we're on a good track right now if we get loose with our standards and it's like kids are getting their uh hormone blocker skittles like two weeks in or something you know and it's just they're just firing it left and right then that's um uh, yeah, I I agree. There should be a sort of strenuous vetting process, especially for children. Um, but at the moment, it seems like the track is. We actually don't know that. But everything's been, fine, Sitch. Yeah, everything's we don't, fine. But we don't. Nobody knows that. No, where, where's well, what's happening now is fine. Where Sitch. where is okay? I want give me the long term research for the past ten years. You can't. That doesn't exist. You know that, that shows me. That the overwhelming majority of people, of children who who transition, are fine with it and don't need transition. I want that study. Where's that study? They don't have studies for any of this. You can't do these studies. Mm. These studies are unthinkable. I see. You're right. Unethical. Right. It would take you ten years just to get permission to, to do that study, and they would the permit they would deny you. It'd take mm -hmm, 10 mm -hmm. years to get a response, and the response would be no. Running qu quite well, um, and that people are benefiting from it, from the data that we have. But you would claim that they're not allowed to publish data that would make the results look bad. So, it, see, it comes across kind of non-falsifiable. It's like, well, then how could I ever prove the validity of the process, right? I could, I can see that point. I think my perspective is different because, and I have to say, for many of the topics that we've been debating, I very much held your belief previously, you know, and that's part of what made me want to write my book because I thought 
I totally understand where people are coming from. And I'm definitely very sympathetic to these issues. Like for me, especially, I thought, well, it makes sense for a child if they have gender dysphoria. Why wouldn't you want to prevent them from having to undergo this process that's going to create them more distress? But then after I read these studies and I worked in the field, not with children, but just in sex research and doing research around gender and sexual orientation more broadly, realized that, oh, there's a side to this that is not being um, talked about publicly or it's, it's being shunned. And so I, I support transition in pubescent kids. If they do reach puberty and they're uncomfortable still and that, that gender dysphoria persists, then I think that's their business, that's their family's business. And I don't think... Uh, you know, it makes me uncomfortable when um, I, I don't think lawmakers should be getting really involved in that case. But mm -hmm. right now in the climate that we're in, I just I, I see it as really, really difficult, if not impossible for people to do this, make these assessments objectively um, with regard to. I don't want to stay on this topic. We're already over time. So um, my apologies. No, no, that's OK. But I I. With regard to you saying that blockers are, I think you said they're reversible. There has With been research. Two caveats to my knowledge. Okay, do you want to do you want to say what the caveats are? Oh sure, one is valid, one isn't. Bone density. I know that there can be a, um, a variance in bone density after puberty blockers. That starting on them later. Apparently, getting on the puberty blockers earlier actually lowers the reduction of bone density, which is counterintuitive. But there's a whole graph that I remember seeing on it. it, it there could be some degree of variance. The other is of IQ, but that I think is is a, a, a statistic, not statistical. Sorry, um, a research error. Um, because the IQ variances that we have for the effects of puberty blockers were done on children who had prepubescent puberty, or what do they call it, early onset puberty, which right. was research done the end puberty. Uh, precocious, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 80s and 90s, right? And what they found was that because they were going through precocious puberty, they were experiencing a sudden jump in brain development earlier than a lot of kids of their age, which led to them doing better on IQ test scores for their age. When they got on the treatments that mitigated the early um, you know, um, uh, uh, puberty development, because that process slowed, their IQ leveled out as the IQ tests grew more difficult as they grew older, and they returned to the mean before eventually resuming. So it's not that their IQ dropped, it's that their abnormally fast increase abated as a product of the, but those are the two that I'm aware of. It's bone density and IQ, but the IQ thing I don't think is, is the concern. And it's based on no evidence, just complete, complete assertion. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's also not possible for us to say it's causation, because like I said, with these studies there, they aren't randomly assigning the kids into treatment versus non-treatment. And there isn't a control group of kids with gender dysphoria who don't undergo the, tra the treatment. So any, any of these studies with nowadays with kids with gender dysphoria, they're always going to be given the treatment because it's seen unethical to withhold treatment from them. So my point is, saying that is that we can't say any of this is causal but no she's she's right but that's the problem is i'm saying and if if that argument doesn't hold up for literal covid vaccines i don't see why it holds up for this either i agree um there was another study that showed in an animal model that that spatial memory is affected my concern with all this is just i think it, on the same page as you i think research needs to be objective there should not be any uh, intimidation involved any coercion researchers should not feel scared for their careers as a result. I know that you're skeptical as, as to whether that's the case, but from my perspective, that's where I'm coming from with this. And then the other point I wanted to make was with regard to detransition. So one of the young women I interviewed for my book, she said that she was able to access cross-sex hormones with one one-hour appointment. And I do think the number of detransitioners is growing. My sense is you would disagree with that. I think the number is going to grow because the number of trans people is going to grow for sure. That had to be an adult, right? There's no way one hour appointment for like a kid that would have had to be uh, an adult, correct? I can't remember her age. I think it's in my book. I think she was, I don't know if I want to say, let me, let me, you, you go. Oh, yeah, yeah you don't have to, to specify. I was just curious because I, I know at least here in the U.S. the protocol is very strict in, in a lot of respects for like the refer the referring of this to the other. I know they can do it in 16 in the U.K. because that's their age majority, um, which, you know, it's weird because 16 year olds are babies. But yeah, um, I believe in I believe in your country because I'm Canadian. Uh, it can be 15 oh, in some states. I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know you were Canadian. I mean, I, I'd, I'd have to look into the the 
um, oh, it could be the uh, medical age of consent. I know the uh, yeah. medical age of consent is different from the age majority. Whatever the case may be, with regards to detransition, um, detransitioning is relatively rare. The data that we have on um, the effects of cross-sex hormones and surgery is, is quite positive from everything that I've seen. It doesn't mean detransitioning is not something to be looked at. It's worth noting. So let me sidetrack for another 10 minutes to annoy you, Adam. Okay. What are we going to sidetrack to? I found an interesting uh, Substack article that Jesse Signal, S Single, right? Jesse yeah. Signal has been one of the few voices that has been like really following this stuff. Um, yeah, he said, and it's interesting because I was I, I found the study that he was talking about before I found him talking about it. And he said, "There's an article called Mental Health Outcomes in Transgender and Non-Binary Youths Receiving Gender Affirming Care." was published in the JAMA network open late in February. And, you know, a bunch of authors. It's mostly based on the University of Washington, Seattle or Seattle Children's Hospital. In their study, the researchers examined a cohort of kids who came through Seattle Children's Gender Clinic. They simply followed, followed the children over time as some of them went on puberty blockers and or hormones, administering self-reporting surveys tracking their mental health. There are four waves of data collection. When they first arrived at the clinic, three months later, six months later, and 12 months later, this study was propelled into the national discourse by a big PR push on the part of the University of Washington. Okay, this is the uh, this is the uh, oh academics are not held to pressure that Wash does. It was successful. Uh, one of the authors discussed her and her colleagues' findings on Science Friday, which I believe is the NPR segment. A very popular weekly public radio science show not long after the study was published. All the public materials the university released tell a straightforward, exciting story that the kids in the study who access puberty blockers or hormones had much better health outcomes at the end of the study than they did at the beginning. The headline of the email version of the press release, for example, reads, gender affirming care dramatically reduces depression for transgender teens, study finds. Okay. And then he continues going on and on about how everything that the University <coughs> of Washington's putting out is all saying that all this stuff is dramatic and amazing and works. Okay. But then mm -hmm. he says, what's surprising, however, is in light of all of this, is that the kids who took the puberty blockers or hormones experienced no statistically significant mental health improvement during the study. Ouch. And Ouch. the claim that they did which was presented to the public in the study itself and in publicity materials and on social media by one of the authors is false. It's hard to even figure this out from reading the study, which omits some very basic statistics one would expect to find. But the non-result is pretty clear from you know one of the tables. Um, and then he kind of goes over the numbers. And he says, among the kids who went on hormones, there isn't a genuine statistical improvement here from baseline to the final wave of data collection. At the baseline, 59% of, uh, of the treatment kids experienced moderate to severe depression. 12 months later, 56% of the kids who were taking the treatment experienced moderate to severe depression. Wow. So there's only a 3% drop after a year of hormone slash puberty blockers. That's for the, not, for the kids that study. doesn't give you a lot of yep. faith in that treatment right. path. Right. And this is the study that's being touted as affirming the, the, the treatment. So you have a 3% chance of any success. That's pretty. Yeah. 3% drop. <laughs> that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Pretty bad, but listen, Adam. There's no pressure here, okay, by the uh, by any institutions or ho hospitals or anything. Look, it's it's all like you can just study whatever you want to study. Okay, no pressure whatsoever. No pressure. Makes me think the next study is going to prove, like the next study might just go the other way. It might be three percent felt worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we're so teetering on the edge as it is, right? Right. Right. Terrible. Jesse Single said he'd come on the show just to let you know. Sure. I like Jesse Single. Yeah, we should have him on. We should.
noting that from the scene, the majority of people who are detransitioning are doing so not because they're not the identity they transitioned into, but because of social or medical barriers preventing them. I believe there's a breakdown. Um, I think this one's actually on, on, on Wikipedia where one of the um, there, a, a study was done and it was some, something like 80 to 90% of the people detransitioning who listed why it was because lack of support, um, you know, uh, medical barriers, not enough money, which is heartbreaking. See, this is a study. So he's talking about a different study, but we just went through a study that co contradicts that. And I yeah, don't know so, how many people was in mm -hmm. this study he's talking about. There was 207 so, or I don't remember how many were in the study. There's 237 in the study you were talking about. Right. Okay. How many people are in his study? About, right. So the study he's talking about, which that's the one I was familiar with. I wasn't familiar with your study has way more people. Mm -hmm. It's 17,000 people. Right. But you say, what exactly was the study studying and how was the sample size got? And this was a study that was created by a, I don't remember the name of it. It was, it was created by a transgender, a pro transgender group that was looking to increase treatment for transgender individuals. There's 17,000 transgender people were in this study? Yes. That's a whole hell of a lot of transgender people. And so basically what they did, and this is why the study I think is ridiculous, is they basically found a bunch of people who follow, who are, who are still in the transgender circles that either follow this organization's... Um, website or that is still going to gender clinics or are still involved in a bunch of transgender circles and they basically got you know them to flood a bunch of surveys out to people and so they got 27,000 respondents and out of the 27,000 respondents 17,000 percent of them you know claim that at some point they quote unquote detransitioned okay but there's a problem with this. Hold on. They had 27,000 respondents and 17,000 claim they were detransitioners. Well, here's why this is a problem. That's it's a not whole seven, lot of trans Right. Trans it's not 17,000 people detransitioned. It's 17,000 people said that at some point they stopped transitioning, even though they all still identify as trans right now. What? So there's okay. 27,000 in the study? No, there are 27. There was a, there's a total sample size. So right. There's 27,000 people that respond to this survey. 27,000 respondents. Right. They threw out everyone that didn't, they threw out everyone but the 17,000 that said that they ever, quote unquote, detransitioned at some point in their life. Okay. So what, what was the criteria for people responding? Could people respond that were just saying they were trans and were not... I mean, yeah, they just, they just gave this, they just gave the survey out to anyone that was trans that would answer the survey basically. Right. So I could right. answer the survey. Well, yeah, well, no, you're not trans. So you want to answer the survey. But I mean, if I felt like saying I was trans and want to answer I get, the survey. Yeah, sure, I sure. Right, right, right. But There's so they no threw out everyone but the 17, checking. right. But they threw out every, everyone but the 17,000 people who said that they had ever, uh, Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I'm misreading this. They had seven, no, they had 17,000 people who said that they pursued gender affirmation treatment. Out of that, 2,000 of them reported a history of detransition. Okay. Okay. But the problem with that, when you look at the numbers, is that the 2,000 people that reported a history of detransition, these aren't people that said, oh, I'm detransitioning and then I'm not transgender anymore. The majority of the people that said that they they reported a history of detransition either went back to to transition or still considered themselves transgender. Right. So to use them as examples for their detransitioning is not accurate or has anything to do with this conversation. Because they could still be transitioning. They just hit the pause button, basically. Right. Because that what and the reason that that Fosh is citing the study is because or the survey is because it's like, oh, the majority of these people who say that the reason for detransitioning was because they had, you know, external pressure from religious community or their parents or something. Right. Like, 
And so therefore that proves that, you know, really the only thing that's making kids detransition is, you know, evil conservatives basically is what this is what he's trying to say. And that's what the survey is trying to say, right. but it's an incredibly biased uh, sample that they are drawing from because presumably anyone who started transitioning and then detransitioned and stopped wouldn't still be in transgender circles <laughs> getting these surveys from tran- from pro transgender organizations. <laughs> so. Crazy. Uh, that being said, there are going to be people who I guess we would call it like a proper detransition. Like, you know, they fully, they're like, oh, wait, no, never mind, you know, fully back. And I think those people should be afforded the exact same degree of medical and social care and support as I would for trans people or as anyone else should for trans people. Um, because that's got to be incredibly difficult too, you know. It is a very strenuous, uh, strenuous process, at least for young people at the moment, to transition. I think that it's a decision that should not be made lightly. But invariably, with anything like this, there are going to be people calling taxis backsies. And I think that, you know, uh, that's unfortunate. It's also inevitable, and we should do everything we can to make those people's lives good. The detransitioners. And I agree with you that if someone is detransitioning because they can't access care, or if it's because of stigma, I don't think that's good. And I think that we should be more um, more compassionate and supportive in that case. But if you look at the research that has been published on detransitioners, many of them will say it's because they had internalized homophobia. So many of them say for the individuals born female are lesbian they're not comfortable with the fact that they're attracted to women. Um, so they wanted to transition to male because they felt that'd be more socially acceptable to be a man who is sexually interested in women or it's because of sexual trauma. So as again, women having experienced sexual abuse or sexual assault and not feeling comfortable with their bodies or being dissociated from their bodies and wanting to escape that, um, other is like, this that Abigail Schreier thing? What was that one book? Abigail um, Schreier's book. Schre- was it Schreier? Well, what was? Is I don't. It, I don't. The- yeah, I don't want to speak for Abigail. I'll speak. I do talk about this research in my book as well. It's Lisa Lippman's research, hmm. and it shows that there are, in terms of rapid onset gender dysphoria, the reasons why young women are so quickly gravitating to this label of wanting to be transgender or non-binary, and living as men only to change their mind event later. Once once there comes, I think, a greater understanding or self-acceptance of whatever the underlying reason for them wanting to take on that identity was, which is not to say that trans men don't exist or that trans people don't exist, of course. And I'm also, I, I try to be very mindful and responsible when I talk about this because I do recognize that there are some people who will say, well, because some people change their mind and detransition, then why should we let anybody transition at all? But I don't agree with that. I do think it's important, though, to talk about what's happening right now with this in terms of this population, because they are making some decisions that may not ultimately be good for them. It's tearing families apart. The parents, this is another um, area that you might be skeptical of. But I hear from so many parents who are saying they can't talk to their kids. Their kids are essentially, you know, being protected by the state. They cannot, they don't have any say in in terms of their care. And for a parent, I mean, that's terrifying, I'm sure. I totally get that. I do want to say, though, with regards to a counterpoint, is that Littman's research is uh, utterly without integrity and shouldn't be trusted. The term... (laughs) Just a minor counterpoint here. (laughs) Just a minor... Just a minor thing. Yeah. I was like, listen, they're parents and they're worried, especially in Canada, that they like can't actually have a say over their child's treatment. You know, I, I think with the majority of these cases too, it's it's generally because there's a divorce situation. So one parent says some one thing, another parent says the other. And Vosh is like, yeah, I'm sympathetic to that, but this research all bullshit, and you're a fucking asshole for believing it. <laughs> yeah, basically. How do you feel about that? Sitch? Oh my God. It's so bad. That's so bad. How do you feel about that? Such. Uh, I'm not, I don't like it. I don't like it. You're not on board with that. I'm not on board with like, I'm not on board with that. I'm not on board with that. 
term rapid under dysphoria came from a study where Littman did a question survey of moms who frequented websites oriented around parents of trans children who didn't like the fact that their children were trans. Uh, a psychiatric evaluation into a group being done by polling their disapproving parents is like the bad joke version of how you would do a sociological study. I think that the fact that that study got published. It's, it's funny because the study that he just cited for detransitioning is the inverse of that study. So it's the exact same. It's the exact same problem. They flooded a, out a bunch of people, didn't ask yeah. them if they're trans or not. Right. It, it, well, no, it has the same problem of just it, this, the, the sample that they selected from is going to be inherently biased in one direction. Right. So and worst peer reviewed is like actually a bigger uh, strike against legitimacy of academia than anything else I've ever heard, including that that James Lindsay let's publish those so and so fake sociological articles to prove how bad the discipline is. <laughs> oh, God, the um, the I, I, I do like that. It's like, oh, the studies that I agree with that I cite that are peer reviewed. Mm -hmm. This is showing that the science is good and that academia is correct. But the studies that show the opposite, that were also peer reviewed, this shows that, oh, this was just, I can't believe that, I can't believe it, this shows the science is wrong. This, this is why it's comical. I know. The guy I know. doesn't even know how incredibly biased he is. Oh, I think he knows. A lot of people are really upset about biased commentary. Right. But nobody comes in and says, oh, Vosh is completely ridiculously biased and doesn't even recognize his bias right the idea for the record like, i thought james's investigation was brilliant but we had thank you on that and i'll talk about his work as well but go ahead i think he's a loon and he's been running for me but i'll get <laughs> i'll get him one of these days uh the um with regards to the the, the lit so he's, thirsty he's been running from vosh but um, see this is the thing we we actually had a go at James's credibility in this very show. Mm -hmm. But James is doing the smart strategy here. James is saying, I don't want to lend my credibility to Vosh. And I think that is smart. Well, I thought even too, that he actually agreed to talk to Vosh recently. And then I thought Vosh reneged on it. I don't think so. I, I, I yeah, I thought there was something really. I, don't I did. So. I, I did. I don't remember exactly and what stuff. it was. But... No, that was, that was the surf's got to line up with G uh, Greenberg. Um, that just, I, 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 this isn't, this isn't a study even worth considering. It's, it's, it's a psychiatric evaluation by polling disapproving parents. You might as well get like a, an evaluation on race and IQ by polling like white, uh, you know, Southern, um, <laughs> It always brings it back like, to uh, um, what are they called? Country club members. You know, it's just it's just meaningless. In terms of like where these, well, he knows that's an effective rhetorical tactic to tar the person he's debating as a race and IQ person. That's his go-to move. That's his Vosh signature move right there. Mm -hmm. um, Can I make a point people... about the about the parents before you move to your next point? Sure, but you you have to you have to recognize Deborah. It's your show. Don't ask to make a point. Say, listen. You have to recognize. Listen. Okay. Say, I'm going to make a point here. Let me make a point. That's what you say. Not, can I make a point? <laughs> <laughs> Let me make a point. Don't be so toxically masculine, Adam. Okay. Shut the fuck up, Vosh. <laughs> Nice, of course, that a psychiatric evaluation done by pulling disapproving parents is, is a ridiculous way to conduct. Like, so the parents say that, you know, it was because of internalized homophobia. How could you possibly? I mean, sure, they could say that, perhaps, but of, of what relevance is that to actual scientific inquiry? But I don't think it's fair to label these parents as transphobic because many of them would say they didn't care whether their child was trans or not. They didn't care about the outcome. And many of them are very, were in the study, it says that they were very much in favor of equal rights for gay people and for gay marriage. And many of them, I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but were self-identified as Democrats. So these are, these are not parents who are anti-trans. This, mm. this is indefensible research. The, the, three, the, the researcher, Littman, literally went out of their way looking for 
websites which are opposed in some way to trans, whether it, they always say this, right? It's like, well, I was. Where are you going to find the parents of transitioners? Yeah, I'm trying to remember because I read this study a while ago. It, 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 it's worse than he's, I mean, he's making it out much worse than it, than it was. It was, it was the way that it's, it's, it's just like the other study that I talked about. You know, whenever you do these studies, you have to find the population of people. And the way, you know, she found a population of people, which was that they were parents that were, I guess, concerned about, you know, their children's transitioning. Right. I mean, it's like, yeah, well, you're going to find that in, in places where parents talk about that they're concerned about their kids transitioning. I don't know what to tell was, you. So the whole point of the study was to poll parents that are concerned about their kids. I mean, isn't that all parents? Um, no, that wasn't the point of the study. Uh, this was the rap, this is Lisa Littman, the rapid onset gender dysphoria. So she's asking questions about how long, bef how long was the process of transitioning? What's the point of the study? I'm trying to remember. I'll bring, I'll try to bring it up. Um, it's okay. Really no quick. Deal. I was a Democrat. A lot of these people are TERFs, you know, a lot of these people were. Okay, well, I would say TERF is a slur, but. I love that she points that out. <laughs> Turf is a slur. Hey, Vash and Vosh is just completely mystified. Like, like, Wait uh, a second, no. what? Slur? No. That's like my whole. I all Vosh does is slurs. <laughs> Nazi is a slur. How can you say Nazi is not a slur? If you're if you're calling rank and file conservatives Nazis, that's a fucking slur. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If you're calling actual Nazis Nazis, okay, we can have a conversation about that's not a slur. Turf is absolutely not a slur. It's not a discriminatory characteristic. Uh, it's only a smear against a person's political affiliation, which, I mean, you might as well say Nazi is a slur if we're going down that road. I mean, I... <laughs> didn't I just say that? Yeah, you did. I do Nazi, and yeah, mean Nazi it with all negativity intended, be. but not a slur, nothing against women. There are turf men that I've talked to and they're fun too. Um, anyway, no, I just, just don't, I don't know why that label is necessary. I feel like we can have the discussion without having to insult it, people. It's, it's what <laughs> it's necessary because you're not having a good faith discussion with somebody. Right. Right. That's why it's necessary. They are. I, I could call them transphobes, which they also are, which I would well, also, also intend an insult, negative. right? Well, right. Well, you can't say turf is a slur. Yeah, it's an insult, sure. But I find their positions insulting. They okay. So he's going to quibble so over it's slur okay. Versus insult, it's okay yeah. because he finds their positions insulting. Right. I mean, couldn't the couldn't the conservatives say the same thing? They fought find they find the groomer <laughs> positions right. insulting. Therefore, they want to call them groomers. And I don't. Uh, he's using slur in some like weird way. Because he's using slurs like, like, because I just, you know, like the definite, the definition of slur from like the dictionary is just, it's an insult or allegation about someone that's likely to insult or damage the reputation. That's the point. So I guess, he, yeah, but he's, he's attaching some kind of like slur only applies to oppressed groups historically or something, which I don't know what he's talking about, but I mean, there's a reason that there's the word slur and then there's the word ethnic slur. <laughs> Right. Right. These are just these are distinct categories. But so I found the the Lisa Lippman study. It says uh, here's Give me the, the abstract. Give okay. me the goods. In the in online forums, parents have reported that their children seem to experience a sudden or rapid onset of gender dysphoria, appearing for the first time during puberty or even after its completion. Parents describe that the onset of gender dysphoria seemed to occur in the context of belonging to a peer group where one, multiple, or even all the friends had become gender dysphoric and transgender identified during the same time frame. Parents also report that their children exhibited an increase in social media internet use prior to disclosure of transgender identi identity. Recently, clinicians have reported that post-puberty presentations of gender dysphoria in natal females that appear to be rapid and onset is a phenomenon that they are seeing more and more in their clinics. Academics have raised questions about the role of social media in the development of gender dysphoria. The purpose of this study was to collect data about parents' observations, experiences, and perspectives about their adolescent and young adult children showing signs of an apparent sudden or rapid onset of gender dysphoria 
that began during or after puberty and develop a hypothesis about factors that may contribute to the onset and or expression of gender dysphoria among this demographic group. They're sniffing out for social contagion. I think it's right. amazing that a person who, you know, is probably, who is in favor of standpoint theory here, just wants to invalidate the actual experiences of all right. of these parents. Just, but you, see, you can't ask them because their experiences are completely biased and. Right. Well, but Vosh's criticism of the study has nothing to do with what the study was studying. I know. Okay? Yeah. Like Vosh's, because Vosh's criticism was that the sample was biased because it was parents who they found through internet, uh, you know, message boards and websites that were already critical of transgender, of their child's transgender uh, claim, which that would only be a, a critique if the study was trying to say something like, oh, some specific percentage of children experience rapid gender uh, dysphoria, which is not what the study was saying. The study didn't, the study wasn't making a prescription like 50% of all young girls experience uh, rapid onset gender dysphoria. The study was just trying to, to look at people who already seem to match the criteria of rapid onset dysphoria and to develop hypothesis about why that may be occurring. Based on okay. data from actual parents' experience. Right, based on what the parents were saying. So Vosh's criticism of the study doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Right. Or is just entirely irrelevant to what was being studied. Well, and the fact that he would just throw all of that data out simply because the parents disapprove of, I mean, you don't even know that the parents disapprove. She's making the argument that not right. all the parents did disapprove. Right. But the fact that says, he would categorically dismiss that data. Yeah. Well, because it says, so to, to maximize the chances of finding cases meeting eligibility and criteria, they use the website's fourth wave now transgender trend in youth trans critical professionals who are selected for targeted recruitment. And I do think that those websites, because I looked at them back in the day, I do think that they are, you know, more skeptical of, of transgender activism. So it's fair to say that, but that's fine because that's not really relevant to what is being studied. Does it have the questions that they asked on the questionnaire? Uh, I think it did. Yeah, I'm just curious. I, I kind of asking. vaguely remember looking at the questionnaire at some point, but I mean, if they're asking questions like how long between their first mention of, I mean, it's self-report and self-report. Well, always... it wasn't just how long, but it was also like, do they have any other underlying problems? Right. You know, Are what was your relationship with the child? Right. You know, were they mad at you? Blah blah blah. Yeah. You know, what is their 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 friend group, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so. self-report data is not the best, but I mean, I would definitely be interested to read those surveys. Sure. And to that's why the thing was peer-reviewed, right? What, yeah, because it didn't. How have are to you going to begin? Things it has yeah. to do with. They're not making a. They're not trying to prove a hypothesis. They're just gathering data to generate a hypothesis. And mm -hmm. Vosh is saying, "Nah, you can't trust any of that data to even generate a hypothesis to right. test," which it's that's bullshit exists in a manner which I think hurts marginalized people. It's, I mean, you wouldn't take an issue with somebody being called racist if they're a racist, right? But racist is more of a descriptive term, whereas transphobic or I feel like any, any um, disagreement with this narrative gets you labeled as something disparaging. I don't think this is race... also what racists say when you impose the narrative of racial equality on them. I mean, this Oh, he's such a fucking he is, scumbag. Oh, totally scumbag. He's such a scumbag. He's like, oh, th this is what he's doing with the race rules and stuff. It's like, yeah, there are people out there. Vosh. Okay. There are people out there dipshit. Or is there a new moniker for Vosh? There are people out there dipshit that are racist, and you can call them racist. But there's lots of people out there that aren't racist. They simply have a different, a view, different opinion and view about how certain social issues should be handled 
and you and other people label them racist dishonestly. Right, because they have a different opinion on fucking immigration or something. Yeah. Right, they have a different opinion on immigration, they have a different opinion on reparations, they have a different uh, opinion on affirmative action, they have a different opinion on, you know, uh, policing and how policing should right. happen. If you don't want to defund the police, you're a fucking racist. Right. And so someone's saying, hey, you know, that doesn't make me racist. And then he turns around and says, yeah, but there are actual racists out there who pretend not to be racist. And they also say, don't call me racist. So therefore, that means you're a racist. Yeah. Which is literally, and this is, again, we come back to the religion. This is literally the same as witch burning. It is. Saying, you're a witch. Of course, the witch is going to deny being a witch. We've burned several witches that denied being a witch, but they were all witches. <laughs> so you must be a witch, too. The fact that you would even deny it shows that you're actually a witch. It's so bad. I, I hate so terrible. This. I hate it's this. so terrible. It's just that's what everyone says, right? It's like, well, you you're insulting me by accusing me of being bigoted, and I'm not bigoted. I'm only disagreeing with this new trend. Well, that's what every bigoted. But group this says. goes to my my point earlier of is it possible to be critical of trans ideology without? What does that necessarily mean that you hate trans people? Um, no, you can be critical. I'm actually I argue with trans people all the time on my platform. Um, there are plenty of. But that's of, why I disagree with calling things transphobic because. To me, when you, you call something transphobic, exist? no, I, I think it exists, but I think it's it many things that are not coming from a place of hating trans people are being lumped in as being hateful. So it's not about hate. Bigotry doesn't have to be about hate. There are plenty of people who don't hate. That just, just completely goes into mansplaining mode. It's fucking I know. insane. Well, it, and he, Listen, this is why this is such a doctor. It's not about hate. Okay. I Let know. me explain to you how hate works. <laughs> And he knows this is bullshit too. This is where I say this is not. This is he's being a dishonest dipshit. Okay? Yeah, this is he total dishonesty. Has been called racist, right? You know the whole thing with Professor Flowers and the black nationalism. There were tons of people calling him racist. Okay, so what do we say? Oh, Vosh, you're racist. He says I'm not a racist. I'm like, well, Vosh, lots of racists say they're not racist. So Great I guess point. that means you're racist. Great point. <laughs> like what the fuck? Great point. And what was a disagreement with Professor Flowers over? It wasn't over race. It was over a completely different political. No, it was. It was the black nationalist. Yeah. Debate. Yeah. Right. He was calling her racist. And they were right. saying, no, you're racist. You can't call a black person. Yeah, racist. no, you're the racist. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Black people who are nonetheless racist. But if you take a look at, so right now, the site, youth crit, trans critical professors or professionals is uh, private, but it, on transgender trend and fourth wave now, you'll see plenty of things. Hate is certainly one of them, but that's not the predominant trend. The most you're going to see is a, a sort of contemptuous paternalistic disapproval of the effect that trans ideology is having on the view. <laughs> but again, a psychiatric profile being done of trans. I like how he even has to admit that he doesn't see hate, direct hate on the website, but there is, you know, patriarchal overturn over uh well that's how, he turns it it. that's how he turns good civil discourse into hate right there <laughs> that's it that's exactly how you do it you blame I'm it on not, the patriarchy yes. yeah i'm not seeing a direct you know over hate right. but you know you can feel the implicit patriarchy is just seeping out of these evil parents Urgh. Trans people by being their parents who disapprove of them being trans is wholly unworthy research. The opinions of those moms are worth literally less than nothing. I mean, it would be again like a. This is so insidious to me. I know. I'm so I know. fucking triggered over this. For I, some I, yeah. third party to come in and say, You don't understand your child. I understand your child better than you do. Oh. <sighs> That's well, so evil. That but is and so also, evil. That wasn't what was being studied at all. This is why his, his criticism yes. is making. This why his criticism is fucking bullshit. And I, I don't think she points it out. Is that that's not what's being studied? What was being studied was how quickly did the children uh, seem to have gender dysphoria? And these were people that didn't exhibit uh, symptoms or signs or tell anyone about their gender dysphoria until you know I forget it was like a six month or a year period or something. 
And and what was their uh, psychological situation in their parental relationship before and during the situation? That's all it's being that's all that's being surveyed here in this question. Okay, all the things that he's talking about completely irrelevant, completely fucking irrelevant. Yeah. Well, it's super just it's super presumptuous to walk into a situation where having kids is rough. Everyone I know that has kids is just I mean, it's a lot of work to assume bad intentions on the people who've put this much time and effort into another human being's development. It's right. sick. It's totally sick. Here's here's what the, the results were. Okay. There there were two hundred and fifty six parents responding to the survey. Okay. All right. Um, eighty-two percent were female. The, their their parents, their Two, children were female. Two hundred and fifty-six is not a lot. No, that's not a lot. Um, but there isn't. It's hard to get a lot. There's not that many trans people. Right. Yeah. The other survey was like two hundred something too. Uh, eighty-two percent of the people respondents, their children were were natal female, which again, high number of, very high number of women. This is going to be a woman's issue in the next 10 years. So all these women that transitioned that are going to have trans regret. Right. Um, it talks about the ages, the mean ages. It says 41% of the children, the parents said, expressed a non-heterosexual orientation before identifying as transgender. Okay. So they're gay. 41% are gay. Yeah. Or said they were gay before. Uh, 62% said... 62% of the parents said that their child had been diagnosed with at least one mental health disorder or neurodevelopmental disability prior to the onset of their gender dysphoria. And Vosh is saying that the parents are making this up? Why would I they guess. make this stuff up? I guess. Because they're evil. Because they're evil. 36% uh, of the friendship groups described parent participants indicated that the majority of the members became transgender identified. 36 percent yes uh parents reported subjective declines in their child's mental health and in their child parent child relationship since they came out now so you could maybe say that's a that little, they yeah. shouldn't yeah that the well you could talk about the parent child relationship but you could say that then the percentage you know the parents Perception view of, of the mental the, health of the mental probably health probably biased yes. yeah right that could be biased um says expressed a range of behaviors that included expressing distrust of non trans oh they said so the parents said 22% of the parents said that their child expressed distrust of non transgender people uh 25% said that they stopped spending time with non transgender friends 50% said they tried to isolate themselves from their families uh 46% said they only trusted information about gender dysphoria from transgender sources and 86% of the parents reported that along with the sudden or rapid onset of gender dysphoria, their child either had an increase in their social media or internet use or belonged to a, oh, and belonged to a friend group in which one or multiple friends became transgender identified during a similar time frame. Hmm. Okay. So except for the one thing about the parent judging their child's mental health, everything else, good data that's completely irrelevant to all of Vosh's, you know, criticism, holier than mighty criticisms about none, of, none of the crit, all of the criticisms appear to be valid though, from just a tertiary perspective, which is right. Right. Disheartening. <clears throat> if you pretend that the study was studying something else, right. Then you could say it's not valid, but it's not right. Yeah. This goes to the, if you can't even do this kind of art, this kind of study without getting right. savaged. I mean, this completely makes Debrousseau's argument. Profile on interracial marriage done by disapproving white father. The, the, the lady that did this study got all sorts of pushback. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. She so, was forced to, I believe, retract the study, wasn't she? Um, I don't know. Was I she? think she was. That would be hilarious. The because Littman you have study, Vosh. I think is what was. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we have Vosh over here saying that 
Um, Academics can study whatever they want. Whatever they want. Yeah, complete (laughs) freedom. Nobody is going to get upset or anything like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. completely now, savaging oh, okay. this person. Not only that, right. he's on here, and they've used her name, he's on here comparing her to a race realist, and now he's going to make a comparison right. to someone who, in the 1950s, who was a disapproving parent of an interracial couple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so sick. Others with the, from, the, from suburbs in the 1960s. It's like, I don't, well, I don't well, feel like these comparisons to race are apt, though, because the concerns about gender, there are, like in this case, this is, to me, this is a legitimate, not to me, this is a legitimate study. She yeah, should... comparing someone who is going to be misdiagnosed and receive a double mastectomy out of this to someone who is going to end up marrying someone of the opposite of a different race. It's right. ridiculous. Nobody is going to be harmed from marrying from an interracial marriage. These are completely yep. different fucking different situations to compare them. is just, it's bad faith all the way. And it's the only reason he's doing this is to bring this racial tinge of, Ooh, she's a racist into this debate. It's so awful. Lisa Littman should have been allowed to ask this question. There's this phenomenon of people transitioning very quickly out of the blue, no previous history of gender dysphoria. Why is that not a legitimate question to ask? And to Deborah, well, how is that considered similar you to cannot racism? Deborah conduct Deborah. Deborah. So uh, I, I looked up the the reaction. So they didn't so they didn't retract the study. They revised they added some minor revision that basically, I don't know, further, I'd have to see what the changes are. They didn't change the results or anything. Right. All they said was they just revised some of the explanation about what exactly the thing, what exactly they were studying in the first place. They introduced a trigger warning. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to compare to see what exactly. It, it sounds like they just sort of, cl- it sounds like what happened was, People on both sides were trying to use this study to say something the study didn't say. Right. And so they just clarified exact, which happens all the of time. Course. When, when any, any, like almost any study that is publicized or has an article written about, if you look at the actual study, doesn't say what the journalist says it says. <laughs> and so it sounds like they were just clarifying what exactly it was. But it says Brown University originally posted a press release about the paper. And then after they took criticism from the paper the same day, they took down their paper, the press release that was publicizing the paper. Right. So right. Brown University, Ivy League school uh, capitulated about this. Typical. Brown uh, is woke see. central, though. Yes. Right. But it's still it's a big school. It's a big school. Uh, we had. Let's see. Several critiques. Blah, blah, blah. The sociological review. Someone said that it was a terrible study. And then there's just a bunch of lists of a bunch of sociologists all saying that the study sucked, essentially. So there you go. Or were we watching a video? We were watching. I was, a video. I was waiting for you to press the button again. I got a very important a psychological to do. profile on a minority group by pulling their disapproving parents. This is this is matter of factly ridiculous. If it was she does- nobody was trying to get a psychological profile. Right. Just- she's not saying this is a psychological profile. Thank she, you. I believe she I don't want to speak for her but I believe in the paper she acknowledges that this is not a clinical diagnosis. She's just doing a descriptive study which is very typical. It's a descriptive study on the psychological profile of these children's vis-a-vis their parents' report. No, it's That's where not. you just hold the um, internalized homophobia thing, which I think is That was a second study. That was not oh, that, that was study. Second. That was a second study. Oh, they both pull it then. It's a common narrative that I disagree with, though. So that's what's funny, too, is that she didn't even bring up the study, apparently. When she, the, uh, the study that she was talking about was a good, the different study altogether. Well, and Vosh is admitting that he doesn't like the narrative that we're trans and gay kids. Of course he doesn't like that narrative. Right. Because it right. turns you into the homophobe. Yes. Yeah. The idea, like, um, 
like the idea that a person wants to avoid the stigma of being gay so they transition i'm sure it's happened it actually funnily enough in the in, in iran um the state will back during feudalism here let me tell you a story <laughs> about feudalism here have you heard the story about feudalism mm-hmm. well i mean it's it's you know famous in in you know iran that they would uh prefer the trans people as opposed to them being gay right kind of it's bizarre just, but... it's so off i mean right okay let's change the topic and talk yeah, so actually this, there's a there's a different study that's so this is how we got here lisa Littman put out a study called individual treat individuals treated for gender dysphoria with medical and or surgical transition who subsequently detransitioned a survey of 100 detransitioners okay right completely different study doesn't talk to anyone's fucking parents is asking the people and that was a study that she was talking about where she said that there was a high number of them that said uh, the reason they felt compelled to transition homophobia. was because of yeah. themselves. Right. right. And so Vosh's response to this is to bring up a completely different study and mischaracterize it and misunderstand it. This is all completely bad faith. And right. I got, it, this is all, the only reason this is taking place is to build Vosh's profile. That's why I feel like, why are mm. you talking to this guy? Guys, transition because it seems they're okay with trans people but they're not okay with homosexuality so if you're a homosexual man they'll they'll have you you can transition to a woman and you can have a heterosexual relationship it's not exactly ideal but it's just an interesting tidbit that would sort of play out in that way so um, but w- <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing to do with totally anything. pointless yeah and let me change the topic now let me yeah, look said- i gotta check my email real quick here so according to this survey of 100 detransitioners that Lisa Lemon put out, it says 71% of women who detransitioned said it made me uncomfortable to be perceived romantically or sexually as a member of my natal sex or natal gender. Right. 62% said they thought transitioning would eliminate their gender dysphoria, but didn't. <laughs> right. Uh, where's the Where's the one about? Well, if they weren't. I mean, if they were passing badly, I mean, they could have been getting more attention than they were as a female if they're trying to avoid attention because Mm -hmm. sexual attention. I don't see the one about homosexuality. Okay, well, keep playing. What What would make our culture different? What would make North America different? We stigmatize trans people. I love this. I love it. <laughs> She's like, okay, bitch. Now you brought up Iran, right? Mm-hmm. Who Iran feels more comfortable transing their people than <laughs> dealing with homosexuals. And she just says, yeah, how are we any different than that, Vosh? <laughs> <What's> the, <laughs> we are Iran. How are we different? Oh, this is beautiful. One more. So, um, but what would what would make our culture different what would make north america different we stigmatize trans people more than we do gay people um in a, in a great many ways in this moment that's still true though yeah god way yeah absolutely also it's way easier to be gay than to be trans i'm gay i'm not trans you know being gay is as easy as, as which bars you could it's not even that you know i'm being i'm being uh, facetious but you can you know the gay lifestyle if anyone wants to call it that you know that's easy peasy you can drop in and out transitioning oh my you can drop in and out of the gay lifestyle just vosh <laughs> setting up there for vosh right. setting up there for how he's not actually attracted to men <laughs> yeah when he comes out as not gay he just he looks and he was just testing the waters okay he just dropped in and dropped Listen, out i have a huge pr nightmare going on with this jk rolling thing if i don't if i don't dip into a gay bar occasionally this month I'm, i could be canceled where's all the guys Yeah, you know, we have all these women that came out that vosh sexually harassed we're all the guys that vosh sexually harassed I'm telling they you. that's why i'm saying you know they would come forward right right we <laughs> there's no way that they would not come forward and the idea he's just he's admitted that gay people are not stigmatized as well <laughs> didn't he earlier say that people were losing their jobs because they were gay or trans yeah I, yeah 
apparently, apparently. God, it's expensive and time consuming and you lose a bunch of your friends if they're not on board. The idea that people would do this flippantly, don't get me wrong, it happens, I'm sure. Take a large enough group of people and eventually somebody's going to do something it's, like that. This but- is such a straw man. It's not that anyone's doing this flippantly. It's that you have people going through puberty, which is like the angstiest time for every young male and every young female's life, get confused about what they're feeling and think they have gender dysphoria when they don't. Yeah, That's it's, the problem. It's, it's not, not flippantly. Yeah. yeah. Not, not only that, flippant. what teenager is not depressed? Right. The most depressing portion of my life was in my teenage years. Yes. Every always, teenager is depressed. And that's the problem. You have all these hormones that are making you fucking crazy. You don't know where you're going to end up. You're nervous right. about college. You're right. like de You've been supported by your parents your whole life. All of a sudden, you've got to think of a career. Like, of course, right. it's crazy. Then on top of all that, you have literal hormones in your brain that are making you feel this way. And then you take puberty block blockers. <laughs> Right. And it's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. it's just, it's so dumb. It's scary. just so dumb. This is very scary. I know. Is there like a statistical concern of people doing it flippantly to avoid the internalized feelings of shame they have over their homosexuality? I don't, from what I've seen, that doesn't seem to be the case. It, it- Anecdotes, no studies. Just your gut intuition. Listen, right, Bosch, right. you just consulted your gut. That's what you did. It's so obvious. Mm-hmm. All you're doing is pulling shit out of your beehive and saying, <laughs> I know this to be the case. What's different? How, what's different from you and any other asshole just fucking asking their gut? It seems I'm the great Vosh, though. You don't understand. I'm Vosh. Everyone loves me. I have to be right. It's so <laughs> sad. There's no humility here, Sitch. People are mm-hmm. tangibly harmed over this shit, and Vosh could care less. It's, at the very least, counterintuitive to me. I mean, you would acknowledge that being trans is, is a lot harder than being gay, wouldn't you? I think it is definitely much more... Um... It, it, first of all, that question... Mm -hmm. completely is dependent upon what the person has heard. There are people saying, oh, you know, you get a double mastectomy and, you know, you don't like it, you get two more, you get implants. (laughs) No big deal. They they make it out to be. This this is no big deal. You take puberty blockers for, you know, 10, 15 years, you decide you want to actually grow up, you just grow up. Right? <laughs> it's easy. This is all easy, it's easy. It's easy. Yes, no, yeah. This is the way that they're selling it. And then all of a yep. sudden, Vosh is coming in here and saying, oh, you got to admit, you know, it's a big it's a big commitment to transition. This is not the way it's sold, though. No. People no. are saying, you know, you feel bad about yourself. You don't understand where you fit in the world. You know, maybe you're, maybe you're trans. Here, sign up. I'll get, for $50,000, I'll make your jaw a little better. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> These people. What? You, you don't have like a Patreon that gives you hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars a year. You can't buy feminization right. facial surgery like right. ContraPoints or Philosophy Tube or Blair right. White. or. Now you're going home depressed that you don't have the $50,000 right. to right. get the facial feminization surgery. And you're, and right. you're saying, listen, <laughs> I have this depression. This is so insane to me. I know. This is so yeah. insane. Vosh does not. I I sent such a clip earlier that completely triggered me. Vosh was testifying that he had to, you know, the left needed to be able to understand people's arguments and address those arguments of, you know, realistically. On the right. On the right, yeah. This was his yeah. claim. This is where he fits in, he says. Right. This is where I fit in. <laughs> I'm the one who comes out and understands the arguments and makes realistic counter arguments to the people. That's my yes. place in the left. That's what Vosh is saying. And I'm going, Vosh, <laughs> Vosh, you not, you're not doing that. All you're doing is confusing people. All you're yeah. doing is, is, is making people believe 
Someone who is big and popular says these things are true, so they must be true. You're literally creating the ad populum fallacy in everything that you say. <laughs> it's true. Is it not true? Do you true. disagree with it that? It is true. You are correct. You are yes. Correct. Yes. So Vosh comes out and and makes some declaration. And people this is this research has actually been done. It's in the book, the the influence book, Cialdini, about how celebrities, you know, celebrities commit suicide and they put it on the news and all of a sudden, days later, you know, half a dozen people over the nation, even more, hundreds of people can commit mm -hmm. suicide. And they always seem to be the same gender, race, and age as the celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> this, things happen. You think, uh, you know, you think transitioning is, you know, a lot of, risk suicide is a lot of risk too right people well, do it you know it's funny because we had that whole what was the name of that netflix show yes that, like that was making all the kids kill themselves exactly yeah they pulled it off right. the air because right it was popularizing suicide yeah right and we had this whole thing with feminists for years were complaining that uh we had to remove attractive and skinny women right because it's depressing them. um well, not just because it was depressing them, but it was giving women anorexia and eating disorders. expectations. Right. And they made this whole argument about how anorexia and eating disorders are this social contagion. And it's like, as long as they could frame it in a political way that helps their argument, they're on board with the social contagion for mental illness thing, because anorexia is a mental illness. And then suddenly, when... There's, a, there's something that's a social contagion and a mental illness like gender dysphoria that doesn't help their politics. Suddenly, oh, that's a completely ridiculous argument. Social contagion, that's not a real thing. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. But it's sad, though, because they're really, they're ignoring the tangible harm that's being done by the, themselves. Well, obviously, I just, they would because nobody wants to, Vosh doesn't want to turn the light out at night and think, oh, great, I Right. I've ruined thousands of people's lives. <laughs> no, they, none of them want to do that. It's called 13 Reasons Why. Was the suicide it's show. the show. It's the suicide show. Yeah, that's uh, so sad. Uh, Kubomi for $50. Thank you so much, Kubomi. Said, I stopped drinking. So I have this money I would have otherwise spent on booze. Well, there you go, Kubomi. Good for you. Instead, yeah, first of all, good for you. That's wonderful. Um, alcohol is pretty bad for you, unfortunately. It is. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Which, I'm not going to lie. but Right. It's pretty bad for you all around to drink alcohol, unfortunately. Um, but instead of drinking, there you go. You get 50 free units of free will to use in all sorts oh, of amazing wow. ways. Thank Far you, better. Thank you so much. That's so yes. generous of you. I, I had, I had stopped drinking, and I don't know... If I had gone six months without a drink, maybe it could be because I just... You have for God six months without drinking? Jesus. Well, I, I mean, How I like... How often do you drink? Well, I used to drink okay. all the time. I mean... I guess I don't I drink never, that much, but... I never was an alcoholic or anything. I just... Right. I super love Newcastle. Newcastle beer is so delicious. Oh. It's Okay. So I like drinking Newcastle and I just, I, per, I was like, okay, I'm getting fat. You know, beer is something easy that you can cut out and really cut out a lot of calories. So I might've gone six months without drinking a beer and I had a beer. We, we, I, we went out to dinner with some friends and I had a Newcastle and I just, the next day I felt like shit. It gave me a migraine headache that mm -hmm. night. I think on my days of doing any alcohol might be completely over. Oh no, you're too old. You're an old man now. Like you I live never, with like stop it, Adam. No more. I never. I don't want to drink another beer. Yes. Yeah. There you go. It's so. It's there you go. so wasn't worth it for one beer. I don't know. Just how long eat White been, Castle though. instead, says Doctor Diddler. All these there people. All these people. You know, a lot of times they keep track of how long they're sober. I don't know because. I just yeah, but if you're, really an alcohol, if you're not an alcoholic, it doesn't matter. Right, because you're not thinking about it every day. Yeah, sure. I would like a nice, tasty Newcastle, though. I could take one right now. I used to drink <laughs> Newcastle on the show. You don't remember that? I don't. I rarely look at what you're doing. I used to get a nice, talking. tall Newcastle yeah. or a Guinness. 
Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I like never see what you're doing. But um. Yeah. <laughs> I Sam never AG see what says you're doing alcohol either. makes better fan art. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sammy G is drinking <laughs> while she's <laughs> drinking and artisting. That explains so much of the degeneracy. <laughs> Yeah, very interesting. Listen, Adam is just We're uh, never gonna get smoking through. and art artisting. Okay. We're never going to get through this video. I can tell we're, you. Right we're now. almost done. Stop whining. Listen, Stop complaining. Destiny would Destiny would do this video in an hour and 50 minutes. Yeah. And he would talk <laughs> two times in the entire conversation. Okay. He'd be playing Elden Ring. He'd be, and he'd go, fuck. Kill me again. Do you want to make a bet? Because this and then video... 10 minutes later, he'd be like, okay, the problem here is that Vosh said this and he talked for like a minute and then he'd go back to playing Elden Ring. Okay. Destiny is going to cover this video too. You want to make bets on how long the... <laughs> he's talking about... Uh, maybe. There's maybe. no way he's going to cover the whole thing. And yes, it's going to be yes. going at 1.5 the whole time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the C. Hennessy, thank you so much for being two months free will. So as you guys weren't lying about a long stream today, I've seen Elton John eight hung out with my girlfriend, and now I get to enjoy Free Will Radio on the way home. Well, there you go. Free Will out. Uh, the observing Otaku for twenty dollars. Thanks so much. Says, did Vosh literally just say they can choose to be or not be gay? Wow. And people actually think he's smart and amazing. <laughs> he did kind of say that, yeah. He did kind of say that. That is an endorsement of conversion therapy right there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. CT says one beer doesn't make you an alcoholic yet. It made me sick, though. <laughs> Maybe someone, they spiked your beer with something. that. Uh... Sashman sent me an article. Did you get it, too? Uh, Molecular endocrinology? Accelerated mammary gland development in intellectually disabled females as an evolutionary survival mechanism. This it, are they trying to say that big boob uh, girls are stupid? Is that what this is that, can't that, be that real. sounds like? That's what you're saying. This can't be real. Yeah, that's basically exactly what he did says. not send me this paper. No, no. Is this? Can I real ask him article? not to? It looks legit, though. <laughs> this sounds ridiculous. This sounds ridiculous. <laughs> It is, a did good, you it is a good survival mechanism, though. That's true. That is true. Uh, did you hear uh, Scott Adams uh, trying to take shrooms again? No, really? Oh, my goodness. What happened? But he said the experience was so bad, he thinks that it was not shrooms. Like, someone slipped them something that was, like... Something different? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Which probably is probably what happened, because what he was describing, you're like, well, it doesn't sound like... Um, doesn't sound at all like shrooms, but... How how sad. Uh, one quim. Uh, I I read your super chat. Your super chat was like in the beginning, wasn't it? It was the. You're predicting Vosh will say something crazy to try to defend it, and then pretend he never said it at all. I read that one. Or uh -oh. was there a different one? Uh oh. Whatever. Uh, keep going, Adam. We're never gonna finish this video oh my of god stop whining we're never gonna finish it because you keep whining yes i'm someone who grew up in the game no i can't even you're talking while she's talking she's whining I can't so even hear it. much oh wait i did this skip is... investigator one comes how did why I would this? you do that you're always skipping investigator i know i what the fuck what happens bad mode happened investigator one quim for twenty dollars, says, did you guys see some people on trans Twitter losing their minds over Missouri legislature discussing the possibility of restricting transgender care to the age of twenty five? I did not see that. No, really. There you go. That's the pushback. The pushback is happening, and it's real. Yeah, it's real. They're gonna be That's like, why I, "Oh, you mm -hmm. like this stuff? Hey, you can't transition until you're fifty. Take that." <laughs> right. That's why this whole like um. That's why I don't buy this whole like we're just the end of civilization. Everything's downhill. It's like okay, this is like okay. This is so, not how. Yeah, you yeah. do not know how politics right. works. Right. That's why I'm. That's I'm fascinated to be rereading 
the Machiavellians in the context of these discussions with the distributus because, man, he just does not have a good read on that book. Right. I'm going into it after Dictator's Handbook, and there's so much overlap that I feel like, you know, I'm already halfway there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Uh, we should probably say this because I just this assume everyone knows. It. I assume everyone knows it, but I guess we it's possible we have new viewers that don't know it. So me and Adam are terrible assholes. No. What? And also we get a fuck ton of super chats. And we can't read them all on Sundays. And so we only read generally the $20 and up super chats on Sundays and anything else we will read on the following Tuesday. Maybe we should start saying that at the beginning of the show. Sure. We should say just that just to do a yes. quick run through right. so new people do know that. Right. What is it Madge the Digini? Modigen? Modigen? Is that it? He what said is, so. What about him? Sent some great artwork on Twitter. So. Oh. Yeah. Don't look. Cool. It's amazing. I'm looking. Wait, is it bad? No, it's great. Oh, this is good. It's just like a little. I'm a little. Uh, munchkin on my shoulder there. I look like. No, see, this is. I guess this is I like the little since the little sitch in your it. head that uh, whispers tells you to do bad things. Okay. We usually show a lot of artwork on Tuesdays. Too. We show the artwork generally on Tuesdays too. But yeah, this is really good though. Thanks for doing that. Looks amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, back to the show. Back to the drama. I think it is definitely much more um, of a. In, in terms of the process of transition, yes. I'm someone who grew up in the gay community. I'm straight, but I have had so many of my friends say to me that if they were growing up now, they think they would have transitioned to female as gay men. Well, I mean, a lot of people, JK Rowling said that. I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of people project their personal you know, biases onto that <laughs> until it bears out an existing research. I suppose we'll have to see. I mean, some... some Vosh would never ever project his personal biases mm -mm. onto anything mm -mm. he's the avatar of uh unbiasedness <laughs> right but it is in the detransition in that study that i said these girls are transitioning because they're not comfortable with being lesbian they say that i would need to take a look at that study then i that one specifically i haven't seen but i'd be interested I can send, um, I'll, I'll send it to you <laughs> okay i'd be delighted thank you yeah, and his excuse will be she did this other study that's completely indefensible. So I'm not going to look at a study right. from the same researcher. Well, and also if there's no control group for any of this shit, right? Then you're not really studying, <laughs> not really studying anything. If there's no, if it's not a double blind study with a control group, you're not really studying anything at all. You're sur you're doing a survey though. Yeah, survey work. Right, you're just doing a survey. Okay, I mean, sure. if you look at it from the context of like detective work. You can get a tip on the tip line, maybe full of shit. Who knows, right? Yeah, but if you're if you're if you're trying to assess uh, treatment for something that changes your biochemistry and your neurochemistry, you can't really assess whether the treatment's working or not, especially if it has to do with kids going through puberty, which surveys. changes their biochemistry and neuro right. and neurochemistry, without having a control group. And a placebo group who doesn't actually, you know, have the thing that changes them. Well, this is exactly what I'm saying. I'm equating these surveys to like the tip line. We have a right. tip here, but you need to do the full investigation before you can, you know, pin, you know, charge someone with murder or whatever it is, which is the same thing as the double blind. In order to make any actual knowledge on the topic, you have to do the double blind study, right. which would be the investigation. Right. But you would surveys are fine for for gathering information to where to how to structure a double blind study to achieve sure, whatever sure. goal you want. Yes, that's true. That's a good. Point. And they're just saying she's saying you got to begin with the surveys, otherwise you don't know how to structure that study. You don't even know. I how mean, to propose if you're it. a racist, maybe you do that, but or a transphobe. Oh yeah, that's Vosh's. Right. Thanks, Vosh. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
you know, barring my evaluation of that particular study, uh, whatever data we do have, and again, I can't speak to the idea that some data is not being published or investigated thoroughly enough because it might procure bad results, but from the data we have, detransition isn't common, and when it happens, it's usually because of social stigma or medical barriers. Um, at the end- So he, <laughs> and he's basing this off a study that actually has the sample population problem that he was criticizing I know the Littman study of having, which it I actually know. doesn't. I know. So, you know, I know. Amazing. Amazing. At the end of the day, when we're talking about, you know, the existence of detransitioning people, we're just going to have to accept that their existence is an inevitable complement to the existence of people who medically transition. There's no way to have a medical procedure what? undertaken by so many people. This is so fucking, this is such bullshit. This what does is he mean compliment? Bullshit. He's ba- he's basically saying that you just have to accept that there's going to be a lot of false positives because that's just the way the cookie crumbles, <laughs> which is such nonsense. Can you imagine? Can you imagine any kind of procedure where there's a large number of bad outcomes be- over diagnosis? That's going to be some huge red flags. Like, yep. oh, we thought you needed a double bypass uh, surgery but it turns out we misdiagnosed you your heart was just fine but now you actually have complications because we did the double bypass and right it's yeah, like exactly <laughs> what yeah exactly we're talking about the misdiagnosis being the problem not the not the complications because treatment mm-hmm. or without some people looking to undo it in some fashion and that doesn't mean that we shouldn't take an effort to minimize the number of people who unduly transition or to be supportive of detransitioners. It only means that I wish that their experiences wouldn't be sort of weaponized in a campaign to raise concerns over the extent to which we gatekeep people right now. This is so bad faith. It's of course so it is. bad faith. Of course it is. I just wish all of the mistakes that the medical community is making weren't used against us. <laughs> Well, then stop making the fucking mistakes. Well, and this would, this argument would only be valid if Deborah So or we were saying, oh, no one should ever transition ever. It's all bullshit because look at these people that have detransitioned. Okay. Nobody's Which, making that argument. Yeah. Well, I'm, some, I'm sure someone's making that argument, but we're not making that argument. And Deborah So is 100% not making that argument. And she said she's not making that fucking argument. The, the argument that's being made is that the that there's a basically a blase attitude about uh kids transitioning and it's just like oh you know just have to affirm 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 and that's that's what is being talked about in this conversation yes and to and to better minimalize the false positives you have to do research that you're unable to do in the current climate because people are so worried that the research is going to show gender dysphoria is not even a real thing. Like that's what right. they're worried about. They're like, please, right. please, let's not study this too much. From transitioning, most people agree, at least in the trans community, the gatekeeping as it stands is too significant. So <laughs> it seems like if anything, kids think gatekeeping is too significant. Such I am. Yeah. That's I'm bewildered. That's I'm, right. How does that happen? The the people who want want the thing and they want it now right think the gatekeeping's too significant well i like how he just goes on this whole thing about how the parents are not good subjects to determine these things mm-hmm. and yet for some reason he he buys the incredibly biased perception of the kids i know exactly <laughs> of the kids who want the treatment saying that it's too hard to get i wonder if the okay. kids who want to smoke weed think the gatekeeping of marijuana <laughs> is far too stringent Right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Or the kids who want to drink alcohol at parties think the gatekeeping on alcohol is <laughs> far, far too stringent. Yeah. Just f- I think we need to go in the opposite direction. I agree that I don't think the issue of detransitioning should be weaponized against trans people. I don't agree with that. Um, I, but I think it goes back to the, the point I made earlier about clinical, just people, clinicians feeling like they they can't do their jobs properly but um i want to just let you have a chance to say is there anything that you wanted to bring up because i know that we're over on time right now yeah i'm sorry about that um 
Oh goodness! Well, we are. Time flies when you're when you're having fun. Um, <laughs> well, I, I took a snipe of James Lindsay earlier, of course, which you know hardly my first. I saw some of your conversation uh, with him. And, yeah, he was on. Um, just so for people listening, he was on episodes thirty nine and forty. He was also on my podcast earlier on, talking about different subjects. But more recently, we're talking about political grooming um, and sexual grooming in schools. Yeah, that those are amazing podcasts, by the way. I'll have to check them out. And they just completely destroy Vosh. And this is why. See this look on Vosh's face right now? Yeah, they kind of made me look like an idiot. I don't like that kind of content. <laughs> why are you doing that to me? Deborah. That, speaking of a lack of evidence, um, for, from what I say, and, and to your credit, by the way, you say this you know, in, in that conversation, but comprehensive sex education improves the lives of of young people in basically every way like in terms of use of contraception lower pregnancy rates when you're young and from the research that exists which isn't much unfortunately but from what does exist re, um, programs like that significantly reduce the amount of pedophilic predation against young people you point this out too you know it's much easier to call out stuff like that if you know broadly what's happening you know it, you know in 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 ignorance uh, predation reigns but when young people uh, have have terminology they can use to describe what's happened to them or whatever, you know, grim stuff like that. But the weaponization of of these terms. I mean, you say political. Group. This is so dishonest. This is so dishonest. There's a huge difference between, you know, you tell some little kids like stranger danger. You know, stranger danger. Uh, don't let a kid. Don't let an adult touch you in right. your private area. Or right. Something. Yeah, you don't need to teach gender identity to tell them. Don't let them touch you there. Right. Or even, yeah. And even if, even if you're talking to kids that are like nine or 10, you know, they're approaching the sex ed years. I think I had sex ed in fifth grade. Yeah. Like, you know, you say like, oh, this is a penis and this is a vagina and, you know, sex works, you know, this way. Like, you don't need to talk to them about gender identity or any of this fucking bullshit. Not like like that. And sex ed, when I had it, was they sent home the entire curriculum. And it was opt yes. in. The parents had to look at the curriculum and sign off on it. Yeah, me too, like me they too. didn't want to get any accusations of you know we're right. fucking getting weird with your kids here. Yep, yep. In this day and age, they're like well. they're looking to get weird with your kids and not <laughs> not find out about it. It's crazy. It's the the amount of respect for parents has dropped to zero. Mm -hmm. I don't. It's offensive to me. That is true. And he's completely mischaracterizing the the talk. I think Deborah addresses it, so I'm going to let her go first. Grooming. I have no idea what that means. In terms of actual grooming, you know, like the actual proper term for it, um, there's just no evidence of this being in any way correlated to like woke, like elementary school teachers or whatever. It's just another like big fear mongering bit. But I, I guess I just, if you acknowledge that these comprehensive sex education programs are wholly beneficial. How, how is it fear mongering if they're teaching, gen, if they're legitimately teaching gender identity in the classroom and people are upset about that? How is that fear mongering? Uh, because we live in straw man dishonest world. What do you mean? Okay, yeah. I mean, they're, w the parents have discovered what's going on and Bosch is going, oh yeah, that's okay. It's okay <laughs> to tell your eight-year-old that, you know, they can, everyone is gender fluid and gender is not some stable thing. That's okay to tell your kid. And the parents are like, what the fuck? <laughs> what are you talking about? Why are you being such a square? Right. I just... <laughs> That's not fear mongering. You can't categorize that as fear mongering. You're literally doing that. <laughs> and the parents are literally upset about that. Yeah. There's no fear mong like right. fear mongering is making it sound much worse than it is. No, they know exactly how bad it is and they don't like that bad. Right. What's the concern? So uh, I, I'm trying to think how to best summarize this because I don't want to speak for James. I have to say that that conversation definitely changed my perspective on many um, of, of how I feel about this issue because as a former sex researcher, I've always been very much in favor of sex education. I think it's very important. Um, and like you said, comprehensive sex education, I've always 
publicly been a, a big defender of it. Um, but after talking to James, I realized that what is being taught in the classroom today is not reflective of these programs that were previously helpful to kids. And like you said, helping them have just proper <laughs> names for their anatomy. Why are you laughing? So that kids because the- he's all like, like, oh, you know, James is saying all sorts of crazy shit and it's all bad. And she's like, James actually completely changed my mind. <laughs> like, I think everything James is saying was right. And Bosch has changed nobody's mind. Yes. Va- yes. Va- everyone who wants to believe this is going over to Bosch and is just listening to Bosch and accepting this. He's not right. winning people over to this. Right. No. Yeah. It, va- listen. I've been kind of drifting off the Lindsay train, the James Lindsay train for a while now. Lindsay changed my mind on that, to be honest with you. Oh, no. I, yeah, no. I mean, I was following his, you know, and talking about the grooming stuff from, from on his own channel. And I've always, I think he's completely right about that stuff. The logic is just too sound. Right. And the way he lays it out, it makes too much sense. It's nefarious. Is this on her YouTube channel? I think where, I, where do we find I think this? I went to my podcast app. I think I listened to. I okay. looked at the Is Deborah Sill podcast. podcast yeah. And she's done. She's done two talks with James Lindsay. She did one a while back, and then she did the groomer one, which was recently. And she broke it up into two parts, kind of inartfully. The first one kind of just drops off in the middle, but they're both released now, so you can. Okay, I will put the link to these in the description. Yeah. For those who want to listen to it after this. It is. And I mean, I agree. And I she goes into it here about the what what's going on in sex education is anti scientific. And that's what rubs me the wrong way. Mm -hmm. It's like if you were actually teaching them something that was legitimately had a scientific basis to it okay (laughs) this is this is not this is ideological drivel that they're teaching these kids yeah of course of course it is i mean maybe the gender identity stuff gets flushed out in the future we're kind of in flux there and like i said we can't do a lot of research on this because people are worried that their sacred belief is going to be overturned by scientific research after they went two years through a pandemic telling everybody to trust the research right Mm-hmm. They're fucking terrified that the research is well, that is, against them. That is part of the problem. To protect themselves and they can acknowledge or identify when abuse is happening so they can report it. But now it's started to work in these ideas that are nonsensical and are a way of separating children from their parents in terms of the way they th- they see the world. They have these particular views about sexuality and gender. And what? it's a way of... Like, like pretty much everything we've talked about in this conversation. Thing- Look, he has no concept of what he's, she's talking about. No, he's not. She said, he said, like, what? I don't, well, like, what? How is, how is gender identity any different than the sex ed that they've been teaching for 20 years? Well, guess what, Bosch? It's brand fucking new. Right. Things but like that's what's gen- so dishonest about all this and, you know, the CRT stuff and all this gender stuff it's all it's all different it's all completely new right they keep trying to pretend like it's this is just sex ed it's like "Mm, the crt stuff they try to pretend oh this is just so we've been doing this for this is since the 60s we've been doing this for 50 years what are you complaining about (laughs) oh it's completely different oh right right yeah they weren't teaching about whiteness back in the 60s okay and and the it's the same with the gender stuff all this gender fluidity non-binary stuff that didn't go home to the parents in the packets when they were opting into sex ed 10 years ago, five right. years ago. And I don't believe for a second, Adam, mm-hmm. that, that Bosch, Bosch doesn't, doesn't know of this. Doesn't know about queer theory and all that stuff. You're probably right. You're probably uh, right. You probably learned about all this garbage in his BA right. from his party school or whatever. At Humboldt, of course. Yeah. Humboldt is, I think, half the student body is trans. <laughs> It wouldn't surprise me, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Good for them. Sitch, stop <laughs> gatekeeping, okay? Why do people me? have to have gender dysphoria to be trans? Such there a fucking go. square. I know. I, I know I am. I, I really am. The fluidity that um, 
children can be what don't, let's not talk about boys and girls because if you are a little girl you may not really be a little girl i mean that the all of grade school is talking about boys and girls what the fuck yep can you imagine not <laughs> like your kindergarten class you can't talk about boys and girls <laughs> what the fuck all i remember from kindergarten is boys and girls boys over here <laughs> girls over here Boys and girls, boys and girls, uh -huh. boys and girls, come here. We're doing another boys and girls recess is over. What the fuck? Now it's like children. <laughs> they, them. I don't want to make any assumptions here. <laughs> they, them is over here. Not trying to assign anyone at birth. <laughs> the possibility mm -hmm. that someone, a child is going to grow up to be a transgender adult is so statistically small and i just don't think it's appropriate to be talking to kids about this True. stuff because it's very confusing for young children yes. i it? think if yes is it? what do you mean well, is it? Says, is kindergartners it? yes i think up until even say kids have especially young kids have a big problem understanding a lot of like nuance whatsoever i mean i remember thinking when I was five, I think, or no, I was like three. I was three or four, and I saw the Michael Jackson music video for "Beat It," and I was deter I was dead set determined. Didn't matter what my parents said, that Michael Jackson was a girl <laughs> because he had long hair and he was wearing what I thought was a feminine outfit. And you couldn't convince me otherwise that Michael Jackson wasn't a girl. You, you bigot i know and i'm like okay you want to teach that you want to teach that little sitch like some sort of complex nuance about gender identity like i'm gonna fucking understand anything that you're fucking saying whatsoever like oh you know there are boys that you know some there are boys that are you know in girl bodies that are just you know born that way so... like you have to explain this to a child if you came so out stupid. Like in an alternate universe and you came out with this as just a way to fuck with kids. This is like the ultimate way to just fuck with them. Yeah. <laughs> you this, yeah. You're completely correct. Telling people that you can go in. Yeah. Go in and tell them this. Tell them that there's no, that boys and girls, like there's no such thing as boys and girls. Like they're <laughs> <laughs> so much, so much of your, so much of growing up is the first group that you identify with is the gender group, you know? Yeah. That's the true. boys. That's true. Versus the girls. The boys Ew, versus girls. The, the boys versus the girls is like the first taste of tribalism. That sweet, yes. sweet tribalism <laughs> that we all love as human beings. That's sweet. Give me that sweet, sweet tribalism. Who do we mm -hmm. hate today? Who do we love? We love the boys. We hate the girls. It's like, oh, God, it's fucking girls. And what to think that you can separate, like, it's just, I can't imagine childhood without that, to be honest I know. with you. It's, it's true. It's true. And not only that, the every, the first time your parents take you out of the house and it's like you have to use a public restroom in some place, they mm -hmm. they explain there's the boys, here's the girls, this is how it works, right? So you've right. been you've been learning that all of a sudden you're dropped in public school everything you've learned is wrong <laughs> like <laughs> libs of tiktok is here everything your parents have taught you your entire life for mm -hmm. five years is completely incorrect your parents have been <laughs> lying to you you can really you you can really use either bathroom there you <laughs> go like, what the fuck you got to watch, you got to listen to that talk with, because this would immediately, like you would think, oh my God, my parents have been lying to me my entire life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You wake up in like a, a invasion of the body snatchers type situation. You're looking at your parents completely differently. Why You're telling you me I could have used any bathroom this whole time? Right. All this time you've said mommy was going to the other bathroom and she could have come with us that's right yeah you're right that's a, I, that's a great point why didn't mommy come in the bathroom you know i didn't like that i had to go in a different bathroom from mommy what the fuck i know 
why is she fucking with me like that? <laughs> Mom, why are you fucking with me? This is it. This is totally it. It's completely <laughs> to turn kids against their parents. It's so fucking evil. It is. This, it the is. backlash for this is just going to be insane. I know. Like you're, you're, you have a generation that is going to be voting Republican for the rest of their lives. The Democratic yep. Party is is destroying their brand. Well, they'll they'll go through a a Reagan esque, you know, rebranding era, like they did in the. DeSantis 90s. is setting himself up to be that guy, the Reagan, the new Reagan. No, I'm saying the Democrats were like when Reagan crushed the Democrats. Oh yeah, the Democrats was... had to rebrand themselves, so they'll do they'll do something like that. Reagan, yeah. for those who aren't boomers. Reagan won 49 states. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Yep. 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 Can you imagine the, the, these. <laughs> well, I don't think that will ever happen in modern history. Cause just the way population distribution. I don't occurred. know if it's going to happen. It's going to happen over this critical race theory, gender stuff. Adam, our infrastructure is crumbling our bridges are falling apart adam okay? i'm telling you i disagree vosh if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen over this it is it's true yeah no you're right it is can you imagine the zoomers if the republican candidate won 49 states the that would be fascism. pretty funny oh my the, god for, it would be four years of fascism it's fascism mm -hmm. fascism <laughs> oh, the election was rigged that would be the best part the election was rigged yes the election was right. I'm, f I'm, it's, I'm probably going to vote Republican. I mean, I can't imagine voting for this mm -hmm. stuff. Well, there's a strong possibility that I would vote for DeSantis if he runs for president. See, even you, <laughs> even you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how insane this has gotten. Yep. I got to do it for the children. I'm just gonna, there you know, you go. I I rewatched Nacho Libre recently i love that movie <laughs> the children i gotta do it for the children there you go you gotta understand we have to save the children <laughs> we're doing it for you kids i would say even the tax cuts are nice too but <laughs> it's for you <laughs> close to puberty i mean kids kids their conception of gender is so malleable developmentally speaking yeah. it's just not it makes me question i mean do you wonder why do you why would a teacher feel that this is so important to teach a child? And if they are, so I don't really want to get too much into the, to Florida's parental rights bill, but the, the outrage around bill. that, pardon? Just the don't say gay bill. Yeah. I was right. making well, sure that I have the same one. Right. <laughs> no, he didn't. That's yeah. see, this is I, where, okay. That's I'm so totally dishonest. Convinced. Yes, yes. I'm totally convinced that he's lying here. This is not, he knows what's going on here. Right. He knows. Right. Oh, I'm just making sure that we're talking about the same bill. No, you're not. <laughs> you're trying. You're. You want her to say. You're like this is the divide right here. Is is she gonna call it the anti grooming bill, or is she gonna side with me and call the don't say? Gay well, she bill? didn't. She did. She said it what by what it's actually called. The I know. Rights bill. I know. Yeah. No. And and Bosch is Good for ticked her. about that. Yes. Bosch is like, listen, we run things here. Vosh would totally be the Nazi prison guard. You know he would. He already is. <laughs> Basically, he is, isn't he? He already is. Yeah. Oh, scary. Very scary times. Very scary times that the guy who's the Nazi prison guard is the one going around calling everyone Nazi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what it's being called by some people, but... It does but prevent you from that... uh, talking about sexuality, of which, Sexual... of which gay is one. Yeah. Right, but... No, but it's about teachers teaching this in their curriculum for kids, kindergarten to grade three, and for um, precluding parents from those discussions. That's what the bill is. You, you can say uh, gay. There's nothing about, no, this is the thing, there's nothing about saying gay. You can say gay all you want. It's about specifically teaching kids these ideas. So why are these educators so upset that they can't do that? So why is that so important? Of well, first of all, the I can't think of any teacher that I had in elementary or junior high mm -hmm. or even high school. If they came forward and and 
confided in me that they were gay that I wouldn't just be like cringe. <laughs> Why are you telling me this? What the fuck? We have a professional relationship here. Well, I mean, that was so weird too. It's like, yeah, like who who are these kids that want to know all this personal shit about their teachers? I don't know any fucking thing about my I teachers. Know. I don't know what we're talking about. Like well, this is so bizarre. These, you're seeing these weird TikTok videos of these people yeah. who are like, Oh, I can't tell my kids in class that I'm gay. I'm thinking Good. Why, why the fuck you, are you talking why about this? Do you want, yes. Why is that a desire in your life to confide in a bunch of seven year olds? Well, he, here's my concern. I think there's a bunch of fucking shitty young teachers who basically right. use their their class and their children as like a form of therapy or something. <laughs> it's so sick. <laughs> this it's is like sick, it, sick it, behavior. Right. Don't talk to your. I don't remember any of my teachers talking. Like it was, I don't. Like it was super rare. Like especially when you're a young kid. I remember when you're a young kid. If you saw your teacher at like the grocery store, you're like, "What the fuck?" Yes, my teacher exists. They're a person outside of like the classroom. Like, what the fuck? Like, it just it freaks you out. You're like, "This is bizarre." And I don't remember any of my teachers, especially in elementary school or even middle school. It was really only high school where you make maybe you start to get glimmers of like your teacher's personal lives because they felt like they could talk to you like a, like a human being because you're not a child. You're not exactly like the child you were when you were middle school or elementary school. But before then, I don't remember the teachers talking about their personal lives at all. And I think that's the way it should be. I saw my high school Spanish teacher mm -hmm. outside of class driving down the street. I'm with a bunch of friends and we look over and we thought, oh, there she is, Miss Neatman. Mm -hmm. And she's totally picking her nose. She's like <laughs> going in there deep. I mean, deep. She's like, <laughs> she's digging for gold. <laughs> we, I, just, I will never forget. <laughs> there you go. There you not go. Only, not only is she human. And man, I, she must have been like three feet tall. Cause she's like <laughs> barely, she could barely see over the steering wheel. It's like a uh -huh. small child driving the car, mm. and she was more interested in picking that nose than she was driving. <laughs> and we laughed and pointed. <laughs> oh no! I know. I couldn't help myself. Oh, Come no. on, I was just a kid. It's <laughs> just a stupid. Oh, kid. I'm not saying it's bad. That's funny, but uh, yeah, yes, I did not. I, maybe maybe she was gay. I don't know. I don't care. We wouldn't have changed how I thought about her. You you have to watch that episode of South Park where I know I do. I'm I pretty do. sure the first like ten minutes of it are just it's it's Mr. Garrison coming into the classroom. Oh yeah, and telling all the kids about their his gay relationship, and all the kids are like, "Why are you telling us this?" See, South they know <laughs> they're Trey Parker and. And Matt Stone. And Matt Stone, yeah. They yeah. they know. They know. Kids are not interested in this. Right. You're just using them as some sort of emotional crutch, and it's weird. Yeah, it's it weird, is weird and creepy. It is weird. Yep. And if we have, I mean, isn't the law really designed to help us deal with weird and creepy people? I feel like it is. <laughs> I feel like that's the whole point of the law, right? <laughs> I like that. To deal with weird and creepy people. I guess that's true. It's, I, I mean, is how true. is it not? Yeah, that's that's accurate. I mean, if we didn't have indecent exposure laws, we'd be dealing with a lot more weird and creepiness. <laughs> Bunch of weird creepos running around. Yeah. I mean, this is this is just this is normal. That's this true. is how we that's deal true. with things. Yeah. Stop mischaracterizing this shit, Vosh. Stop being part of the problem and start being part of the solution. That's It'd never be good happen. for you. That's not gonna happen. Well, I mean, his income is totally tied up in straw man. <laughs> exactly. On the exactly. The don't say gay bill is borderline unconstitutional. It's restriction of First Amendment and educational rights. So what a fucking I know. dumbass. So, Holy shit. So disingenuous. Where'd I you get that off of Reddit? This. Did you get that off a of Reddit thread? I didn't hear the end of this. What a dumb fuck. He thinks it. What, how did, yeah. If, if the don't say gay bill was un, was unconstitutional on First Amendment grounds, that would, you know what else would be unconstitutional on First Amendment grounds? Saying teachers can't teach you about creationism. 
right? Dumb fuck. Yeah. Would also be unconstitutional. But it's not because it, it has nothing. To, you're talking about what a public school teacher who's acting as an agent of the government. Okay. Right. So doesn't have the government doesn't have free speech from itself. Right. I don't know if you know this. Okay. People have free speech from the government. Right. So yeah, what are you fucking talking about? This is this is dumb. This is so dumb. Yeah. This is crazy dumb. Nick Ricada made a video on this. It was really good. And I can't remember the way he characterized it, but he I'll get the gist of it right. He was basically mm-hmm. saying that we as parents have the right to teach our kids however we see fit and that we right. are turning that right over to the state to do it on our behalf but we still have veto power over that right they're doing this right as a service to us right so yeah they don't have free speech in any way shape or form but you could also say you know like uh someone could like giving away government secrets if you're in the military is not a free speech right <laughs> okay it's like if you're a government employee of certain rights like who was the woman that decided she wasn't gonna give out gay marriage certificates like oh. she can't come out and say this is my art okay i'm doing this is my free expression no gay people she did try to gay. make that argument yeah she did she did yeah. she did, she did. I, tried, I don't remember her Miserably. name yeah. and they it failed. fired her yeah, because right because they're like, well, it doesn't, you know, you personally can have this opinion, but when you're working right. for the state as a state actor, you have to follow what the fucking law says. Exactly. It's borderline unconstitutional. What a fucking moron. I'll be right back. What a back. dipshit. What a dipshit, chat. Chat, can you believe the dippiness of this dipshit? God. So I, I feel like it's it's this isn't really just like a woke left thing. Like there's a reason the entire Democratic Party has condemned it as well. Yeah, that reason is because it's good politics, because they get to say Republicans are evil, bigoted racists and transphobes. That that's that's the reason. It's purely cynical. Purely cynical. Um, it's it's you know, not particularly it's not just so first of all, it prohibits in curriculum. Uh, you know, the um, instruction of anything pertaining to sexuality or gender, but there isn't a very strong legal definition for curriculum as opposed to just classroom discussion. And from the way the libs of TikTok Twitter account and all of its subsidiaries are acting, it seems like just bringing up the existence of gay or trans people constitutes political grooming to a lot of these types. And then you have the fact that... That's that's not an argument. There There is... <laughs> Oh my God. I have to look at the law again. But if the law just says a teacher or can't be part of the curriculum, it means part of the curriculum. It doesn't mean that if a random kid asks you a question, the teacher is going to go to fucking jail for answering a question. What the fuck is he talking? This is insane. I never heard him talk about the subject matter. Usually his BS is like a little bit more artfully, a little bit more artfully done than this. This is this is bad. All, I, I just uh, love TikTok because I know that that you've mentioned them a couple times in this conversation. That I don't, I don't want to speak for them. I know, I just, I don't want to speak for them because I don't know, I don't know them, and I don't know what their intentions are. So I think it's just fair to to say that much, right? We don't, we don't know. We can't really attribute motive to them because we don't know. Well, we know they're a far right political operative whose goal seems to be to paint a bunch of trans and gay and gender nonconforming people who work in education as groomers. And I, I like that. Her, she's literally saying. Listen, you know, you can talk about what they're doing. You could talk about the subject matter, but you can't judge their motivation. You can't ascribe all this negative motivation. And I was like, no, actually, I can. Actually, I fucking can. I can, I can ascribe whatever negative motivation I want. Well, you're doing the same thing, so. That's true, but Vosh is a piece of shit. Right, so you're allowed to ascribe bad motive. That's why I just assume go with, like, there's, there's, we have physical evidence that he's a dipshit. I mean, we can say that he's dumb. Mm-hmm. I think that. I think being a saying. dipshit goes more than than dumb. I think being a dipshit includes dishonesty. Well, yeah, that's true. So, 
in spite of for the vast majority of the people they outline of course there's no actual evidence of any grooming taking place it seems like a very cheap and cynical politicization of the word personally um uh, anyway oh. <laughs> a leftist complaining about the cheap politicization of a word is woof mm, beautiful beautiful yeah mr everyone's a nazi is worried about being called a groomer right. i fucking love this it's fucking, right i gotta admit i love it well and to be clear too and this is i mean you, you can make this argument and this is true is that when james Lindsay, who i am assuming is where chris rufo got the you know the groom word for because i think james Lindsay is the first person to call this grooming this was done intentionally because when you hear grooming, you think of like Pedo. pedophilia, yeah, right. Of course, but when he, right, but that's not, but that's not what the term grooming means. It can, it just means that you're uh, basically trying to indoctrinate or brainwash a child into anything, yeah. really. And that's what. So he's sort of using the term in a somewhat sly, you know, double meaning, which you know, you could, you could complain about that. Sure, As a, maybe that's not the most honest framing, but that's basically the left's bread and butter right now. Is they use dishonest words in this way. So I think it's fair game. I think it's entirely fair game. It is fair game. And it's also, I mean, it's rich because it's one better. First of all, the Nazi thing yes. is completely worn out. And no one believes anyone is an actual Nazi. The grooming charge, people are like, is he a groomer? I don't know. I, I don't know. Right? Right. Right. No, that's definitely true. I mean, they're using Nazi as a synonym for racist, which you could think, well, is he a racist? But according to Robert D'Angelo, everyone's a racist. But I think the grooming charge is much worse than being a racist. Um, Wait a minute. Is this... Oh, fuck. What happened? I'm trying to find the stupid bill. I can't find it. The don't say gay bill? Come on, we yeah. read it already. It's no big deal. I want to so, read it again. <clears throat> I can only I find like, like the original version. Which this is where different. things started getting heated here. He's um, attacking her. Lance would just come out and call her a bunch of names and say, listen, when you. <laughs> broader okay, point here. The issue that but I if have. You're teaching, if you're teaching kids nonsensical ideas about gender and sexuality with the goal of, of making them woke, is that not a form? It may not be sexual grooming. But it, is that not political grooming? There's no such thing as political grooming. Political perspectives inform our biases everywhere we go at all times, and they but have in education forever. There's no such thing as political grooming. I don't think. I've, what? what the such f bullshit. That's just, such see, this bullshit. Is, this is where I say he's lying because he knows that's not true. Because that is the Marxist position: is that the evil liberal political grooming has basically indoctrinated all all of people. I mean that that is. The entire like when when James Lindsay talks about Paul Freire, Freire, Freire mm -hmm. and like the critical pedagogy nonsense and all this stuff, it is all operating under the idea that our normative, evil, Western, liberal, heteronormative society is grooming, is grooming, grooming everyone. Yeah. Yes, into false consciousness. So they need to have their weirdo, deconstructive, you know, anti-normative Marxist counter grooming essentially right so yeah, that is a fucking crazy like I, I i didn't listen to the last 10 minutes of this like this well, is insane. just insane this is devolved that like usually his lies are better like this is just garbage <laughs> this is just literally garbage well the idea <laughs> the conservatives were trying to get intelligent design taught in public schools under the teach the controversy thing that was the last time there was really a dust up over over public school education now i yeah. doubt vosh would call that a apol apolitical how how is that apolitical they're trying to get creationism taught in science class how is that apolitical mm-hmm think it's been in education forever i don't think all teachers politics? have always been political and always imposing their politics on kids with the goal of turning those children in the same direction that they're in 
With respect, that's a very ahistorical perspective. The curriculum of the United States, the educational curriculum, has always been informed by people who are making a deliberate effort to instill certain values, whether it be patriotism, whether it be subservience to the state, whether the curriculum be oriented around making people good factory workers or service workers. There's always been a political bias, and the political um, or progressive inclinations of the time have always had an influence as well. Obviously. Yeah, and that political bias is towards trying to make people be healthy, productive citizens. Right. Yeah. And Informed and we all voters. have right, and we all have to agree that you know if if we're talking about public education, right, it's got to be something that most people can kind of get behind because right. it needs to it needs to be public education for everyone. You don't want public education for Democrats and public education for Republicans. It has it, okay. ha it has to be better than that. It has to be something that everyone can get behind. Not just That's what I'm most saying. people. Yeah, yeah all right. people. That's what I'm saying. It has to be something that everyone can get behind. And so the way we've done this is we're saying, "Okay, well listen, we're going to try to remove as much politics as humanly possible. Obviously, Vosh, you dumb piece of shit moron. It's going to have embedded within it positive values about patriotism and liberalism and the foundations of our fucking country. Obvious fuckingly, it's going to have that in it. Yeah, you okay. can't structure a society without that stuff. You have to have yes. some common yes. values. Right, right. You have to structure society around something that has common <laughs> values. Okay. And so... And so that's not evidence. The fact that we do share some common values that like we should, you know, that most people want to have live in a Western democracy, you know, based on liberal freedoms that are enshrined in our fucking constitution. Okay. Doesn't mean that you get to inject your fucking weirdo, creepy race and gender bullshit that the majority of the country doesn't like or doesn't agree with. Right. Okay. This is a dumb fuck sophist argument. Why? Well, that's I'm insane. I mean, I will, I'm not even sure that I was exposed to patriotism in school, to be honest with you. I mean, mm -hmm. the, all of the, everything that we learned about American history or, or government was just a technical analysis of those things. Yeah, me too. Right. I don't, yeah, yeah. I want to be clear because Vosh will dishonestly be like, oh, you know, when, when we say patriotism, he thinks that that means that, you know, oh, everything you have to paint an entirely 100% rosy picture of everything America did. That was not my experience in schooling either. We, and my I, experience was was very similar to yours, which was a lot of things were just talked about in very technical aspects. You know, we talked about the terribleness of slavery. We talked about a lot of the shitty stuff that America did regarding segregation, all this stuff. But we didn't say like, oh, this is the, the foundation of America is evil or wrong or bad or any of that garbage Yeah, I don't that think they want to put in. I don't think I even had teachers that made us do the pledge after junior high. Like I was in California, they were like, "Eh, pledge of allegiance, you can do it if you want." <laughs> yeah, we only did that. You we only did the pledge uh, in elementary school. Right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're grown up now, kids. <laughs> yeah. It's official. You're in junior high. <laughs> You don't have to do the Pledge of Allegiance anymore. Obviously, you know, people were getting these same accusations back in the 1960s. Um, and likewise, you were getting a lot of this back in the 1920s as well with the suffragette movement when there were political activists oh who also happened to listen. If you're going back to the 1920s, Vosh, you're just fucking full of shit. <laughs> Completely so full of shit. Oh my God. Or because educated. So he's making the argument that politics have always been in school. Therefore, we have to put my politics in school. Yes, the argument is. Yes. This is such bullshit. Well, also, there's a, a hint of all of his examples would be right leaning examples. So he's kind of like, it's our turn. You guys have <laughs> run the schools for as long as, you know, I can remember. Uh -huh. Now it's our turn, our turn to teach our crazy shit to your kids. So step, move over. It's essentially like, yeah that's not right. an argument that's not an argument that's not you can't go in and say listen you've been beating me for <laughs> like now i get to beat you no educators there was I mean, this you can't fear mongering that, right? about them being it's not going to be a good argument it's not a good argument right I mean, you could say it but it's not a good argument yeah, you know, they're trying to indoctrinate young boys to be submissive to females or whatever nonsense they would say back then. Um, uh, but do uh, you not think uh, there are some teachers who would go into teaching saying, you know, my politics, it's not my place to put my politics on my students? Is that not can... an admirable way to 
go about teaching if Depends your students don't politics. know what your political <laughs> oh, shit. Oh! that's so this is so bad because it self-report city holy shit imagine that um, just take the politics out of it and turn it into religion imagine if he said that about religion like yes. would it be fair for me to put my religion on my students and he's turned around and said well it depends upon the religion <laughs> it's like what i'm so glad she asked this question that's such a great question and that's so fucking so telling that really that's the mask slipping right there well it depends on what the, the mask is on the floor it's broken yeah. into pieces what that's are you right talking the mask about? is the mat no no he ripped the mask off and ate it okay <laughs> the mask is gone it's being digested this is the real vosh here <laughs> it depends what your politics are oh my god what a fucking scumbag it, but i don't think it should matter about someone's politics i think regardless of left or right you shouldn't be imposing those if those aren't your children racial equality but that's not a is that a political value that is absolutely a political <laughs> position yeah 100 percent. see this is so dishonest too it's like it there are dishonest. it's a political position that Equal everyone's protection upon, under the law right? is a right. is a political <laughs> right no but it's like there's a political position that currently everyone fucking agrees with right that's based within our uh liberal framework it's in the fucking constitution okay yes that's in the fucking constitution that has been codified into law and yes. you're comparing that to this fucking crazy weird shit that is marxist and no one fucking agrees with yes that there's no, no scientific basis for no that you're calling yeah. no. uh scientifically valid which is a no. lie which is fraud well this is the bullshit you know they make that bullshit argument where they say they say everything is political and this is why they do it so they can make these dog shit arguments equal listen equal protection under the law doesn't have to have a race element to it right you can no, teach course, that right. without your stupid race stuff right see this is the problem that i have you you say you claim you don't like politics the next or why but you only label politics the current zeitgeist see this is why you you <laughs> came up with that so quickly Sitch. that's why I, I feel like you're just you would be able to make this argument in real time here oh, well i guess God. you've listened to this a couple times so maybe that's well these accurate. aren't well i haven't <clears throat> listened to this part but this is this isn't this isn't some unique argument that Vosh has made this right. is a common bullshit marxist argument that they all make. well this is why it's good to listen because yeah i wouldn't have thought of that so quickly the whole argument that this is something that we all agree on, so therefore it's not controversial. Comparing non-controversial things to super controversial things is completely bad faith. Right. Well, and also, not only is it just not controversial, it's A, not controversial, and B, it's still something that is can be codified and make sense within the framework of our you know, liberal system. And it has already been, as you said, it's already in the law. It's already enshrined in our law. Our right. legal system. So okay. you could teach it just as right. a technical thing, like this right. is the, the Constitution, yes. this is our laws. The 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 the, the currently the <laughs> debate about you know um, whether race you know the races should be taught you know treated the same. Okay, that is pretty settled. Okay, there's only the few weirdo people like your Nick Fuentes and, and you know those people that are still arguing your Richard Spencers that are arguing against this. Okay, that that conversation is settled. This conversation about CRT and about this weirdo gender ideology stuff is not even remotely close to being settled right. at all. Yeah, it's and a it, little it, early to put right. it in school. Right, and it doesn't conform to our liberal framework. It's not enshrined in the law, okay? It hasn't been means tested whatsoever. So no, fuck you. Don't give me this bullshit argument. Right. A political position, yeah, 100%. See, this is the problem that I have. You oh, you say, sorry. you claim you don't like politics the next or why, but you only label politics the current zeitgeist, the current culture war discourse, and everything prior to that, all the battles that have been fought and won in centuries past, those aren't politics anymore, it's just accepted. That's not true. Yeah, that's how society works, you dumbass. Yeah, totally. The battle is, <laughs> the, the battle is fought in the political realm before you start teaching it to the children. Yes. Like you haven't well, he, had the battle yet. 
He just admitted he's wrong. And he doesn't realize it. He said, you're classifying anything outside the current zeitgeist as political. Oh, Congratulations, yes. Vosh. You are correct. Anything outside the accepted current zeitgeist is a political debate that hasn't been fucking decided yet, you dumb fuck, and right. shouldn't be taught in school. Well, they're even trying to force this. Is, I mean, the, oh, it's... my God. It's so dumb. Yeah. Yes. Things that things that exist outside the zeitgeist. L- listen, Fosh, it's very simple. Things that exist outside the, the current zeitgeist shouldn't be taught in school. Okay. You're going to want to sit on this and you're going to want to say, oh, but, you know, the sc- public schools should have been teaching that, you know, the slaves should be free and that women should, you know, get the right to vote. Okay. But if once you open that door and you say that public schools should be teaching things outside the current zeitgeist, guess what that also means? It also means that that there's going to be teachers running around teaching kids in the forties that we should all be Nazis and that Nazi ideology is the correct way. Or you're going to have our teachers running around right now saying that evolution is a fucking lie and the devil, you know, buries dinosaur bones to trick us. Mm. Okay. You can't, this is the problem. And this is why all these Marxists are such dumb fucks and why they're so dishonest and they're so stupid. We have to live in a society with people that we disagree with and we have to get along. And part of the way that we do this is that we create laws that all apply to some sort of universal value or universal principle, principle yeah. that we can all fucking agree with. And they come in and they say, no, we want all the power. We want everything to be one-sided in our position. And they just have their heads so far up their ass. It's like, okay, they just, you know, once you start shipping away at these protections, they're going to, they're going to fuck you over too, Vosh. And they're going to fuck the left over too. And the thing you have to remember is that any weapon that you wield against someone, especially a political weapon, is going to be used against you and your team. So you have to be very careful what doors you're opening. Yeah, I could see there being lots of prayer in public schools in some of these states. In Why the, the fuck not? At this point, why the fuck not? Why well, see them on the libs of TikTok? They're teaching those kids all kinds of crazy stuff. Yes, right. They're gonna. Why be can't like, I teach kids? You know the stuff I want to teach them. Right. Yeah. They're gonna be teaching creationism again. Everything's political. Oh my god! Whenever someone says that, you just just stop talking to them. <laughs> that person's a fucking moron. That that was one of the good things out of the Jonathan Height. And Jordan Peterson discussion, Height completely nailed that. There's just yeah. there if you're living your life where everything is about politics, you're gonna be sad and fucking depressed your entire life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There are other That's true. lenses That's true. on life that you should give a, a try to. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's, there's more to listen. We do this show twice a week. Right. Okay talk about the culture war and that's good but you don't want if you're obsessing about the culture war 24 7 it's not healthy (laughs) it is not healthy yeah i go away from this and i don't really think about this stuff a whole lot and right it's like i think that's good that's healthy it is good you gotta balance okay you gotta you gotta balance things in life you don't want to if if you think about politics 24 7 you're not going to be happy no okay you shouldn't, yeah, you should think about but politics. Is, politics is important, but, you know, it shouldn't be your entire defining, you know, life. We stumbled upon something interesting here because that's part of the problem with Vosh because he streams every day. This is his life. Yes, that's true. That's a good oh, point. That's depressing. That is I, a good point. I, I don't, there are days I don't want to think about this stuff. Actually, that's a great point. I didn't think about that. That's a, that's a great point of why I think there is so much political polarization and, everything is sort of kind of so fucked up is because you have streamers and you have people on Twitter who their life is, they just live and breathe and eat politics 24 seven. Right. And if that's your entire world, it's going to make you fucking crazy. (laughs) It's going to make you crazy. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, painful. Racial equality was they literally had to send the National Guard in to protect the Little Rock Nine when they were being integrated in, uh, what was it, Alabama? Uh, it, this, was, this was just two generations ago. The, we are not far off from the idea of racial equality being taught in class, being a legitimately politically subversive okay, this, idea. Okay, I feel we should... What? 
She completely shuts him down here too, which is great. Okay, that's good. Get, that's good. She basically I, I says, "Get fucked." Yeah, this is such a bullshit argument. She says, "Get fucked." Okay. If you want to have right. this argument, you can have it with someone else. You're a yeah. piece of shit. Get that's off good. my podcast. That's good. If I'm remembering correctly. Okay. This is that's she such might an, say it nicer, but listen, we're Adam, we're we're all, we're we're just right here. Okay. I mean, we're just right close on the precipice of you know. Racial equality being too subversive to be taught in class. What a fucking scum argument to make. What a dis and a dishonest argument to make. Hasn't it been? I kind of feel like 60, 60 fucking years. years. Yeah. <laughs> 62 it's been years. 60 years for something that was codified in law that is now settled right. and everyone agrees on right, right now. Okay. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it had been sure. like 35 years before Vosh was even born. <laughs> it's so <laughs> fucked up, man. So this is so fucked up. It's so stupid. It's a level of sophistry. Come on, shut him down, Deborah. Should have another discussion about the topic of race because that's a whole other thing, and we are over time right now. But I appreciate. Right, I'm sorry. You. I appreciate yeah. you. I'm sorry. I don't appreciate I'm sorry. I'm a piece. It's of just, that's a disgusting. Yeah, it's he's disgusting. a piece of shit. Yeah. God damn. With <laughs> with your perspectives, and there's so much more. I think that we could obviously talk about, but um. Do you do you want to share any final thoughts with my audience before we say goodbye? No, tell them the fuck off. She gives him another chance. I don't. It, this is so. Yeah. Stop. She's too nice. Already. She's too nice. Yeah. Come on our show and be nice to us. <laughs> CT is already trying to hook it up. CT's like, I'm on this. Deborah's coming on. Yeah, I guess. Um. Yeah. To to. to Lauren Southern did respond to me, so it looks like Lauren Southern is actually going to come on. Good. Sitch is gonna has a Sitch has a, a reached out to Lance to ask him to help us craft a couple of questions to ask her. What? what? <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. Oh. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my God. Uh, we are gonna ask her about <laughs> how that Lance thing. We are gonna laugh about that Lance thing together. That was a fun conversation. I think that yeah. might be our most popular episode, to be honest with you. Maybe it was a lot of fun. Yeah. To cap off that point, I guess I just want to say that like where we invest our energy is very important. And as any person interested in sort of uh, scientific and rational consistency, you know, would adhere to, you need to follow where the data goes. And this is such scummy bullshit too. I know. So condescending. Not only that, Vosh only invests his energy in what's, you know gonna get him some clicks so yeah i just think it's true. completely disingenuous like we often do shows that are just interesting to us and we you know feel like no one's gonna care about this yeah no one's gonna care about this exactly <laughs> right. we do that a lot vosh is never gonna do that vosh is completely being driven by the culture war to so, so yep. to step back and say listen it's really important, you know, what we focus on here is fucking uh, insanely dishonest. Why are we not focusing on the crumbling bridges? Like, I don't know why you're not focusing on that. Insanely <laughs> dishonest. This whole conversation came together because he could call someone who was on Joe Rogan a Nazi. Yes. A fucking transphobe. That's why this whole conversation came together. He made yep. a video targeting this person that got 300,000 views. We on, we'll read some comments on that video on Tuesday. I'm sure mm. they're all very civil, very nice, <laughs> very, very civil comments towards Deborah So. I bet. I right bet. now, the data of there being some grooming epidemic in schools. Well, hold on. That's actually a problem, but it has nothing to do with woke anything. That's just a problem with teachers. The big, the two big places where child grooming happens is in the home and in the church, you know, but Republicans <laughs> want to focus on the school and coincidentally only on the Do you think it's happening in the school the at all? Would you acknowledge it's happening at all? Of course, but actually child sexual predation has been going down over time as wokeness levels rise. I just don't think there's a correlation. I don't think that like- I'd need to see that study. <laughs> in terms of sexual predation over time. Oh yeah, it used to be way With more common wokeness? than it is now. With wokeness? Well, I can tell if you were being facetious. I just mean that like- <laughs> He just made up a bunch of bullshit. He just <laughs> pulled is... that out of his behind. She's like, are you being serious? I can't tell. Did he like where is the study on this? 
I haven't read an article on child predation going down with wokeness. Have you? Yeah. No, I don't know yeah. what the fuck he's talking about. Who published this study? Was this on he, the Huffington Post or something? He probably just means that, like, um, as wokeness has increased in the recent years, child predation has decreased. So he's making the classic causation I'm not correlation. I'm sure bullshit. that you can make that. I'm not of even course sure you can. that you can make that assessment. Where are the studies yeah, on child not. predation? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like a tough thing to study. I bet there's a lot we don't catch, which is super disheartening. We've only gotten more progressive with time on social issues here in the States, but the amount of child predation that's been reported has been going down ever since we started tracking stuff like that. And I think the mid 20th century, like the okay, now we're going back to like, child abuse. I mean, down and down and down. now we're going back to the 1950s. Because our society everybody. is more into what the fuck is this, this is all just bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. I mean, this you watch. Have you watched that show to catch a predator? I mean. It seems like the internet has opened up an avenue for child predation to just skyrocket. And we're probably not catching much of that. I, just, I like that immediately. It's like, well, I mean, if we start if we're starting from the 1950s, it's like, okay. She, call, she called him out. She's like, let's see the study. He's like, oh, well, I don't have a study, but let me no. fucking talk long <laughs> enough to make you think I know what I'm talking about. This is so patently, obviously insane integrated with the internet people have easier access to info that can let them know if it <laughs> yes with the internet they have easier access to ch the child predators have easier access to prey this right is, this is moronic this is moronic abuse is taking place uh stuff like me too it sounds silly but it does actually get me too is not about child predation you fucking moron yeah what the fuck yeah, i don't know what he's talking about he's just he's in he's in oh my god she asked me for evidence and now i don't have any so let me talk mm -hmm. she completely she like she pantsed him right in front of everyone and now he's running <laughs> around going oh my god i'm naked <laughs> people sort of invested in the mindset that they should report if abuse is happening you know he does he vosh is very good at confabulation you know what confabulation is? yes you're right that is that's his number one strategy basically he just makes up a bunch of shit and just starts spouting it off he just threw out 25 different arguments completely incoherent they Don't have make nothing any to do with sense, each other all yeah. because she asked him for a study right. she asked him for evidence not even a study, just like, what are you talking about? Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hope he doesn't pull out the anecdote about how his his friends told mm -hmm. him they stopped grooming kids or something. <laughs> Fucking, how do you know that's going down? Well, a lot of my colleagues. Fuck. And that's good. The less child abuse is happening, the, the, the better, you know? But I, I strongly disagree with this cynical weaponization of the term grooming. Mm. Grooming is a... Oh, he's... Oh, this is so good. This is so good. This is so good. Because this is the thing that everyone comes at Vosh with, and it completely gets under his skin, too. And now, the thing that he's been targeted with has been codified into a uh -oh. political strategy. <laughs> oh, the, the pedo stuff? The yes, stuff? that's yeah. exactly what the grooming stuff is. Yeah, that's true. You that's know he's got to get okay groomer. Like, that's a, <laughs> that's a message that he gets a million times a day now. Mm -hmm. Okay, groomer. Oh, so, oh, demoralizing. Not only that, it is, it is a much better weapon than the Nazi thing, so keep... Keep calling people Nazis, Vosh. Keep it up. Serious thing to do. And it's being applied to like teachers. I feel it's who are no different from Nazis. Dances. But go ahead. Go ahead. I don't... <laughs> she just fucking slapped him in the face. Did you catch that? I did. I feel Same like it's Nazis. no I feel like it's no different than Nazi, but you go ahead. You continue. <laughs> Keep your rant going. I don't want to cut you off. Go ahead. Uh, well, if they were calling all these teachers Nazis, I would disagree with that too. But like, there are people you? Being called groomer. Some teacher lost his job because he said, like, it, to any trans kids who were rejected by your parents, I love you. The idea of a teacher saying, "That's not what I said. love my students." I think he is, said, "Like, I'm your parent now, right?" Isn't that the same guy? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> the idea. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Deborah was on the, the ball. Yeah, I take never it, woke up in I, the last quarter. Of I this, take uh, it back. Match. I take it back. 
She's yes. she, she's just scored like six touchdowns in the last yes. five minutes of the game. Here. She can't. She she came back hard in the last quarter. She woke is, up and was like, no. Vosh is like, what's wrong with saying that? I tell my fans that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, that's, that's appropriate. I don't think there's anything remotely. Do you understand? About that. Could you see why parents might be uncomfortable at that? I don't this care is one spe- this is one specific case. So I'm saying more broad. This is not this is well, this is one case we're talking about. But it's I think. Hold on. I think he said I don't care what the parents think. Yeah, that is what he said. It's the crazy. idea of a teacher saying I love my students. I think he is- said like I'm your parent now, right? Isn't that the same guy? Oh uh, yeah. The I don't idea think that's that that's appropriate. I don't <laughs> think there's anything remotely. Do you understand? About that. Could you see why parents might be uncomfortable at that? I don't. This care is one. Spe- this is one specific. I don't care if they're. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care if they're. I they're, don't care if he doesn't care. What do you think the end of that sentence was? Well, I that's don't the pro- care if they're uncomfortable. That's what's so gross about a lot of these. When you see these um, Instagram videos and TikTok videos, they don't of these care. these woke teachers. They all have this like disgusting holier than thou attitude. They do, yeah. That like what they're like they're doing. And this is why it is like a religion that they're doing fucking God's work, that they're preaching some kind of gospel and that the parents or anyone against them is like evil and wrong and Satan. And, you know, and they have this egotistical, there's just a video I saw on Twitter that was like, but they were basically bragging like, Oh, your children are going to look to us instead of you. And they're bragging about this. And it's like, right. okay. <laughs> like, and you're yeah. wondering why people are, are freaking out. This, knowing this reli- is what you say. This religious indoctrination this gender ideology, gender religion, gender yeah. cult. I mean, I mean, we were laughing about this shit three years ago. They're, I know. <laughs> they've gone fully insane over this. Yeah. It went from... But listen, I'm glad. I'm glad it's about, all out in the open now, though. Oh, hell yeah. It went from, we're making videos on YouTube to we're nefariously, secretly <laughs> educating your children in public schools. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Did they, I fire them? Throw them in jail? Like <laughs> what the fuck? Incarcerate their asses. <laughs> I'm yes. serious. That's the yes. that is going to be the backlash. Yep. It's going to be. Listen, we heard you were teaching gender ideology. That's a class four felony. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to <laughs> arrest you. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Specific case. So I'm saying more broad. This is not. This is this is one case we're talking about, but it's I think is indicative of something larger that's happening. The comfort of the parents is not a determining factor in the validity of an educational protocol. It is when it's a fucking religion, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You do, the yep. evidence is not on your side. Yep. All you have is flim flam. Yep. This is so ridiculous. He's not even willing to admit that the that the evidence is specious. It's got fucking two hundred people in these studies. That's Adam, not a I don't fucking even know what study. Specious means okay. Isn't they, that what you poop? That's what you poop out of. When they were doing, oh, this is not how science works. This is scientific illiteracy here, and I blame a fact: the fact that someone who has a college degree can be this mm. scientifically illiterate is repugnant. Completely repugnant. <laughs> Do you disagree? No. Well, it's all it, it's it's all in service is the issue. Right. Because I mean it's like, you know, when it comes to some study, you know, when it comes to some study he wants to debunk, you know, he'll be like, oh let me now I know what, the science. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm a statistical 100%. genius. Right. And then when it comes to some study that, you know, he, he supports, suddenly all that goes out the window. Right. And he just looks at it like, a, you know, blindly. Right. This is great. The evidence is on my side. Yep. It's all hubris, though. Of course. Of course. This is the problem. This is, the, this is how peer review has kind of fallen apart because peer review is all just an ideological echo chamber. Peer review should be... The people reviewing this stuff should be the people who don't believe it because yes. they're the ones that are going to go through and actually f- pick this shit apart. Right. Not rubber stamp it. 
That's true. If we defer to that, then we'd have Christian fundamentalists suing every school district in America every time evolution is brought up. I mean, we've been down this road, right? Parents have a right to determine the education of their children when they're at home. When they're at a public school, it is up to the institution of the public school. And I think that's a fair and what? fine thing. That's not what uh, it, no, you fucking, dumb, what a moron. Does he not know how public education no, works? No, he doesn't know any of this shit. Wait, yeah. It's not he's up to not the, educated on it either. It's not up to the school. Yes. It's up to the voters. <laughs> it's up to the voters. It's up to the parents. The that's why, about? this is why I brought up the Nick Ricada thing because, yes. yeah. What? You How you educate your the kids fuck? is your, is your, you have the right to educate your kids however you see fit. That right is being, is being granted to the state as long as the state is doing what is acceptable to the parents. He, he doesn't understand the difference between the institution that is a public school and the voters. The voters are the ones that determine this shit. Right, yes. What Does he not know how democracy works? I, for all the well, talk of democracy what? and wanting democracy in the workplace, no, he doesn't know how democracy what? works. A school can't just decide on its own what the fuck to do. Why do you think there's like a million of these criteria that the... That the the local state, you know, the school, the local district, and then the state school board has to pass. And it all goes through like a million fucking different people. Why do you it gets, think you they're know, pushed public school. school board meetings once a month where people can like <laughs> go in and talk to people? I, I know. This yeah. is so ridiculous. The school could do whatever the fuck they want. What are you talking about? It's insane. It's totally insane. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. They take your tax money and they can do whatever they want. Like, yeah, yeah, that's how government works. Apparently. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I'm, I'm like the stupidity is off the charts. Jesus. Um, because you know, regardless of you know how many TikToks of woke teachers or whatever, you know, for the most part, public education it, it does a, a consistent. I want. I I can't say good because American education sucks. So I can. I keep trying to say good, but it's not. You know, it it does a bad, but nonetheless consistent job of instilling. You know very certain educational premises the idea that everyone's walking does a shitty job because kids are coming out and they can't fucking read i mean i don't think Vosh can read so yeah well i can't read either so it's not a complete well that's <laughs> not a total that's not, setback. that's not the fault of a teacher though i can, the fault of your brain i okay. yeah i can actually read pretty good but you know, public education being some sort of woke bot is not but there are people that are coming out that can't actually read which is hugely demoralizing mm -hmm. true right. if you actually care about your students like or your kids being woke you want to get them off the internet the internet is full of access points to very progressive spaces um you could just isolate them and like homeschool them i guess but um the world is getting more progressive i think this is a good thing that should be celebrated you know it's so um, fucking stupid even if it leads sometimes to cringy teachers doing the, the, the world this is so dumb mm -hmm. The, the, yeah, some some aspects of the world are getting quote unquote more progressive, and some aspects of the world are getting way more regressive. And a lot of that regression is directly because the left is pushing too hard, too fast, and in too wrong of a direction. And it's gonna it's cause it's already causing the crazy pendulum to, sw to swing back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I wouldn't I would not be surprised if prayers coming back to public schools. This is so insane. <laughs> this is so insane. Thing like TikTok talking about how they're teaching their second grade students how the gender binary is fake. Like, okay, like do I do I think that's like appropriate for second graders? I don't know if inappropriate is the word I use. More like stupid. I, don't, I just don't know if there's a point. <laughs> you can't even say it. it. For for me, it should be like if you're talking with kids, it's like oh yeah, you know, sometimes people are straight, sometimes they're not. Oh, yeah, sometimes people are, they're, they're born as boys. She's, Deborah's so good at just letting him fucking rant and just staring at him like you're a moron, <laughs> which makes him rant even harder. She's definitely got this you're a moron You think that's what he's face. reacting to? Yeah. Interesting. Maybe. She's not, she's doing the complete prosecuting attorney face mm. where, mm -hmm. you know, you're not making any sense. And he keeps talking, waiting for her to show some sign that, she she accepts what he's saying and she's just like nah reject 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 maybe, maybe. they stay boys sometimes they stay 
girls. But that's the problem whatever. because it's teaching kids now, like we see the lawsuits that are happening, right? Where there are kids, there are girls who are transitioning behind their parents' back. The parents don't know. And in some cases, these kids are attempting suicide. We covered that story. Right. Yes. Well, that's what the the, the bill was about. Yeah, that's what the the anti-grooming parental. bill. <laughs> yeah, that's what the parental rights and education right. it, it's a, was about this. Right. The the anti-grooming bill that Vosh is against because he's pro-grooming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, technically everything's grooming if you think about it. I mean, you know, oh, no such thing as not grooming. Like we live in a society where you're right. groomed to be, you know, believe in Western liberal democracy and patriotism. Grooming. So, you know, you know, you know, if, if people are groomed to be, you know, to not want to tear down all society, then why can't we groom them for our crazy? Vosh, we're grooming you to be a good American. Okay. <laughs> No, 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 no. We can't grow. That's that's just wrong. Okay. okay. We're grooming you for the position of good patriotic American. Listen, obviously, Adam, if you know if the, the liberal hegemony is grooming you to be a good worker, that you know, we should be able to groom kids to be good Marxists. Okay. It's just <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> And so the parents are, were completely so kept out of the equation. So that that to me is where my concern that is lawsuit? coming from. Wait, what does that have to do? Who's being sued there? He doesn't, he even, doesn't know. even know about it. He doesn't even. I'm telling you, no. this the bubble. It's the bubble. He can't read that article to his. Did she? Audience. Did she say this is why the parental rights? Yeah, she knows. Exist? Okay. We good. figured we didn't. We didn't even know when we did the story. We pieced it together as we well. Were no, I knew the story. I thought that there were two separate incidences. Right. I'd heard of both things independently of each other. But. Right. Yes. This the school boards are being sued. What? What did they? What did they do? If the the, ki- the, the kids teachers, are transitioning. The teachers were withheld the information from the parents, and in some cases, this is where to me the grooming aspect comes in. They were the ones coaching the kids to take on these identities. Anyway, if you want to, this is this oh, is she's, a, no, she doesn't say. Unfortunately, this is a thing about Tim. It's like Tim knows. Tim reads news on both sides and definitely knows the situations and what's going on. Vosh is completely in the dark about anything that's outside of his bubble. He doesn't right. know about any of these stories. Like his whole routine is just, I'm going to look for someone that I can dunk on mm. and mm-hmm. call them, you know, a conservative, neo reactionary, racist, fucking Nazi. Yeah. And just make a video calling them stupid. His video of, from Deborah So is basically like that, talking about how stupid she is, just fucking how dumb and, and what a dumb liar she is. It's insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come back on another time. I'll have you back on. Happy to do sure, that. Sure, yeah, I'm sorry. We keep running over. My apologies. We're coming I just up have to, to ask, how though, many? Two hours, last I think, thing. yeah. Just last yeah. thing, I swear to God. Would you say the same thing if, like, a kid disclosed they were gay? Like, they had homophobic parents, and they told a teacher, like, hey, I think I'm gay, but I can't tell my parents because my parents would beat the shit out of me. And the teacher's like, oh, that's okay. You live your life, you know? And then later, that kid, like, attempted suicide because of social pressure, and the school district got sued by the parents. Like, do you think that'd be a legit lawsuit? Like, is that grooming, or is that just... I don't even understand. So what... I've thought about that. And yeah, I, I don't get the... Th- the thought how would that be true. grooming that's a kid on their own coming out to a teacher right and they're afraid to come out to their parent that the teacher's not pushing any ideology right to she handles kid. this good she totally right. handles this good i think in that case the teacher who's being told that the child is in an abusive situation should report that to the authorities i don't think it should be the teachers it, i don't think it's appropriate for the teacher to be the one keeping secrets from nice with the child hear, right here but vosh is thinking a cab what you're gonna go to the authorities <laughs> he is he totally is he's like what? well and go ahead i'll say and the, the parental rights bill has an exception to this too about um like the school doesn't have to notify the parents if it has to do with some abuse allegation too Right, that they are supposed to go to the police. So this is all built into the law, anyway. Well, I'm sure it's been around forever because there has yes. there is this thing called child abuse that people right. are generally worried about. <laughs> there is a thing called child abuse that does about happen. Any, any, or having a special relationship with the child that to me is a huge red flag. Whether or not someone has the intention of it being a sexual relationship, it could become a step down that way, or it could maybe not. But I just don't think it's appropriate for people in positions of power to be having secrets with children this is the problem and this is probably what james lindsay talks about these 
crazy Marxists. They view parents as like evil, the enemy. essentially. Yeah, they do. Yeah, parents the, are all the perpetrator evil. perpetrator of the heteronormative system that they're yes. trying to destroy. Yeah. Right. And it's funny because all this talk about how much they care about the bourgeoisie. I mean, the uh, not the bourgeoisie. The proletariat. The proletariat, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, how they you know want to do all these things for these people. And, like, they fucking hate these people's guts. They do, yeah. They, they hate just, them. They're, they're those... cannon fodder to them. It's right. Fucking they're disgusting. so elitist. They're so elitist. Yeah. Yeah. Do but, you agree? Well, not, not really. I mean, when I was in school, you know, I, I didn't even know I was gay back then. But, like, te good <laughs> teachers really can be, like, another, like, calming. This is so... This, it's really about the gay I thing. It's so to, funny to me. I just, as a... I think gay people... If if I was gay, I would find this highly offensive. Just I would be so fucking pissed right seriously, now. Seriously, it's know? something... There, I'm telling you, there's this podcast you can listen to of andrew sullivan where he has i think two or three other gay commentators reporters on and they all just tell their stories about you know just having to you know come to terms with the fact that they were gay in a world that completely doesn't have movie everything is oriented towards straight people right right and it's yeah you're for the first time you're empathizing okay well this is kind of a fucked up situation and for vosh to just completely hijack that appropriate that for his yeah. own political ends oh i didn't even know i was gay back then what the fuck do you when not I, know I, how you sexual know. attraction works and i think he's also lying too i do yes so, like it just it seems so disingenuous yes Listen, I wasn't a people are not attracted to other people until they hit puberty. Other people are just people to you know play games with. Right, like, right. Uh run around the neighborhood with, okay? They're just friends. As soon as you, you like some people get a sexual attraction, same sex attraction, some people get opposite sex attraction, but the idea that Vosh went through this process <laughs> You're so full of shit. You're so full of shit. It's uh, <laughs> I. It's weird because he will call us the evil right wingers, but he is the one being fucking insanely insensitive about this shit. Well, it's just it's so great. He's using he's using this, people. This yeah, he's using this this gay label as like this shield. Which as as you said, if I was gay, I'd be really fucking offended right now. That the guy who, you know, the weirdo sex pest guy who, you know, claimed he was pan now suddenly is pretending like he's just gay. Right. <laughs> to, to avoid, you know, all the criticism from the J.K. Rowling comment. Yeah, but in, in, <laughs> so two, like, the fuck? in two, this is, this is, I think, why I'm so triggered by this is because mm -hmm. if you listen to that Andrew Sullivan episode, where right. three gay people basically one after the other tell about their uncomfortable experiences with coming to terms with the fact that they're gay. In two years from now, if Bosch is in that situation, he will have fully constructed a story that he believes is an authentic story about him coming to terms with right. the fact that he was gay. And, and, I the, just, and the people you're talking about that were talking to Andrew Sullivan, they, they grew up like in this what the 70s, the yeah, 80s. Yeah, Andrew Sullivan is I, I what is he 60? I mean, he like <laughs> right, he yeah, he grew up in the 60s and 70s. Where you yeah. couldn't even come out of the closet, like you couldn't right. tell your friends you were gay. Right. Yeah. And to compare that to now is just so insipid. Well, if yeah, I'm assuming that if a if a high school kid comes out now, they everyone lifts them up onto their shoulders and they run around <laughs> the school, right? Hooray! Right. Bosh is gay. <laughs> right? That's why he's doing it. That's why he's literally doing it. It's a much different situation. Yeah. 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 And to it's just it's so is he going to get caught for this? Because I think we we both feel like this is. Untrue. He will eventually. I don't. I, I he can't maintain this. Uh, this can't be maintained. <laughs> this, okay, whatever. An authority figure in your life. You spend a whole year with them when you're young, and if there's like advice they have, you know, don't get me wrong. The, 
secret relationship is kind of a loaded term. Like we're talking a wide range here. If a kid discloses something, you know, if, if there's no avenue to report to the police abuse, I mean, if you report it to the police, then what? Like they show up at the house and it gets made public and the kid gets beaten within an inch of their life after the police find <laughs> that there's nothing don't they can sure, officially tell charge the, the parents with because the there's police. no evidence for like, yeah, I don't know. Well, like, I mean, it seems that's like that's an extreme. People hurt. That's an extreme. I think it should at least be, I mean, if, if you want to talk about what should be done in that case, I just don't think there are situations. And I think most adults who are put in that position probably would be uncomfortable to say, I don't feel right that a child's telling me something and I have to keep this a secret. They should want to at least, I think, put if they if they are concerned about the child's well being to put some sort of precautionary measures this is, uh, into sometimes place. I'm just having a person This is all baked into these jobs. Oh I'm God. certain of it. Like all these jobs have this kind of reporting mechanism set up. Yeah. You can't, a kid can't walk up to you and just fucking tell you shit. I'm being abused by my parents. And you're just like, okay, well, go get them, tiger. <laughs> I, I, I remember, you know, uh, when I went to my teacher training that I didn't go to, because this is a hypothetical, that the, that the principal said, listen, if a kid comes to you and tells you that their parents are abusing them, whatever you do, don't tell the police. Because <laughs> if you tell Can the you... police, the police might show up at the house and then the kid will get beaten a little bit more. So, you know, make sure you don't tell the police. I was, I, I dozed off for a second there. He, he did work the police brutality in, didn't he? He did. No, no, fully he said not, not police A-cab brutality. In. He said that if you tell the police, they're just going to show up at the house and then the parents are gonna, just going to just beat the child. Right. So I was like, okay, well, what's the solution here then? <laughs> You're saying there is no solution. The teacher's supposed to like take the role of the police or the social worker. What is the teacher supposed to do about any of this stuff? It's so well, stupid. Won't the police do? I mean, look, if 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 the kid accuses the parents of some sort of abuse, that's a very serious allegation. That's a very serious allegation. Yes. The police are going to get involved, and if the police get involved. And the parents' retaliation is to beat the kid. There's going to be a lot of evidence that the kid yeah. wasn't lying, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's not that's not a good not a, not a good yeah. idea. Yeah, Vosh is not. Vosh doesn't think about any of this stuff. No. Yeah person disclosed to can be hugely beneficial for the suicidality of queer youth you know like the feeling they don't have to keep it hidden from absolutely everyone if they know they have a supportive teacher i just don't think that leads to group like parents will i just think there's a potential there this is also bullshit too because we don't live in 1980 anymore we don't live in 1990 anymore we don't live in 2000 anymore okay we live in the, the world where everyone can talk to anyone on the internet forever there's a million support groups right for for lgbt kids that exist online there's right. a million groups anyone can go to to tell anyone how the fuck they feel they don't need to have a a teacher there that they can find it this is so ridiculous. i would i would guess that those support groups are teaming with pedos i, mean, I, would, I would think, think you're think. probably correct but right. uh i'm yeah, not saying it's a different problem i'm not saying gay people are pedos i don't want to be misconstrued i'm saying that pedos will gravitate towards these groups because yeah, they know it's a yeah, place. take to, advantage, right? right? I mean, I think she might even mention that there are pedos. Like, someone, I listened to something where they talked, maybe it was in the James Lindsay podcast, where they were talking about pedos on, like, suicide hotlines. I was like, what the fuck? Mm, that's not good. Yeah. For it to be abused, right? There is a potential there for it to be abused. True, if but we're normalizing standard... the, the, the secrets between teachers and kids. From well, the, any from standard... Their where any relationship between like people in a position of power and children can be he's fully advocating for playful secrets <laughs> yes it's so weird he's going so he's going to the mat with this where's the you remember your highness where's the meme secret Which... <laughs> <laughs> playful secrets the Fabio I, I, secrets. I, I, I'm pretty sure you were just sexually abused. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is the warrior train. <laughs> no, no. Can, I they, don't think can you is. make that joke now? How old is that movie? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm not sure you can. Oh my god, you can't even make fun of pedos anymore. What? To, what is the world coming to? <laughs> what is the world coming to? Harmful would include parents, right? I mean, parents. True. I'm pretty sure the household's the number one 
grooming central grooming station you know uh eight lines on that uh on, on that union does side. he does he know because david m bus mm -hmm. has this has this in his book the murder next door the abuse situation is usually caused by a step parent obviously i mean really think about it. it goes all the way back to cinderella who, who that makes sense yeah who was the evil one right the stepmom mm -hmm. right because they don't have any blood investment they're actually a drain on the investment in the beautiful biological daughters of the stepmother who fucking cinderella's you know who's in comp uh, competition with resources yeah exactly right well and also like the whole thing about like well the home is where most of the stuff happens like okay but that's just because like that's you know they parents have access to their children more than anyone else alive generally <laughs> so that's like why well and step, the... step parents in the home make this because mm. a, a, okay. a biological parent abusing their kids is a lot more rare usually when there's yeah when there's incidents of abuse it has to do with the step parent and mm, okay. david and bus lays this out in the book the murder next door yeah station okay so it just seems like a sort of weird imbalance especially since the only thing i mean obviously there's tons of uh, like step parents aren't all abusers obviously i'm not saying that i think that might be what you're inferring i'm saying if there is abuse well, i wasn't inferring that okay good just getting focused on his queer issues like it at the end of the day vosh is trying to maintain a narrative here that Gay kids cannot come out because they will be uh, demoralized by their parents. That's the world that he wants to say exists, but I'm not certain that that world exists. Right. Look, if a kid is transitioning or like thinks they're a boy or a girl, you know, whatever, and they don't feel comfortable telling their parents, um, the abuser, as far as I'm concerned, is the parents. Uh, any environment in which a child can't even voice concerns like that or like questions or interests with their parents, talk it out, uh, is one in which um, that, as far as I'm concerned, that child's already being abused. That, that's so, very brave, Vosh. In, in the hypothetical situation that uh, that you <laughs> set light forward, yes, they are the abuser, I guess. Good job. They're, he's, so, he's such a troublemaker, too, because yeah. how many how many families are just getting completely damaged over this guy i'm curious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean it's got to be more than one don't you think he's, uh, he's basically just said you know any yes. any parent that might question whether or not their kid has gender dysphoria is a child abuser no, 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 no. To be to be fair, to be a little bit more fair, what he said was any parent that the child, like if the child is, is in a relationship with their parent where they can't talk to their parent about this thing, right? That would be, um, you know, abuse or or more likely to be abusive, which is probably true to some degree. But, but they probably can't talk to him because the parent would question whether or not they had gender dysphoria. Right, but it's just it's just ridiculous that it's like yeah, it's like okay in your hypothetical situation like sure good food for you I mean so what like, I don't know the whole thing's stupid teacher being disclosed to in that case is just probably a modicum of relief for the student that they don't have to hide everything from everyone but I'll take a look at the details of the lawsuit it just seems to me like a lot of this is misdirected anger at trans people trying to be weaponized against institutions that can be sued because you can't sue every trans kid. Um, there, yeah, yeah, there, there have been multiple lawsuits. Can I just say before we say goodbye, I just ask for people listening who may not be familiar with my work to please read The End of Gender. You can get it free on Audible. The audiobook is read by me so that you know what my positions are. I feel that much of the criticism I get is people who have not read my book, have not read my work. It's based on things that other people have said about me, which in many cases are not true or are not like you, accurate <laughs> reflections of my, my opinions on these issues. So I just ask that. And um, I really thank you for coming on my podcast. I feel like there's something more you want to say. <laughs> there's always something more I want to say. Don't tell me that. Don't give me permission. Um, <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate you having me on. Seriously, it's been a good time. Sorry for running over that's all right all right well thank you so much so we we talked about i'm going to be releasing this in a few days and uh 
All right. Take care. Uh, take care. Have a wonderful time. A, a wonderful day. Jeez. Have a good <laughs> you one. You too. Bye. Bye. There you go. Well, that was uncomfortable. There you go. Wow. Well, I'm glad we covered this conversation. I can't believe you made me listen all the way to the end. <laughs> the end is like the worst part. <laughs> well, we should have started in the middle. <laughs> no, the beginning was important because he basically set up an entire contradiction to his entire argument in the beginning of this uh video by trying to take her position on gender and sex and then completely negating that position when it didn't serve him when she asked him what it means to be a woman right yeah so you're right no that was important that was important we i wanted to jump to him falling in the hole and you're like no we have to watch him dig the hole first yeah watch him dig the hole first that's right. true that's true that's a terrible person Right. Well, listen, we made it. You kept saying we're never going to finish the video. And we finished the video. I said that on our first live stream, I remember. Well, no, you were saying <laughs> that. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to finish this video. That That's live right. stream, I think, was five hours long. <laughs> the tables have turned. The tables <laughs> have turned. <clears throat> All right. Read the last of the super chat so I can go to bed. I, I read the last $20 super chat. Really? Yeah, you can go to bed. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for coming. Thank you for your incredibly generous donations. Thank you for staying with us through the journey. The journey of this terrible fucking conversation between Vosh and Dr. Deborah So, who deserves better, much better, and will hope that you have a wonderful Monday, and we hope to see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye!